me you got soul inside those new shoes And you can rock and roll with the attitudes It's fresh, just the way you like it Just the way you like it Just the way you like it Good morning and welcome to the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States Series. Today's coverage is brought to you by Biostarks. Decode your health. And by VinFast. Boundless together. Well, we're set to bring you some great race action this morning from Tempe, Arizona. As you can say, as you can see, beautiful conditions here this morning in Tempe. Let's take a look at specifics of the weather here. Uh, we've got a nice little swim uh, venue here in uh, Tempe Town Lake. We're going to have these athletes uh, getting in. Men start just in under 10 minutes at this point. Uh, so pretty... Uh, Pretty, pretty quick. We're going to get there pretty quick, Meredith. I'm Matt Lietta. With me this morning is Meredith Kessler. What do you think? We've got pretty, pretty good fields here, ready to race. Matt, so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, I'm looking at them all getting in the water, and I'm in awe because this swim course is the place to be. It looks smooth. It looks together. And they're going to have a great day out there, and we're going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah, sure are. And uh, we can talk about the weather this morning, 55 degrees. I know maybe warmer than some athletes were expecting this morning, so that's a, a surprise and a welcome one at that. A water temp, 61, so a little bit chilly, but uh, I think they'll get I think they'll get warmed up when they're out there, right? Absolutely. They'll get out of that water. They have a, a little bit of a run to transition, and then they'll get on the bike, warm up. I would think some would choose some gloves today. I would. That's all I'd need there in that temperature. Yeah. But they'll be ready to go. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be... It's going to warm up. It'd be probably close to 70s is what we're looking at uh, for the forecast for today. So, Meredith, a fast course, yes. uh, but certainly fast conditions. Yes, this, I looked at the weather and I was like, wow, this is a perfect day for an Ironman, right? Yeah. And so, and being three loops on the bike course, they're just going to roll through that, put themselves an arrow and go. And it's going to be a fast day for everybody. I can tell by the water, just the lack of chop and the smoothness. Yeah, yeah they're ready to go fast today. Yeah, for sure. And historically, this is a pretty quick race. Uh, yep. Often after... Uh, we have the World Championships in Kona. Yes. Uh, you see a lot of athletes uh, come back at, you know, peak, peak fitness. Yep. You're one that's come here. <laughs> How many times have you raced here, Meredith? Uh, I can, have can raced we count here. count on two hands? We I can. don't know. I think, it, I think I'm in the 15s. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I'm one of those who I've walked the Queen K enough to know, and then I've come here five weeks later and had the race of my life. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you starts with the swim, so let's take a look uh, sure. here quickly at the swim map this morning. Uh, Meredith, Tempe Town Lake, uh, tends to have pretty pretty darn fast swim conditions. Yes, I love Tempe Town Lake. Man-made lakes, those are my jam. So <laughs> this is awesome. It, it's a great course. You know what? You can see people on the side kind of paralleling you the entire swim. And it, it goes by quickly. Once you make the turn, it's like, boom, you're going home. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, there's there's a little bit of chop on the water. Yes. Or, you know, we maybe refer to that as, as texture even. Uh, so it's nothing that's really going to affect the athletes, but it's not uh, totally flat. But I feel like I've never seen Tempe Town Lake, because it's so narrow, actually right. get any, like, really big. Never, never. Even on, in the times where it's been, like, rainy kind of in the morning and extra cold, colder than surely than it is now, I've never seen it. It'll be a little choppy just with the boats at the beginning, and then it, it settles, and then it's, like, 
smooth sailing. Yeah, for sure. Here we see our men uh, pros getting ready, uh, some getting a, a few strokes uh, warming up before the swim start. Meredith, tell us a little bit about what goes through. We see an athlete here doing sure. maybe a drill of what athletes are trying to do to get ready for a swim like this. I love that he was just doing drills. That's yeah. better than I would do. I, I actually don't get, it's like a superstition of the mind. I like warm up really well on the dry land and then I don't get in until I absolutely have to. Yeah, here we go. And let's go down uh, to the national anthem as it's going to be performed today by Olivia Calderon, member of the Tempe Police Department. We honor all of our men and women serving this fine country and our 32 active duty military that are racing with you today. I'd like to introduce Olivia Calderon, a 16 year member of the Tempe Police Force. Do the rest of the honor. Great way to start the morning. Awesome work by Olivia Calderon. Uh, just a few minutes away from our pro men start, three minutes out. Uh, let's take a look at our men's pro field here this morning, Meredith. Quite, quite a stacked field. It's going to be a good day for the men. Yeah, absolutely. So we some of our uh, pre-race favorites going in uh, for the race today. Obviously, like we said, a bunch of athletes coming in after uh, a race in Kona. So a pretty stacked uh, field to a certain extent. Uh, so we've got uh, Joe Skipper is an athlete that didn't have maybe the, uh, you know, he had a great race in Kona, mm -hmm. uh, fifth place in Kona. He's had had great races uh, over the last year, an athlete that has has set some, you know, record record times uh, over the last uh, few years. Sam Long, one that we're looking forward to. Yes. Uh, ben Canute, Meredith, first, first one. I know he's going to do it. And I always say, I know Arizona was my personal first race and it's the best first pro race to do i think he has the right mindset for this he's gonna he's gonna have a great day and he's it's it's he doesn't know what to expect you know yep, yep. we got matt hansen there as well uh christian hogenhog uh we do have justin metzler uh racing as well be on that list uh trevor foley who is on uh that is actually not racing here uh this morning so uh don't have to look out for him but we can see we have uh, some of our, our athletes in special uh, cap colors, so we'll be able to keep track. It's a little harder, Meredith, right. to keep track of who's who in the swim, but we got it those is. caps to keep and us honest. And it's dark out, too. And right now, they're in the worst. This is the worst part of their day right now. <laughs> like the next 90 seconds, they're like, let's just get this party started yeah. right now. They're treading water, water, the nerves. They just want the cannon to go off so they can get the party started. Yeah, for sure. And it's... Uh, it, one of those things, right? As soon as the race goes, the yep. gun goes off, it all gets a little calmer, right? Nothing totally to worry about. Totally calm. The sun comes out, they can see, and the day, all the hard work they've just done for X amount of time, it's right. time to showcase that. 
Right, yeah, no more stress. It's uh, <laughs> just, just time to execute. Uh, so we can see men all lined up there, about a minute uh, to go. On our left-hand side of the screen, you can see that neon green cap. That's yeah. Ben Canute. Uh, near him is Joe Skipper. Uh, those two athletes won't be swimming together uh, today, most <laughs> likely. Uh, you know, looking to, to kind of predict what's going to happen, you're going to see Ben Canute, known for his swim, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first out of the water at 70.3 World Championships with obviously higher octane, like very, very quick. Um, so he'll be able to get out there. There's a few athletes that might be able to, to stick on uh, Ben's feet, but it's going to be uh, some work to do so. We can see that pink cap of Sam Long and then uh, that white cap as well on that far end uh, side of the screen with Christian Hoganhog, who's a, a great uh, swimmer as well. But we're going to go down and get that start going. We got the cannon. We got Mark Baker from uh, Biostarks uh, getting ready to get us on our way. And it will be interesting to see if Ben Canute just we're starting so soon and I love it. If he, you know, he's not used to doing a, you know, 2.4 mile swim, so he'll find his groove. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think he'll uh, he'll get out there. You see athletes getting their kick going. There we go. They were on our way uh, here uh, this morning in Tepe Town Lake. And again, looks like Ben Canute didn't get his first two strokes right, in right away, right. but he'll, he's going to catch up here pretty quick, oh, Meredith. He'll probably get out, out front there and be like, wait, where is everybody? Because he's so <laughs> used to like the 70.3 speed. Yeah. And and again, I'm sure he's done the work that he's going a little bit, you know, double the distance that he's used to in, in a 70.3, but he'll, he'll find his groove and then he'll be like, wow, okay, wait, I have 112 miles to go. I'm used to 56 <laughs> or less, right? Yeah, so. well, and here we go. We actually have another athlete uh, leading out, uh, Ben Canute, at this point. So, oh, I um, like it. You know, Ben's going to warm his way into this one. Apparently, it looks like, I feel like we see that, no, two blue caps, yeah. a white cap okay. of Hogan Hogg, just a few athletes behind uh, ben Canute. So uh, clearly have a couple swim specialists pushing the pace early. I think what can happen, Meredith, you mm -hmm. talking specifically of the difference between mm -hmm. uh, a 70.3 and an Ironman is the athlete's, maybe that are, you know, kind of just off of an athlete like Ben Canute might right. overextend themselves right. because they're not really thinking of the fact that it's, you know, twice the distance. Right. And maybe Ben is trying to be extra, you know, he's in unknown territory here. Yeah. It'd be actually smart for him to kind of sit in on the swim and have someone out. Like if, if he's sitting behind uh, the, the gentleman in, in the front right now and he's yeah. saying to himself, is this good for me? And right. the answer is yes. He should stay there. Now, if he's saying, is this not good for me? Am I going too slow? Then he should make a move. Looks to me, he's in a good place. He's getting a little draft. He's, you know, slowing down his cadence and looking pretty, pretty settled in there and unknown territory that he's in right now. Yeah. And I think it's, it's not easy for an athlete like Ben to come up with kind of that race plan, right? Specifically right. when you have a strength like that. I mean, tell me what you think, but yeah. You know, I'm looking at people are saying, oh, this is, yeah. you know, great field. And, you know, can Ben beat an athlete like Sam Long? And I'm like, well, he's going to have seven minutes, right? So, right. like, if he's aggressive, he right. can have all that time to play with. But then if you're aggressive, you're, like, maybe burning a match early, yeah? Right. And so it'll be interesting to see. I think the swim, he'll be totally fine. But then he'll get out on the ride. And, you know, it's a, several hours more than he's used to. And how much lead will he have? And we'll assess that here in a few hours, won't we? Yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, it looks like we have two athletes that have separated themselves. So we can be pretty sure that I think I do see that green uh, mm -hmm. cap and that's still Ben Canute uh, kind of in second place at this point. But those two athletes have separated themselves from the rest of the group. But just a second ago, we saw our pro women's field getting uh, ready and kind of lining themselves uh, up yes. to, to get that uh, quote unquote warm up in as the athletes take that first right hand turn. As you can see, the athlete leading. Uh, ben Canute around that first buoy. Right. And Ben looks super relaxed. I actually never seen his cadence this like smooth. He's probably like thinking to himself, all right, I got a long day ahead. So I'm just going to sit right here and let this guy lead the way here because he's doing a great job. No. And I mean, honestly, like this is, I'm sure a, a mm -hmm. godsend for, for yes. Ben, right? Like normally he's, yes. now he's getting best of both worlds. We're yes. talking about burning matches yes. to go fast, but if he's having to work reasonably hard Yep. to stay on an athlete's feet, that means they're going even faster. Right. And it's not like if you see, he's not right up in his grill. So he's yep. trying to get in the, the draft a little bit, which is great, right? There's two places to draft, right behind the person or on his hip. Yep. He's obviously not on the hip. So he, I think he's now his cadence is going up. I think he's hustling to try to stay in the pocket there, which will be good for him to do. I mean, we're only three minutes and 43 seconds in, um, and they've already kind of created a smidge of a, of a little bit of a gap to get going. And they've got a good bit to go 
Yeah, the women sure. haven't even started yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And, you know, it does look like, I mean, I think he is having to work yes. to actually uh, stay here. But now we're just one minute away from our women's uh, start, which, again, super mm-hmm. competitive uh, women's yes. field here this morning. As we said, some post-Kona uh, race contenders uh, out here as well. I think, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the big names that, that come to my mind, uh, Sky Monch is on the top of that yes. list. Uh, we've got Sarah True. Who else do you yes. see out there? Well, there's a lot of, I mean, Danielle Lewis is an, I mean, she's done one Ironman before, but she's such a cyclist and such a runner. You have my, my old statesman, Mel McQuaid in there. I think she is such a good force on the bike. She's technical. This can be technical with all the turns out there. Yeah. Um, we have Lauren Brandon, obviously she's going to be leading the swim, no doubt. And I, Ueda. Also, she's going to be smiling the whole time, you said. Yeah, she yeah. will. No, Great. I mean, and I think she's she's one to look out for. First Ironman, uh, very successful, a few Olympic uh, races uh, for her and uh, one that has a, a great swim and a fantastic run. So we're going to get started uh, with Graham Newsman, uh, project manager uh, from Biostarks. <laughs> that's he's a highlight, he's highlight like, of his day. My for day sure. is over. That there was perfect. <laughs> and, and the women are on and out. And, you know, you mentioned it. You know, yeah. you're going to see Lauren Brandon, we yeah. expect... Sure. to be there. She doesn't necessarily always, she's not the first one of the first buoy. And right? that's what I love about yeah. her. She settles in. She has such a smooth stroke, controlled. She doesn't stress. She's just very easygoing about her approach in that first 500 yards, whereas I'm like like nuts. You know, I'm like fast cadence and try to go and my heart rate goes from zero to hero. And she's very smooth and controlled. And I love that about Lauren. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, once she gets out there and settled in, uh, it's basically we're watching a swim clinic because she looks absolutely <laughs> <Correct>. perfect. <laughs> like her, the placement of her hands, her breathing, her just control is. So, she makes it look so easy, and she's going so fast in that. And I, I really do think like Sky and oh, actually Sarah True is such a good swimmer, yeah. as we know. I, I would think if I were to like place myself in Sarah True's head, I think she would start by Lauren. I know I would try, and I always say I'm going to start by Lauren and Lucy, and then I'm just going to try to hang on for even right. 40 yards. <laughs> <laughs> and get in their draft. So if I were Sarah, because she's such a good swimmer too, I would definitely do that with Lauren. For sure. And it looks like that is, we can see perfection oh, yes. on screen. So that's definitely yes. Lauren Brandon. Uh, al- already gotten the other athletes uh, off of her feet, which actually is a little yes. surprising to me this this early this in, just early. about 120 right. meters. Yeah. And look at her sighting. See, she she has such a control of sighting, just like, and she always talks about just putting your, your eyes halfway out through the goggles, and that's yep. what she's doing. Uh, she does a lot of good uh, Roka tips in that regard, but um, I always love. But she just is, makes it look so easy, and look, her kick, she barely kicks, so she saves her leg, legs, excuse me, for the the bike run. I always feel like it's all upper body, and she makes it so smooth. Oh, yeah, super, super smooth. And, uh, Meredith, you know, this course, as far as open water swimming, it's it, it, we, we've stated it already. It's pretty mm-hmm. quick, but for a lot of reasons, like, you actually don't have to sight as much in a course like this, correct? Right. You, I, I, would, I know on this course you can see you can see the buoy so prominently and it's pretty straightforward with the turns that you don't need to stress over it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got a lot more action uh, to come and we'll get back to that after this quick commercial break. We are back, and that's Ben Canute at the front of the race. Almost at the front of the race. Yeah. Got another athlete that we're trying to get. Uh, it's a little hard for us to get the numbers always here uh, on race morning, especially with the glare of that morning light. So we're going to try to get a number of that athlete in front so we can get uh, uh, you know a little more information on, on who's the one leading, leading our race here. 
I mean, Ben's happy as a clam right now, right? He's yeah. like, this is great. This is my perfect scenario. I'm just sitting in. This gentleman's leading the course. I mean, you still have to sight when you're, when you're drafting. I'm not, in, you know, but, but he's got someone guiding the way. And he's probably getting a little bit of a draft off that strong kick of the gentleman in front of him. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, he's absolutely getting uh, an advantage. And it does look like he's uh, settled in a little bit more now. But, you know, you know, we, we talk about settling in and getting mm-hmm. that draft and mm-hmm. like you are able to ease off. But I mean, Ben still has a big kick. He still has that yeah. very, very powerful, powerful stroke. So these two athletes, like, you know, if Ben was pushing the pace yeah. on his own, I was thinking he would be in the low 48, maybe high 47. Yep. But if he has an athlete in front of him that's, oh, yeah. you know, quote unquote drilling it, like these guys could be low 47, like Which high 46. Huge. And in, in Tempe Town Lake, that's 100% possible they could yep. even sub 47 it'll be interesting to see they're going really fast right now even though they're so smooth i can you can just tell they're going really fast yeah no absolutely right? absolutely smoking and the one thing it's also a kind of a mm-hmm. uh a tactic to a certain extent when those other uh athletes uh from behind get out of the water mm-hmm. You know, if you've got a Sam Long and you swim right. at 55 and you think you're stoked, but you lost nine minutes, right. that's that's kind of a lot. Right. Nine minutes on this course is a lot because, and then you're, you're getting into loops, right? Where you can see everybody as, you know, as much as possible. Nine minutes is miles yeah. on the bike. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we got these pro athletes at the front of this course, but it's not just the pros uh, out there today. So we'd like to recognize the tri-club athletes uh, competing out there. Ironman supports tri-clubs. The Ironman tri-club program includes more than 10,000 clubs and more than 160,000 active racing members globally. The find a club feature on ironman.com backslash tri-club allows athletes to find a club near them. Find your tri-club today. There we go. And this athlete, uh, Meredith, you know, nice, you know, kind of a a pool stroke to a certain extent, like uh, kind of that long, uh, long stroke you you might not expect from an open water swimmer going this quickly. But again, I'm I'm still surprised at, I mean, Ben is really drilling it to stay on there. If it, if it was a pace that he could control, he would be another foot and a half closer to that athlete. Absolutely. I think he's struggling. He's like, wait, is this how fast we need to go for (laughs) 2.4 miles? Right? He's like, I'm just going to try to settle in. And maybe we'll see what he decides to do or if he decides to kick it. I mean, obviously, we're just in the very beginning of this races. And you race, excuse me, you have to save yourself a little bit. And look, I mean, look look at this stroke. Come on. Perfect. It couldn't be more perfect. And she's just, Lauren makes it just look so easy. Every yeah. time. No, absolutely. And what, what we saw quickly from that yes. overhead shot looked like Sarah True yeah. actually maybe only like 15 meters or so behind Lauren Brandon. What we didn't see was whether or not mm-hmm. she had athletes with her. And I think, right. you know, we look at this race and if we're being honest, we look at the, the women on the list and you and I both are like, okay, it's Sarah True yep. and Sky Monch. Correct. Right, like those yes. are the two that will be yes. most likely. If everybody has good races, that should be unless we have someone yep. that, that has a breakthrough performance. Those should sure. be the ones at the top. So if Sarah True, it's kind of a big deal. If Sarah True can get that gap on Sky, that gives her some some different tactics to play with. Absolutely, and being a cyclist that Sky is, that's where she jams. Right, she yeah. tries to get back up to the front of the race. But once again, what we just talked about, if if Lauren and Sarah even have five, six minutes, that's a lot on this. And we just saw yes. it a few times yes. now, Sarah True, yep. three, four times in a row right. looking over her looking shoulder. <laughs> so, you know, what that is, Meredith, yep. is, I'm curious if that's a, okay, where is Sky or is mm-hmm. it a, how far back is this group? Am I wasting my energy in kind of no woman's land? Right. What do you think that over the shoulder right. look is for? Well, and I would think up here at the turn, she'd do a look back. I'm thinking that she's like, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to keep up with Lauren right now. Yeah. So what is my damage to the pack behind me? Because when right. can I just chill here right now in this, or can I, should I speed it up a little bit? Yeah, and she, would she maybe be looking for, like, Ayueda or someone she knows is also a very strong swimmer to be like, okay, I want to make sure right. that green cap of Sky isn't here, but I would welcome somebody else to help push the pace. 100%. So she, that's what she's looking for, I bet. Green cap, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Like, how far is back is that green cap? Because I'm going to need a little buffer on this bike, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think it's, uh, you know, obviously competitive 
advantage with time, right? Yes. Like obviously the, the goal is to get across the finish line first. So the more time you have in the swim, the better. But if you then have the ability to like kind of shake out your legs and wait for Sky to come and then try to get on Sky and just right. do the race that way, yeah. Well, right. And maybe she was looking back too to see, well, if she's right there, maybe we can work off each other. But then she looked back and was like, wait, I'm by myself. I, let's <laughs> let me go. I, let me hustle and try to get some advantage. Yeah, and the, these two athletes, uh, obviously very well uh, established as the two leaders, uh, we'll try to get a shot uh, here as as well as like you know, kind of our chasers, how far back uh, these other athletes are. But I imagine you know we've got a pretty pretty good gap already from these these two mm -hmm. athletes. And again, it's just going to continue to grow. There's still some great swimmers that aren't here that are right. going to be kind of like this main first pack. But then obviously a lot of our contenders in a second group, and we're going to get back to the racing after. Uh, commercial break throughout my career people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon I think this year will be very different there will be bigger expectations on me I love the way that I race with my swim background I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun I'm the person that everyone is chasing I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport, to delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. Welcome back to Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Brought to you in part by Roka. Find faster with Roka. And Meredith, they are cruising on this Roka swim course here this morning. Absolutely cruising. When we just saw Ben Canute, I actually think he could be close. He would, wishes he was a little closer. I think he it was a little far to catch a little bit of an advantage. So I think he needs to make some decisions in this moment. Like, hey, I need to hustle up and get in his draft. It'd be easier if he did that. He was a little far, further uh, than he'd probably like right now. Yeah, and, and, and this is the thing. There's a great, great shot from uh, our guys down on course getting that uh, chase group so that shows you great pan shot of how far that mm -hmm. gap is and and honestly a, maybe a bigger group than i expected yeah. uh, to see there meredith i did see that white cap of uh, christian hogenhog i believe yes. was in there uh, but i didn't notice quickly uh the other any other cap colors that were in there and those are some of our pre-race favorites but big thing is pretty substantial gap pretty substantial and like a skipper and a long they're they're trying to just stay as close as they can because yep. they know they're going to get on the bike course and they're going to have to hustle to catch up with these two up here right yeah uh, so and do you see and and once again so smooth but now see ben is kind of getting in in yep. the zone and i think that's so smart of him he's probably like you know again unknown territory he's probably talking to himself so much right now like i gotta hustle i gotta get in this draft oh and then when he gets there whew, that was smart yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure and it's one of those things that you know ben again you know he might have had a plan going into this race sure. okay he knows he's a strong swimmer okay mm -hmm. am i going to be the the one who's leading i can you know dose out my energy as much as i want and here we are surprised by him being in second place, but right. you know just as well as I do, Ben yes. probably knows exactly who this person is yes. and is not necessarily surprised that he's got someone to swim with this morning. Absolutely. You know, people say, oh, I never research or do anything for a weight race, but it's actually smart if you do. I bet Ben did his due diligence and yeah. was like, you know what? I'm going to line up next to this guy because he's fast. Yeah, and this overhead shot is great too because so it good. shows that Ben actually isn't like directly right. behind that athlete. So, man, I, I'm really... Meredith, I mean, mm -hmm. I think the swim time is going to be under that 48, yes. just as fast as they're swimming. And I mean, they're only 18 minutes in and right. that visual gap that we had on that second group was pretty huge. And hopefully we'll get a uh, sight of them on this overhead shot as well, just to show. But my looking at that, that looked over 100 meters. Yes. And as you know, as well as I do, that yep. generally that gap in the first half. Yep just all it does is expand in the second It's half. only going to get more and more. Yeah. And another benefit that Ben is doing is he's not touching the feet of the gentleman in front. 
I give them kudos to that because that's hard when you're leading a swim and someone's tapping at your feet the whole time. So Ben, I, it, it looks from this view, I'm not saying he's, he's not getting dropped, but I mean, he's definitely working to try to stay up with him. Yeah, and that's a good point, actually, because mm-hmm. I think Ben is an athlete that's used to, to swimming mm-hmm. in the front and Always. he's used to people touching his feet. Correct. There's a Correct. chance. And Ben is the personality <laughs> that he would be like, you know what? That's annoying. I'm not yes. going to do that. Yes. Well, and I know me, I never want to do that. So I'll like swim like crossways just not to touch the feet of, it, it's kind of like common courtesy in, in the Ironman world. Whereas where Ben comes from, Olympic, yeah. it's probably, they're all over the place it's, in that one. <laughs> I will say it's commonly uncommon right. uh, uh, courtesy for sure. We'd like to see it more, but it is, it's funny. It is unnerving, right? Like right. you're trying to get in your own rhythm and, and a lot of what we have in uh, triathlon is you're in your own space, you're yes. doing as best as you can. And in this situation, you can literally have like, it's contact, mm-hmm. right? Like you're right. actually getting, you're you're setting in your rhythm and then yep. every third stroke somebody's hitting you, that throws you off your game a little bit. No, absolutely. And he wants to swim with someone right now, Ben does. He's yeah. like, I don't want to be, you're, I'm in no man's land if I drop off of this. So he's going to do what he can to stay, stay, keep this gentleman in his vision, in his sights. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, again, I think, in the end, he's going to be stoked because it's giving him yes. uh, a time where he doesn't have to make any decisions. No. His only decision is, I got to stay with this person as long as I can. Where Lauren Brandon, she's, mm-hmm. okay, she has to cite. Yes. <laughs> she has to uh, decide what effort she's going to do. She has to maybe, if she wants to look over her shoulder tactically, like she's in control of everything. Where right now, Ben is just like, one, two, one, one two, two, one, just, two, just swimming. Just let let him guide the way. And yeah, Lauren, you know, she breathes every stroke. She's staying calm. And she, I don't even think she ever looks back because she knows I'm just going to hustle and get to the finish of the swim and get on my bike. But... <sighs> Man, it's so fun. It, it, it's hard for me. It, like, it almost, right. it looks like Ben's right. getting dropped. I know. Like, he is it that does. uncomfortable does. distance where, like, right, so right now, right. Ben is not getting an advantage. Right. 100% so not. That either means mm-hmm. he's slowly getting dropped mm-hmm. or he actually is, opposed to what kind of we're saying, right. very comfortable right. and is swimming this pace and not worried about it. But right now, Ben is, you know, if you're getting 20% draft, yes. if you're on someone's feet, he's getting 3% or 5% right now. Right. And he could be in that situation, like I said, where he's like, wait, this is not good for me. I'm going above my threshold right now. And we still have another 25 minutes arbitrarily to go. Right. And so he's just he might even be like, all right, can I keep them in my sights? I I often see his cadence go up of his arms to maybe try to get in the pocket. Yeah. And then he's like, wait, that just made my heart rate jump you know so it does you're right in this angle it looks like he right now he is not getting any benefit yeah in the position he's in right now so maybe his goal right now is like i just want to keep it so i can see this guy yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and you can see like he's you can see the kind of white turbulence from both yes. those athletes and it does extend uh to ben and, that, and that's kind right. of what we're talking about that white turbulence is what's affecting him maybe getting an advantage or not and he's right he's right on yeah. the kind of the edge of that right um you know i'd say when his arms fully extended yeah. he's still two feet behind the athlete in front of him where that overhead shot was it was more than that and he was to the side right. so it's like uh like i said either ben is working hard as mm-hmm. you said those yep. quick turnover to get back on there or he's quite comfortable and just like using this gentleman more as a, yes. a, a reason to not have to cite right and he's just like you know what this is good for me i'm gonna just sit in here as much as i can because i know we all know ben is like the fastest transitioner too he is. and he's like you know even if he gets out arbitrarily 30 seconds down he might catch that that gentleman in transition and go. So he's not stressing. He he has been told probably 100 times that it's a long day out there. Anything can happen. There's highs, there's lows, there's dark pockets, there's great pockets where you feel amazing. Uh, even in a swim, right? Even in a 47-minute swim, you can have pockets of feeling amazing and then pockets where I don't feel so hot, so I'm going to just settle in and chill a minute. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, Lauren Brandon, Yep. Much easier for her to, you know, easier, big air yes. quotes around easier. But uh, she definitely uh, has has the ability to, to have that pace and, and kind of set it. Uh, but right now we're looking at uh, pretty confident that our leader mm-hmm. right now is Andrew Horsfall Turner. Uh, so we're, we're about 90 percent sure. Again, it's uh, we've got a lot of uh, people mm-hmm. on a boat squinting their eyes as best right. they can to right. get that number. So right now, uh, that is who uh, we, we think is in the lead there. And he's from uh, the United Kingdom. Oh, it's okay. Perfect. Um, good shot. 
That is a great shot. I wanted to say, you can see, this is classic Tempe Town Lake where it's not quite glassy like right now. There's a little, when I say chop, that's very minimal. It's just from like being so narrow. It's just like, there's a little bit of a ruffle. And so people are mindful of that. And, and when they make the turn to go back, they'll get a little bit more of that. And they just have to like, you know, I, I always try not to swallow the water, right? Just like be mindful of that. And, and so you're, you know, not worried about that on the bike. There's yeah. been many times I've swallowed way too much in races and then I'm, you know, puking the first, you know, 20 miles of the bike. But uh, yeah, this gentleman knows Andrew, knows what's happening. And look, Ben, he, see, he's keeping tabs. He's shimmying right back up to that pocket because yep. um, he's like, wait, it's easier up here. <laughs> uh, well, you know, looking at uh, Andrew's results, yes. uh, we know that uh, he had a good race in Ironman Wales, fifth yes. place uh, this year, 44-28. 44. And yes. And I, I will say that swim looked like it was quick because Joe yes. Skipper was under 50 minutes. Yes. Um, okay. So, okay. Yeah. so Joe, we normally I'd expect Joe if I'm, I'm just yeah. saying he's a 55 yeah. minute swimmer, generally sometimes 53 and always very dependent on the group. So, but uh, we've seen 21 minute half swims yep. uh, from Andrew 22. So he's certainly very, very quick. Uh, again, Ben's happy to have him, but I think they're, they're setting themselves up or Andrew's setting them up uh, for kind of that 47, 48 right. swim. Well, if he's done a four, again, as we know, every course is different, but this sure. is a fast swim. So maybe, maybe they'll surprise us and be even faster. They sure look like it. And look at this. What's happened. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. What is going on here? Uh, so uh, maybe he, decided, you know what? I'm not going to lead this whole thing. Yeah, his head I'm was gonna, down. I yeah. almost wish we could get another shot of that. I was uh, looking oh, away for a second. Maybe he's cramping. He's doing some backstroke, taking a look. Oh, no. He yeah. might have decided, you know what? I'm going to sit in a little bit. It's cold. I yeah, want to just chill. Yeah, missed that. Maybe uh, yeah. ben, ben touched the feet and he uh, he turned <laughs> he turned back and uh, wanted Ben to, to get over. And, it, you know, it's very rare to see that in that uh, situation where an athlete just completely right. pulls over to the side. Right. You'll often see that athlete do a couple breaststroke strokes first, yep. uh, not breaststroke, sorry, backstroke strokes first, and then, you know, move to the side and slowly like kind of allude to the fact that they right. want someone to come by, not necessarily right. stop, but it might've been, you know, Andrew might've thought this whole time he was on his own. Absolutely. And then he realized, oh, wait, I'm not. And by the way, what's probably really annoying Ben right now is this cap, <laughs> yeah, it's so right? It's so weird. And there's like not much you can do if, unless you stop and pull it down over your ears. Yeah. But he probably just wishes it would just come off. Yeah. And it's, and it's possible that's what Andrew <laughs> did. Again, we didn't really get, uh, I yes. didn't get a good shot or sight of that uh, in the moment. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like he just so wants annoying. it to come up. Oh, well, yeah. and what I was telling you earlier too, when I've been in this race is, you know, it, it Andrew could have cramped. I remember racing this with Leanne Cave, who ended up winning. So we joke like, hey, I, stop I stopped for her. I'm like, what's wrong? We were swimming just like this. And she stopped. And she's like, I got a cramp, Mare. Go, get ahead of me. And I'm, I'm just like, are you okay? It's just sometimes colder water can, for me, it's hot water. It makes me cramp. But colder water for some athletes uh, can understandably make them cramp. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know different different strokes for different folks. Right. Um, <laughs> for me, that cold water definitely was uh, was an issue for sure. <laughs> but uh, right now, Ben Canute back in the lead uh, in front of Andrew, who's again set a great pace so far here this morning, Meredith. He really did, and now he's going to sit in for a little bit, and maybe at that you know make the turn, he'll go back up ahead. There we go. And the, the 20, 27 minutes now into the swim, our men. Uh, here at the BioStarks Ironman Arizona, part okay. of the VinFast Ironman Good. United States series. Let's and, uh, you know, probably about 20 minutes to go. And the women mm -hmm. uh, just five minutes behind at this point, uh, kind of in their journey around this course. Yes. And I, these guys have no one behind them that, I, that we can see okay. in our sites. So they're getting, and, and as you can see, Andrew's realizing actually I'm faster so yeah. I'm going to keep I'm going to go around Ben so now he's going to you know they're going to switch it up or maybe they're going to swim side by side there there's no set thing that they're doing right now they're kind of just making their way through this course no absolutely just uh, just getting around it not much to do uh, but right now Andrew taking that taking that turn uh, over uh, ben Canute at this point uh, here at uh, Ironman Arizona. Another Ironman to keep your eye out for is Ironman Coeur d'Alene. Also part of the VinFast Ironman North American Series, you'll exchange ease for beauty. Average for iconic, in 2023, we celebrate 20 years of racing in Coeur d'Alene. 
Come swim in pristine Lake Coeur d'Alene, ride through scenic Idaho terrain, and run through town culminating in one of the most festive finish lines on the circuit. Escape to one of the best kept secrets in the Pacific Northwest. Register for Ironman Coeur d'Alene today at Ironman. Com. And I will agree that finish line is uh, one that is uh, etched in my memory for sure. I love Coeur d'Alene. I would do that every year as well. It's such a good race. Yes, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's one of the best here. And look at that gap, Meredith, yes. as they go around. And, yep. you know, I'm not seeing either of those athletes look to their right, but nope. they've got a buoy yep. and a half yep. from them to second, to second place. Right. And what I realized that Andrew just probably did is he went ahead when they were ready to turn because there's so much, you know, advantages of getting a good turn right at the buoy line. Yeah. Um, so, and, it, and he even got a little fr- more than two, three body lengths ahead of Ben by doing that, kind of speeding up before that turn. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, both these athletes now taking taking those turns. It's funny to me, though, yeah, Ben, you know, just his, mm-hmm. the way he gets on someone's feet is not really being <laughs> on their feet. He likes to no. not worry about maybe that turbulence and have the ability to, to keep an eye on where that athlete is. If you're a little further back, yeah. it's easier. If you're not necessarily trusting how mm-hmm. that person is sighting, right. you can keep an eye on it a little better if you're further back. But right. uh, interesting to see Ben uh, always given a little a little bit more of an advantage to that athlete in front of him. Right, and the, this this course is definitely easy easier sighting where you can really see everything. And the bridges alone yeah. are your are your like iconic point that you see that you're like, all right, once I get to that bridge, I only have a thousand meters to the finish or whatever it is. And so that's probably what Ben's thinking right now. And he's doing a good job. I mean, he's holding his own, but he's just trying to keep it in sight. And do you see how Andrew takes the turn so? And so did Ben, right on the on the uh, buoy, just to get that advantage. Yeah, for sure. And you can see in the background mm-hmm. the athletes not quite uh, to that buoy behind them. And and I was going to say they'll mm-hmm. see that. Yes. But they actually won't see that because nope. the athletes are so, so far, far away. They might see the like the obviously our camera sure. is in a boat, uh, so they'll be able to see uh, the boat. But just uh, you know the fact that they're not going to be able to see the splashes and the strokes of those athletes is mentally you're like oh man we're getting owned right now absolutely and and they're happy they're like sweet it's just the two of us up here we've got time and they're loving that right now as is lauren brandon right she's like she doesn't even realize it because i don't think she ever looks back she just goes (laughs) she she just like goes and and she's already catching up as you see here with uh uh you know pro men (laughs) that's how fast she's going that is too funny yeah not not a huge surprise to see her catching uh the pro men but yeah that's a five minute uh, deficit that mm-hmm. she's made up just in about halfway through. So she's actually catching and passing a men's group here at this point, which, you know, again, not surprising. We've seen, mm-hmm. I've seen Meredith catch the main group, oh, like the lead group in a men's race before starting, I think two minutes behind. But, uh, so yeah, she's just <laughs> cruising just, by and you'll see these, cranking. you'll see these guys try to get on her feet too. Not wise. Not wise. Yeah. <laughs> not wise. That's awesome. But yeah. So tell us a little bit about Meredith. Why? Lauren's stroke just mm-hmm. looks so amazing, so different. What sure. is it? You see how she places it in the 11 and the 2, like if you're looking at a clock, like she has a wide place of her um, hands into the water, and that gives her more power and grace in her stroke. It's so good. I could watch it all day. Uh, I, I could as well, and we're going to have a lot more opportunity uh, today to watch Lauren Brandon's stroke. This limited edition Breitling Endurance Pro Watch has been made in honor of the 2022 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship presented by Utah Sports Commission. The unique event theme, Legends Rising, is brought to life with a striking orange strap and colorful M dot on the face and the Ironman 70.3 World Championship etching on the back case. Each watch is limited to 200 pieces, so act fast and order yours today on ironmanstore.com.
And there we go. We're back with Lauren Brandon, our women's leader. No surprise in that gold cap and that perfect stroke. I mean, really, she does it right. And, and I, I've always wanted to emulate her. And she does a lot for the triathlon community. She always is giving tips on how to swim yeah. and how to swim well. I, as her colleague and a person who I get the privilege of racing with her, I literally am like, what did Lauren say today <laughs> on the swim? Like, I learned the goggle trick from her. Yeah. Um, I think she told me to just, like, about the placement of hands and how she kicks just so ever so gently. It's just so smooth and easy. And that's why she's as good as she is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Lauren's coming off, you know, she, she didn't have the race that she wanted uh, in Ironman uh, Hawaii, the Vinfast right. Ironman World Championships. And so she's now here in Arizona trying to, you know, maybe get that uh, qualifying spot for next year. We got two spots for the men, two for the women yep. uh, for a world championship. And she... You know, tell us, tell mm -hmm. us about like logistically. Yes. You know, Lauren didn't go into October thinking most likely I'm racing Ironman Arizona. Right. What is it that the athlete has to like debate mm -hmm. or uh, decide sure. when deciding to? Okay, I've got enough fitness. I'm going right. to try again. Well, a lot of times, and you'll see here with Sarah True also joining. Yeah. Is that what happens? Is you're in like peak fitness for Kona, right? I, and I, I will dwell on myself too. I've been in there so many times, and. I'm not kidding that you just are in peak fitness for Kona. Yeah. You're ready to go and then you go out there and you're so in shape and so ready and then you don't have the race that you're capable of and you're like, oh no, I am not going to make this go to waste. And they're, you're like, perfect, check. Yeah. Ironman Arizona is four to five weeks away. And I've thought about that as I've been walking the Queen K. Yeah, <laughs> I've for been sure. like, you know what? I'm going to parlay this into Ironman Arizona. And then you have, you can, it's amazing this sport, as you well know, Matt. You can have the most horrific race of your life and then segue and have a magical race that you knew you were capable of. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, uh, you know, you've got to be able to, mm -hmm. to have a good mindset and like right. maybe have uh, some people that are helping with, right. with you and communicate that, mm -hmm. that, you know, Sarah True and Lauren Brandon, yes. you know, did have, quote unquote, bad races in Kona. Right. That's just... Both right. of them would say that and admit that. I mean, Sarah not finishing because she was ill. Right. Uh, Lauren finishing pretty far back uh, and certainly behind where she was. But they both know that that was just some days right. you don't have it. And, and right. you, the athlete that they were confident going into Kona that they were going to have a good performance, right. that shouldn't really change after right. you have that bad performance. 100%. And what I love most about Lauren is her, what we can control, right, is our attitude. You could easily dwell, right. right, when you have a DNF or a terrible race, whatever it is. We all have done it before. And, you know, you hear people say, I'm going to give it 24 hours. But some people give it, you know, five minutes and other people take weeks for it to get over, whatever your way. But what I do love about Lauren is that she always has the positive mindset of like, all right, well, and sh you see it in her posts is just, you know, that was not a good race for me. I didn't feel well. I didn't do well. Uh, it wasn't great. And now I'm going to go for it on the next race. And now here she is. Kona didn't go well for me. Boom. I'm here in Ironman, Arizona. And that one will most likely go well for me. Yeah, for sure. And the timing of it is, yes. you know, you can... If you're like Lauren and you did yes. finish the entire race, or even if right. you're Sarah and you were sick, so yes. you have to recover from that, you have a week or two to recover. Right. You have a couple weeks to put some training in, yep. and then you have time to taper. And you don't have to do an excessive, in my opinion, excessive amount of volume in that five weeks. It's just like recover and then drip feed some intensity back in and then kind of lower it again, taper into the, to the race. And isn't it funny, Matt, that like literally the hardest part of getting to a race is to be happy, healthy, yeah. and with your chi intact. <laughs> like, like if you've done that, like you've already won, right? And yeah. poor Sarah and Kona, right? Didn't, you know, sick, battling the cold, whatever it is. It stinks when that happens. Like half the battle is getting to the start line healthy. Yeah, for sure. And right now we got a shot of Ben Canute and yes. uh, our leader. And again, it's, you know, right now, if it was anybody but Ben Canute, mm -hmm. we would 100% say this athlete is dropped. Yes. And, and I will still say, it, yes. I, I feel like Ben maybe is dropped at this point. Uh, but generally, Ben's an athlete that can get back on the feet. Mm -hmm. And he's shown already today that he's not necessarily depending on that draft from Andrew Horsfall Turner. Right. Uh, but right now, that is not a group of two. That's two athletes swimming on, on their own. Absolutely. And now Ben might get to the point, well, I hustled the first 37 minutes of this race, right. so I think I need to take a chill pill right now and just relax into this finish because they know they have maybe whatever. I, I think uh, yes. they're going to definitely be sub 48. They're looking really good, but yeah. uh, 
I have 10 more minutes of this race. I'm going to get my ducks in a row, literally, yep. and I'm going to just think about, right now, athletes, even as they start to see the finish line, what are we thinking about most, right? Okay, visualizing, what am I going to do in transition? What do I need? Uh, let's get, do I need my gloves? Do I need my, I need my, my helmet, my sunglasses? Boom, I'm out of there. And Ben, because he can, I've seen that kid transition so fast. He's probably yeah. like, I just need to get my ducks in a row. I'm going to let this guy go. I'm going to bring my heart rate down. I'm going to relax into this finish and then I'm going to hustle. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I think right now my, my question is how, how much mm -hmm. uh, does athlete and lead uh, here, Andrew Horsfall Turner, how yes. much does he want to win the swim? And it looks like yes. a lot. And yeah. And then I would, would ask, mm -hmm. is that a smart tactic for an <laughs> athlete that's, you know, been, been fifth in an Ironman, which is a great, great result, um, you know, kind of new uh, to the Ironman and 70.3 scene. Mm -hmm. Like, is that the best tactic? Mm -hmm. Like, is, is he trying to get time so that when that chase group gets him, he's going to be able to, to sit in and, and maybe be in that, that second group? Because I think if Ben is attacking this bike course, no disrespect to, right. to Andrew Horsfall Turner, but he hasn't no. shown that he can ride with an athlete like Ben. Right. I think he actually, we got in his, like, in his head in the swim. I think halfway through when you saw him stop, he was like, wait, maybe I shouldn't be leading this all the time right now. Maybe I should just sit in. And then he got in and sat in and he was like, wait, no, I'm going to go. <laughs> and he's probably now like, all right, I'm almost done. I've got eight minutes to go. I can almost smell the finish line of the swim. I'm going to hustle. Yeah. And then I'm going to get as much lead as I can. And then I can regroup before for if a pack comes, then I can try to stick with them on the beeline. Yeah, for sure. I think that's I think that's smart. But right now, Ben Canute mm -hmm. is dropped uh, from mm -hmm. Andrew Horsfall Turner, and we'll see what that gap is here. A little less than probably ten minutes to go in our swim, but let's see what happens on the other side of this commercial break. back here in Tempe Town Lake uh, with our leader, Andrew Horsfall Turner. Uh, he's got a gap now, and no question right. now, uh, Meredith, that mm -hmm. Ben has is, Ben is dropped and uh, Andrew has control of the swim. Yeah, Andrew's in control. He was like, I'm going to hustle ahead. And now that's a good gap. That's now officially, yeah. uh, you know, it looks to me at least 25 meters uh, just from my view here in the studio. But I'm just saying, he's now like, I'm going to go. And Ben's like, I'm going to chill. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in two different mm, schools of thought right now. And, and neither one is wrong or right. It's you do you and they're doing them. And I give Ben credit, you know, his first Ironman, his first 2.4 yeah. mile swim. He's like, you know what? I can't go that fast that long right now so i need to like save my biscuits for for a 112 mile run or excuse me bike thank yeah. goodness and a 26.2 mile run yeah for sure and i think you know we were talking earlier about ben you know having to make less decisions when he's swimming with another athlete yeah but it can also be distracting so now that ben's right. quote-unquote dropped or not quote-unquote he yeah. is dropped yeah uh he can set his own tempo and he can be thinking now back to his race plan. Okay, I'm yep. gonna get, sure. I'm gonna get out of the water. I'm gonna do yep. this. I'm gonna do this. Where when you're trying to keep up with someone and be like, where are they? Have they gone a little left? Have they gone right? You, right. you can't really process that stuff and go through kind of your race mantra or whatever right. it is that's keeping you on track. And I think now Ben and an athlete like Lauren on her yeah. own, yeah. they can be thinking about other things. A hundred percent. It's funny to like go in, you wish you could almost record your mindset during things. Like <laughs> I don't right want now. that recording. No, exactly. <laughs> because right now, I, was, I mean, there's so many thoughts going in. Like even Ben is probably like, 
oh, I need to stay on his feet. Oh, I wonder what Bri- Briella, his almost two-year-old daughter, is doing. You know, like you just have like this litany of like yeah. thoughts. Uh, and then like Lauren right now is probably like, all right, I don't, even in her breath, she can see she has a long lead in front of the, the next next pack. Mm-hmm. And so she's just like, you know what? I'm thinking about what I'm going to do here and how hard I need to ride because these girls are going to come and they're going to come fast. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, what, you know, we talk about race tactics and Lauren yeah. certainly uh, has the ability just every time she mm-hmm. gets in the water, she knows she's going to most likely have a lead of some sort. Yep. It can be a, a big one. It can be, you know, not as big depending on the class of the field. Right. But she then knows, okay, now she needs to see who's the Who's the fastest cyclist? How much time do yeah. I have to settle in? Right. Or, you know, do I want to be aggressive and try mm-hmm. to go away? Generally, she doesn't have necessarily that tactic. She's not right. sitting up and waiting. Right. But, you know, if her right. goal watts are, this is a totally mm-hmm. random number, mm-hmm. but if her goal watts are 250 for the Ironman, sure. maybe she's going 220 or 230. Right. And then that way, if she has to go above that 250 right. when the athletes catch her, right. she has the, the gas to do it. Right. Well, what I'm thinking too is we all know she's also been first off the bike many times. She also knows, sure. gosh, I need to run a marathon. And that's of the three, that's, I'm not saying she's not a good runner. She yeah. is a very good runner, but that's her weaker of the three. And so if I were her, I'd be like, I'm going to hustle and I'm going to get as far a lead as I can. And if I have, you know, eight minute lead coming out of the swim, that's awesome, (laughs) you know? And so I'm gonna, it it actually will give her energy to even go like, kind of, like you said, if arbitrarily 250 watts, maybe I'm going 245, all right, that's cool for this solid, you know, three loop bike course. And so I think that's where her mind is right now. She knows she's far ahead right now. She's got to, like you can't, in that, in that lake doesn't hide anything because it's so narrow. She can, you can kind of feel when people are near or not. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, she, she has the ability, obviously, you know, the, kind of those pre-race papers yeah. we were talking about, yes. uh, Sky Monch, Sarah True, mm-hmm. but, you know, she, you know, she'll be like, okay, so am I going to get two minutes on Sarah right. and four on Sky? But then she's also thinking if she's, her goal is maybe a podium, right? she's thinking, okay, Danielle Lewis, yeah. you know, I want eight or nine or 10. And then because she knows that Danielle's probably going to run mm-hmm. eight or nine or 10 yes. and it's faster than her. Yes. Right? So it's like, right. she gets this time early. Right. She might not use it till the last six miles of the That's run. That's so true. And obviously Danielle can really bike, right? Yeah. So the bike runner and the duathlete and Danielle is going to shine on a course like this. But her deficit also might be, like you said, 10, 12, 13 minutes coming out of the swim because Lauren's going so fast. Yeah. And that's that's what Lauren's thinking about too. Ugh, I've, I've thought about, ugh, I have we have all these runners coming, all these cyclists and runners are coming. And this is a fast bike run course. So that means the fast runners can go even faster. Yeah, they absolutely can. And I I think, you know, there's so many different, you know, we talk about tactics, there's so many different ways to, uh, you know, try to play it. But in the end, the athletes also (laughs) just have to try to swim, bike and run as fast as they can. It's so true. Like, you know, it's hard to, I guess in in an Ironman distance, right, you are trying to pace a little bit more than you would say. Like I always say in a 70.3, you're going for broke. You're all out and you just have to go and hustle and wherever the cards fall, they fall. In Ironman, you can't burn your biscuits too soon. And that's what I think as we get to the swim finish for the men right now, I think, you know, Andrew could have burned a little, but he, I mean, he really had a solid swim. I mean, you called it 47, between 47, 48 minutes. That's exactly what he's going to be. And Ben, he's already getting out. See? And there you go. He's getting out and uh, going up that swim ramp, high knees as he's in that shallow water uh, running up. And, you know, he's going to look over his shoulder, see what that gap is on uh, Ben Canute. Uh, But our leader, Andrew Horsball Turner, going around that right turn after the uh, Roca uh, swim banner. And a long grass run uh, to get to transition. Some pretty lengthy transitions here. So, you know, to your point earlier, Meredith, Mm -hmm. you might actually see uh, Ben Canute, who's just getting out of the water as well. You might Mm -hmm. see him bridge up to our leader, even in this transition. Absolutely. And that God love the grass. Like the grass is key. It doesn't hurt your feet as much. And yeah. I can see Ben Canute just like doing his solid, perfect running form sprint on Absolutely. that section to try to catch, you know, it's hard. They're trying to take their wetsuits off. They're trying to, you know, get, it's a long transition. See, they're just by, I mean, they, they have a ways to go. Yeah. And then there's Ben. Is that Ben? 
Is no, that, that's, no, that's Andrew. Andrew. Yep. Still running. He looks like he's running solidly too because um, he knows. He's like, well, I got this far. I'm going to keep this lead and, and keep my heart, well, keeping your heart rate down. And you do. You have to, right? Well, you just got out of the water. You have to like concentrate on that. I've slipped. I've slipped. I've fallen in transition. So they're focused on that too. And they're just following the, the black line there to get to transition as fast as they can. And you can see him him running pretty aggressively. Yeah, uh, he you know, he's he's definitely getting after it. I think he, he might even have a dinner a different yes. internal dialogue than Ben Canute mm-hmm. in being Ben is he's a racer. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think the the thing that could hurt Ben over Iron Man, and he's smart enough to know this, mm-hmm. is that he's gonna wanna race the whole time. Right. And he right. probably in his head right now is like, chill, yes. dude, chill. You've got this much <laughs> longer. I guarantee long. you he's saying something like that, right? Right. And uh, so v- two very different kind of mindsets going in. We're clearly looking at the way uh, our leader is running. He is being aggressive. He wants to get on this bike ride first. Right. And he's finding his bag. That's always the hardest part. Like get the bag, get to the tent. What's nice in Ironman racing, you have a civilized, you know, you can sit down. <laughs> I shoot, I sit down, put on my everything. Yeah. And that's probably what he's doing. And, and, and as you see, Ben is not too far back there and because nope. he's running really fast to his bag. I think they're going to be in the tent. Uh, I think they'll come out pretty close to each other uh, coming through transition here to start. And, and that's exactly what Ben wanted to do for sure. Yeah, no, I think they will. And, you know, it, it'll be a quick transition. Mm-hmm. I think last night some athletes were a little bit nervous. You know, forecast yep. showed, you know, mid-40s that maybe yeah. they were going to put yes. some gloves on to that sort of thing. But I think especially after St. George, you're not going to see yes. athletes putting too much on as we see uh, Andrew still getting uh, some stuff out of his bag as he runs through transition. He has his helmet on. Uh, yep. He's going to run uh, all the way through and then drop his bag. Uh, most likely it looks like he's going to drop his bag at the bike uh, unless he discards it uh, prior to that, but uh, looks like he's rolling through. But no Ben in sight right now, but I don't think Ben's going to be too worried about that. But Meredith, as yes. as we uh, talk about that, we have our chase group getting out of the swim as well. We got uh, Simon Shi in 50 uh, minutes, so about three minutes behind. Ruben Zipunkt, uh in that group as well with uh, Christian Hogenhog, uh, Hilker, uh, Ruder, uh, and Matt Hansen ha- has made that group as well as Dory and Mantel. So for me, yes. you might have heard my inflection. Yep. But Hansen in that yeah. first chase group, like I'm yes. double checking to make sure that that's, that's right. Matt Three Hansen. minutes. That's it. That is the best swim I've ever seen ever. Matt have. That is huge that he is, yes, exactly three minutes. As we know, his his he shines on the well on the bike too, but he runs like a gazelle. So like being three minutes. Usually he's catching up, right, on the bike yeah. run. And now he's three minutes from the lead, golden. And who's right there behind him? Joe Skipper. Is it? Yes. These guys are blowing my mind, oh, honestly. Perfect. And, you know, a name I, I haven't seen, and we'll have to see if he actually started or not, but I'm not mm-hmm. seeing uh, Justin Metzler mm-hmm. in that. And mm-hmm. to me, that's a, a, sh- yes. a shocking if he's not right. uh, with or in front of those athletes. So we'll get an update on that as soon as we can. Ben Canute struggling a little bit uh, with his helmet uh, as he gets on there as our leader is already out on the course. So Ben's lost a little bit of time uh, in transition, but yes. uh, Ben Canute getting uh, onto our full gas bike course here. Uh, but yeah, again, for me, three minutes. If you asked me yesterday mm-hmm. what the gap would mm-hmm. be to Skipper specifically yep. and, and, and Hanson, I would have said at best yes. five minutes, at but best. probably more than that. And right now, Adam Faye comes through at 51.48 and Sam Long at 51.49 with Kevin Collington and oh, Engelhardt. Good so, swim. Man, yes. these, the athletes that were quote unquote bad swimmers yes. uh, compared to an athlete like Ben Canute are having phenomenal swims. Phenomenal swims. And, you know, I think Ben was slower in transition because he opted, and I think it's smart. He put on gloves. He did, And okay. I think yep. that's smart for this because it can get cold uh, out there on this. Even though it's 55 or whatever, it'll it's cold to start. And I always, you know, put on gloves that you can throw, right? Just throw them at the aid station uh, if you get too hot. But to start and keeping your hands warm, and that's probably Ben having just done so well at, at you know, 70.3 worlds, he was probably like, I don't want to be cold like that. It's yeah. not that cold, but I'm still going to wear gloves. And he can chuck the chuck those at, at, at the next aid station if he gets warm. But that's why I think his transition was slow as he took that time. And I think it will pay off. I do. Well, and he knows these conditions better than anybody. He yes. lives right down the street. Yes. So he knows this desert. In the morning, it can be a little bit chilly. And, you know, he's checking in. He's like, man, how many times have I left for a bike ride right. at 730 in, this... in the morning without gloves exactly. on? Exactly. Never. Right? Never. So I'm going to do it. And like, what is nuts? is like, 
like Kyle Buckingham. All of them are within the f- under five minutes from the lead. I think this is going to be a crazy bike. Crazy bike. And to me, what, what stands out to me is that it's not, we, we know this is a fast swim course. So we could say, okay, these guys are close because it's a fast swim course. But no, I think Joe Skipper, Matt Hansen, and Sam Long have yep. all had the best swims maybe of their career because you see other athletes like Buckingham is a good swimmer. Mm-hmm. Kevin Tollington Kevin is a great that's swimmer. That's what I was just thinking. And yes. those athletes came out in front or with Kevin Collington. So amazing, amazing swim by these three. And I think what that means is they were all focused on what each other can do. And right. I think specifically like, dude, right. we got to keep it tight with Ben. We have no idea what Ben's going to do. No idea. And so given they're within, well within, you know, three, four minutes, they're set up for success. Sam Long definitely is licking his chops right now. He's like, oh, all that swim training paid off. <laughs> Man, I mean, I wish we had the, the camera yeah. of the swim exit. And yes. I think I would picture in my head Hanson seeing that yes. time and giving like a little fist bump or something because that's, I mean, that's that's huge for him. And he's huge. not a, ba- I, I, I think no. I used the word bad swimmer earlier. No, I didn't, no, no. Didn't mean that. I got Matt's, you. Yeah. Matt's a good swimmer, yes. but he's he's not a front pack swimmer. Right. And, and sure, two athletes came out in the front, but... Uh, but those mm-hmm. are kind of like an off the front pack where that Matt Hansen was in the quote unquote lead group or yes. main group. And that yes. we don't see that. We don't see that. And now he's going to have a way like less stressful time kind of catching to the front pack. I yep. think usually he's farther back and he still catches. And then on the run, we know he can catch even more. So now he's probably pumped. He could try to work off Sam Long. He could try to work off Joe Skipper. They'll all be in a group together, yep. I would think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, there might be some uh, some bombs thrown earlier because it is, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a bunch of fast runners in there. We got low 240 runners, yes. uh, 230, <laughs> mid 230 runners in Matt Hansen and Joe Skipper on the right day. So, you know, I don't even think you right. know, Sam Long's not going to be comfortable coming off the bike with them. Uh, ben Canute, I don't think, will be that comfortable coming off the bike with them. Uh Meredith, uh, news yes. from course, uh, yes. coach to the stars, Julie Dibbins uh, yes. texted and said, uh, Justin Metzler, unfortunately, was feeling uh, sick, almost flu-like Ugh. this morning. So no Justin See? Metzler at the start. So what that we it, discussed, yeah. you got it. Half the battle's getting there healthy. Well, he probably made the right call not to push. As we say, there's always another Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, there generally, it generally is. And it looks like we got an overhead shot of Lauren Brandon. Uh, she's going to catch one more uh, male pro uh, or just yes. catch before we get to the end of this swim here, this Roka swim course in Tempe Town Lake. But Lauren Brandon going to come out in about 50 one minutes and again that, and, and not yeah. to take away from lauren but no. that shows that those men uh-huh. had incredible swims for incredible them. swims and she swam by herself yeah right yeah, so sure. For imagine sure. if she had even like lucy charles or some they would have gone even faster i mean that's hard to swim by yourself and just go that fast totally and i don't say that to take no. away from lauren but i guarantee you if you asked those yes. three men if they were going to out swim lauren brandon yes. they would laugh at that question right right, right. A hundred percent. I'm just laughing at how calm she is. You see, <laughs> I'm literally, awesome. yeah. And of course, me, I would sit down. I'm the only pro that sits down. See, there's <laughs> wetsuit do. strippers. You do do it. You do. I would lay down and let them strip that sucker off yeah, me. I've, <laughs> I've, seen you. I've seen you do that a time or two. Uh, awesome. So yeah, Lauren Brandon yes. in and out of that swim here in Tebby Town Lake, 5108. So uh, good. Time for her. Yeah, and again, yeah. I think well pointed out that yeah. she had to do that all yeah. on her own. And she always does. Um, yep. but, uh, you know, showing that that swim course isn't, you know, extraordinarily mm-hmm. fast. Cause mm-hmm. I think she is going to have a, a decent gap on some, you know, you're talking Sarah Chu, Ayueda, some other fantastic swimmers that were Olympic yep. swimmers, like to be huge, in, you know, uh, Sarah was fourth place at yep. the Olympics in London to be yep. there. You are one of the best swimmers on the planet, let alone in triathlon. Right. Right, and it'll be so curious to see the gap. But do you see what Lauren's doing? It's almost giving me a pulsing headache doing it. (laughs) Like I, I, because she does it, I can't do it. I'm not skilled enough. She's putting on. She must not like. She must feel restricted to have her, you know, her kit rather underneath her wetsuit when she's swimming. So she opts to do this. And look how. You, you understand, it would have taken a village to get that on me. She oh. did it so gracefully, Yeah, and, <laughs> and it, it works for her. And athletes will make that choice yeah. sometimes depending on how long the transition is. So this yes. one's very long. Yes. And you'll see swimmers be a lot more sensitive to that right. shoulder restriction. Right. But I do think, and a lot of people overlook it, if there's time, I think she's right. making the right call because that, that suit is built yes. to be 
as aerodynamic as possible when you're tucked in a time trial position. Right. Which your shoulders are in the very opposite position right. as they are when your hand is above you trying to right. get an efficient swim stroke. So often athletes will feel that as they're moving their arm forward in the yes. quote-unquote recovery uh, portion of their swim stroke, they actually have to use more musculature to move right. forward where normally right. it kind of just happens. So uh, Lauren making sure she has that good feel of the water and, uh, you know, so again, smart. She's, she got, knows. she's got plenty of time. Right. Plenty and of time she, to do it. She's got like her bag. See how calm she was. She got it all together. And now she's like, I will take my cap off. I, will, I can like, <laughs> literally, I feel like I'm in her head and I'm already calm just watching her. Yeah. So it's amazing. awesome. And I see. Yeah, this is Sarah. This is Sarah True uh, coming yep, out up onto the, the ramp coming out. Oh, so she's a 53.49, right. so two minutes and 30 seconds-ish uh, behind our women's leader, Lauren Brandon. It looks like she has a pretty a decent yep. gap on the athlete behind, so we'll see what that gap is. But I, that gap doesn't surprise me. Nope. That's probably the most, like, an accurate gap. And Sarah also swam by on her own, and she was probably like, well, I'm not going to bust it to stay with Lauren. I'm going to just stay here. And remember, we saw her looking back, you know, she was trying to f see if who was with me. Okay, I'm solo mission. So I'm just going to cruise. Yeah, and she knows she I mean, she'll get a split here. She's only I mean, Lauren's not even on her bike yet. And Sarah's out of the water. So yeah. you just never know. And, and I can't tell you enough how mm -hmm. like Sarah True mm -hmm. is a ridiculously fast swimmer. And that was Ridiculous. a great that was yes. a great swim. Yes. Right. So that just shows you yes. the woman on screen is that uh, impressive of a swimmer. And Sky Monch has had yes. really good swims lately. And yes. she's been in that kind of front group. I think yep. Kona, she was in that like chase group. Such a and, good swim in Kona. And, and yeah. she's she's still not in yet. So that shows right. that Sarah True and Lauren Brandon are not messing around. The swim today for this women's race is yes. not a quote unquote warm up. This is no. part of the race and this is a big tactic. And these two women up front are are wanting to to make Sky work for it. Because in yep. the end, I think Sky is on yeah. paper, the favorite. Yep. If Sarah True heard me say that, yeah. she would smack me upside <laughs> yeah, the head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, because Sarah True, one hundred percent, should right. be as well. Uh, right. But you know, in the last few years, Sky's had more race days. Yep. Sarah, Sarah gave yep. birth and is uh, yes. you know on a journey uh, yes. in school and, and motherhood that's uh, taken her away from as many start lines. But Sky is the one that that's been just right. knocking at results door for the last right. two years. And that's what we talked about earlier with with Sky. Is I love how she has progressed so much in the sport now yeah. to be one of the best Americans on the circuit. And so yeah, she probably she might feel a little I don't love using that word, but a little pressure. She's like, wow, I I'm like you know the top dog for this race potentially. And these girls are going to put up a fight up front here. And I have no doubt once Sky does get out that she's going to go for it on the bike. And we know the bike is her strength. We'll see when she comes out. Yeah. And, and she is even more so when she gets these splits. Yeah. She's going to be like five-ish minutes behind yep. Lauren Brandon and three or so behind Sarah True. That is not where Sky wanted to be no, today. She, it's not. she wanted to be with Sarah. And it's hard when you're an athlete like Sky. Like I've said, she's mm -hmm. been able to get, and she's third out of the water right now at 56 minutes. So five oh, minutes bad. behind okay. uh, the leader and uh, just under three minutes behind uh, Sarah True. But Sky, she has good swims when she gets in a good group. Yes. Right? So yes. she's more exposed in a race today. So in the end, this was not a bad swim for her. Not a bad. She swam solo mission too. Isn't that crazy? The top three women all swam, coming out of the water, all swam solo. And yeah, and, and that shows you how well they're, right. they're each swimming on their own. Um, but again, not to say that Sky had a bad swim, no. but if there were three more athletes yes. that were around Sky's ability and she had a little group, she'd yes. be a minute closer. 100%. If, they, if she exposed. would have stayed, been able to stay with Sarah and worked off that, it might be the case where, like I said, if you don't get in that draft or like put in the effort to stay in there, it's really hard. Then, like you said, you can get dropped, right? And then once you're dropped even 20 meters, it's really hard to get that back. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, and that might have been this scenario of Sarah to Lauren and then Sky to Sarah. And so they were like, you know what? We're just all swimming solo. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing our own thing today. And I think that's, you know, maybe that's why yeah. uh, Sarah True had to take three or four looks over her shoulder sure. because it's just so strung out and still no other women uh, out of the water here at this point. Uh, but Lauren Brandon has gotten onto the full gas bike course. So uh, the bike is officially on uh, in our women's uh, pro race here, but uh, swim still certainly on for a majority of right, women's people. Right. And we thought it would be these three, right? Yeah. This is what we predicted. We we're like, you know, and, and 
look at Sarah True. She ended up putting on arm some warmers. arm warmers. She's got all warm. She knows it's, I mean, she's done this rodeo before. She does know that we've got a long day on that bike. Yeah, no, she, she absolutely does. And, uh, you know, this is an athlete. And, and triathlon, mm-hmm. our memory is, is short. Mm-hmm. Uh, it so is. we think, okay, well, whatever. Sarah True, and I'm being uh, facetious yeah. here, Sarah True has lost it. She had a bad race in right. Kona. Right. But, man, I mean, yep. she raced in Placid uh, yes. just a few months ago, which, you know, she's yes. got that same fitness or even more after a Kona build. And I believe it was a course record, but a nine hour uh, flat uh, at Lake Placid. And, you know, kind of dominated uh, that field over Heather Jackson wasn't wasn't too far behind right. uh, but you know a 304 run in Lake Placid yes that's you know she's got all the tools to win all this race tool. today she really does and and you know coming back from having her son and then crushing it at Eagle Man winning that and then like later in the summer doing the same thing at Lake Placid her confidence forget Kona Kona's a different beast but still yeah. she and to be to her credit, she didn't really get she didn't get to race Kona. She was sick, right? Yep. She she did, but she was like, I'm sick. I should maybe I shouldn't have started. Yep. Totally get that. So Kona's like a long lost memory. Now she should have the confidence big time, I would think, after her year of just crushing it on the circuit and now end the season here and maybe get your Kona slot for next year. Get another Ironman title on the year. That would be incredible. So she's like, All right, I'm gonna go for this and now she's got hundred and twelve miles to try to do it. Yeah, no, she does, and I think if, if I'm seeing that race number uh, correctly, that is uh, athlete Fabian Ruder, mm-hmm. uh, number 41. Um, I expect to see uh, our, our leaders out here as well, but I believe if this is Ruder, this is kind of our second group, uh, so we'll get a closer shot of that uh, there as well. It's possible uh, we got Andrew Horsfall as well. Obviously, he's going to be in that mix. He's n- bib number 47, so I could just be misreading that. This could be our male leader. We'll get a closer shot of that to be able to decide there, but um, a little bit of a gap. I do think I saw an right. athlete in the distance uh, behind there too, Meredith. Right. Well, what they're trying to do is get out to the B line. right? This is a three-loop bike course, and each loop can be different in weather. I remember, you know, having done this so many times, one loop is like, no wind. All right. The next loop, it's like a tundra of, of wind and all the things. So they're just trying to get out to the main road. And when they make that turnaround, they'll be able to see on that first lap for sure who's, how much deficit they have to the next person. And so you've been on this course many times, Meredith. Mm-hmm. Talk us through as we see this uh, map on the lower sure. right-hand side. So they're going to they're gonna shimmy out a transition and go through, like you're going to see a tons of fans. All the community comes out in Tempe, which is amazing. And they, they do a lot of technical tr- turns in the front end. And then once they get out there into the main part, they're, they're really striving. A couple 90-degree turns, whatever have you. And once they get out to the beeline, they're going to go just straight out on there. Yep. And it's usually... Um, cause it's it, by no means is it hilly. That's not what I mean, but there is a, a slight false flat getting out to the beeline and, and, and on the beeline. And once you make the turn, oh man, it regard you can fly back in half the time you, it takes to get out there. Yeah. And that's where you're going to see, uh, the really arrow riders and the really, um, ones that can just stay in that position for a long time. They're going to create a little bit more of a gap if they don't already. Uh, so yes, I've done this course and I know that every lap can be different. Different, and you have to be just focused on that and be prepared for it. Yeah. And as you get, you know, mile five feels a lot different when you're at mile 70, the third lap. So you have to be cognizant of that. And you also have to remember to, you know, you're in arrow a lot. And I, I know I'd set my timer just to like get out and stretch my back a little bit yeah. um, and just give myself that grace. And I always did that on, on the way out on the beeline because I knew once I okay. make that turn, I want to uh, be in arrow and get as much speed as I can. Yeah, very well said. I mean, I think people look at a three-lap course mm-hmm. like, okay, same yeah. lap three times, but right. you're saying those three laps are, are different every time. They're different every time, but it's also fun because you know the markers. You okay. like, you know where you need to go. You know where special. You know where personal needs is. Yeah. You know where um, you're going to see your people, your village out there, and it kind of gives it you know a lot of camaraderie out there. You see so many people, and because you're you know the pros are passing age groupers coming out, and you know you can just kind of you know go good luck you're doing great, and they do that to you, so you kind of feed off their energy, and that's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. As we see our women's leader Lauren Brandon, uh, first yes. out of the water, uh, fifty one oh eight. 
uh, through uh, that swim at Tempe Town Lake on our Roca swim course. So a great swim uh, from her and now pushing the pace early on the bike ride. And looking so good. What I love, so she's a slow cadence rider, yep. uh, like like myself, you'll see with Sky, And it'll be interesting, this course, because obviously they're all doing the same one. And with the different, you know, there's not much elevation change. Who decides to go at 80 plus RPM and who decides to stick with, you know, I know I, know I like 60 to 70. So you'll see a lot okay. of differences for sure. Yeah. No, you did definitely some differences there, and we'll see that. And, and yeah, I think you're right. I yeah. think Lauren does have kind of a little bit of that higher uh, RPM. I'm mm-hmm. not too worried mm-hmm. about uh, spending energy moving nope. those legs over. But here we go. We've got our Martin transition times. we got Andrew Horsfall Turner, the men's race here, went through in 317 with Matt Hansen going through in 323. And Ben Canute, 346, noted yeah. that Ben Ben took a little bit of time. Yep. But surprising to me to see Andrew Horsfall Turner run through there faster than uh, Hanson. That's pretty quick. And then our Morton's uh, transition times for the women. Lauren Brandon, 414. Sarah True, 441. And Sky Monch, 511. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Sky did in 5.11. She must have decided to stay warm, too, and put on a little more, you know, extra. But good for Andrew. He was probably like, you know what, I've gone this far. <laughs> I've gotten this much lead. Let me hustle and transition here, too, and, and do what I can to omit those other guys catching up with me uh, in a more timely manner. Uh, but, yeah, she's, she's, she's yeah. doing it, and she's doing it well, making sure. She, and, and this is mm-hmm. where it's silly, because yeah. I see that, and I'm like, there's... This, yeah. this is what all the amateurs and the age groupers and the pros yeah. need to look at is yes. that's a professional. She's less than five miles in. She's mm-hmm. making sure she's getting that hydration because most of right. us an hour swim as hard as you can. Yeah. You're usually at the pool, you're stopping and taking yeah. uh, some drinks and making sure, uh, you know, you can stay hydrated for the rest of the day. But uh, I'm going to go take a quick drink while we get this uh, commercial break and we'll get back to the early action on this full gas bike course. back with our women's leader, Lauren Brandon, here on the Full Gas Bike Course, uh, just kind of settling in, Meredith. Just settling in. And like you said, you know, you see how she has a straw, like, right in her face. <laughs> That's what I know. I prefer that. I mean, she must, she might put it down. I always would put mine down. Oh, it's more arrow if the straw's down. But most of the time, I had it right in my face, so I remembered to, like, hydrate. Sometimes with cooler temperatures, as you know, it's like, oh, I'm not thirsty. I don't need a drink. Well, let me tell you, do it now <laughs> so that come, you know, like 70 miles in, you didn't do it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And, and tell us a bit about, you know, for me, you know, I'm mm-hmm. talking to some athletes racing uh, mm-hmm. tomorrow and they're talking about cooler conditions yes. and hydration. Tell us the difference about, you know, hot races, we're drinking yep. all day. Cool yes. races, people don't. Well, and, and that's the mistake that we make if we don't in cooler races, right? So you still need your nutrition. You're still doing work. She still just swam a solid, solid swim and now has to get those calories back in and her flow. So sure, is your nutrition for a hot race a little different? You need a little more electrolytes, perhaps. Maybe you need a little more salt, whatever it is, whatever fits your body. As we know, everyone's different, but you still need to get those calories in based on what works for you in training, thus to parlay into racing. And so she, all the athletes here need to be mindful. And that's why I like that I see her drinking because it's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm totally fine. I just, I'll get it at the first aid station. Well, let me tell you, that's like mile 10. So that's like 20 some minutes in. You should start the fueling now. You've just, you have to fuel for what you just did. Well, she just did a solid swim. So it's time to get the KCALs in uh, now to prepare her so that at mile 60, 70, she's not like, I wish I would have done some nutrition at that beginning stage. Yeah, no, you got to make sure you get uh, 
get into it before you need it. Once you think you're hungry or thirsty, you're right. probably missed out, right? Yeah, then you're done. If you're ever thirsty or you maybe it is, you don't have to like you just have to really be mindful of that or it's going to hit you later. So she's probably thinking about that. It's cold. I'm a little cold, but do you see the sun coming out? This race is perfect weather today. I just know it out there. Yeah, it, great, great conditions for, for fast for fast racing. As as mm-hmm. Tempe generally is. Like, really I think is. that's why we've seen it. I, if, if I'm correct, I'm often wrong, but if I'm <laughs> correct, I think in the, in the men's field, Arizona might have been the first... I believe Ineke Llanos mm-hmm. was the first male under eight hours right. on uh, North America yes. soil. And I, I believe I was here in Arizona. Um, I believe the same I year, Flo- Florida, mm-hmm. uh, Ronnie, Schoenbe- Ronnie mm-hmm. Schoenbeck also went under eight hours. But uh, anyways, Arizona yes. known for very yes. quick times. I believe Heather Jackson set the U.S. fastest she time did, in time here. I remember Lindsay Corbin held it, 844 something. Yep. Because I... Uh, if I hope I have that wrong. Sorry, Linz, if it's a little off. And then Heather, I, I know, I remember I missed it. And then Heather got it by, I want to say, a minute or two. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. And so now Heather holds it, which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see on the right-hand side of the screen kind of our splits going in. I, Ueda, uh, yes. 755 out of the water uh, with Renee Kiley at 845. I think that's a good swim for Renee. Good swims. Uh, I, Ueda, Again, Olympic uh, distance athlete that's had great success over that actually in the Olympics uh, a few times. So great swimmer. So for her to be eight mm-hmm. minutes back, I would not have expected that. Right. In the end, she's only two minutes behind Sky, but she's yeah. an athlete that I see as a pre-race quote unquote favorite. Yep. But she's not going to move up on the bike. Right. Right. On these on these three women in front of her, not not likely. She's one that mm-hmm. you know she could she could run a two. 50 marathon right that's where it's gonna happen right so she'll probably have to try to control herself in terms of like well should i burn all my biscuits trying to catch these front women when i know i can run a solid maybe 250 251 which is epic by the way uh but that's the thing is that she might be like you know i'm gonna do what i can here in this next four hours four x or whatever it is and then i'm gonna run as fast as i can to try to catch those gals yeah, no, and right now we see our leader, Andrew Horsfall Turner, with Ben Canute. Mm-hmm. Um, unless somebody has <laughs> crazily moved through this field, it's going to be Ben Canute uh, moving up uh, to first place or coming up on first place's wheel at this point. One athlete that I want to mention that we just haven't, because to my point earlier of us having short memory in triathlon, mm-hmm. Bart Arnault is in this race, which a lot of us, uh, yes. you know, forgot coming in. But that's an athlete. 2018 was second at the Ironman World Championships. I think yep. he had the second fastest time ever for a long time. Uh, in amazing bike runner. He was ninth at, in Kona in 2019. Uh, he's won a bunch of Ironmans in his career. And he does that on the bike and the run. We haven't seen him break the tape first in an Ironman in a while. Uh, but these athletes will know who he is. And, and mm-hmm. I, I say that because he also had a pretty good swim. He was three minutes behind uh, kind of that main group. So I think he was six minutes behind in total. Uh, so Bart Arnault putting himself in position. Uh, he's an athlete that's going to be riding yep. on his own kind of all day. Right, um, right. But, uh, you know, he's one that can run in that mid-240s as well. Which is huge. And now here we have Ben doing kind of what he did in the swim. He's like, well... I don't know what 112 miles is like in an Ironman yet. So, okay, I'm sitting here for a little bit. And I have, I have a feeling, though, he's going to probably make a pass soon and, and go for it because it's going to become a pace that he can go faster in. But then he has to be mindful we're only a couple miles in. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got a long way to go. Yeah, and again, I do think Ben in his head today mm-hmm. is doing a lot of chill, buddy. Yeah, chill, exactly. Yeah, or, you know, we don't know what the, the mantra is, but I'm yes. sure his coach, Jim Vance, or yes. himself have made a plan to be like, okay, we can't just swing for the fences every time we see somebody else around us, right? We're right. in 70.3 and in Olympic distance races that he's he's great at as well. He's amazing at these short, uh, even the, the mixed relay races. He's so good at those dynamic racing because yep. – He's super competitive. And, you yes. know, I see an athlete, Ben yes. sees an athlete in front of him. He wants to catch him and pass yes. him as quickly as he can. Ironman, you yeah. can't, you've got a few of those matches, but you can't just be doing that all day. Absolutely. And he's probably also thinking, well, shoot, I have Hanson, Skipper, these guys behind me that they're, they're going to be coming, Sam Long with gusto. Yeah. And so he's probably like, do, do we, are they going to come? And I'll just go with them. Maybe he's thinking that right now. Yeah, maybe. And, you know, is it hard if you're an athlete that's that dynamic in short mm-hmm. course racing? Is it almost 
uh, disorienting or like right now he's quote unquote racing. Yes. But his watts are like, they don't feel like racing to him. Probably. Right. He's like, wait, I'm in like zone two right now. <laughs> What's happening? I'm used to like high, high, high intensity racing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's, like I said, he doesn't know what's happening right now. He's like, this is very weird. But I'm sure his coach, as you said, Jim Vance, has been like, listen, dude, you can't go, again, arbitrarily in Watts. You can't go 350 for 112 miles. Let's, like, tone it down a little bit and find your, like, comfy spot where you're not going over maybe a seven perceived effort because you got a long way. And, and that's probably, he's probably has Jim in his head, like, okay, I got to just chill a little bit. Uh, but... That said, sometimes we have to take risks. And if he sees Long and Skipper and Hanson come by in a group, he's going to have to make that choice. Do I try to go with them and, you know, s- you know, be in that group? Or do I know that I'm trying to save my legs for the run? Well, I mean, right now I'm, I'm looking at, you know, we can see in the upper mm-hmm. right-hand side of the screen, Christian Hogenhog and yes. Joe Skipper are not messing around. They're the, not. They, they have, have made up a minute between transition and these first just few miles, first 10 miles of the bike ride. So they're definitely being aggressive. And, and they've been through this split a little bit, and we're actually just getting kind of our chase mm-hmm. group coming through there with Ruben Zapont uh, coming through as well at uh, 314 off our leaders uh, with Matt Hansen at 312, uh, Hank Eyer at 315, and Sam Long moved up and kind of bridged up to this smaller group uh, as well. So he's 317 down. But, right. I mean, Meredith, I would not have expected... Hogenhog and Skipper to like make a move and uh, jump, jump you know, right. pr- pretty far away from this group that's got amazing, amazing athletes. Right. Now they're a pack of two on the hunt. They're, they know these carrots are up front. And so they just are like, all right, let's hustle. And maybe they're working together to catch the group of two. We'll become a group of four. And then you'll have the long Hanson. You know, you'll have them a little bit further back. And then maybe they'll all merge. You just like never know. In this course, where we'll see some changes is, like I said, when they make that turn on the beeline and they'll see these two guys, we'll see Andrew and Ben will see their deficit to um you know the skipper group they they'll be like all right we're in a good position or oh oh no we only have two minutes or we only have a minute whatever it is at that time they still have a ways to go to the turnaround uh but that's where it starts getting super competitive and stressful to be honest (laughs) yeah no it it is is stressful for sure and i mean i'm i'm still looking at these times i mean we we go into races and we have expectations and i didn't expect these athletes to have the swims that they've had right and what I'm seeing right now is the kind of the Morton movers for me are Hogan Hogg mm-hmm. and Skipper. And Skipper even bridged to get up to Hogan Hogg uh, 20 seconds in the first 10 miles of the bike ride. And that's from an athlete that's Hogan Hogg's running, riding a minute faster than Ben Canute is. So wow. these guys are right. getting after it. And Skipper is often one that we see come through late. And, and maybe it's the fact that he had that. Right that great swim and he's like wait i'm this close right. to the front already and right. it's sam long also moving through as well but joe skipper is the one that's like clearly attacking yep. not saving anything and which is scary coming from an athlete that yeah. if i'm looking consistency results yeah. joe skipper is the best runner in this field yes in, in marathon like yes. and that, that's no disrespect because hansen's run mid right. 230s amazing right. but joe has done it more and mm-hmm. it seems to have done it over kind of different race right. tactics panning out and and he's not one that's worried about like you know we talk about burning right. matches joe is right. burning matches right, right. and he he I've, I've watched him race so many times i think i commented last time when he when he won chattanooga and he was yeah. just hus- i mean he made it look so easy a 230 x whatever it was but it's funny, he got fifth, right, in Kona, and he wasn't thrilled with that performance. Uh, I remember reading about that. And so maybe he's like, oh, no, I'm going for this win, so I'm going to go for broke right now. And I think, like you said, he might be burning it in that regard. And the thing is, this isn't a 100-degree race. Maybe that'll pan out for him come, you know, the run where he can kind of settle in. He does well, actually, in heat or the cold. He's pretty consistent in, in either. Yeah, no, he really is, and that's that's pretty rare, and I'm glad it you is. pointed that out because, yeah, you've seen him do great in just terribly mm-hmm. cold conditions, and obviously in, in a race like Kona, he's done well. And, you know, I did almost see that. I mean, you don't see that very often, both hands right. off the arrow bars <laughs> at the same Guiding time. with the elbows. And that guy's got some core stability that I certainly <laughs> right, don't seriously. have. Right, uh, seriously. Great work uh, award <laughs> for uh, core strength goes to Andrew at this point. But, uh, yeah, Joe... And I almost said that he had a not great race in Kona mm-hmm. because I remember mm-hmm. 
feeling that from him mm-hmm. and maybe reading that somewhere. Me too. Uh, because yeah. in all circumstances, he had a, a good race in Kona. He's been fifth before. Right. He was the first non-rookie. Right. Right, which right. that's not something he even probably has thought about. But right. Every, we had these four athletes that just yes. made, had these performances that were unreal that he just – yeah. You know, was was the next guy and had had a great race, but yeah, I think you're right. Like he didn't, the the number next to his result mm-hmm. in Kona wasn't maybe what he was looking right. for. Certainly Which wasn't. It's hard because he he's not a front pack swimmer in Kona, so I think he did really really well to get top five. And again, in those conditions, so hot, so windy. But I've seen him win, and I mean, he's British after all. Yeah. He's used to uh, like the cold winters of England and all of that, and so. I think he can do he can do it in either scenario, but I was impressed with this top five. So I was perplexed when he was like, "Eh, I wanted better." But we all want better, right? We all want to that top step, right? So I'm sure that's what he's thinking in this scenario as yeah. well. I think the I think the swim, just the 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 pace of that front group mm-hmm. in Kona was was really quick, right? Yes. So yes. I, I understand Joe felt like he was playing catch up for a long time because yes. the pace early was nuts on the on oh. the men's bike ride, but he still swam a fifty two, which was great. Yes, which non wetsuit in Kona is good, and that 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 lines up with about what he swam today, which means he's swimming uh, a lot better than we've we've seen. Uh, you know, from Joe Skipper. So, uh, but obviously being very aggressive early in the bike ride as well, a lot more. Race and a half uh, here at Byer Starks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman North America series. We'll be back soon. That's a hyperbole. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hyperbole from Hyper Ice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Welcome back to the BioStarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series, brought to you by BioStarks. Decode your health, and in part by Full Gas. Less virtual, more reality. And on screen here in the Full Gas bike course, I believe that is Christian Hogenhog uh, having a great race, not to be mistaken for an athlete that was on the start list, um, but uh, pulled out just this last week, uh, Chris Leiferman. Right. The, yeah, the same, Teammates. the BMC team and all that looking great out there. He has now see he has a higher cadence and is just cruising along that uh, on the highways there in Tempe, Arizona. Yeah, very That's comfortable. Cr- yep. You can see kind of that hand forward aerodynamic position. We've seen that, uh, you know, kind of mm-hmm. change a little bit in the yep. last few years. You used to see kind of the high, yep. high hands, but the elbows still like very much underneath the shoulders. Yes. Where we see, like, if we saw the, the fastest bike split in Kona this year, uh, Sam Laidlow, mm-hmm. kind of similar where the arms are a little bit further forward. We, we'd seen, like, yeah. uh, Sebastian Keenly do that for years, but it's challenging. I mean, you'll know looking at yeah. this, it's the the core connection and yes. strength to be able to hold that for 112 is, is pretty difficult. That's why I hope he set his timer for 20 minutes to get out and stretch his back a little bit. But he's used to it. So this is what he does. And, uh, you know, he has his nutrition set up. He has everything ready to go. And look, this right here, that looks like a great outfit right there. I yeah. love it. That's a good Joe Skipper outfit. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be better. And I love this guy. And, you know, I've talked to him before about, we just talked about his swimming a little bit. Uh, you know, he said he, you know, he 
he really wanted to improve on his swimming and he, he says it's what lets him down. And I think, yeah. like you said, 52 and what he just did only being three minutes down, I think he's like, he needs to retract that. I think he's done good work on chipping away at it. And this is three minutes down on yes. Ben Canute, Correct. who is not a yes. front, and sorry, Andrew Horsfall Turner. Yes. Are, they're not like normal main group front pack swimmers. Yes. They are off the front swimmers, right? right? Usually right. a solo swimmer. So him being kind of right in that first group, I mean, this might be in a in a competitive Ironman field. Right. I haven't seen him be this this far up there, and right. you know, Joe Skipper's doing it, and he's uh, he's doing it well. And I'm trying to assess what's going on with his yeah. um, uniform there. If if, if uh, the zipper broke or something. No. It so seems, this we've, we we saw have? this a okay. little bit in Kona. Okay. Is, this is actually uh, the athletes are putting something in their jersey. Okay, that, I missed uh, the memo on fills this. Up. Yeah, no, a lot of us yeah. just thought there were water bottles at first, yeah. but it's actually, quote unquote, uh, some type of uh, fairing, for lack of a better word. But yeah. And you can see with the way his water bottle was there right now, we're going 23 yeah. miles an hour, okay. great shot, yep. almost 60 degrees out there on course. Oh, not uh, bad. On one of our motos, but a yes. uh, little bit more detail uh, from our VinFast uh, performance analysis here. And uh, awesome, awesome stuff by VinFast. Um, able to, you know, right now we're kind of duplicating what we see uh, in the info display on a VinFast. So right now, 22 miles an hour for our leaders. Uh, that we got Andrew Horseball Turner and Ben Canute uh, here in our VinFast performance analysis. Yeah, Ben's still sitting in totally legally, like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and assess the situation. They still have a couple minutes on the next bit uh, from Skipper and Hagenhog, but um, Hogenhog, but. Um, I think that he's just doing the right thing. And he, he's going to explode soon, though, in that he's, like, can't stand not being in the lead. I, can, I get it. And I can already see, you know, he, him making a pass within 20, 25 seconds. And I think he's doing that right now. Yeah, here we go. We got a Morton move. Ben Canute mm -hmm. uh, moving past our early leader. He's going to take a look, give him some encouragement, uh, exchange some words probably. You know, mm -hmm. at this point, you know, Ben obviously wants to, to finish – faster than the athlete that he just yes. passed. But yes. the longer he can feel that camaraderie yes. and have somebody he feels like he's working yes. with, because right now it's two versus everyone. Absolutely. And, and tell us yeah. a little, yeah. how, how different is that than yeah. being on your own? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I love it so much. Like I still, I have so many stories to share with like the camaraderie. Triathlon can have camaraderie, everyone. I'm letting you know. <laughs> I've gone with Annabelle Luxbird before. We've passed each other just like that and be like, all right, want to take five minute pulls? Yes. 15 minute pulls? Yes. And sometimes it's, it's not illegal to do that. If you stay in within 12 meters, whatever it is, it's like someone's at the front. It helps keep you engaged. I've done it with Sarah Crawley before. Like, it just makes it more fun. It honestly makes the time go by faster uh, when you're like, and you don't want to disappoint the person you're kind of working with. So you're like, all right, I got 10 minutes. I've got to pull. And I'll say, Bella, tell me if I'm going too slow and you need to pass me, go, you know? So it's so awesome to have camaraderie out there when, when, when you're able to do it with someone. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it, uh, it helps you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think when you're an athlete too, I think Ben specifically is that, you know, he's that competitive athlete. Yes. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, he's, he always wants to beat the person he's with, but I, I do feel like he's, he's one of the nicest guys out there. He's, he's right. never going to try to negatively detract from your no. day. He, he wants to see no. others do well, but uh, he's out there and he's got, uh, he's got company, but uh, Lauren Brandon out on her own. And for her, it's just kind of waiting to see when other people come yep. by. And, and Meredith, so this yeah. course, you know, we yes. see Joe, we see all these athletes yes. chasing. Is there anywhere that these athletes are going to see each other yep. before they get caught? Sure. You literally can't hide on this course. It's a little trickier, the second and third lap, to see where you are because obviously there's um, the amateurs, which is awesome to share the, share the whole course with them. So it makes it, but the first loop, you can see everything. You cannot hide. You make the turn and you see where you can like look down at your watch and you're like, all right, I'm, I turned at this amount. And then when you see the person, the next person to you, you're like, you double that. And you're like, all right, that's the lead I have right now uh, or whatever it is. And that's probably what Lauren's going to do when she makes the turn here. And I'm instantly, I just want to say relaxed watching <laughs> Lauren on the bike as well. <laughs> I know it's, a, it's a soothing. It's a metronomic. It really is. So. She just has such control 
on her Ventum, they're looking great, looking smooth. A lot of people, understandably, decided to go with a disc wheel today. Yes. Uh, as you showed, this is a perfect course for a disc, disc. even if it's windy. Um, it's never Kona-like winds. Uh, so I think, yeah, I'm instantly just relaxed in her form and her positioning. And she's not like, you know how you can hold the, the arrow bars so tight? She's like, she's not doing that. She's relaxed. Her head's exactly at a perfect position where it's not... It, you know, it's not hurting her neck. She knows exactly what's happening, and she'll know more here when she makes that first turn of lap one. Yeah, so so you're a pro, so I'm going to keep asking you these questions. I love but it. So when you say, like, gripping hard on those yeah. arrow bars, like, yeah. why why wouldn't you? Oh, my gosh. Well, that, you know, it's it's kind of how I, I'm now dealing with, like, like you know, having children. I'm like, when, when the children see your stress, they're going to be more stressed. <laughs> and so I just take a bit, I should just like have Lauren Brandon and my like eyes and be like, all right, be, relax. So like the same thing goes, I'm, I'm using that analogy. The same thing goes when you grip it too tight, your whole body becomes all okay. uptight and skip and like, wow, you know, okay, wow. look okay. at Joe. Morton Joe, move, come Morton on. move already. Yes. Joe Skipper made his way all the way up to the front. Yes. Uh, Meredith, clearly I love it. this is, yeah. He's not messing in, around. In a million years, I would not have bet that an hour and a half into this race, Joe Skipper's there. And what that no. says is that I think to your point, he's maybe a yeah. little, he wants to prove something post Kona, but he knows that Sam Long, Hanson, yeah. Canute are, are athletes that he really needs to, to put effort in. But I am shocked yeah. and absolutely impressed and almost nervous to see what right. the finish time is going to be today. Right. If Joe links. Mm-hmm. his great run with what he's doing early right. on this bike ride. Like, this is, this is crazy. Exactly. I, I mean, and he had, what, a three, four-minute deficit, and he's already in the lead, and we're not even that far into this. So, and, and we know he it's can nuts. run a 230X whatever run. So, he is, he, he, I, he looks relaxed to me. Now, I don't think he's burning biscuits at this point. He's like kind of high cadencing it. He looks super chill. Again, you're going to have to tell me then what's in the middle because I do want to hear all that. But, um, you know, he said before that, you know, when I've asked him before, hey, Joe, what is your legacy? Look, he's happy. He's <laughs> waving at the crown. He's like, dude, I got this. Uh, he said, you know what? My legacy will be complete when I win Kona. And like that is a goal. And so that's what I, I meant to tell you earlier when he, when he was disappointed with his fifth, I think think he really does want to win Kona and I like look I think he can do it and maybe he will do it down the road yeah and it's not only the the, the media and everybody that's yeah. uh, memories are short in triathlon yes. athletes can can sit in those memories too so uh, we'll see how Joe is able to move across this field when we get back from a commercial break throughout my career people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight, to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport. To delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. And here we're back with our leader now, Joe Skipper. Uh, amazing, amazing work. I mean, again, I'm going to keep saying that because it's, I'm, I'm shocked that he's been able to get up here. I mean, he's an athlete that I would have thought, especially, we're, we're not talking about like the normal first swimmer. We're talking right. about Ben Canute, right? right? So like right. for him to have gotten into the lead a half hour into this bike ride, a little bit more, right. uh, that's that's unbelievable uh, for him to be able to get there. And, and I'm super, super impressed. Yeah. And to talk about what you were referring to earlier, yeah. this fairing, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and the, the goal of that, and you can see also with the where where his water bottle is right. placed, like we often see the athletes have the water bottle in between their arms. Yes. He has it behind, 
Yeah. Uh, so it's pointing back. Yeah. Uh, so his arms are even narrower. But basically, the more space you can fill up in okay. between your torso and your shoulders, the less turbulence can sit oh, there. Okay. So basically, instead yeah. of any air coming in between the arms, it's yes. all going outside. So aerodynamically, he's got uh, an advantage here. But it looks like not, yeah. it was not only Joe Skipper. It looks like right. uh, Christian Hogenhog also able to to get up to this group. So now we have a group of four, which is very, very different. Uh, clearly, it's twice as many, but very different dynamically right. uh, from a group of two. And right. he, Joe right now at Joe's the front asking <laughs> athletes to come waving. by. Come on through, guys. Look at him, he's waving for people to go up. Yeah, and that's the thing. They're all evenly spaced. And but now Joe's like, wait a second. I made I just busted it for a three minute deficit that I now need to take a rest at the front. So he's moving everybody up. It's like he wants to be Yeah, and this could be a couple things. It could yeah. be, you know, Joe just kind of like yeah. showing that, you know, he did the work, he got up there. Hey guys, yeah. I, I'm not gonna continue to do this. Right. Let's work together. Or it's you know, it's possible there's something else going on where yeah. he's you know, maybe he needs you know, at, uh, at times, yeah. uh, you know, something logistically he has to take care of totally. on the bike and he yes. doesn't want any athletes behind him when he yes. does that. So it, yes. could, it could be that. It's hard to know. Yeah. Uh, but Joe, not just wanting one athlete to go by and all three, all that three. makes me think it's more probably something like that. Right, where he's like, go ahead, guys. I'm going to just do my thing and, and I'll back catch back bit. up with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something something like that going on. But uh, so right now it's a group of four. And I think that's that's important because we're going to have yeah. multiple groups and it's it, you know, most likely going to be a group of uh, four or five with Hanson, Zapunkt, mm -hmm. uh, Hanghire, and Long uh, chasing. So when you've got four on four, you're just going to continue to see the throttle being twisted. Uh, right. From athletes like you know Ben Canute at the front, and then as you said, if yeah. they can see on out and backs, and it's like, okay, oh, yeah. guys, right now, right now, it's right. not Joe Skipper right. and Ben Canute on their own racing. It's like, right. okay, it's us against them. And if you can get right. everybody pitching in, yes, then you can use that to move forward. But if you've got right. one athlete that's not right, then it's all out the window, and you're just sitting up so, for that second group. It's so hard right now. The like you know common courtesy of these four would totally to be to take turns. Now, Joe didn't, that's why, like you said, we think he had something else going on, but yeah. he didn't lead that long. But like, it's kind of common certainty. Okay, I'm going to drop off, wave you in front. Now you go lead for the next little bit. And then like, if they just rotated, they would have a really fast bike and they might stay ahead of the pack that's probably trying to chip away at their lead. For sure. And there's a, there's a balance to it, right? So if yes. you're Joe and, and you, and, and let's say it's not the logistic thing and it's just him wanting everybody to pitch in, yep. If you do that too much, you're actually like just kind of slowing things down right. a little bit, right. right? Like you've got to go to the front, still push that pace, totally understand he's burnt huge matches uh, to be able to get to where uh, he is and, uh, you know, been able to, to move forward pretty darn quickly. Absolutely. I wanted to say too that with Ben is that he probably will sit up front and he'll be like, he'll get tired of being in the front too. And even though this is unknown territory to him, he still like, that's why it's just smart. And you can see like in the back of his, he has two water bottles. He might like in the back of his um, bike that he's probably like, that's new. He's probably Ironman athlete. He's like, I need all the nutrition, but it's interesting. I've never seen an athlete put two behind there, but I don't know if he, but it's like, you know, it's a little uh, out there on the B line. It can be a little choppy if you will. And so he has to be mindful that those don't fall out either. Um, but I think that now he'll lead for a little bit, but then he's going to get tired of being up front the whole time. He'll need a resp respite, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. maybe he'll start, we'll, we'll see them all start waving each other. And then that's when the camaraderie starts, you know, and it really, they can handle that and they can be really fast in that if they do it together. Yeah, absolutely. And this, uh, this is an amazing shot of this long straightaway, right? So you can see, uh, you can see the gap behind Yes. and there's, there's nobody yep. behind, right? No so one. that, that chase group th yep. that just shows you how crazy that bridge was right. from these four. And, and you're noticing something. Tell us. No, I love it. This is the turnaround. And like, it comes so fast. The first loop, you're like, yes, I'm at the turnaround. We'll talk on the third loop. It takes forever to get there, it seems. So now they turn and they're going to see where Hanson, Long, Christian, yeah. those guys come in are. And it's funny to see, see, Ben is sitting up a little bit. He they, they, they come on an aid station here soon, so maybe he's getting ready for that. Or C, like we talked about, he's like, nope, okay, good. There, you go. Now I'm going to sit in, at, you know, at legal, legal distance. And this is the part, 
that I was saying, Matt, where they just can fly back and it looks like they're doing just that. This, the wind is always with you at this point of the race, typically. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit off. Things are moving around, but yeah. uh, Ben Canute uh, yeah. waving the athletes, uh, the athletes through. So yeah. let's, uh, let's just listen in on uh, when we caught up with uh, Ben Canute earlier this week on kind of uh, what's going on here in his head for Ironman Arizona. going to go in quiet again under the radar it's my first iron man i don't think anybody expects much so we'll see are you uh did you have some fomo is that why you're jumping up to the distance uh, I don't, I mean, we just had such a good block before 70.3 worlds. Um, and we did a ton of volume and I just respond well to it. Um, I've always been a strength athlete and we played around with the idea of coming here to Arizona beforehand, but, um, just wanted to see how worlds went. I think some people, you know, like to do a ton of volume and it works for them, but I did a good amount, but it was like a week off to enjoy worlds and that race that I had there do a lot of volume kind of in that following week and kind of switch over the energy systems and then it's been shutting it down again and I don't know I'm viewing it like I did St. George like I know I'm fit and ready but I also know it's an Ironman and anything can happen so I'm just excited to see what I can do on the day this is kind of perfect hometown race I can sleep in my own bed uh, I get a few extra weeks of training and then I can fully shut it down into dad mode and um get ready for the birth of my son in December. That's awesome. A lot of stuff uh, in, on Ben's mind lately and a quick quick switch uh, for sure from uh, the World Championship where he had a great result for 70.3 and uh, awesome uh, awesome to get kind of inside what these athletes are thinking uh, with a fighting chance. And it's our, our race week series that takes you into the everyday lives of the athletes as they build up to these races. Watch full episodes on Ironman Now channels and on Facebook and YouTube. But, you know, I, I'm kind of surprised yeah. to hear that from Ben. I mean, I honestly, when I saw his result from St. George and then saw him announce his Arizona, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, may, you know, maybe that's why we saw right. Ben have this resurgence is he was putting in maybe a little bit extra, but it doesn't sound right. like he was putting in any extra. He was all in for St. George. It, all in and it paid off for him. He was it, sure had did. an amazing race, right? And now what I think if I got in and having just heard what him talk about, you know, they have a lot going on. This is a hometown race for him. He can, like he said, sleep in his own bed. It's kind of like that situation. Well, why not just throw myself in an Iron Man? And, you know, he's only 29 years old. It's right. like save that volume. You have plenty of time to get that in. And like you said, a birth of his son coming in December. That, that means they have two December babies, which is very fun. Uh, and, you know, he's like, you know, I'm going to go do that. And then I'll take some chill time for a little bit. There we go. They're moving. And here we go again. Uh, let's take a look at our VinFast performance analysis. And uh, this display graphic is modeled after the infotainment display found in VinFast VF8 mm -hmm. and VF9 vehicles. Uh, athlete uh, we've got on screen right now is Lauren Brandon. She's going up kind of one of our, right. not very many, one of our little rollers here just at 16 miles an hour. That's what I was saying earlier is like that it's, they're like, oh, Arizona's flat and fast. It is. Don't get me wrong. But there are these sneaky little false flats. And she's in one right now because she's only, quote unquote, going 16, 17 miles per hour. And you can tell her cadence is slowed. She's still an arrow. But she's on the beeline going up that part. And, and like the gentlemen are now, once they make the turn, they're like soft pedaling down. Right. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, uh, the, the mile an hour difference on, yes. the, on these ups and downs is uh, drastic for sure. Uh, but Lauren uh, doing a great job pushing the pace. And, you know, we haven't uh, been able to really check in on kind of our splits through 10 miles. The women uh, went yeah. through and we had Lauren Brandon in the lead. Obviously, Sarah True, five minutes down. So losing time, mm -hmm. 520 down. Sky Monch, 545 down. So Sky really... Uh, pulling a lot of time back on Sarah True, not so much on Lauren Brandon. Lauren Brandon just losing 20 seconds. Uh, but so that's kind of what's happening in our women's race. At bottom right-hand side of the screen, we got Lauren Brandon left is Hogan Hog. And then we did have our men go through that 19-mile 
mark, and we have that group of four we, we know is in front uh, on screen, on the upper left-hand side of the screen. But Matt Hansen, Ruben Zapunkt, and Sam, Sam Long, and Heinghauer are all chasing now in that group of four. So we got four against four. And Meredith, it's mm-hmm. two and a half minutes still. I know. I mean... And Joe and Christian were with those athletes out of the water. Exactly. Besides Sam Long. He had a little bit of catching up to do, but not much. So, right. I mean, that's... So they that, hustled. And that gap hasn't closed now. <laughs> no. So uh, it, that, that is a tactic. That's a big match. You don't often see that pay off because you, you change. You've mentioned energy yep. systems. You're yeah. using a very different energy system when very you're much. making a gap like that. Yes. And to me, I think we're seeing more examples of that being possible mm-hmm. with athletes being able to kind of uh, maybe mm-hmm. scientifically know more what's going on with their body and know yes. how to recover from it. I think for me... In Kona, watching Sam yeah. Laidlow do that. I mean, he yes. was off the front early, yes. making big efforts, and then was able to do it again late yes. uh, with some company early. It just shows that like these athletes are now... Ironman used to be, let's do as much as, as best as we can over this distance. Right. And now it's like, no, we're like, there's right. huge efforts to, to make a, a change in the race. And they, they certainly uh, have done that. And Lauren Brandon's looking to make uh, some changes, trying to get up that uh, leaderboard up when we cross that finish line uh, to be on top. And, and let's see how she does as this race unfolds. And we're back with our women's leader, Lauren Brandon, just taking them over. Taking them over. You know what? She's holding her ground out there. She's had a five-minute lead, right? Uh, right now, she's at, you know, at least at the last check, she was 521 ahead of Sarah True and Sky being a little bit behind that. Not very far. It looks like Sky and Sarah are probably riding together right now, but she's holding her own out front. No, she absolutely is and uh, looking good doing it. And I think one thing, you know, we always mention – with Lauren and you did mm-hmm. already is that how just smooth she is smooth I and mean it, smooth operator right now yeah and it's 100. not just like that yeah. pedal stroke but it's yep. like her back like you know yes. you know we say it it's almost stereotypical now you could yeah. you know, put a cup of coffee on yeah, her back yeah, if you yeah. wanted to but you you could and you wouldn't you wouldn't lose a drop no and she's still going up the beeline so that's why her cadence is slowed and her she's probably a little more like 16 17 miles per hour but we're gonna watch her fly once she makes that turn here shortly no, she absolutely is going to, and, uh, you know, she's she's got the position to do so. You know, she's one of the ones, I think, aerodynamically, she was, yeah. you know, maybe m- moving forward at a different rate right. uh, than some others as far as it comes to aerodynamics. Like, she uh, seemed to, uh, you know, kind of break the mold and, and really push that uh, right. more than others were. Right, and she's not still not gripping her handlebars. She's not moving all around her bike seat. She's on the end of it. She's super relaxed, and I just... Like I said, could watch her all day. Experience a whole new world of racing in New Zealand and Australia in 2023. Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand is the world's longest running Ironman with a rich history. You'll be welcomed with open arms and leave enriched with true Kiwi spirit. The Cairns Ironman, Iron, the Cairns Airport Ironman Cairns Asia Pacific Championship is the race in paradise, featuring one of the most scenic courses anywhere in the world. In 2023, head down under and race Oceana style. Register today at Ironman.com. Love me some New Zealand. <laughs> you do, don't you? <laughs> sure do. How many times have you been, been down there? Gosh, I probably raced there between the half and the full, maybe 10 times. Wow. Yeah, I just love it. Love it. We have our old Kiwi family there. It's just like home. Everybody needs to go race those Oceana events for sure. I mean, you really have your favorites, don't you? I do. You know, I've always said my, you know, uh, North America is Tremblant 
and you know St. George here in the U.S. and then of course Ironman New Zealand is my favorite international for me race, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean I've I've heard good things. Was never able to get down there, unfortunately. Maybe I'll I'll have yeah. to get down there to commentate one of these days. Yeah, or you can just like unretire <laughs> and then come back and we can you know race it up. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> There's Sarah True though on the screen, and she she is uh you know. Dropped a little further back than I would have thought she would at this moment, but that doesn't mean diddly in this race because she knows she's got time. She's done this before. She's keeping her hands and her arms warm, and she's. It looks like she's checking out her power. And I. And as we talked about with like ha between you know the seventy point three and the full, there's definitely been times I've been on there and been like, whoa, I'm going way too over on watts. What I should be going. I'm not going to be able to sustain this. And I think she's going to let maybe she's let Sky go, let someone go because she knows what's good for her and we really do it's cliche but we really need to stay within ourselves take risks when you can but if you know you're not gonna like be able to withhold that risk then do what's best for you and here we go looks like sky Monch mm -hmm. is uh that uh not that comfortable shadow behind sarah true right. at this point Right, and and again, they're on that B line, so it's it's funny to see the the cadence be a little bit slower. And Sky typically has, and that's a, a Cam Watt thing, which I love. I always notice it whenever I'm riding with Cam Watt athletes. They do a lot of slow cadence work, and that's what that's what's going on here with Sky. She's so strong and powerful in that position, and with those RPMs. Yeah, and I mean, coaching is uh, very mm -hmm. important, and, and you know, having mm -hmm. plans going into races. So uh, we've got uh, the ability here uh, to sign up for Ironman or 70.3 event. Uh, if you're in need of a coach, you can find a certified Ironman U coach at u.ironman.com. Industry leading master coaches collaborate to bring you the best content to fuel your training and racing. For more information, go to www.u.ironman.com. But Sarah True is still, yep. still, still hanging in. She's second. Uh, and at this point, you know, looking yeah. at how quickly, and tell me if you think I'm wrong, how no. quickly that gap was yes. closed by Sky. And the last time we saw that check, she was only 20 seconds back. It seems like she just wanted to get up to Sarah and right. she's just sitting there. Now she's going to sit. And, and, you know, Sarah's lost, lost, you know, she came out to 240 down from Lauren. So now she's more like 515 back. So she's lost time to Lauren. Sky then, you know, caught her and now maybe sky was like all right i just wanted to get up here i'm going to settle in hydration nutrition and if she feels that this pace is is not something that she wants to do right now she'll make the pass on sarah and then try to hunt down lauren yeah absolutely and i think it's it's also possible seeing the the time that sarah lost that sarah just said you know what i'm yes. going to do that soft pedal yes i'm racing sky Yes. Uh, in her head, maybe she's decided that. And, yep. you know, maybe she sat up a little bit. Uh, then Sky, you know, obviously put an effort into to push back. But now Sarah's uh, on the gas a little bit. And these two athletes are doing their best to, to stay within a reasonable distance of Lauren Brandon. Right. And as they, they'll see Lauren here coming up when they make the turn and they'll know, okay, but like, like you said, Sarah just wants to be with Sky. So maybe if Sky does make a pass, she'll try to sit in there and do it as best she can to stay together. Like they, they want to be together. And here, here they are passing the pro men out there even right yeah, now. So they're at a good clip. Matt. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and especially with those swim times and, and the rate that they're riding yes. uh, early, you're going to, we're going to see more of that as the day unfolds now they're five minutes down from lauren brandon right and obviously this is no disrespect to lauren brandon but right. these two athletes will expect to run at least five minutes faster than lauren brandon yes at this point tactically are these two athletes now just like okay we're just gonna ride and look at each other and make sure that gap doesn't <laughs> expand like are they worried about catching right. lauren I don't think so. I think they know that they have a whole marathon to, and a whole, you know, 80 more miles to do so. But I don't think that's on their radar at all. I think that they know they're the top two for right. the contenders for this race and they just want to be together because it's one or the other. Unless, like you said, there's a dark horse we don't know about. I mean, look at Mel McQuaid. She's sitting fourth uh, coming up and she's only about three and a half minutes down from these two and she's a cyclist. So I, I, right. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw her kind of start bridging the gap. But yeah, they're, I don't think they're they're focused on Lauren. They're focused on each other right now. And the, the brutal kind of side effect to that is it's if that's the case, then Lauren is just out there all day on her own, which it's so hard. You know, she yes. doesn't mind, right? Kind of, but like it's definitely yes. easier 
if you've got distraction from other athletes behind and maybe that uh, slight encouragement at some point or anything, right, is Absolutely. very different. And I've seen Lauren get caught by a pack but then stay with the pack. You know what I mean? Because she's like, oh, this is so Absolutely. much better to yeah. ride with other people, right? And so maybe she, she, it's hard to be out there solo, especially in this course. You can see everything. Uh, you never know what each loop will bring, weather-wise, wind-wise. And so I'm sure, not that she wants them to catch catch her it's not that it's just that man if i had someone else with me this would be great and and like we said sarah and sky now have each other to feed off of which i think is going to be pretty sweet in the end yeah no absolutely and uh, lauren brandon still on screen looking as smooth as ever and we did see you know i think you mentioned earlier yeah. that we had uh melanie mcquaid moving yes. her way back up she's a fantastic athlete she's already moved past uh, Ayu Ueda and yeah. Renee Kiley, but they're kind of all still riding yes. together, or they yes. were at least through 10 miles. So if that group of three uh, stay together, and, you know, I haven't mentioned yet, uh, we did earlier in the race, but Danielle Lewis yeah. had a pretty good, good swim. swim. So she's actually only just a few seconds behind that group of three. So you might see her start moving through that field. And that's someone that is yeah. going to hold those other two women yes. uh, accountable to like keeping that pace up. Yes, she's a cyclist and a runner. And so given that we, I mean, we thought we, she might be 10, 11, 12 minutes down, she's just under 10. And now she's on, her, her worst part's over. She's like, sweet, I'm, I'm on what I thrive in, the bike and the run. So she might use Mel McQuaid to like bridge the gap up to Sarah and Skye as well. And I will say, if Skye and Sarah... Mm -hmm. ignore the fact that Danielle's racing and yes. ignore the fact that they want a little bit of time. Like, yes. they should not be comfortable getting off the bike with her. Yes. Like, they should be, right? right? They're, like, they're great athletes and they, they have the ability, but she's not one to mm -hmm. be overlooked on the run at Never. all. Never. Not, we know in her Ironman Texas, she ran over four hours, which is not something you would think a Daniela stupid, but this is only, she's not done Ironman that much, whereas Sarah and Sky, they understand what entails. <laughs> yeah, and, and when you see a result like yeah. four hours, yeah. to me, it's like, okay, that you just yes. wipe it out. Clearly, yep. she yep. walked, something yes. didn't work. Yes. If she's figured it out, she's Correct. literally going to take an hour off of that time. It's, Correct. It's not like she's going to be a 345 runner, no. right? No, so. and that's the thing. She has the capability of running a sub three hour for sure, Danielle does. So if she's everything's in place and she's able to do that today, they do not want to get off the bike with her because she can run as fast as they can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she is. And so one thing that we might have missed kind of when we were yes. uh, looking at the women is that Christian Hogenhog looked like uh, he kind of took advantage of that kind of downhill and that faster pace and put mm -hmm. in an effort and so right now we actually have andrew horsfall turner chasing uh, on his yeah. own so he's 50 seconds back he's been completely dropped uh from this three uh three-man group that was off but that three-man group big quote unquote because those athletes are all 10 seconds back with uh mm -hmm. christian hogenhawk really being very very aggressive and we're going to get some shots of those athletes after this break Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. As we see Christian Hogenhag make his way around a right-hand corner, look over his shoulder a little bit to see what that gap is. And uh, he certainly has a gap now, uh, able to... Now he's either taking his time to, to cool down and hydrate because he knows he has a gap that's established and he's going to settle in, or he knows that the gap isn't quite big enough and they're going to maybe bridge back up to him. But, I mean, he's... There's certainly no question that he's putting in a big effort here to try to right. break things up. And I think rightly so to an extent, depending what his goals are, right? Mm -hmm. If he's trying to win, mm -hmm. 
yeah, he probably has to do something like right. this. Take a risk, right? <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, taking a risk like yeah. this, if he's a runner that you know generally runs 10 minutes slower than these other guys, which I yeah. think he, he is, uh, more or less, then you're like actually taking your ability to maybe run 10 minutes that close to them yeah. out the window, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a big risk, but if you want to win a race, this is, this is, these are the tools that he has to win. Right, and, and we all have to take chances. And this, he's probably thinking, you know what, this is my opportunity. I could fail, but I'll learn from that failure and I won't do it next time. But, I mean, I'm impressed even, like, he must be already getting warm. That's the thing about Tempe. It's like it, could, it can be 60, 62, 65 degrees. It still feels warm with the Arizona sun. So I noticed he was already cooling himself off. And P.S., I'm very impressed with his skills on being able to take his water bottle off the back. That's really hard. I think, uh, to do. So he's got that dialed where he didn't litter. He got it right back in where he needed to go. And now he's like, you know what? I'm a technical writer too. I can like, you know, gain maybe three to five seconds every turn here because it is very turny coming back into town before you go out on the second loop. And so uh, you can see him like with the proper positioning before you turn so he doesn't crash. It's easy to do on these like sharp 90 degree ones, but he's pretty doing it pretty gracefully, I think. Yeah, he absolutely is, and he's he's using all the road, right? Yep. The more road you it. use, then yes. the, the faster uh, pace you're you're holding as you go through there. So, uh, Christian doing a great job, and and you know I don't mean to say that mm-hmm. he's not a great runner, right? You know he's run 240, 249, I believe yeah. two forty seven as well. Yes. So he can, dude can run, right? But he's got two guys behind him that have proven they can run in the two mid two thirties. Right. Which is which Big is difference. different, right? Yeah, it um, is. So you know he's got he's got some things to do, and you know he looks comfortable. And again, I think it, it comes is. down to you know I was talking to uh, some athletes uh, last couple of days that are mm-hmm. in the in the pro men's field, mm-hmm. and things have changed in Ironman racing where it's like guys are, are putting in huge efforts early right. and taking big right. risks, right? And it is working more than it seemed to. And I think that comes down to maybe some of our uh, knowledge of kind of what the body's going through when we're putting uh, ourselves through these efforts. Well, and that was probably Joe Skipper's mindset too. And Christian's like, all right, let's burn some biscuits at the front end because I know my body will recover. Once I catch those guys, I'll take a little rest, little rest, little recovery, and then I'll go for it again and revamp. So yeah. I think that's what happened there for sure. And here, yeah, he's uh, he's moving and again, looks, looks comfortable. And yeah. I wouldn't say dissimilar from, you know, we're comp- complimenting Lauren yeah. Brandon, and I think he looks about as good. And, and it's yep. difficult with that, as I was speaking of earlier, that uh, kind of that position where right. his hands are further in front. It's, uh, it's, it's more challenging mm-hmm. to, stay, uh, to stay smooth uh, when you're doing that. And, yeah, let's take a look back on how the race unfolded earlier today. The men uh, took off at uh, 640 local time in Tempe. Uh, Pretty pretty big melee when it starts, as it often does. We see uh, the athletes go through there. You actually saw yeah. Sam Long move backwards pretty quickly, uh, maybe got pulled back there early in the swim. But race got separated uh, pretty quickly uh, from Ben Canute, uh, but Austria, also Andrew Horsfall turner uh, having a great, great swim, uh, actually putting kind of the pre-race favorite that we all just assumed uh, was going to finish first, but that's why we race. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Andrew uh, took it to the front. And Andrew Horsfall Turner had a great, great swim, pushed the pace the whole time, forced Ben Canute through a time or two. Uh, but mm-hmm. then, you know, when it was time, he had the ability, the effort, and the skill uh, to to put put the effort in and, and drop uh, drop Ben late in the swim to be able to to get himself across the line first. But most importantly, these two athletes, you know, worked together when they could, uh, mm-hmm. kept kept things moving as as quickly as possible, but. As we know now, even though they were racing each other, they didn't put that much time on the athletes behind. But uh, in the end, uh, it was Andrew Horsfall Turner uh, that got onto that ramp first and onto dry land first and uh, looks over his shoulder, sees that he has a decent gap on Ben Canute and a a big gap on everybody behind. Maybe not uh, what they thought they would have before the race started, but Andrew Horsfall Turner and Ben Canute first out of the water. And that was our Roca swim recap. And uh, Meredith, let's go yeah. down to that women's race. Yeah, so on the women's side, again, we watched smooth sailing Lauren Brandon just take the lead from the start, smooth as silk, totally relaxed. I instantly was like, relax. It was like my yoga for the morning. It was brilliant. And she made it just look so 
easy. And then she came out <laughs> with a plenty of a lead, about 240 on, um, on Sarah True, who was in our pink cap here. Uh, Sarah looked back and realized, okay, I'm not going to keep up with Lauren, but I don't have anyone directly behind me. So Lauren started passing pro men out there, even with a five minute lead, she caught up to pro men, which is just shows how fast she is in the water. And then like I was telling you, when she got out, she was very, very smooth in getting her uniform back on and getting everything in check before transition. She knew she had a lead. She didn't know probably what it was, but um, she knew Sarah True and the favorites, Sky, weren't totally that far behind. And I think, like I said, I think she had 240 on uh, Sarah True and about five minutes on Sky. And so uh, when Sarah got out too, they all will hear, like Lauren here, you see what I was just talking about. She made it super easy, takes her wetsuit off, doesn't use the wetsuit strippers like I would have. Amazing. <laughs> and then got her bag, did everything very gracefully as she does. She could see that she had a lead. When Sarah got out, she also graceful as ever. She does this. She had the same mindset uh, as did Sky, who came out in third to put their uh, kits on, uh, you know, while they're doing the long transition. So Lauren got onto the bike. Sarah got her transition, got onto the bike. Uh, she opted to put on gloves and a uh, some arm warmers because it is chilly out there in the Arizona uh, mornings before that Arizona sun comes out. Uh, so they both got out on the bike and then uh, uh, it was a great female swim. Yeah, no, absolutely great uh, work by the women there out on the Roca swim course. And back to live action, we see our pro women's leader, Lauren Brandon, in the lower right-hand side of the screen, Christian Hogenhog upper left hand side of the screen and you can see now those gaps are coming through uh lauren brandon still in the lead obviously five minutes mm -hmm. back to uh our second place athlete sarah true so no big difference there sky Monch has made up a little bit of a gap on sarah but a big mover again yeah. danielle lewis just continuing to, to move through that field so uh, an athlete that you noted was a, a great big mover early melanie mcquade she's yeah. actually gone past and dropped at this point so just three and a half minutes more of uh, kind of closing for Danielle Lewis to get to the kind of main contenders today. I love it. And you can see in Lauren Brandon that her cadence is so much faster right now because she's going down that hill, the, the hill, hill that's our, like very, very lean, you know, for me to say hill. I just mean, uh, yeah. you know, a little bit of a, you usually have a tailwind and you can tell it's like way, way faster. But yes, just to see, see Sarah and Sky are riding together and then Dan, you know, Danielle, only three minutes back from those two. And I think that's, she's going to keep chipping away at that. Yeah, no, she absolutely is. And again, that's uh, something that uh, all these women in the race really need to pay attention to, because if she figures out what mm -hmm. didn't go right uh, before in Texas, uh, she's going to, she's going to put them in, yeah. put them in trouble. But right now on screen, man, we haven't seen yet. Sam Long absolutely moving through this field. I did take a look and it looks like through that uh, 28 mile gap, uh, sorry, split. Uh, Sam was 230 back, so not much has changed there, mm -hmm. but it looks like he did put an effort in. Because don't forget, Hogan Hogg has, right. has put an effort in as well, has separated right. himself. Uh, so he has put a gap in on and dropped. Now Matt Hansen is 20 seconds back. So we'll see how big that gap is when we get to that next split after uh, we see a little bit from our sponsors. Awesome.
And we're back with Sam Long, one of our pre-race uh, favorites. He's taking a look at the camera. Uh, maybe give it a yep, thumbs there up. There it is. <laughs> He's where he wants to be. Uh, Sam Long, uh, you know, always was hoping on uh, Arizona, giving a thumbs up. Uh, excited to see everybody watching him and uh, the cameraman. Uh, you know, he's used to seeing them as well. So he's uh, either pulling up to an athlete or that's one of the athletes he was riding with earlier, but in a comfortable uh, position. And, and Sam Long, you know, can't, uh, you know, ignore the fact that he's coming off of a disappointing mm -hmm. race. You know, he, he had a big build uh, going for Ironman 70.3 World Championships in St. George and uh, unfortunately uh, received a penalty while he was mm -hmm. out there uh, and wasn't able to, to have the race that he wanted. And, you know, I think he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's yeah. going to you know, make sure he puts the best performance possible out here on course today. And he's doing just that. And I've asked him once, you know, hey, Sam, what is your demon in both sport and, you know, and in life? And, you know, you can probably imagine what he said. Patience. <laughs> he <laughs> says he gets frustrated super easily. And I've, I, I'm sure you too. We've seen him mature in that. And as, you know, even after he got his penalty and he's very upset, you know, he, he sat on it and he really came out on the other side and now he's here in Arizona to show what all that fitness and all the goodness he can do. And so I think he's been pretty darn patient. Yeah, no, he has for sure. He hasn't uh, gotten sucked up to it but, or sucked into it too much. And uh, he's uh, in the right spot uh, to have a great race. And, uh, you know, we're going to go see what he had to say earlier this week in AFC. I mean, we might refer to that as the yo, yo, yo files, but <laughs> let's, uh, let's catch up with Sam Long. <laughs> So it looks like a fresh haircut. Yeah, fresh haircut. What's that signify? It means I mean business. I'm not here for fun. I'm here to get a job done. And that's really all that Ironman Arizona is about. It's been a rather interesting year with some interesting setbacks for me. It actually was really hard for me to turn things around and decide to show up at Ironman Arizona here. Yeah, I, I very nearly called it a season, but then I pulled the Britney Spears, I shaved the head, I got a rattlesnake, and I said, I'm gonna go race Arizona. I do think I'm one of the best 70.3 athletes, but I have room to go in the Ironman, so it's kind of learning, it's seeing where I'm at. The question is if I uh, suck or if I can actually just race to my normal potential. Yeah, life is still pretty good, so nothing to complain about. Uh, another great uh, feature from our crew down with the Fighting Chance. Again, a race week series that you can tune in at. Uh, watch full episodes at Ironman Now channels or on Facebook and YouTube. And yeah, I mean, I think that speaks to what we were talking about earlier. You know, he's he's joking yes. a little bit saying, you know, whether or not, seeing whether or not he sucks or he's the athlete he thinks mm -hmm. he is. There is some, and more than some, a lot of truth to that in Sam's head. Yes. If he's saying that, yes. he has some doubts of himself as an athlete. Yep. And in the end, there's literally zero reason he should. Zero. Right? Zero percent. And, and I've asked, asked him, hey, you know, he's told me his biggest weapon is his mental resiliency and his durability. And I think, like you just said, you know, he got knocked down. You know, he's had some setbacks this year. And where his weapon resides is his resiliency resiliency and durability and he's willing to do the work he said to rise and get to where get where he wants to be and so i think we're going to see that here today in tempe yeah i think so too right now back with our men's leader uh christian hogenhog still at the front mm -hmm. the gap hasn't changed through 29 to 38 miles from Joe Skipper. So Joe's still sure. eight seconds back, yep. uh, pushing the pace, holding on. But Ben Canoe has, yeah. been, has been dropped 37 seconds back. So Ben is looking at that power meter and saying, man, this is not <laughs> what, I was, what I was planning. And he needs right. to come off the watts a little bit. And 100%, and this, how this race has panned out is not what Ben probably thought was going to happen right. or he and his coach thought was going to happen. Right. And, but that doesn't mean, you know, in his mind, he mm -hmm. probably thought, and I'm inserting here, yeah. that he was going to have a gap and he'd maybe be able to set the pace for a certain period of time on the bike ride, probably right. the, most of the first lap. And very quickly, that was thrown out the window, right. obviously, immediately. 
Um, here we go. We got another Morton move with Joe Skipper making the pass oh, on yeah. Christian Hogenhog as they get onto that second lap. But Ben Canute can't now say, okay, well, now if I want to keep up, I need to ride at 310 watts instead right. of 290 watts. Right. No, man, you got to do the same. If, if you decided your race plan was because it was what you were mm -hmm. capable of mm -hmm. and you're not one of these athletes that's decided you have the ability to burn these matches or yes. make these huge efforts, yes. uh, you know, you got to just ignore it and, and, and stick to the game plan. I agree. And so with Ben, too, is, you know, he's 38 seconds back or rather, I guess, you know, 28 from Joe. But, oh, man, it almost he he'll learn like it almost is better if he tries to stay with because this course on the second and third loop, you, you and if you're in no man's land by yourself, it goes so slow. So he might want to think, all right, maybe I take a risk and I go. 350 watts to catch back up with Joe so that I'm not, so I'm, 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 you know, activated. I'm, I'm stimulated here that I can, you know, make this go faster for me because if I get dropped, it's really hard to get back on as we know. And so, and, and then before we know it though, Sam will come up and catch him and maybe he needs that. Maybe he needs a respite right now and he needs, he needs the next group to catch him and he'll go from there. But the 28 seconds is just not, not that long it might be worth putting in a little effort to get back up there no certainly not and uh, we see now it's Ruben Zapunk mm -hmm. that is in front of Sam Long as they uh, make that kind of turn and we saw them we just saw Andrew sure. Horsfall Turner make that uh, turn around so he's lost a fair bit of time mm -hmm. he's now two they and a half minutes yeah, off the front right. and they're they're getting close to catching him and, and Ruben Zapunk not not someone we're surprised by right. to, to be having a great bike ride this is an athlete uh that's you know over the 70.3 distance uh shown he's a he's a great cyclist uh as well you know not uh, a lot of ironman uh, distance results uh, right. to his name but uh, certainly one that uh, has the ability to have uh great races out hill here and we'll see what he's doing he's not being shy you know he's no. he's gone away with sam long and again Matt Hansen at times can be, I think, very much underrated yes. uh, on the bike. Matt Hansen is a very, very good cyclist. And for those two athletes to now put a minute on mm -hmm. Matt Hansen is a lot. And and I didn't I didn't notice this at first, Meredith, but Zapunkt and Sam Long have lost 30 seconds to Joe Skipper and Christian Hogenhog at this right. point, too. Right. So it's, go it's not this, okay, they're catching. It's this back and forth. It's a yeah. very dynamic race at this point. It is, and well, and now we're shifting over to the women here. But, but look, it's like they're now they're sweating. You know, so the see the Arizona sun has officially come <laughs> out, and this is what's happening. And and now it looks like you know she's just cruising. She again that slow cadence it works for her. There's so much power behind that slow cadence, and so now she's still arrows. She's still relaxed. She's looking as good as Lauren and that, and she doesn't look like she's stressed. She's got her water out. She's keeping her head down, and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, if Sarah True is in front of her or behind or who's taking pulls right now. But I have to also say, Matt, everyone's kits look amazing this race. I'm very impressed with the style. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was going to mention as well, we, I, I, I often, if there's one that stands out, have kind yeah. of a best kit award. I'm not, I'm going to reserve the right at this point. We'll see. I have yes. more to prove here, but uh, yeah. uh, Sky always puts a good effort in. And I was going to say, oh, by the way it looked like she's moving around yes. on the bike, yes. you, you have a different disposition in your face and your eye when you're in front sure. versus behind. And, sure, uh, you she's, called it. Yeah. She's, she's the one uh, pushing the pace here at this point. And, you know, Lauren Brandon has gone through that checkpoint uh, at 28 miles at a bike time of 115. And Sky Monch has now gone mm. through at 113 and Sarah True at 116. But those two athletes are obviously, as we just saw, riding together at four minutes and 20 seconds. So slowly, slowly chipping away. And I think the important split is going to be the one uh, to Danielle Lewis right. uh, coming after this. But uh, Sarah True also looks comfortable. Doesn't look like she's uh, pushing the pace, uh, you know, the effort uh, at least right. uh, too much and, and looks like she's in a good spot. But I think you make a good point. There's not many yeah. spots, courses where you go from cold to warming up as quick as you do in the desert. Absolutely. Like just the fact that we saw, you know, Christian pouring water over himself. That was my first thing is, oh, the sun's out because <laughs> he's, he's already warm and it's only 60 some degrees out. But yeah, so and the run can be hot. It's it's dry Arizona air. Even at 70 degrees, that feels a lot warmer. So that's why, per our points, it's so important that they stay hydrated and, and all the good nutrition out there. But 
this is what I like to see is they're chipping away at Lauren. Like they've already gained a minute here in these last, you know, 10 miles, if you will. And so now they're working together and it's just, you know, Sky, by the way, needed to catch us. Uh, uh, Sarah, she did, and now Sarah's like, all right, I got to stay here, and that's what's happening here in this scenario as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of these days we'll get uh, yeah. live mics on these athletes. Oh, so I can't we, wait. <laughs> so we Gosh, don't. I want to be an elf, too, uh, on their, like, shoulder and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> how do you feel? Yeah. My, the producer's in the ear saying, stop, <laughs> yeah. stop, 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 stop saying kidding, that. Just kidding, just kidding. It's not going to happen. Uh, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> but point is, we don't know what they're thinking, but I'd love to chat afterwards, and I do think probably that Sarah True was... You know, not soft pedaling, but like mm -hmm. was like, okay, yeah, this guy's gonna catch me. Do I work hard to make her work harder to catch me, or do I take this opportunity to be like, if if you could textbook write out mm -hmm. how you wanted to to do your race on your own, yes. you'd say, okay, I'm gonna go the first hour, ten or fifteen minutes, ten or fifteen watts less than like maybe my goal watts, yes. right? Yep. And Sarah was able to do that not for an hour, but maybe yeah. a half hour, and just kind of settle in. And that just allows, you know, how often do people go out for a workout and start their intervals at mile zero? Right. You don't, right? You Never. warm up, right? Yes. So, so that's an yes. opportunity for those strong swimmers to have yes. that ability to like work that in if they want. And remember, as we talked about, there's so many highs and lows in Ironman that maybe Sarah had a little bit of a low and then Sky like kind of sparked it to like to come back to a high and they can now work together. It's It's so much better. And she probably was smart and that will you know what, it's going to be a lot better when I'm just, you know, feeding off someone else and working with each other. So I think that's, and she looks good now. She looks like more alive than she did when she was solo mission. So I think now that they're, they're going to make the hunt on Lauren Brandon. Yeah, they, they, they certainly are. And, it, you know, it's going to depend on, you know, how quickly they want to do that and, right. you know, whether or not they've paced themselves. And, you know, if they're pacing themselves to not do it too quickly, then you could see a four minute gap in the last lap just yeah. disappear. Right. So it's, it's hard to say how the athletes are going to uh, dose that out, but uh, the women in the driver's seat, certainly those, those top three, but Danielle uh, Lewis, a uh, formerly, formerly Danielle Dingham, if you don't mm -hmm. recognize the name mm -hmm. uh, is, is still the one that's, that's chasing and, and, and certainly uh, to be considered as far as uh, results go. And, and these athletes, you know, maybe on the, the next turn, they're going to be like, oh, hey, Danielle's not that. We need to right. start picking it up. Because right. if there's no reason to think if, you know, we've seen athletes have their breakthroughs. Like on, on paper, we all think in Ironman we can do something until we do it once. And you're like, okay, that didn't right. work. That didn't but work. Danielle is capable of being the fastest runner on course. Yes, 100%. Certainly. And, and, and yep. that's, that's saying Sarah True is a great runner. Yes. Sky Mach a great runner. Lauren Brand is a good runner. But... Danielle has the run pedigree to if it all clicked yep. and it was perfect, yep. she's gonna she's gonna out or she could outrun those athletes. So certainly something to to keep an eye on. No, and seeing Lauren Brandon too is she does a lot of well, a lot of outdoor riding, but also a lot of good trainer riding. And I think that's really going to help her on this course. And you can tell with her cadence as it's it's slow when it needs to be slower and higher when it needs to be higher. And I think she's got a lot of power in those legs that, that she'll have a good run as well. But you're absolutely right with Danielle. If she even has six minutes, like she can definitely go faster six minutes than the other girls on her best day, I think. I really believe that. Yeah, I do too. And again, it's just kind of one of those unknown quantities because we right. haven't seen her have a great yes. race over that distance yet. Yes. But, um, you know, she's seemed to have focused uh, since that, um, you know, I don't want to, well, I do want to call it. It was, yeah. it was a bad race. Yeah, uh, she, it wasn't her deal. She did not have a good race out there in Texas. And, you know, she's had time since then uh, to go and, and try to have some consistent results. You know, she did not have a good race at uh, the 70.3 Worlds. Uh, right. I saw her out on course and early it looked like she was uh, she was cold and that didn't work out for right. her. 70.3 uh, Boulder, she had a, a, a good race, but not anything, uh, you know, over the top. But she did yep. get an, a 70.3 win at Oregon this year. Uh, yes. So she's she's had some, some good results uh, and time. And, and I think time. Yep. that's different often. Like racing an Ironman, even if you're somewhere in the, in the south of the U.S., yes. Racing an Ironman in May yes. and forcing the fitness <laughs> totally. to get there is so different than having a summer of racing and fitness. Yes. 
and doing it now. And here we are in November and Danielle. And like, like I always said with Danielle too, both her parents were U.S. Marines and they taught her a lot of discipline, focus and resilience. Yeah, and I think she like, you know, didn't have a good race at world. So, but she's as resilient as can be. And I think that she'll pull out a very good race here. She's determined to do so. She had to fight for her health. And we, we've talked about this. She had, you know, just fighting for health and better nutrition and, and racing and stuff. And she learned how to do all that. Um, like me, she got COVID, had long haul COVID. This was a while back and like had to really try to figure that out with her lungs and everything. And she did that. And that's when she did well at Indian Wells and, and then Oregon and all that. And now she's free of that and she can really showcase herself in these upcoming races. Yeah, no, very, very well said. And as we do see now that she's gone through that split at 28 miles at 827. Uh, with not Renee bad. Kylie at 859. So 827. And only 28 miles in. Yeah, yeah that's not bad. Yeah. But she hasn't made up really any more time. She's made right. up five more seconds in the right. last 10 miles. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if you look at things in the grander scheme on this course, that's not where I would want an athlete to make up time anyways. Right. You know, yes. go easy when it's easy to go fast. <laughs> yes. Go harder when it's harder to go fast. 100%. Yes. And and like Sky, speaking of easy, making it look easy, but she she always has a very uh, like serious face on her and she's like determined too. She's won Ironmans before. She knows what to do. Um, you know, she's has always said, as I said, she's been working on her swimming. Um, she just feels like she hadn't been able to do it as well. And she did it today. She wasn't even that far back. And now she's basically hunting down the lead. Impressive in my book, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I will say maybe she's in the lead now for the kit too because she's matching the I Qatar so. Airways uh, I mean, uh, banner as well. So she's got it <laughs> Yes, This guy always, always thinking of it and uh, she's our athlete uh, currently riding in second place uh with sarah true riding closely behind her in third as we see one of our male pros uh coming back through the field but looking down now we see one of our motos and who's that moto with none other than yes. i believe this is lauren brandon so let's take another quick look at our vinfast performance analysis this display graphic again is modeled after the infotainment display from the VinFast VF8 and VF9 vehicles. You can see 31 yes. miles an hour, Lauren Brandon's moving. Fast, see? Crazy. If, they, if you only could go the whole course at 32 <laughs> miles per hour, that would be amazing. She probably feels pretty good right now. Again, controlled cadence, getting a good 32, 33 miles per hour. She's all set. You know, she's out on her second loop. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty good. That's fast. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's important to see is that in that, that rate of speed that she's moving, her cadence yep. is still about the same, yep. right? So that means that she's put the proper gears on her bike to, so mm -hmm. she can not adjust too much. It's a little bit higher, but not, not crazy. And her ability to be smooth hasn't changed hasn't changed either. Hasn't changed. She's not stressed. She might have seen where they were, but she's still got a four-minute lead as of the last check. That's pretty good, and we'll see where it is uh, as she makes the uh, the next check on the turn to see where where she is to the other gals. Yeah, uh, so great uh, info coming in from Adam Zucco, uh, one of our uh, great coaches across uh, the North America, and he was saying that Danielle actually had a bike crash the day before 70.3 Worlds, uh, so actually lost kind of her ability to shift gears mm -hmm. on her bike the day before. So mm -hmm. what I saw early on wasn't, her getting cold, it was her not being able to shift and she uh, yeah. made a smart call uh, on, on pulling out. That's not a course you want to try to get around with with one gear. So, definitely not. <laughs> so that, that tells us, but again, it's important, I think, that, you know, these athletes somehow in her head, yeah. at some point, she yeah. probably still had to convince herself that yes. she was a good athlete, right? Yes. It's, and it doesn't uh, matter how good you are, if it's out of your control right. and the number on your result sheet wasn't what you thought it was going to be, you have doubts. Right. You have to be like Ted Lasso. You have to have belief. <laughs> like, like if you don't believe, it's so hard. And again, you don't want to be cocky in that belief. You just want to believe like, hey, listen, I've put in the time. I've put in the effort. I know I can punt that into a good race. Okay, I crashed poor Danielle the day before. I hate it when that happens. You crashed the day before a race. Terrible timing. But now, she, again, that resilience, she's probably recovered for that. Now she can gear okay in this race, which is perfect. But yeah, you have to have so much belief. They always say you're only as good as your last race. 
race, right? Not really. No, because I've seen so many people fail at a race, myself included. <laughs> and then, boom, a couple weeks later, go back and shift mindsets and control your attitude and had a great race. But if you don't have that, you're never going to last out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a new new race yep. every time the, the gun goes off. That's and, right. Uh, you don't know uh, what's going to happen until we cross that finish line. And that finish line is still to come. Stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The Hyperbolt from Hyper Ice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Welcome back to the show. You've got Lauren Brandon out front here. You know, I was thinking as I was watching her ever so calmly ride, is that, you know, Iron Man's such a long day and she's redoing her house right now. So I bet she literally <laughs> is like, okay, what watts am I going? And the next thought is, oh, I really needed to get the fixtures for this. <laughs> it's what we think about out there. And then meanwhile, she's probably singing Taylor Swift. Who knows? Right? Yeah, well, I wonder if Barrett's <laughs> making sure he's getting something done while I'm, while I'm out racing. But yeah, it's, it is funny how... You do have to at times, like I, yeah. my inner inner narrator wasn't always polite, right? <laughs> like if I was yes. thinking about stuff like that, I'd start cursing at myself a little bit. Exactly. Dude, get, your, get your head in the game. Yes. Man. Oh my gosh, so much can happen, and by like the third lap, that you can't. It's hard not to let the neg negativity seep in because you're so ready to be done with the bike, and then once you get to the run, you're like, glad that bike's over. But it's constant thinking and progressing. That's for sure. Yeah, and here we go. We're back with our men's leaders. We got Joe Skipper uh, at the front of this race, Christian Hogenhog uh, very close behind in second place. But uh, Joe Skipper, uh, you know, pushing the pace still, you know, right? Like those athletes behind that Sam Long uh, group uh, and uh, Zapunk have not been able uh, to pull out much time as we get right back uh, to Sam Long, who also looks like uh, pointed out uh, yeah. by you earlier that yeah. he has kind of that. Uh, fairing uh in his shirt as well right so uh, right. a lot of these men going uh to make sure they have that space filled uh in between their arms which is amazing because don't confuse that with a beer gut they definitely do not have one <laughs> but i was confused i was like what yeah, yeah. is going on there but hey all the little things it takes all the little things to make the big things happen so that obviously has worked for joe and sam and you know what else i think they're also competing for uh best male uh, like outfit like you yep. know kit going on they've got the sparkles going on and i'm okay with it looking pretty good yeah. sam looking over his left hand shoulder yep. uh to see if ruben as uh, a punk is still there he'll he won't be overly concerned about it but it, it's always a good marker to know mm -hmm. if the effort you're putting in is distancing those behind because i wouldn't say sam's as worried about athletes behind. He's not going to ignore Matt Hansen, that's for sure. Uh, but he certainly wants to be able to catch up. And I think that was a different yeah. athlete that has come through. So we'll, we'll get back to that shot when we can. Uh, but right now we're back on screen uh, in our VinFast performance analysis, uh, this display graphic, as I said, you would find uh, in the VF8 and VF9 VinFast vehicles. Uh, right now we've got Joe Skipper on screen behind uh, Ruben Zapunkt. And those athletes are riding at 24 miles an hour. And so this is actually kind of one of the false flat up a little yeah. bit, right? So yeah, they're that's moving. why he's only going 24 <laughs> miles per hour. But yeah, he's definitely on that false flat clip, but making, again, smooth. He's really low. I was noticing Joe's really low in arrow in that, and that's going to help him heaps in this, uh, on this course. But yeah, once again, it's just, it looks like he's, just, what, eight seconds behind Christian in the front there. And then Ben is still holding at 37 seconds behind at the last check. And then, of course, uh, the, the next two guys are riding, are riding together, three guys with Sam Long. Uh, Andrew and um, Ruben and, and Sam are all riding together. So, 
Yeah, you gotta just work off each other. And yep. Andrew's hanging in there. I mean, he he dropped back to that two, uh, being two minutes plus back, and he's holding on there. So good on him. Yeah, it certainly is. And it was uh, you know seeing him it looked like was making a pass on on Sam Long even right. at that point. So certainly when he got dropped from that front yep. group, he decided he needed to. Uh, it you know, sparks you. Yeah, literally, get, you could be in like the worst mood, and you're like, oh no, I've got to just hang with you. It'll be so much better if I just hang with these guys. All that being said, yes, maybe not what I would say if I was in his ear. I would right. say like nothing. Chill. To, and, and and it's hard because you want to like yeah. you know be part of the crew and you don't yes. want to be dead weight. Yes. But you know these guys are proven. Yeah. Let oh, them yes. push the pace. If they're going to burn matches, do it. If if you haven't had your best Ironman yet, yes, you know get let others set the pace and and do as. As little as you can possibly Absolutely. do for as long as you possibly yes. can is generally a great a great plan for Ireland. I agree. And to your point, maybe like all these like surges Andrew's doing isn't in the best of his interests to be doing right now. Uh, like you said, he might be better suited just sitting 12 meters back in the last person of the group, you know, just to stay with him, just keep him in sight, you know, like Ben is doing, honestly, with Skipper and with Christian is just keeping them in sight, even though he's a little further back. But yeah, this is where, you know, there's a lot going on. Everybody on this course, you know, three loops, they're just being mindful of that and and going with the flow on it and, and, and watching Lauren take her turns super. That's the thing. People think they need to take their turns super aggressively. No, they don't because they need to be very chill. It's so easy to crash. And she did a good job of that there. Yeah. Yeah. Very smooth uh, around that cor corner by Lauren Brennan and back with Andrew Horseball Turner and again, he's he's one that, you know, he's raced as far as, as I can tell. He's raced two Ironmans, or maybe didn't start uh, one of those Ironmans, but an Ironman Wales. You know, he, he had a good mm. swim, a, a solid bike ride, and then ran a three fifteen. Yep. So, yep. you know, I think if that's the run that you've had, be as patient as possible exactly. and, and get yourself uh, to that run with as much energy as you possibly can. 315, you're getting beat by about 40 minutes <laughs> in the in the uh, men's field. You know, they're running 230 Xs, you know. Yeah, We're going to see wrong. them in the 220 X soon, I bet. Uh, but yeah, so he probably needs to think about that. And keep in mind, they're not even halfway through this bad boy. They've got a ways to go. So, he, you know, he knows. He's probably, you know, the hamster in his, his brain right now is like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't make these surges. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> There's Hindsight's always twenty twenty when it comes to that, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Uh, but, you know, working on his uh, his cycling, pushing right. pushing that pace as much as he can. Uh, you know, there's also plenty of ability with Hout Route. Uh, you know, we're, we're nearing the end of Ironman racing for 2022. But if you're feeling inspired to get out and ride, then check out the incredible Hout Route events for 2023. You can ride for three, five, or seven days in some of the most spectacular, spectacular cycling destinations across Europe. And the best part? All you need to do is ride. The Hout Route team takes care of all the logistics for you. All you have to do is enjoy the experience of a lifetime. Register before December 8th to take advantage of the flexible registration benefits. Go to www.houtroute.org. Pretty cool. That I wouldn't mind good. riding for seven days in the house. And just show up. Sounds like all you need to do is show up. <laughs> that is the best part. That's great. Everything else is taken care of for you. Perfect. A little, a little wine time and some <laughs> snacks. That's all you got to worry about. Snacks, wine. Oh, and a bike. We're all good. Easy, easy deal. <laughs> well, there we go. Lauren Brennan still at the front of this race. Last time we saw, she was four minutes and 20 seconds up. So let's take a quick yeah, look we'll... and see if that changed. We haven't seen a gap go through yet, but she is through that 38-mile mark as we saw her go around that corner so we'll get an eye on the split from those chasing women uh here pretty soon but the men we did get another time check on 47 and a half miles uh with hogan hogg and skipper in the lead and ben canute uh still kind of in no man's land right now at 127 uh behind riding in third place Love it. Everyone's doing their thing, not even halfway through. And Lauren's now now on her second loop. And probably it's probably getting hard to see where the other people are. But this loop you can still see because the amateurs aren't the other way. And she's doing a real, really great job of staying out to the left. You know, we pass on the left in the U.S. here uh, just to get around everybody. And I'm sure knowing her, she's probably giving everyone encouragement as she does, uh, does pass them, which I think is... <laughs> she is definitely, like, you know, you hear people say... 
They're the nice. She is really, truly one of the nicest humans uh, on the circuit, in my opinion. She's just always very bubbly and positive, and she, it shows in her uh, in the work she does out there. Or like we said, being able to not have a so not have a great Kona, but then come out here with a positive mindset and look forward to things. Uh, well, coming from someone who had that moniker of the <laughs> nicest person on the circuit as well, I'm sure Lauren would uh, appreciate that greatly. And here we go. We've got our women's uh, chasers uh, behind here with uh, Sky Monch in the purple kit about to come into the screen, taking that left-hand corner right there with Sarah True yeah, they're only right three, behind. Yeah, chipping away another 30 seconds, it looks like. About, what, 346 back? So they're, you know... They're chipping away at that lead, and I'm impressed. Sarah True, I'm impressed because it's she's staying with, you know, just she's like, oh no, I'm not letting you out of my sight, Sky. We're in this together. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I I don't see, especially with how this course lines up, yeah. and there's no like dramatic, stressful points right. as far as like topography wise. You know, unless somebody's really gotten something wrong. Yeah. I don't yes. see these athletes separating. No. You know, one of the athletes would have to make a huge move and a move that was hard enough that they'd yep. have to have the confidence to really commit. Yep. And to commit to a move like that, you're taking matches out of your pocket for the run. Yep. So I think these two athletes maybe are, you know, they're still obviously pushing the pace, but I think getting rid of one another is more right. going to be depending on somebody else making the error. Right. Maybe that's a nutrition error or whatever it is. I don't think it, I think they're both in fantastic shape to do what they, but you know, everyone's experience in building is different, but yeah. And it's funny with the guys, you see them call in each other ahead and all that. I haven't seen Sky do <laughs> no. that yet. You know what I mean? But like she, Sky, pretty good. She never looks back. She could, I'm sure she knows Sarah's there, but she, you know, and now they have to get up here and go on the aid station uh, and get their things. But, but yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure that Sarah will end up taking a pull too, and and they'll just work together through this entire 112 miles. That's that's what it takes. I mean, it really just takes camaraderie to get through this. You have a lot of commotion. 112 miles is stressful. I yeah. know I say that. I, I I like every Ironman. It's like, could we have called this at like 100 miles? It's that last 12 that can get you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never know when it's gonna come for you, but right. it often it often does. Uh, I'm looking, got splits uh, for the men, 347 and a half yes. as well. Uh, Sam Long and Andrew Horsfall Turner and yeah. Ruben Zapunk have gone through at three and a half minutes back mm -hmm. again. So losing more time. And I, right. am, am I right that that's after the uphill section? That is, yeah. yes. And so, and now they're going to only lose more time once they start. The, the other guys start descending. But even Ben right now is what, about almost 90 seconds back from Skipper and Christian. And it's like, he's in no man's land right now. And For he's sure. probably like, wait, I need those other guys to now come. And I bet, I have no doubt if Sam, the Sam Long's group comes, that Ben will try to stay with them. Oh, he will for right? sure. And I, I would I would wonder, depending on what their, their plans are, uh, as far as him and his coach, yes. if, if he's comfortable kind of being in no man's land and making those others right. uh, take it away uh, from him. But Lauren Brandon uh, doing it on her own, uh, still about four minutes up from second and third place. And, uh, We'll continue to keep an eye on this women's race. with a nice overhead shot of our athletes here at the Byer Starks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series, cruising on the uh, nice open roads of Tempe, Arizona. 
looking at it, it makes me want to go back. I've done it so many times that it's just, it's like, I'm a loop girl. I'm all about the <laughs> loops. I don't, I actually prefer loops over like, let's go 56 miles out and turn and back. So I'm loving this. And like I said, I love all the camaraderie with the, the amateur athletes out there. And, and these guys are just making it look graceful. There's tons of room to pass out there at the moment. So that's great. And yeah. Christian's just doing his thing out front and Skipper's just sitting in. He'll get impatient to sit there and he'll take a pool and then he'll say, hey, buddy, you go in front now and take a pool. So they'll just work it. Yeah, but at, at this point for, for Joe to be ha- not even halfway through in the lead, swapping turns, you know, he'll know that the gap is yeah. the, about the same. He might not yeah. know that they're increasing, but they are. They're, they've now got another 30 seconds on those athletes chasing uh, yeah. behind and then Matt Hansen is a further two minutes behind an athlete we haven't chatted about yet is Kyle Buckingham he's yes. 645 back he's an athlete that's recently uh, emigrated to uh, Arizona actually and yes. uh, brought his family to Tucson and uh, doing some training with uh, another one of our Ironman pros uh, Ben Hoffman and uh, awesome. settled into North American life and now he can just drive to Ironman Arizona which is probably good better deal. than being in South Africa, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, good. no, good for him. It's a great place to train. The weather's always great. I know I was just with Hoff recently uh, at an event, and he said the train's been nice there, and the weather's great. And obviously, it's a mecca for triathlon as well as Boulder, you know. So why not have great seasons all the time? So good for, good for him. And he's only 645 back, and we know that he can run also. He absolutely can run. And... and he, He's an athlete that, you know, he's not, he's not going to win from that position. Right. Not with the caliber of athletes that are around him. But he has a strong enough and consistent enough run that he's certainly in a position for a podium right now. Yes. Depending on what some other athletes do around him. Certainly a top five. Um, If it wasn't such a competitive field and we didn't, it's very rare that we get to a race where, you know, I'm thinking there's five six sub 250 athletes probably right. four or five sub 245 and two sub 240s like right. that's a different normally i'd say okay kyle's in a great position he's yeah. you know easily podium but yes. the the caliber of runners right now that are all within yes six minutes of each other is is incredible i.e matt hansen who i believe yeah. and i believe he holds at 234 at least American-wise, uh, the fastest marathon within an Ironman. I'm like 90% sure I have that stat right. Uh, so, yep. yeah, so Kyle's got some work to do uh, with Hanson up there. We know Sam can run, obviously, Canute, Skipper, all of, all of these gentlemen in front of him. So he'd have to have a, a pretty, probably run in the 2, uh, 3X range to get that podium spot for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you're right, that was a 234 okay. at Ironman Texas. Right. Uh, uh, ben Hoffman was a 2:36 okay. at Ironman Florida, which I think was the the, the closest we've seen since then. And uh, he was racing the man on screen, Joe Skipper, and one of the the best North American Ironman battles mm-hmm. I've seen, where you got Ben running a 2 2:36 and not winning the race. Right? Which is, I mean, <laughs> just insane. say that again. Like it's, it's just crazy to me. Like a t- just a casual 2:36, uh, and that insane. doesn't win the race. How? Yeah. I know. That, it was Joe Skipper rode a 4.05. Oh, my goodness. And a 2.39. Yeah. But that was back in the day. Like, and I'm yeah. looking at this. This is two ni- 2019. Yes. Joe Skipper swam a 54, and Ben Hoffman swam a 49. He lost five minutes to Ben right. Hoffman. And clearly no disrespect to Ben Hoffman, no. but he's no Ben Canute yes. when it comes to swimming. Yes. Right? He's close at a minute or two off. Yes. Uh, but so for Joe to close that gap, to three minutes when Ben Canute is put off yes. the feet of somebody. Like yes. that's, that's not like Ben didn't swim fast. He swam as fast as he could. Right. I mean, the bar is just getting raised. <sighs> it like, used to be like, oh, if you break three hours uh, in a marathon for the female side, that's like, that's the new black. Okay, guess what? Now the new black is like 250. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I'm and still working on the first new, the, you know, like is going sub three. So it's pretty amazing to watch the sport grow and evolve. No, it certainly is. And I think it's important to say, you know, talk about races like that, Joe Skipper and his, his results. And, you know, we talk about his top five in Kona and it, not, it being disappointing to right. him. And maybe some people listen and be like, man, whatever, that guy's, yeah. that's a great result. Maybe he's being too hard on himself. But outside of Kona, 
Mm-hmm. It, there's very much an argument to be made that, and Joe Skipper's been making for years, that he's the best Ironman athlete out there. Yep. He, he races so many each year. Yep. You, know, I th- he, you know, I'd have to go, look, this year he didn't do as many, but this will be his fourth. Right. Uh, you know, generally it's, you know, three to four and, and often very, very quick uh, performances. So, you know, he on the day, let's just say this, there is no athlete that gets on a start line with Joe Skipper and isn't worried about him. None. I agree. Yeah. Everyone's, I'd be worried about him too. Yes. Yeah. He's fast. And, and he always delivers. Like he's consi- That's the thing. He's, he's pretty darn consistent at it. Yeah, every once in a while yep. we see like he'll have a mechanical or sure. something out of his control, but like he's he's generally, and he I think he's like allergic to running over <laughs> two fifty. Like I don't, yes. I'm, I'm like try to look at this result sheet I have and I can't find one. Uh, Kona in 2019, he ran a 2:53. Okay, and uh, that was for sixth place. So. And that was for sixth place, not too shabby, <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, pretty good. And we forget he can also cycle and. And even though he said his swimming was his pain point, it I, he did pretty well to show that it's growing and progressing this race. That's for sure. Yep. And uh, on screen right now, we got Sam Long uh, towing this group of three athletes. We could see uh, Andrew Horsfall Turner and Ruben Zapunkt in third wheel uh, at this point. And, and those athletes are going to have to start paying attention. They're getting you know a little close. You know, if if, if you have an athlete that's sitting up and in the drops, it means that they're definitely playing uh, with that kind of legal drafting distance and uh, talking to our head referee, Jimmy Riccatello mm-hmm. yesterday, you know, they're, they're out there and they're um, making sure that uh, they're keeping this race clean for the athletes yep. that are out front and, and not afraid to, uh, you know, give penalties when, when deserved and uh, love to see that uh, we're trying to keep these races as clean as possible. But we got Sam Long at the front pushing the pace, but again, like, <laughs> Again, I wish we could be in the head of these athletes and kind of what race plans are, expectations. But, you know, it's not often that Sam's trying to catch somebody and isn't. Exactly. Right. Right now he's trying to catch. But he always said when I told you that, you know, his pain point was patience. He also said another example was sitting in a group and waiting to attack. No, <laughs> he doesn't do that. He goes, and that's what he's, that's what he's probably doing now. But he, at the same time, he also could be patient if he starts to, like, falter or anything. If, he, if, you know, he's riding with someone else, it might help to benefit off that, you know, to be off them. But I will say, and I'd be the first to call out someone who wasn't sitting 12 meters, everyone has behaving so well on this course because, um, and Jimmy does a great job in his team out there of, of otherwise but everyone i have seen so far is sitting then but it does like even at 12 meters just being engaged really helps the vibe for you so i think that's what's happened in our little pockets of people that we have out there right now uh yeah no absolutely and i think that's uh i think that's well said you have to be very aware yes uh, but it is it's it's a great distraction uh to to be there and, and not have to worry about doing it all on your own but as much of a distraction mm-hmm. is it can be this like poison apple. It can, it, it, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, like, this is cool. Let's stay as long yeah. as possible. When you're just, yeah. And I'm not saying they're doing this, but no. you can absolutely throw yourself away, uh, your race away. You know, yes. if, if if you're riding to keep up with Sam Long, and in his mm-hmm. head, he's like, okay, I'm right now. I'm riding 310 watts because yeah. I know I can run a 241 off of that. Right. And these guys are like, oh, man, if I just hang on for five more minutes, you right. know, that's not what you want to be doing. No, absolutely not. So they're, they'll are they see when it, the first, like, mile of the run, they'll be like, ooh, I shouldn't have gone that hard, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, you, they, they, you know, pretty quick. Uh, you it's, do. It, it comes at you pretty pretty fast, but... Right now, great shot of a Sarah True on in second wheel and Sky Monch in first wheel in this little group of two that we have, uh, chasing Lauren Brandon in first place. But we had ability from our AFC crew to get in touch and chat with uh, Sky Monch. Let's see what she had to say. I gotta hit the beat. I'm just enjoying being warm. Like literally, all I can think about is how happy I am that I'm warm. How am I gonna spend more time here in the winter? That's it, that's all I'm thinking about. (laughs) And I guess I'm racing on Sunday too. Beef with all the girls. I really like this race. I knew 
knew I'd want to race after Kona and try to get my Kona qualification again. It's the end of the season. People might be tired. They might not want to like give the effort required. Um, or there might be some people just like on fire been working hard all season. So you can never count anyone out. And I know that, and I know races don't always go the way you think they will or what you have planned. So just have to be ready for whatever happens and whoever shows up in whatever form. I do think I have a fighting chance on Sunday. I've done a lot of hard Ironman training, two world championship builds this year. And I don't know if we can like draw on what I did in April, but I think I can definitely draw on everything I did in August and September for Kona. So I think I have a fighting chance. The, the good news about where I'm at right now is physically I feel really good and mentally I feel very happy and balanced and things like that. So that goes a long way on race day. And there you heard it from Sky. And let me tell you about Sky. She has a fighting chance, no doubt. I've always, uh, you know, said about Sky, I love that her progression in this sport. And so I have no doubt, even after two world championship builds this year, she will come in to this race. And she's here, even though she's here to qualify for Kona, I also think she's here to win. And I see now that we have Sarah True. I have to say, Matt, I'm digging her kit too. It's going to be a real hard. If I had to like make a winner of like who had the, who wore it best, oh, it'd be tough today. Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll, uh, you know, off, off air, we'll, we'll maybe have, <laughs> well, a, have, have a competition, <laughs> get the results to the, to the viewers later. But, um, yeah, these two athletes looking very, very comfortable and very, uh, very chic, very, yeah. uh, uh, composed and both matching kits to bike, which is, I think, pretty, uh, Style. pretty sweet. I'm liking it all. And there she is, Lauren, still up front. I'm sure we have another time check just to see what, what the lead. Last time we checked it, it was, um, it's, we're still at about 346, and we'll check it the next uh, time to see just if, if, if Sky and if Sarah are kind of making any ground. But as always, Lauren looks smooth and doing her thing out front, and, and she knows that she needs as much lead I mean, it's, and she would tell you this, like she needs as much lead going into the run. She can run. We've seen her do it many times, but these girls are just extra fast. So she needs to come off the bike with a, a, a little bit of a buffer. Yeah, no, she certainly does. And she's going to do her best to, to keep that about four minutes uh, that she mm -hmm. has. And we'll see how well she does at that after this break. Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series. Brought to you in part by Gatorade Endurance, formulated for farther, and by VinFast, boundless together. There you go, another awesome overhead shot of Tempe, Arizona, and beautiful landscape that are uh, both professionals and age group athletes uh, are able to, to ride through and, and compete in today. You know, there's a reason that this race in my opinion, is the most popular. I mean, people like to say, oh, it's an it's a easier Ironman. As we know, there's no easy Ironman. But the town of Tempe really, really takes on in this race. And what I love is like Arizona State University is there. They have a, you know, they have an aid station where you can just feel the energy of like college kids. <laughs> I know right. that always lifted me, like their peppiness. 
they might be coming home from the bars that night. Doesn't matter. They're in good spirits and they're ready to serve me, not alcohol, but you know, all the things I need in an Ironman. So uh, yeah, T Tempe does such a good job and it, it makes this race and everyone of, in the community takes it all in. And I understand why it's a, it's a fan favorite. I'm a favorite of it and I like Hills. So there's a reason. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sam Long getting out of that saddle. One of those uh, mm -hmm. risers on the course, one of the steeper sections of those risers for sure. If you see Sam Long get out of the saddle, still looking over his shoulder a little bit to see who's hanging on. And again, it's, he's not worried about those athletes when it comes to the finish line, but it's impossible to not be aware of them. And for them still, it's still to be annoying. No matter what, no matter what, <laughs> you just don't want it because in the end right. you're like, dude, are these, what are these guys doing here? Right. They, they shouldn't, I'm better than them. Right. Does that mean that I'm not riding well? I'm not catching right. the guys in front of me. Right. And these guys I've never heard of. I'm, inserting that i mean yeah. he knows who room is and yeah uh you know does that mean i'm not performing it certainly right. can can affect your race it, no it messes with your head because as we know sam is super transparent all his trainings on strava um i mean this guy will go ride like you know he has you know he drains his sorrows in training right he'll go out and ride i don't know 200 miles <laughs> it's crazy to me yeah, and no, like crushes it. it he loves it but that's where he thrives and right now he's probably looking back like what the actual is happening here? What, how have I not dropped these guys? So he'll get there though. And uh, he'll, he'll he, again, his patience, his patience will, will prevail in this, in this race today. Well, moving forward, we'll see how patient <laughs> Sam Long is on the rest of this bike ride. This limited edition Breitling Endurance Pro Watch has been made in honor of the 2022 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship presented by Utah Sports Commission. The unique event theme, Legends Rising, is brought to life with a striking orange strap and colorful M dot on the face, and the Ironman 70.3 World Championship etching on the back case. Each watch is limited to 200 pieces, so act fast and order yours today on ironmanstore.com. And we're back on the shoulder of Sam Long as he tries to get through the second lap of the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. And he's stretching things out a little bit. It's certainly not as comfortable for those two athletes to be in that 12-meter-ish uh, zone. Uh, Ruben Zapunk getting stretched out as well as Andrew Horsfall Turner. So uh, Sam Long doing his best to continue to push the pace, but again, just does not seem like he's pulling back anytime. And he's, anytime. He, you know, it, yeah. he literally isn't pulling back anytime. We'll see that yeah. uh, our front two athletes just went through the 56 mile mark at two hours mm -hmm. and nine minutes. And right now on screen, trying to see oh, who no. this I athlete that, is here. That's I think got, that's Danielle. Um, is that Danielle? Yes, I see Lewis on her back there. Uh, yes, it's Danielle. Look, Dan Danielle, uh, it looks like oh. she got a flat. Ah, oh, and it's so easy on the, it's so easy to do. It can happen to any of us. Yeah, and so so right now um, she's you know, she's taken half of her tire off yep. essentially. Mm -hmm. It's going to replace a tube uh, or if she had tubeless do something there, but she clearly doesn't you know, maybe either doesn't have the tube or doesn't have uh, something to be able to finish the job. So right now she's waiting uh, to see if anybody's coming through, if there's tech support mm -hmm. um, to come through and help her out. But right now, you know, it's all it uh, is is disappointment. It and is. At, at this point, you can't even be telling yourself to keep it together because you're no. just like, when <sighs> the thing with yeah. Iron Man is nobody has a perfect race. Right. But when you don't have the ability to... Mm problem solve on your own and right now it, it to her it looks like and it feels like yes. she just doesn't have what it, it need what she needs to be able to no to fix this it's flat. a total buzzkill and the, the the thing is she actually knows t she's a true cyclist she knows she must be missing something uh key to fix it uh and and either she's 
shaming herself that she forgot something in her in her kit there or it's just unfixable and she needs a whole new wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious if it's, uh, you know, she had that. It looked like a tube there, a latex tube. So uh. I'm curious if the valve length was one that didn't work with that disc or if there's something. Right. And, and I've seen that happen before. Right. Athletes, and as soon as they pull it out, they're like, are you kidding? I forgot uh. to put my valve extender on or right. put one in there. Um, you know, not going to insert that that's what's happening at all, yes, but yes. certainly there's something logistically that she thought she was prepared for yes. that she doesn't. Because often you'll yeah. see uh, someone like that if they if they didn't bring a flat kit. And I've seen this with a yeah. guy on screen, actually, yeah. Joe Skipper, I yeah. believe, uh, got a flat and didn't have a kit and you just then are waiting, right? right? Where if uh, you like yeah. are in the middle of changing, like as she was, and yep. she was like halfway done, at that point you were trying to fix it on your own because yes. you thought you had everything, but then you just then you did that. Or right. maybe maybe we've she's been there for a while. And I this know. actually could be what happened. It's possible she had a tubeless setup, put the tube in, and often, mm. certainly in races, if you're trying to fix that um, and you are trying to fix a fix a flat and put it back in, you use a lever and will yes. pinch, right? So and there's so many happen. different things that could happen. Mm -hmm. It's possible she had the tube and then uh, kind of failed in uh, fixing it herself. And I feel there's so many things we can't control out there, and that's one of them. If a nail got in there or if, if just a flat, it can happen to any of us. It's luck of the draw, truly. Okay, and here's, here's the big news right now. We mm -hmm. see these two athletes uh, rolling through pretty quickly in the descent. Uh, ben Canute still hanging in there, lost another 30 seconds, mm -hmm. uh, two minutes down. But also lo losing another 30 seconds is Sam Long. Yep. Uh, so he's at four minutes back with Ruben Zapunkt and Andrew Horsfall turner uh, at 413 and 417. So he's now dropped those two. And, uh, you know, that might actually be a little bit freeing to him, uh, mm -hmm. kind of like the yeah. birds flew from yeah. the coop sort of thing. But <laughs> totally. it, it, it does kind of let you do your own thing a little bit with your effort, but still losing time. Losing time. Incredible. It's hard to lose time. And uh, someone who doesn't often lose mm -hmm. time when he's out on race course is uh, good buddy, Brent McMahon. What's going on, buddy? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, good. And, uh, you know, I think you too, I should just fall back here because I don't, between the two of you, you guys must have like 27 Ironman Arizonas. <laughs> no. That's right, Brent. You bet. It's too, it's too bad we're, we're uh, at least uh, we're, we're commentating together uh, as opposed to out there racing together. That's right. We'll be back, though, I feel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you guys will be out there. So, uh, yeah. Brent, tell us a little bit about... Uh, the back half of your year, you know, I was uh, lucky enough to be able to watch and commentate your uh, win at Ironman was Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, obviously had a few races after that. But tell us a bit about how your seasons panned out since then. Um, yeah, there's not not a whole lot, actually, since Ironman Wisconsin. Um, I just took the time to absorb that and really re recover from it. Um, yeah. I, I was heading off to 70.3 World Championships in St. George. So, uh, the recovery had to be quick and fast, so I, I was just going to see what happened. And, you know, I, I'm never going to miss a race in St. George, as I know uh, Meredith uh, feels the same way. Seems like we like the same races, don't we, Meredith? That's right, but, and I uh, love it. And now you're in your 40s with me. All is well in the world, Brent. Exactly. So. <laughs> all, all, the kid, all the cool kids are in their 40s. Easy deal. <laughs> yeah. um, but, Brent, it really was, and I think for a lot of people watching, awesome uh, – and personally, it was awesome to, to watch you have that performance at Wisconsin. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about today how our memory in triathlon is so short, right? And, you know, you'll have an athlete like a Sam Long in his mind somehow at times he's convinced himself because what happened in St. George, he's not as good as an athlete as he was mm -hmm. two months ago. And, you know, when you have one bad race, that happens. And, you know, you had two or three years where you just, I, I don't often say athletes have bad luck when it comes to races, but like mm -hmm. you just couldn't get yourself to a start line. And how frustrating was that? And how good was it to finally get there and have a performance? Yeah, definitely. You know, as, as high performance athletes, you're always pushing yourself and you're always kind of as good as your last race. And it's, it's so easy to, like you say, ha have a, you know, a short memory and, um, you know, and, and that's just within a season. So 
you know, for me, it was, you know, coming, you know, heading into COVID, I, you know, had a couple of, you know, rough goes and my Ironmans were clicking. And then obviously with COVID that there was a big break there. So, you know, it wasn't a matter of a season for me. It was a matter of like two or three seasons where I just hadn't been able to put together a good Ironman or I just wasn't able to get to an Ironman because of COVID. Or when I tried to get to an Ironman, I had <laughs> other things that kind of got yeah. in the way with, you know, travel and, you know, stuff getting into the U.S. And, you know, so for me to, to kind of get get back and, and finally get that form in Wisconsin and, and get a win, you know, after basically four years, yeah. um, the last Ironman win was in, in Whistler in 2018. So that it just kind of reminds you that, you, you really have to believe in yourself and you have to continue to just stay positive. And I think that's, you know, what Sam is really trying to do right now. He's, he's emotional and he, you know, he takes his hard races really hard, mm -hmm. but I think today, I think you're going to see him, you know, you, you saw it when he was looking at the camera, he was, he was being positive and he was like, Hey guys, I'm here. You know, he was smiling. He was giving the thumbs up, you know, so that, that's, that's a sign of a mature athlete you know, learning from experience and going, okay, you gotta, you gotta put those bad races behind and, and move forward. And you know, it's going to be really interesting to see where Sam gets to today. Yeah, no, I, I, very well said. I think, how hard was it for you? And did you guys have markers? Because you did say it was four years in between, but you're also uh, elf in the room. We're all aging, right? <laughs> right. So like at certain point, like you have to, that has to come into your head, right? Like, is it possible? I just, don't have it anymore like were you and your coach Lance Watson have like specific markers that allowed you to have that confidence yeah you know after years and years of you know training and you know logging the data um you know that's that's the beauty you know we've used training peaks for I don't know over 15 years now um and I've been working with the same coach Lance Watson for 25 years so the the ability to kind of just flick back four years, five years, six years, and look at the data and look at the numbers. I've been using power on the bike uh, for, you know, well over a decade. And, you know, so so it, it's super easy to, to look at the data and look at the information and go, okay, are we where we used to be? And, you know, or are we capable of winning a race? And, and you can look at that information. And, you know, going into Wisconsin, I was seeing numbers that, you know, I was doing, you know, several years ago and, you know, same with the run and, you know, I was doing mileage on the swim. So, you know, that, that allows an athlete to kind of dig in a little bit and go, okay, no matter emotionally where I am, if I just look at the data and if yeah. I just trust my coach, it, it's there. And, and so you're, you have that chance to sort of put the emotion away and just go, you know what, I can do this. And so on that, like, kind of positivity note, right now on screen, we're, you never want to be standing still in an Ironman. So if you're Danielle Lewis, and we've heard that it's confirmed she actually doesn't have a tube uh, with her, uh, like, what are you doing in your – what's going through an athlete like, like her head right now? Yeah, obviously, you know, when you first get that flat, you're just like, oh, man, this is, this is no good. But, okay, how do I, how do, I do this efficiently? How do I stay calm? You know, as you're rolling to a stop, you're like, okay, what what's the plan here? I okay, hop off, pull the wheel out. You know, you got a through axle, which you got to get a Allen key out to undo it. Um, do I have a tube? Um, again, you know, you make decisions as an athlete going into a race of how much yeah. weight you're going to carry. Are you going to take the spare tubes? Are you going to take one CO2 or two, two CO2s? Um, and so as, as you get that flat, you're just like, okay, how do I, how do I manage this both actual physically changing the two, but also you got to remember, okay, I got to keep, I got to keep calm. And if you can try and stay positive and just say, okay, well, I'm, I'm taking a little break right now. It's also important to remember if it takes you 10 minutes, 15 minutes to change that flat and you carry on, you need to stay on your nutrition. Um, because still time is going on so a, a lot of times you know people forget you know if they've taken a 10 minute or 15 minute break uh, with a, a flat or something they they forget their nutrition and then they they try and make it up once they get going and then stuff unravels even more
Yeah, for sure. And it does look like, as I thought, she does have a tube in hand, but clearly mm. there was something wrong with that tube. Wasn't able to uh, to, to fix it, or that could have been her uh, spare or her dispatch tube. But uh, Brent, we're going to let you go here in a second. But before that, just give us your uh, impressions on the race so far, and we'll, we'll let you stick to the men's side because we have uh, Heather Jackson for the women's here in a second. But what do you think as far as what you've seen now and what we've got to look forward to? Yeah, I think um, you know it's interesting seeing those those moves early to get to the the front of the race uh, with Hogan Hog and Skipper. Um, I, I think you guys have covered a lot of good information that you know they they wanted to get to the front fast, but they they may pay for that towards the end. But both of those guys are also really strong, uh, typically on the bike. So I, you may not see them fade on on the bike, but you you might see that sort of early effort pay. You know give give them some pain on the run um you know we're looking at sam long right now i I think he's a guy that's he's just decided you know what i'm doing my thing and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush to the front of the race um you know i i think we're gonna see that time gap close now with sam these three laps on the bike it's very deceiving and you know it's easy to kind of lose a lot of time on that last lap especially when you're lapping more the amateur athletes it's a little bit more confusing so yeah i think this last lap you're going to see a lot of movement even guys further back kyle buckingham will probably continue to move forward um you know the gaps either are going to close or some of the gaps are going to widen right up and then once we get to the marathon it's i don't know it's going to be a fun one <laughs> yeah it certainly is i think uh, yeah all very well said from someone who's been out here before a few times <laughs> one here and uh, how many second places did you get here brent uh, I think three second places. There you go. Sweet. Meredith, how many did you get? Um, I, there was a year I was like fourth, third, second, and then three firsts here. And we, we won together in 2014, Brent. That was awesome. Yes, and did. he's a 47 swimmer here. See? You, you fast go. little fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it was good to see you guys reunited uh, here at Ironman Arizona. Brent, thanks so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. There you go, Brent McMahon, a previous winner here at uh, Ironman Arizona. And we're going to take a quick commercial break and get right back to the action. Back with our leaders, Christian Hogenhog and Joe Skipper at the front of this race. And uh, they're through 66 miles at this point, uh, cruising through a faster section of this course. So we're going to get a split here on uh, Ben Canute. Let's not forget, Ben Canute's out there as well. Right. And Sam Long chasing. Uh, great, great stuff from Brent McMahon. Uh, love uh, having Brent uh, and his, his head on kind of what these athletes are thinking. And, uh, you know, obviously great to get a little bit into his head on kind of what he went through the last few years right and then he wins Ironman Wisconsin which is amazing and as a true Canadian that weather was perfect for him uh given it was a little cooler out this year but he's he's a good he's a good egg that one and I I always love getting to race at races that he's at he's like the old we're both like the older statesmen and like I'm sure Sam Long looks up to someone like Brent uh and Brent saying hey man be patient yeah you know be mature in your in in your uh, ability to be resilient after things happen to you in a race and Sam's on that path yeah he certainly certainly is and you know we we learn we learn along the way. <laughs> we learn along the way. I'm <laughs> still learning, dude. I've done seventy some Ironmans, and there's not one Ironman where I'm like, 
I learned something. You know, I'm just a little slow, Matt. That's what it is. <laughs> I, I will say, be wary of the coach or athlete that says they know everything about oh, yeah. uh, this sport. You, you know immediately that they don't. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good sign. But uh, these two athletes certainly do and uh, continuing to have uh, great success at the front of this course. Setting, setting really, really fast pace, you know, at this point through 66 miles uh, here and a swim and 320. That's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty quick. And, you know, we can expect them to have a fast bike time probably in the, you know, between 405 and 408 at this point, probably like 406 zone. Uh, but depending on kind of, you know, how they've dosed their energy and, and what happens with those athletes chasing behind. Well, yeah, and it, it does look like uh, Ben Canute is, is probably getting closer to that second pack coming. Yeah. But, hey, he's being patient. Someone like him we know can run really fast. So he's just doing his thing, biding his time, and knowing that, hey, this is my first Ironman. I don't know what to expect. It, hurt, it hurts so good, you know. So right. he'll, he'll, he'll learn that at, at mile 25 but, um, of the run. But, yeah, so that's, that's what's happening. He's riding by himself. By himself right now and hopefully you know he might get a little spark if if the if sam long's group comes up on him here soon yeah and i think you know the the timing of it of sam possibly catching ben and, and we haven't seen sam go through the same split that ben did yet but we're expecting it pretty soon is the, the timing of it's good right mm -hmm. because generally if you were to have in my opinion like kind of a a generic race plan mm -hmm. it's always you know what if you can save some energy and and push the pace right now, it looks like Sam Long might be like experiencing like the beginnings of a cramp. Yeah. Um, there's there's really no situation where you're just going to stand up for that reason, or right. it's preventative. Uh, right. As you said, yeah. this course is different that it you're is. just always in the same position. So yeah. just getting out and stretching that might be part of his plan. Doesn't look like he's locked up or anything, but no, he's but. drinking. He's the thing of the matter is I think also he's on that dis, like descent, if you will. And maybe he just need, you know, he's a tall guy. He might need to just stretch his back out a little bit. Yeah. And, and yeah, hopefully not the worst is those quad cramps. Oh. Hopefully he's not getting the starts of that. That's when I say you got to have some mustard packets. <laughs> that works for me, everybody. Oh, just letting you know. Uh, yeah. hard, hard pass. <laughs> From hard, McDonald's. Hard pass for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on, on screen right now, Sam Long, uh, has gone through that 66 mile mark and and still losing time. So yeah. he's 415 now uh, to the two leaders, Joe Skipper and Christian Hogenhog, Ben Canute 242. So Sam's a minute and a half behind Ben Canute at this point. Uh, but Ruben Zapunkt, uh has been dropped as well. So he's 50 seconds behind Sam Long. So it's not so much that mm -hmm. Sam Long is like losing time or right. throwing away time. It's just those two athletes are really pushing the pace. And you could say... Yeah because they're in front, that they're in the best position, which clearly, like, logistically they are. Right. But if Sam is being patient and not pushing, and they're not being patient and really extending themselves, then it's just playing into Sam's hands. And yeah, and now he, he, he now he's not annoyed anymore. He's dropped he's he's yeah, yeah. dropped him by like whatever, forty five seconds, but now he's riding solo. So now he's on the hunt to try to catch Ben. Yeah, for sure. And uh Andrew for her horseball has gone through at 5.45, so he's lost yep. 40 seconds to Zapunkt and a minute and a half to Sam. So that answers our question of those two athletes were kind of riding outside themselves to stay with uh, Sam Long, and uh, certainly they were. And, and Sam's uh, now trying to do his best to, to bridge up to Ben Canute, right. which is no easy feat. Like, Ben Canute no. is one of the best cyclists in right. the sport. And, again, he's kind of in unknown territory, but I think mm – -hmm. Uh, he certainly has the ability and the skill to do well over the Ironman distance. I agree. And I think also what Brent said is I think these guys like the Kyle Bunkyhams and, and then Matt Hansen, I think they're going to keep rolling through this course. And we're, you know, like I said, we're only 66 miles in, give or take. So they still have a ways and, oh, my goodness, so much can happen uh, from the second half in the bike. And then, oh, yeah, just a casual marathon after that. Oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> His party hasn't even really no. started yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, the, all this is kind of a preamble, right? And sure. It, it is a preamble for positioning, right? Like yeah. clearly like, quote, unquote, when the race starts. Yep. If you're four minutes ahead, like, yeah. you know, that's that's something. Um, but it, it does... It gives time for, and I don't say this with any disrespect, but yeah. the, the pack fodder to possibly yes. get out of the race and like our pre-race favorites are all kind of yep. now in a position where those are the athletes that, that we're talking about. And, and clearly pre-race favorite is, is the man on screen and, and there's, uh, there's plenty of reason for that.
There is, and he's earned his right to be there and to be a favorite. He's d done his time. I mean, the, the kid is only 26 years old, and he's not even met in his prime. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm afraid of what his prime looks like in his 30s. I mean, he's only 26. I remember when it was like a year ago when he was 25, it was like, I can rent a car now. I mean, the guy is young and so works so hard and is able to reap the benefits of that hard work, and it's only going to get uh, better as he keeps growing in the sport. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, you know he he's he's an athlete that's yeah consistently gotten better. Yes, and seems to have consistently learned from mistakes yes. and, and changed even uh, kind of in his brashness uh, yes. in racing as well, yeah. right? So he's he's not uh, ignoring any part of his game that he can improve. No, and hey, like me, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Like I, I so I'm not knocking him for that. I think it's it's great. He's transparent. He lets he'll let you know, but he's also maturing in the sport. Like we talked about, when he when when things out of his control uh, happen, whether that's sickness, bike crashes, a penalty, or whatever, and it's it's taken time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. I'm sure he's still working on his patience. We all are, uh, and I'm considerably older than him, and I'm still working on it. So I think that you know he'll find his way, and he's on a mission now. You know he he didn't do Kona this year. He put put all his effort towards uh, World 70.3. It didn't go as planned. And he, like he said in his um, his clip, he wasn't going to do Arizona. And it's funny, sometimes when we think that we shouldn't do something and we end up, like initially, and then we decide, no, I'm going to put my big boy pants on. I'm going to do this. And he did that. And now it could really uh, pan out and be the best decision he ever made. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's... It's hard, and I think you're accurate in the big boy pants thing because <laughs> in the end, he was just bumped and he had yes. to get himself out of that negative space and maybe yep. pouting a little bit, uh, <laughs> not to not to downplay it at all, but right. we've all been there and you have self-doubt and mm -hmm. doubt and like direction and all that stuff. And uh, him him being here, you know, this was always a plan for him to right. do this race. So to, to stick to that plan is, uh, that's part of, you know, the process of an athlete is, uh, you know, kind of as long as your body can do it and it's smart, you know, sticking to your plans, but also it sets him up, right? So yes. this, I think the important yes. thing and why maybe it was so hard for Sam to not have a good race mm -hmm. in St. George is the fact that he didn't go to Kona to focus right. on it. So right. if he can get his Kona spot now mm -hmm. and then really have a big build to 70.3 worlds in Finland next year, which is... Yes before Kona that yes. really sets up for an athlete like Sam to be able, because he's, he's very unique in yeah. the, the ability for him to be a great Ironman athlete. And then, as he said, one of the best 70.3 athletes in the world. So he, he has the ability to go ahead, do a 70.3 worlds before Kona, that not take anything out of him, him have enough right. time to do some training and get back to it. And this race allows him then, right. if he wants to not have to do any Ironman next year. Exactly. And you know what? He had courage to not take his slot to Kona this year. Courage I don't have. And then I walked that whole Queen K. <laughs> but I'm just saying that took a lot of guts to not go and do that this year. And then so I think you're right, Matt. Like if he just put all his qualifies today and then he has a whole almost full year to focus on both world championships next year. He sure does. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching Sam put his effort in in those races next year and uh, throughout the rest of the course today as this woman on screen. She's uh, still got a lead. She's still hanging on yeah. to it. Lauren Brandon at the front of Biostark's Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States series. We'll have more when we're back. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight, to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport. To delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond 
The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. And we're back with our women's leader, Lauren Brandon, at the front of the course. Yes, she's doing her thing. She's being patient. Last I checked, she had a three-minute lead. So, yeah, it's getting whittled down a smidge, but she's still holding her own. And they're, they're further and further along. Three-minute lead is great. Stay there. Or even if it chips away a little bit, it'll kind of ebb and flow. So she's holding her own. She's been relaxed. She's still smooth like she was when she started this, uh, this bike, or rather even the swim. She's been smooth the whole time. Yeah, no, she certainly is, is smooth and calculated and able yep. to, you know, continue to, to have that smooth effort that we're used to seeing uh, from Lauren Brandon. And we haven't we haven't seen splits here super recently. I'm just going to check again and to see if we've had any recent updates. Nothing uh, overly uh, recent, or three minutes still to those athletes that we saw behind Sky Monch and Sarah True. But impactful for Lauren's race is the fact that Danielle Lewis is – yeah, out of it at this point. Yeah, it's more or less like we don't know. Yep. Now we've heard she's gotten a spare and she's yes. moving. Uh, well, I don't know if she's moving yet, but yeah. she's moving towards getting back on the course. If she's lost less than ten minutes, mm -hmm. she theoretically still has a chance at a top five. Yes, and if she's like yes out of her mind, a top three. Well, it's such a hard call, Matt, because she's a former winner of, of, of Indian Wells, and that's coming. It's like you make that game day decision, like, God, if I've lost more than, if she loses 20 minutes, it's like, what do you do? Maybe I just bottle this fitness and try to, you know, at the end of the day, I know she does this for a living. You know, she she did leave her job to go pro full time and focus on this. And, you know, if she's going to be out of that, maybe she she does take that you know, this was a bad thing that happened in a race and all right, we'll get the next one. And so as pro athletes, we have to make that decision in the moment. Obviously she doesn't want, she wants to finish what she starts. You know, we all do, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's out of our control. No, and it's the hardest part being positive. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that yeah. a lot today and there's a lot of reasons uh, you can doubt yourself, but uh, Danielle Lewis is going to be able to yeah. put herself forward and uh, continue to, to try to get on course. But right now I'd, I'd like to welcome Mark Baker, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Biostarks. Biostarks is the official biomarker testing kit of Ironman Global Series. How's it going, Mark? Hey, doing well, thanks. How are you doing? Awesome. We're doing we're doing well. Great race. Uh, appreciate it. We're at, uh, in 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 the great seats to be able to see all the action and uh, excited to be able to chat with you a little bit. But first, I'm going to ask the the obvious question. Yeah. What does it mean for Biostarks to be the title sponsor of the Air, Ironman Arizona? Yeah, yeah, great question. So uh, we're a fairly new partner uh, announced in Kona, and uh, we're really excited about the partnership. You know, we're uh, Biostarks is a is a preventative health and wellness company, and uh, we focus on on performance uh, athletes, helping uh, athletes just get you know better, get ready for training, and uh, and, and be stronger there. And so we can't think of a, a better partner than than Ironman to be able to to uh, to work together to, to help out athletes. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, for, for those watching that are thinking, you know, what's Biostarks? You know, maybe tell, can you tell us a little bit about your sports test kit and how it can benefit athletes? Yeah, right. So, uh, again, we're a preventative health and wellness company and, and, we're, and uh, we do biomarker testing. What that means is we test blood and uh, just a little finger prick, four drops of blood, you send it into our lab and and, uh, and we give you results in about the seven days or so. And what we test is across a couple uh, different areas, different categories, like um, amino acids, fatty acids, uh, some hormones, um, uh, vitamins, and minerals. And they're all you know, specifically selected to, uh, to, to be sports performance oriented. So uh, and we, and then we have them also kind of bracketed by and filtered by the, uh, the, the type of benefit that you're looking for. Like you're trying to uh, increase strength, for example. Uh, which biomarkers are the best and the ones to work on, you know, some of the amino acids to work on for that, or whether it's it's uh, strength or endurance um, or recovery, you know, we can uh, we can show you where you're high or where you're low and where, where you'd like to be to be training harder. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of biomarkers, obviously, uh, that you could test. Why do you choose those specifically? Right, so these this is a panel that uh, that we created, in, you know, internally, our science team created internally. They're very specific markers. Like sometimes, if you go to a uh, get a blood test or something done, you get a standard panel. What we wanted to create was a very specific panel focused on sports and sports performance. So all of our biomarkers have been selected specifically 
for sport and sport performance. And uh, they're all when you when you get your results on site, you have a uh, uh, when you when you see a specific biomark, we have uh, scientific references for every single one that we've. Uh, that shows here's why these are important and here's why they're they're good uh, good to follow for your study. Yeah, that's that's great. And you know, we obviously we're talking a lot about athletes here, but what about uh, you know, is this something that coaches and trainers can can get a hold of and, and use for their benefit as well? Yeah, and yeah, another great question. So where our our, our main site is our result site, uh, where where uh, athletes would get their results. Uh, it's very tailored to, um, we give personal recommendations, uh, uh, you know, very specific recommendations on nutrition that people can use to, to help them. Uh, we also have a, a, a pro site, and that allows people who are training uh, you know, with a coach or have a, have a personal trainer that can help them kind of guide them through some nutrition decisions and what some of these biomarkers might mean in a, in a more specific level. So it allows coaches and trainers to be able to manage a set of uh, a set of athletes that they work with to be able to recommend uh, testing, uh, nutrition, and then to be able to follow up and chart that over time. Yeah, and how, how important is that in the, you know, we talk a lot when we're watching these races about coaches and plans and athletes like building up to specific races. How important is it for us as athletes to be able to like kind of know what, where we're at and what we're ready for before we either start training for or get to the start line. Right. So uh, another great question. So when we, we've talked to, uh, you know, a lot of different athletes and uh, people who have been former world champion, you know, at Ironman and, you know, we, uh, they often say that we sometimes we're just kind of a little bit blind on what are exactly where we might be missing something or just uh, having a hard time. Uh, just kind of breaking through the next, you know, that that wall that uh, that they they find out they do some tests and they find out that they're that they're just you know maybe deficient in a in a couple of those biomarkers. So being able to know this at any time and uh, to take a test and quickly have the results and and know clearly what it is and be able to formulate a plan to get back on track, I think it's a, incredibly helpful. Uh, and we you know we we look at it as something that can give a give that advantage. You know, you you know people look at how can they shave off. Uh, you know, a little bit of time here and there and, you know, a little bit better bike and the wheels and everything. Like how, how can they, uh, how can they optimize their nutrition to do the same thing to give a, a little bit of a competitive advantage? Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, constantly, certainly over the last year, what we saw uh, at the world championship and, you know, what we're seeing here today is that, you know, athletes are doing things that we didn't think was possible. And we're talking about, just as you said, bikes, you know, and everything that you can kind of get that advantage. And I think often we're overlooking the fact that, the most important piece of equipment and weapon is uh, is the body. We right. got to make sure it's ready to go, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, uh, for for folks watching and athletes uh, around the world doing Ironman, where where can we go to get a little bit more information on Biostarks? Yeah, the, the best place to go is uh, our website, Biostarks.com. We uh, talk about the different uh, uh, kits that we have and and what and all the different biomarkers that we test for. Again, we talk about uh, why these are important, um, and we can break it down again. If you're looking to, to focus on strength or endurance or recovery, you know which biomarkers to track and uh, which ones to be specific about. So, um, yeah, biostarch.com is the best place to go. That's awesome, Mark. Can't tell you uh, how much we appreciate you taking your time out of your day and joining us, and uh, clearly uh, getting uh, Biostarch to be a title sponsor here at Ironman Arizona. Ironman Arizona, really appreciate that and look forward to more with this partnership yeah absolutely we do too we're looking forward to uh finishing up this year and then uh going strong into 2023 awesome thanks so much mark and enjoy the rest of your time out there watching the race all right all right thanks we sure will all right bye-bye there you go great insight from mark and we're seeing on screen now meredith danielle back on course you know and by my math i mean she definitely lost probably a good chunk of time, but you know what? She made the decision. Well, I got a little rest. <laughs> I'm going to get back out there. And she looks good. I mean, like you said, if she only lost 10, 15 minutes, there's a still a way to get back on. So, and she can do it. At least she's probably like, well, I'm not swimming. So I've got my bike and run. <laughs> so this is perfect. This is where I, I'm a, I'm a do athlete by pedigree. I'm going to go on and do my thing. So good on her for making that decision. Um, because I do think she lost a good bit there trying to get her, uh, her wheel fixed tire. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, absolutely. She's doing a, a great job 
of uh, getting back out on course. And, uh, you know, we're excited to get a little bit more of a viewpoint on, on what she's what she's doing there and what she had to, to go through. Uh, but again, tell us a little bit about now specifically, what's her mindset where she's at right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's so bummed, but she, it, you know, she's bummed. She's worked so hard to get into this second build of the Iron Man. And again, but she can't control it. But what she can control is her attitude. And she's smiling. She's not yelling at anybody. I know her as a human. She's nice. <laughs> so she, she's, Okay, she's upset still, understandably. Uh, she doesn't have some kind of part, and we're watching it. And, and now uh, it was fixed. It looks like she got what she needed, and she ran to put it back on. <laughs> okay, she did, and she got going. So she can use that fuel to yeah. make it go faster right now. Well, I think what's important there is you might not have uh, heard exactly yes. what she was saying, but she said... I for like I I didn't yeah. have it. It's yes. my fault. It's, her it's fault. on me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So like that's at least yeah. There you know there can't be. It, it's no. easier when the the quote unquote blame is on yourself. Totally over like thinking that is out of your control. And clearly getting a flat yes. out of your control. But yes. um, now she knows. I'll tell you what. She's I learned <laughs> never starting a race again without, without a, what a she spare needed. Tube for sure. And now she's mad at herself. So she's like. She's having an internal chat with herself, like, you better hustle. <laughs> and yeah. she's hustling. So she'll be fine. She, this is where she shines uh, in the bike and the run. And so she'll get back. I, I really believe she'll get back in the mix. And kudos to her because she did lose a bit of time there uh, with her mechanical. Yeah, no, she did. And uh, news out on course going through 56 miles. Big, big mm -hmm. moves. Uh, Lauren Brandon only now has seven seconds on Sky Maj and Sarah True, or at least through that last time. Uh, through the split, and uh, Renee, Renee Kiley has moved to 5.30 uh, behind, so moving up pretty quickly. So that shows me is that Lauren Brandon actually mm -hmm. lost a big chunk of time, um, and so, you know, we're not sure what happened there, but uh, to me, at the rate of speed that she lost time, something, maybe she got a flat and fixed it or mm -hmm. dropped something, something happened out on course. Right. Right. Uh, to make her lose two and a half minutes in a very, very short so period of time, right. not just to Sky and Sarah, but also to Renee Kiley. Yeah, and kudos to Renee Kiley. You know, she trains, she is a hard trainer too. She really trains hard and is trying to get that Kona Q early, but she's only five and a half minutes down on the lead. That's that's impressive. I mean, she traveled here internationally. Uh, you know, she's Australian. I'm, I'm impressed with her race so far, only being five minutes down. Pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean, she's had some mm -hmm. great results in, yeah. in years past. Obviously, was able to get herself to uh, Kona to race. I yep. believe that was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up. It was either Hamburger Frankfurt yes. uh, that she got her qualifying spot um, at a few years ago. And so she now is, uh, you know, has that Kona experience and wants to get back there. It, it's kind of hard, you know, it should be hard to qualify for Kona. Right. That's the, the whole point of the thing. Hard. Yep. But it's always, you, you like to be at a race where yep. you're like, maybe somebody doesn't want their spot. <laughs> where like here, everybody's taking their spot. No chance you're getting no a, chance. your roll yeah. down no at this chance. point. So right. it's a, that's a lot to, to be someone it like is. Renee and know that she's going to have to be a mm -hmm. couple like very, very good favorites yes. to be able to get that qualifying spot. Uh, that's a challenge, but she's she's up for it. And right now she's in fourth fourth place. And a lot of the thing with Iron Man is just yep. putting yourself in the position to capitalize if somebody has an error or messes yep. up and, and she's in that position. And, and Danielle Lewis is, is one that had an error and a problem already. And uh, she's trying to make up for that. Hopefully she doesn't try to do it all in the next half a lap, but um, she's, she's a smart woman and I, I'm sure she'll take her time to do so, and, and we're going to keep an eye on Danielle and the rest of this race after we get back from a commercial.
Mm-hmm. Back on board with Danielle Lewis cruising through uh, this bike course here at uh, Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast United States series. She's doing great, doing her best to get back there, but she's got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of women that are uh, pretty pretty far up the road at this point right. uh, that she's going to need to to catch. So mm -hmm. uh, it's great that we've got uh, this shot of Danielle and, and doing her best to get back up there. But uh, certainly uh, the race is at the front with Lauren Brandon, Sky Monch, and Sarah True all within arm's reach, uh, so to speak, up at the lead of this race. I know. And you know what? I give her so much credit because she could. E it's easy to call it in that scenario. Like, I'm just standing around trying to fix this part. But she, you know, she did it. She got back on and did it. And it's funny. We've all had, like, crazy things happen. I remember, I, I don't know if you remember this, Matt. I lost my saddle for, thir <laughs> for 30 miles of a 70.3. And I was like, you know, but I'm like, well, I can move forward. And now she can move forward because she's got her... Uh, her wheel replaced, the tires replaced. So, and she's riding like she's hustling, you know, she's like ticked at her, probably at herself. If she forgot something, you know, as she said, I knew she wasn't yelling at anyone else, but she was like, it's my fault. I forgot this part. And so right. now she's like, oh no, you're going to get this in. Uh, so she still has plenty of time to, to keep making a move. I know she lost some time, but no doubt she can get back in the mix. Yeah, no doubt. And, and uh, she'll get back in the mix, mm -hmm. but she might not be in the mix till mile 21. Correct. Of the marathon, yes. right? Uh, yes, it's going to take time. Yes. And if we see her in the mix any time, like, yeah. well before that, yeah. then we're not going to see her in the mix at mile 21. Of the no, and <laughs> you know? let's not forget, obviously, uh, years ago, Chrissy Wellington got a mechanical, right? And she still won Kona, so right. you just never know. But I don't think it was as long as, as Danielle was just on the side of the road there. But, hey, anything can happen. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, we say that a lot here. Uh, yes. Anything can happen. Anything's possible. That's right. And then uh, we, we do see Melanie McQuaid uh, has yes. gone through in fifth place as well. 825 back uh, from the leaders. And so just about three minutes back from fourth place, Renee Kiley. And one we haven't gotten splits on yet, looking forward to seeing her go through this next time zone, is uh, known as one of the best cyclists in the sport uh, on the women's side, Jen Annette. Uh, is, is yes. out on course as well, right? So um, yes. she's going to be moving through, uh, moving back up towards the top five. And then Ayueda still holding on to the top 10. You know, we kind of expected her to lose some time uh, out there on the bike course today. But, you know, she, she can loop as far as podiums and top fives are considered, she can lose 15, 20 minutes and still yeah. be like, quote unquote, in the mix. Yep, because of her run. But yeah, I agree. There's a lot of, a lot that can happen in the next, you know, 40 miles on the bike and then a, just a casual uh, marathon to go. Where really, as you and I know more than anyone, that's when the real race can start sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you think it starts when the gun goes off, but it certainly right. does not. Right. And she and I, Ayueda, you know, she just recently won uh, Waco and she ran, you know, 121 and she had no one really pushing the pace so she, we know she can run so we'll see how how it goes here as time rolls on yeah absolutely and uh yeah still out there smooth uh ready to go here in arizona uh but other races to keep your eye out in the balearic island of mallorca is a training paradise for triathletes and host to the zafiro ironman 70.3 Alcudia, Mallorca, one of the largest Ironman 70.3 events in the world. Fast course in magnificent, sunny Mallorca. This race has been a global favorite for over a decade. On May 13th, 2023, set course for Spain's Balearic Islands and make the Zafiro Ironman 70.3 Alcudia, Mallorca a race destination. Sign up now at Ironman.com. Always wanted to get out there. Good excuse to do so. I need to get to Mallorca. Yes, please. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, I'm I'll bring it. the two kids. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work. That's but a, I, I, think it, I think it's friendly. There's like, you know, lots of stuff to do there. So you are a brave over woman. Time. Uh, over time. Over time. Willing to, to travel with two children over there. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, still with Danielle Lewis, uh, doing her best to get back to the front of this course. Uh, plenty of action still out on course. 
with uh, the men's race still moving along. Joe Skipper in the lead. Ben Canute now at three minutes down. Sam Long, 435. Zapunked, 615. And Andrew Horsfall is at 749. Matt Hansen at 842. Yeah, so they're still going strong here, but I mean, they're going to be on the run before we know it, and, for sure. And here's a little yeah. recap of, yep. uh, we had Lauren Brandon, a couple different points of the, yeah. the bike ride here, looking uh, over her shoulder, but, uh, you know, she's she's lost a little bit of time. You know, we saw her earlier in that shot have to slow down uh, for some emergency vehicles that uh, had to be out on course, didn't look like she ever put a foot down. So no. as far as 100%, yep. she lost some time in those situations we saw on screen. Right. She didn't lose two and a half minutes right. in those. You know, that's maybe 15, 30 seconds. Yeah. But it can it can rattle you a little yes, bit. Yes, of course. But I do think we did expect yes. those two women at some point to get on the accelerator to to try to move through and to test each other. Like, yep. if Sky is trying to... Yep. get something out of Sarah's run yes. legs or vice versa. Uh, yes. This is when they're going to do it. And right if they're now. doing it, Lauren might lose two minutes and 15 miles. Like, Absolutely. That's and they're more than halfway through. And so that's what I think that's, that they're just trying to stay as a group. And now maybe Lauren is like, all right, I've got these two to to try to feed off of. And I'm going to try to stay with as, as much as I possibly can here. And that's like we talked about the smart thing to do in this scenario. Uh, but like, yeah, the, the, the women's race is it's coming together. Obviously, Danielle's still going strong here coming off that. But, you know, we have Mel McQuaid, who's, you know, our, our, our statesman here. You know, she's I'm always so impressed with her. She's her goal is truly to go sub nine, win an Ironman at 49 years old or and or qualify for Kona. So she's on the hunt. And I have no doubt she'll do one of those three today. I, th I feel like it's a good sub nine day if she can hold it. Come on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if there ever was uh, a day like that on this course, today seems to be one of those days. You know, we're not seeing, you know, we've got cactus. Yes. <laughs> not pine trees. So it's a little bit harder to judge the wind. But generally with kind of the low uh, shrubbery, you can see the winds moving through a course like this. And, and we're not really seeing that. You can even see it on kind of the way athletes are moving. Uh, their bodies on the bike out on course. Uh, but, it, you know, you can tell it's fast. There's, yes. there's not a lot that these athletes are having to push through. Right. And what we're seeing now, they're going up that incline a little bit and we'll see them fly down here before we know it. So uh, th this is always the part where the strong muscle, like you can gain time on people. And this is where you need to show your watts on this, this harder stretch out on the beeline until you make the turn and fly back, uh, fly back to the transition. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, you know, it, it is interesting. There's not often courses where you have like the sustained. Yes. I'm riding this pace yep. and then I'm riding this pace, but they're both, they're pretty, pretty different efforts and paces. Exactly. And like the, the, there's a time to go fast and a time to just, I strongly recommend as especially on the third lap when after they make those, that last turn on the beeline that they soft pedal a little bit because the wind will carry you and you could use that time to get hydration, nutrition, tuck in and like not kill your legs before you are about to go run a marathon. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing, right? Trying right. to turn our best to not yes. uh, burn too many matches. And like I said earlier, it's kind of, trying to do as little as you can yes. while putting yourself in a good position. And again, that might be what we see some of our uh, athletes doing up front. So right now seeing going through that splits yep. is through 66 miles. Mm -hmm. Sky Monch now yep. has, has gone through in the lead. Sarah True still one second behind, but Lauren Brandon already lost 30 seconds to yeah. those two athletes that have caught and now passed her. And we'll get more information on uh, and, and shots of those women at the front of this race uh, when we get back from a commercial. Stay loose before he throws it down. 
That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The Hyperbolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And we're back here at BioStarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States Series. We are here, and I was just scoping out the, you know, the men are past 76 miles, and I really believe they're going to hit that, um, that marathon, and we're going to be talking about the run here, Matt, before we know it. But Skipper, man, he's still out in front cruising he's doing, doing his thing and you know as i see in the last check at least that you know sam sam and ruben's group there and andrew they're like well no actually sam's now solo mission right and he's about to probably catch ben here before we know it and maybe they'll ride together and feed off each other to try to um you know hunt, hunt down the front too yeah yeah and it's it's funny and i've been expecting that and yeah. those, those gaps have have narrowed I've been, I've been expecting that for sure but Sam and Ben are actually kind of at the same distance they've been for yeah. the last like 30 miles. Yep. It's just Joe is continuing. Joe and uh, Christian are continuing to open that gap just 15 seconds by 15 seconds. But again, right, right now on screen, Danielle Lewis, we were able to chat with her earlier this week with our Fighting Chance crew. Let's see what she had to say. Run that video this place. No, I'm not. So you see, so run out that way. There's a dirt, it's like a fresh dirt path. You loop around, you come back this way, you run down that way. There's a little out and back there. And it used to go back through this park here. We'll, we'll see it when we go that way. And then you go this way. This is Andrew Lewis, my husband. I'm Danielle. We uh, are here down at Tempe Town Park and going to ride around on the run course on some scooters. My first one was Ironman Texas and that was in April. I learned some lessons the hard way. I started cramping about mile 60 on the bike and then um, things kind of went downhill on the run, turned into like a run, walk, do whatever you can to get yourself to the finish line. But I've learned lessons, so I'm applying those lessons to this. Um, I've been putting in a lot of really good work. I'm as fit as I've ever been. I'm swimming faster than I've ever swam, which is important. I know Sky is favorited. I've got Lauren Brandon in the field. Sarah True is out there, so it'll be a lot of fun just to kind of see how I stack up. Trying to go for a Kona slot. Yes, I would love to get a Kona slot. Yeah, she'd love to. Uh, unfortunately, that's uh, clearly not going to be the case today. Uh, she's she's not in a position uh, to be able to do that anymore. She was before a flat tire took her out of it, and then uh, to her own admission, a, a mistake of not having uh, a spare or the proper spare for her to get back on course quickly. She's lost over 20 minutes at this point, but it's every race and every mishap is an opportunity. And I think now she has an opportunity mm -hmm. to get to a marathon yeah. after riding 112 miles and swimming 2.4 and having literally nothing to lose. <laughs> right. And so she can see the best she can do, or maybe she can go out harder than she wanted to and see what happens. But like she, right. she has a lot to play with now. Well, and as she said, she learned in Texas what she did wrong in, in her over four-hour marathon. And now she's just like, all right, well, I'm not going to let this, this Iron Man pass me by. So I'm going to just get it done. Uh, no matter what I have to do, if I'm 20 plus minutes back, I'm going to just do it. And, you know, she looks up to people like, uh, you know, Sarah True and Sky, And she's just probably pumped to be on the same course as them. And those are the girls leading the race right now. Yeah, for sure. And uh, she makes her way around uh, this little U-turn section with a bunch of our age group athletes as they're trying to get around this course as best they can as well. But, yeah, yeah it's Danielle Lewis doing what she can to uh, continue to move across the course as quickly as possible as we get a nice overhead shot. Again, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're not going to be talking about no. Danielle Lewis in the top five and maybe top ten at right. this point. It's just uh, she's clearly lost a little bit. A little bit of time, but I, I think it's a good testament to showing that yep. you just keep going and you just and do what going. you can to get something out of the day. We've all had issues out there, and you know what? It will settle. 
But I also think, you know, it's funny, now we're approaching the whole, the whole uh, personal needs sections, right? And it'll be interesting to see who, I took mine. I'm a pro that I do the wetsuit strippers and I do as many personal <laughs> needs as you can. And it's so, I, I always wonder if, if um, my fellow colleagues are, are taking their special needs. I always take mine uh, just because I feel like it, you know, it gives you that little bit extra that you need. That said, it's often hard to get. You Sometimes you have to stop and get it. And that's just the patience or the risk you take if, if you need certain nutrition and all those things. Yeah, no, and I, th- I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's often overlooked. And it I is. think uh, mm-hmm. certainly a mistake. And as you said, there's so many different things that you can get out of uh, being able to get that special needs uh, yes. to yourself. And, yes. you know, I, I, I see of it as it's the only time you have like an insider in the race yes. there to help you out. And guess what? Yes. It's yourself. It right? is. It is. <laughs> and no. for, for me, I always think about it and tell athletes, yes. think about, you know, if you're on a long bike ride and you're cracked and you go into a gas station yes. and you open the doors, yes. what's in there that gets you out of it? Yes. Put one of those in Put, there, even yes. if it's comfort food or it's just there to make a you Snickers, feel better. Whatever you need. Yeah. yeah. Or, or maybe it's, uh, yeah. you know, an extra tube or, you know, things like yes. that. To, McDonald's French fries. To make whatever sure, right. floats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, thinking ahead, doing your best to help yes. yourself out, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, hydration mix, you know, anything like that. But super important to do that and uh, hold yourself accountable because often I think we, we take race days thinking there's going to be something, uh, outside the norm where in reality it's kind of like a training day right and it's catered you know we've it's got catered. a bunch of yep. uh yeah, gatorade and morton out there for you so you don't need too much but you still want to like don't change too much from what you do on a regular basis when you're out there training and uh, special needs are uh, an area where you can kind of help yourself through that you know and you can put anything in there that's conducive to you i remember one time a lot of times when I come to the desert, I get like congestion and stuff. So I was like putting those things that go over my nose in my special needs, like to, in, to make my sinuses. I'm putting cough drops in there. I mean, it's whatever you need for you, you know? So it's, uh, it's kind of nice that Iron Man offers that because I, I use my personal needs bag. So I love it, especially on the run. I'll put like, you know, it, look, it, it gives me pleasure and I look forward to getting to my Sour Patch Kids. I mean, right. it's the little things, Matt, in Iron Man. It's just the little things. No, it's anything that can uh, distract you from uh, the pain that you're, you're yes. putting yourself through for that period of yes. time is, is certainly helpful. And, you know, the athletes have, have done that for a fair bit today, you know, four hours into the men's race and uh, just about four hours into the women's race. And it was a lot of swimming and some cycling to get to this point. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, more of what got us to where we are today. First on the full gas bike horse, Andrew uh, was out there getting getting on his bike first with a nice uh, little gap on Ben Canute. And uh, once he got started, Andrew Horseball Turner, you know, did his best to stay in the front. Definitely uh, burn some matches, push, push the pace uh, as best he could. And, you know, first time you're in the lead of uh, an Ironman, and certainly in North America, and you know there's coverage, get to the front, stay there as long as you can. It's, uh, it's hard not to get caught up in it, but Ben Canute, a uh, seasoned professional, but first time at an Ironman distance, uh, you know, dosed his energy, but was able to uh, catch up to the leader. And those two were able to to ride together, encourage each other a little bit. You can see uh, Ben Canute uh, when he passed Andrew Horseball Turner, give him a little encouragement and said, what's up? And uh, same thing when Joe Skipper was able uh, to get past Ben Canoon. Of course, as soon as Ben got, uh, Joe got up there, he's like already telling him to, to pull through and, and making, making all these athletes do their work. Yeah, I caught you. Now you come do some more work. And, uh, you know, I think he knew he had some energy to burn today. And, uh, you know, Ben Canute still out there doing that. And, you know, these athletes were swapping turns. So that was kind of inside that group. But then it was on one of the back sections towards town that Christian Hoganhog really opened up the gap. And that was what was able to split himself and Joe Skipper from the rest of the field. And uh, Sam Long was uh, left behind there, as was Ben Canute. And those two athletes continued at the front and still continue to, till uh, this point of the race, push the pace at the front and putting time in on the athletes chasing behind even the man on screen, Sam Long, who's often seen as one of the best cyclists in the sport over the half and Ironman distance uh, racing. And uh, Andrew Forcewell-Turner, 
uh, you know, did his best to hang on, but has been dropped uh, from that group of two that we have on screen, but from Sam Long and his group as well. And those two athletes now through 86 miles, uh, Christian Hogenhog and Joe Skipper, and still with a lead of 340 over Ben Canute. And then onto the women's side, Meredith. You got it. Well, LB, a.k.a. Lauren Brandon, crushed the swim, as she we talked about. And on the bike, she was smooth sail- sailing the first, still is. First couple laps, had a five-minute lead. It dwindled a little to four minutes, then three. And then Sky and uh, Sarah True did catch her. They were right. They rode together a little bit, uh, which is awesome. But And then they took the lead. So uh, Lauren's about 30 seconds back at this moment from Sarah and from Sky. But Sky and Sarah are, were feeding off each other. It has been noted that Sky might be a smidge ahead of uh, Sarah True now. So maybe she's trying to break her out there. Uh, we've got Renee Kiley and Mel McQuay. Quaid, excuse me, sitting in fourth and fifth, trying to do uh, damage control and try to get to the front of the race. And I'm sure Sarah True also is just trying to stay with uh, Sky, keeping her in, in sight as much as she can so that they can get to the run in similar areas, which is key. Um, I think Lauren Brandon will do the same thing, right? She, she always leads from the front, and even if she gets caught, she tries to stay with as best she can. Yeah, she certainly does. She's always uh, been able to do that and do so with a, a good attitude. And, you know, it was, as you said, it was Sky and Sarah True working together to, to have to bring back uh, Lauren Brandon. And, uh, you know, they weren't making too much time. It was kind of 30 right. seconds every split, maybe a minute yeah. on a split. And then uh, over one split, they were able to pull back uh, two and a half minutes and uh, get up to Lauren Brandon and now uh, pass and uh, drop her at this point. Uh, but again, Danielle Lewis was was part of that race, was moving up into a good position, but had a flat and, you know, had to stay. You never want to be standing anywhere in an Ironman. You're always right. moving forward, right. and, and she was standing by the side of the road for, for quite a long time. Right. Oh, and it, it is painful when you're standing there, whether it's a penalty, whether it's a mechanical, and people are just flying by you. You're yeah. like, hey, and you're stationary. It's, it's, it is painful painful. So uh, again, you just got to use that fuel and get on out there and, and do your thing. But uh, I really think the women's like just seeing all these ladies just crush it. Jen and it is coming through yeah. and all those things. And honestly, they're only at 11 minutes back. That's not no, that tight. far, you yeah. know, that's pretty good to have the top, you know, seven, eight women all within 12 minutes. I think that's pretty good. No, for sure. And I mean, if you're looking at the difference of a you know, if somebody has a great run and it's yeah. a 255 versus a 305, I mean, that's yes. 10 minutes. There's there's plenty. And both are good times, right? Yeah. 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 There's there's plenty of mo- uh, room yes. uh, for racing to continue uh, to happen here at Biostark's Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States Series. And we'll be back with lots more action when we get back from this commercial break. <laughs> back uh it's still riding here with danielle lewis and uh you might be asking well we've been on one shot for a bit and uh as you can see it's a it can be a little bit congested out here on the course once we get to the third uh lap of the professionals because we have obviously age group athletes that have uh, been doing multiple laps as well so it kind of starts to stack up so in the interest of safety of everybody out on course it's a little bit harder for us to move around as freely uh with the motorcycles and cameras and uh obviously safety of athletes is is of utmost importance to us so uh, right now the shots that you're getting are the ones that we're able to logistically get to you uh in a safe manner so we'll get more as soon as we can uh but right now still doing that fight you know 
we've all been in the, yeah. we've not all been in that position yeah. where you think you're going to try to win a race and yeah. you've had a setback and you try your best to come from behind and you know what yeah. now we're in the driver's seat we're in the driver's seat it's all it's like controlling what you can control and so yeah we've all been there with random things like whether shoot i've had wetsuits rip just like or or you know getting like I said, my saddle. I mean, we all have penalties that you're like, what? What did I do? But right. you just chill. You just stay calm. I remember I was on video too, and I'd luck I was so happy I stayed calm. It was like, it's so easy to get rattled is what I'm saying. And so I was like, there's nothing I can do. The penalty's done. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to keep my chi. And then I carried on. And it was only 30 seconds. Why does 30 seconds feel like like literally 10 minutes when it's a penalty, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, when anything out of your control <laughs> right. feels like pure chaos, right? And it's, uh, yeah. you know, that's what we do as, as yeah. athletes is, you know, try to adjust and work on everything that we have in our control to be our best on race day. And uh, when something that feels out of your control happens, right. It's uh, it can be stressful, and what I think is great to note, and uh, I'm glad we had the, yeah, uh, audio of it was Danielle, yes. being like, you know what, I messed up. Let's uh, you know, let's let's get moving, and nobody yep. to blame but myself, and keep moving forward. And uh, another athlete that's out on course having a great race is uh, Sarah True. We were able to catch up with her with our, our Fighting Chance crew as well this week, and uh, yep. we'll get to that shot of uh, or this excuse me that video of sarah true as soon as we can get it but still out here chasing danielle lewis as she's chasing uh the athletes in front still trying to do her mm -hmm. best on the day and mm -hmm. you know she'll still probably have that in her mind to to try to get a little bit further up the the time sheet than ironman texas than she did right uh last time with that four-hour marathon you know what now she's gonna have a bike split she's not necessarily proud of but yes. she's gonna have a chance to redeem herself on the run. And uh, now let's get to that uh, fighting chance clip from Sarah True. It's kind of nice. I'm here by myself on my own schedule. Get to do what I want. Sleep no in, diapers. Sleep in late, yeah. hang out. So luxurious. Bonbons in bed. Bonbons <laughs> in bed, standard. I realized that I wasn't going to be able to race uh, Kona, you know, got out there, realized it was a bit too sick. My first thought was, okay, what is there in November that I can do? Once I get healthy again, I need to race. And of course, Arizona came first to mind. Yeah, it's sunny. It's warmish. I have not done anything specific for, for Arizona, uh, just training, swimming, biking, running. Life in general. Life. <laughs> I, I feel like I have a lot more in common with um, with the, the amateur fields at a race like this, where everybody's out there trying to balance training and life and jobs, and that's kind of me right now. But we're getting it done. We're getting in the training, and you know this is this is such a great way to celebrate that it's possible. It's possible to have a really busy life, but also show up to these events, fit and happy and excited to be part of it. I love Sarah True. Can I just announce that immediately? You know what? She kind of has just this no worry attitude that I like, like meaning I'm just flowing through. I'm going to compare myself to the amateurs right now, balancing, because she's doing all the things right now. Motherhood, job, uh, job as a professional triathlete. I mean, I'm completely impressed. And, you know, and that's why it's, <laughs> that's why she said no diapers. She's like, this is, a, you know, kind of appears like a, a vacation in terms of like you get whatever arbitrarily nine hours of alone time right now, just to think about all that you're navigating through. So I <laughs> I'm impressed and like you and like she said she was like you know what Kona didn't work out but what can I do in in uh November that was always my thought and then boom Iron uh, you know this race yeah. yeah no she's uh she's awesome she's resilient yes and I'm glad you say that because yeah she's she's my favorite I really enjoy her I could talk to her all day uh and I would love to I, I want her to finish so I, I can like call her and be like Sarah you're awesome and you got a little vacay out there yeah. for an awesome race you know so and I'm glad you feel better than you did at Kona that's all that matters no I know it's hard I was able yeah. to uh talk with her a little bit hang out with her a little bit before Kona and you could tell yeah like the day she got there she was uh, sick stinks. and yeah 
as an athlete, you're yeah. positive, and she, she, you know, she yeah. improved. Yeah. And she, you know, went in to race day at least outwardly expressing that, you know, she, you know, the sickness wasn't going to hold her back at all. Right. And then, like, as soon as you're out there, you're like, oh wait, nope, there's nothing in the tank, and uh, so it was uh, hard, hard to see. But right. uh, she, she was able to put herself out there in a, a, a position to to get back safely uh, from Kona, and then put herself in a position to to train uh, and put a little bit more work in for uh, the race here in Arizona. And I think this race was put out just for that reason. It really does. It's like perfectly timed. It's a, it's a wonderful race to get to be a part of. And so she now gets to experience it. And so many athletes, like, look, this has been going on for years and years and years. And even one year, I think I was telling you, Matt, it was in April and then they moved it to, to November and November is way better weather-wise <laughs> than in April. Oh, yeah. So it's awesome. It's like, it's just an ideal race. It's an awesome first time a race. That's why it sells out so fast too. It's just a very popular, understandably so race. And I'm, so I'm glad Sarah got, you know, gets to experience it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Me too. And it's, uh, yeah, I think well said, it's a timing to be able to, yeah. you know, uh, have a redo. Yes, to, to a certain extent. redo. Um, so the men's race uh, through 86 miles uh, with Christian Hogenhog still in first place with Joe Skipper. Uh, 306 uh, through 86 miles. It's pretty darn fast. Uh, ben Canute, three minutes, 40 down. Sam Long, 524 down. So Sam continuing to lose more time. Um, so he's, uh, I don't know if he's suffering or not, but, uh, or, you know, it's possible he's just pacing himself, but losing time to the leaders. And at this point, five minutes to Joe Skipper is, you know, all these athletes are confident athletes, but that is going to be pretty tough, mm -hmm. pretty tough for anybody to be positive about at this right. point because they know how good a runner Joe Skipper is. Right. A hundred percent. You can become an Iron Man. And now Iron Man gives you more flexibility to chase your dreams and achieve your goal. Iron Man's new Flex 90 early entry benefits allow you to transfer or defer your Iron Man race registration, be free up to seven days before race day. Plus, take advantage of refund and payment plan options and more. Simply choose your dream race in 2023, sign up within the first 90 days of registration opening, and commit with confidence. There's no reason to hesitate. Register for your goal race and start making your dream come true. I was just going to say, too, when you dropped, uh, like we were talking about the upcoming men going on, yeah. is they're also within 10 minutes. If you look, it's like, you know, you've got right. nine, 10 guys within 11 minutes. So this run is going to be awesome. And y'all, we will get cameras out on the run like you see on the bottom of the screen. It's just, and as someone who's done this race so many times, they're just, the cameras are just trying to be the, for the safety of all the athletes racing out there. It's a smart decision. And honestly, we will be on that run before we know it. And we will keep chatting it up. So just know <laughs> that. Yeah, and, and I'm glad we actually were able to get this camera on Danielle. And the reason why it works to have a camera on her and not at other places is she did lose so much time mm -hmm. and she's literally 45 mm -hmm. minutes by, yep. behind, right? So yep. she's not in that kind of congested zone that the, the rest of our front of our, our field is at. So right. again, appreciate everybody's uh, patience with that. We want to see the action as much as you do. But, you know, to your point, yeah. uh, Meredith, you know, looking at the athletes with around 10 minutes yeah. down in the top 10, one of those athletes, Kyle Buckingham, yes. won some huge races. Uh, other athlete, Matt Hansen, won some huge races. Uh, Zapunked, Sam Long. And again, like, Hansen's 10 minutes down, yes. but he's five minutes off of Sam Long, seven minutes off of Ben Canute. Like, I would not be surprised. Let's just say, Matt yeah. Hansen getting second or third in this race? Yes. Not out of the question. Not out of the question. Th the man's a gazelle. He can run so fast, and he has such a good cadence and clip to do so. So I can't wait for this run because we're going to see a lot of people shimmying up to the front, yeah. I have no doubt. I think that's going to be big mix-ups for yes. sure. I, I see a, at this point, a, and it's too early to call, Yes, I see it. it is going to take a heroic yes. effort yes. or explosion for <laughs> Joe Skipper not to win this race. He's, yes. He's in like... If there was a seat yes. 20 <laughs> seconds in front of a driver's seat, yes. Joe would be, like, in front of that seat. Like, he is just in control right now. 
in control. I saw it the same in the last race I commentated, Ironman Chattanooga, September of last year, and he was in control the whole time. And I remember even Lionel saying, there was no one catching him. Like, it's just, it was his day, and it was his day to lose. It was also his day to win, and I think we're in the same situation here in, in the, today's race, for sure. Yeah, no, I think I think that's uh, I think that's well said, and the women's race still have yeah. uh, Sky Monch and Sarah True at the front uh, of the race course, uh, doing their best to to stay in the lead as they, as they are. As we see our camera getting off course safely, again, lots of different sections on the course that we need to navigate, and again, priority is to do it safely. So let's get yeah. to a commercial break and get more action when we're back. Awesome. Welcome back. You know, what I wanted to talk about was Sky. Is uh, one thing about Sky, who's leading the women's pro race at this time, is, you know, I had mentioned before that when I asked her what her pain point was, it was swimming. And it's something that she wanted so badly to perform better in. And it says, she just says that it hasn't come yet. And she said that to me maybe a year ago. And now, as I said, I think she's risen and keeps improving on the swim department and it's funny to listen to sky too who's just one of the best americans on the circuit no doubt one of the best on the circuit in general but i you know she talks about from a personal standpoint in the sport she often says that she struggles to see what kind of difference she's making sort of just like and we all experience this as athletes for a living just what impact is she making just swim bike running every day um she feels kind of uh selfish in that quest and she she says you know she even said and this is a quote you know selfishness can come naturally to to me and that i have always been good at focusing on accomplishing something that i want to and cutting out distractions but she also recognizes that some of life's greatest joys come from making a difference in the lives of others. So in summary, I think she's confident, but she's also cognizant. And I, 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 I like that mindset. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know? And uh, there's a reason. It's not just yeah. the body that gets you to the top of right. the sport. Right, right. You've got to, you got to, and, and speaking to someone who knows it uh, too well, I think your mental game is obviously part of what made you successful. And I think if you don't have the ability to, compartmentalize and plan yeah. and have good positive outlook and good chi as you good say chi. We all uh, need it, man. you know you, have, yeah. you gotta know when to burn your biscuits no it's, not it's to. true that's the important <laughs> you know there there's plenty of incredibly talented athletes yes that never did anything in the sport no and you have to have like i always talk about these like compartmentalization shelves that i have in my brain yeah. and i'm constantly even during a race i think stuff goes to all kinds of shelves in the brain during the race alone because there's like life stuff people come in every single one of these athletes might have had life stuff going on whether it's their a family member their one of their kids or just something happened uh in their life and they've had to compartmentalize it they've been working hard towards this race and like life is about compartmentalization and if we can't as humans compartmentalize properly then we're never going to make it and and prevail at in life and work and sport in my opinion yeah, yeah. no yeah. i think uh i think that's very very <laughs> true and again i think people underestimate certainly in iron man yes that, and we, we do talk about it so it's we keep hammering it in people's heads yeah. so it's surprising they forget but that it is it's so much a mental game yeah. and uh, there's so much patience that has to be there um but obviously physically you have to be at the top of your game but if mentally you're not there it's 
you're kind of out of the mix as soon as as soon as it starts. Um, but uh, you know, plenty plenty of time for these athletes yep. to get their mental game right or wrong uh, here for the rest of the day, as we've got plenty of racing left to do. Uh, these pros are on their last lap uh, again reason we have kind of these static shots of our age group athletes coming through is it's uh, it's hard for us to safely get all these motos anytime you see a camera on a athlete there's one to three motorcycles that are there to be able to get that shot uh, so to be able to do so safely uh, we need to make sure we're uh, keeping keeping the course clear and if we don't have the opportunity to get there safely we just don't get the shot, and these are the shots that you get. So we still have. But you our... get to listen to Matt yeah. and I, and I can talk to Matt all day. So here we go, Matt. In your career, <laughs> tell me. No, this is good when we're talking about mental resilience and everything. What do you think your strongest attribute to being a successful pro was during that time? Uh, stubbornness. Stubbornness. In what regard? Like stubbornness, training and racing, both. Uh, probably more racing. Yeah. Stubbornness. Uh, mixed with, or that stubbornness being like shown in pain tolerance, yes, and like the abil- inability to not just keep going, right? That stubbornness. Right. If I didn't have that, because I, I I consider myself a mediocre athlete across three disciplines, but if I disagree. I just, but if that's I just, okay. If I yeah. kept going, mm-hmm. it uh, eventually, mm-hmm. uh, if the if everything came together, I'd have a have a decent race. But yeah, and I think. Most of the athletes that have good success are stubborn in the right ways and yes. not stubborn in the other ways, obviously. That's right. And don't you think that this racing, Ironman and 17.3, if anything, we get a lot of life lessons of how to be less stubborn, less or more patient for me, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So I got to hand it to, I owe Ironman a lot. They've helped me with my life character, I feel. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, so an athlete that we've, you know, seen on screen here a bunch today, pushing the pace. We really one of the main instigators of the race on the men's side is Christian Hogenhagen. And not a lot of uh, North American uh, folks will know too much about him. So we were able to get a hold of him for a little clip for Fighting Chance. Good morning. Good morning. Where are we? <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> Do you have any Norwegian drinks for us before the race? <laughs> no. The leg shape meet up, I guess. How's the training been leading up to this race uh, post Kona? Uh, it's been okay. It's always a bit tricky in the last part of the season. And also post the World Championship, I'm, I'm ready, but. Uh, it's always a bit balanced between like some days you really want to go on off season and then other days you're really motivated so it's like almost both sides of the spectrum so some days it's tough and then some days it's really nice uh, but it's it's good to be here are you here for a cone slot yeah, yeah yeah so i think six or seven guys who, who can take those two spots so it's it's gonna be really tough and it's if you place third and don't get a slot, it's so even though we get on the podium, it's still a bit of a problem. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. A lot of uh, good good bike riders, and uh, so it's gonna add a bit of spice to the race, definitely. Can you do the SpongeBob uh, two hours later? <laughs> There we go. Still, still having fun uh, out there uh, training this week. It's uh, cool to catch up with uh, Christian and see, you know, his goals and perspective on a race like Arizona. And you know, he's an athlete that's young and has a, a bunch of talent. And uh, we're going to see a lot of results from Christian down the road. You know, I look at him and I'm like, gosh, I'm like 15 years older than him. And he crushed, I mean, again, not another athlete, not even in his prime yet and crushing it already, you know? So it's fun to see him do his thing. Yeah, absolutely. So <sighs> Meredith, as we said, yeah. you've, I mean, you've done this course maybe we haven't, over 15 times, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, what uh, what are these athletes thinking on this on this third lap? Are you just are you uh, just thinking about are you thinking about the bike still or are you thinking about the run? No, you're like how much longer do I have? This the like I said alluded to earlier in this broadcast is that first lap. It's like 
goes by in a jiffy. The second loop, you're like, cool, I'm good. And then the third lap, you're like, I never get to that final turnaround. But once you do get to the final turnaround on the beeline, that's when you start thinking of the run. You're just like so pumped that you're almost done. And like I said, Ironman is 112 miles for a reason because I'm out, I'm over it at like mile 100. So, uh, but this course, at least you have the mile markers and all the good things that you know that once you are on the third loop, I always psych myself up. I'm like, all right, once you get to the end of the second loop, only one more loop. You're <laughs> constantly making deals with with yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're yeah, and then once you get on the final turnaround, you're like, all right, I got this. I'm going to make it to that marathon. Yeah, no, I think that's right. This course, the multi-laps is great to be able to have those distractions of, I just got to get through one hundred percent. And I I think as we'll talk about on the run is, I think my husband and I calculated even with the bridges and stuff, even now with the the newer two loop course, you can see your, your people like 16 times. Now, I think my husband got like 50,000 <laughs> steps those years because he was, yeah. you know, but then they had scooters on there. So then he was scooting all around <laughs> to try to try to give you like five seconds of go, you know? Yeah. So that's pretty neat. That's awesome. Well, well uh, something else that's neat is I'm excited about, I guess we're going to have uh, Mike Riley's going to come on with us when we get Back from a quick commercial, we'll get more with Mike Riley in his last North American Ironman. at the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States series here at the last lap of the pro bike ride, getting ready for that run. And I'm pretty excited, Meredith, for our next guest, Mike Riley, announcer voice of Ironman here at his last North American Ironman event. How's it going, Mike? Oh, it's going fantastic. How are you guys doing? Pretty, pretty darn good, man. Have Great. you, uh, I, I'll tell you, my goal for this interview, which I'll fail at, is to try to get you to tear up. But how many times have you, have you teared up yet today? I know this is, a, this is a big thing for not just you, but our sport in general. But how does it feel being at your last Ironman in Arizona? Uh, it, it's surreal. It's not like it's for me. I Watching and, and greeting the swimmers when they went in the water this morning, they would tear up first and then... It happened to me, and uh, I, I just—I'm just trying to hold it together. You know, I got family here, here, and and I never thought this day would really come, but now it's here. But I still got a job to do: take care of the pros and take care of the age groupers till midnight. Yeah, and you do such a good job of it, Mike. And a question: like, you know, <clears throat> we never know where life's going to take us. Did you ever think you'd be where you're at now, looking back? at your career in this sport and what you've what you've done in the sport of Ironman? Not really, because, you know, man, we go, we have a new season, and we all, the race is coming, we more races were added, so that's when it got a little difficult, when all of a sudden, you know, I'm doing 12 or 13 Ironman, out of seven or eight, and and I you know, realized so oh, well, so I'm not 45 years old anymore. <laughs> voice, voice to recover for the body to recover, and this was just, that that all I can say is just time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Mike, first of all, I always say, I just want to get to Mike Riley. We all say that. But I, I also remember every next day at the awards banquet, you always say, 
my voice feels like your legs do today. <laughs> and I always love that. But I want to know, I want you to tell us what's the number one thing you look forward to in your retirement, we'll say, after this. I think you're going to, I know what you're going to say, but I want to hear it again. Yeah, I, you know, it's family. It's being able to spend time with your loved mm-hmm. ones and not have to not be able to go to a birthday party or a friend's daughter's wedding, you know, those types of right. things that so much. And, and uh, the other thing is I want to be able to do what I want to do all the time. And, with, yeah. you know, with my pros and with the family. And, and uh, I figured after this long, I deserve to be able to set myself up. Like- yeah, I think so. I think uh, you've... You've uh, you've done enough to, you know, improve the leisure time or pastime for us. It's uh, time for you to be able to enjoy as much uh, leisure as you possibly can. And uh, you know, Arizona seems to always have been a, a race that you got excited to to go down to. I've, I was lucky enough to be there a few times and, and watch you, uh, you know, call the race. What is it about uh, the race down in Arizona that's so special? Well, you know what I always. I always just had this bad feeling or bad dream that could you imagine you accomplish something great in your life and nobody acknowledges it? <laughs> and I just wanted to be able to be there to let them know that the winners they are, the champions they are, how great they can improve their lives. And uh, because they deserve to be congratulated. So it, it was pretty simple process to be able to continue and it never became complacent. Won't be complacent today, all the way to that final finish. It's uh, it's what they deserve, and it's what I think God gave me to give them. Uh, that's so awesome, Mike. Appreciate it so much. And uh, again, from uh, from both me and Meredith, we can't say how special it's been for us to be able to to be around you as much as we have, just as a, a human being, you're always a, such an encourager. I know for me in my career, doing what I'm doing now, I think the first race I did, you came up to me and you said I was doing a good job. And, uh, you know, that that's encouraged me throughout uh, this whole process for me. And, and you've encouraged so many athletes in so many different ways. And, you know, mm-hmm. when we look back at our careers and our special moments, mm-hmm. you're a part of them. And uh, we can't thank you enough. That's right. And I, I did just have a kid, so I'm extra hormonal. But <laughs> even if I didn't just have a kid, and I'm still tearing up just saying that you really make this sport a better place, Mike. So thank you. Doggone it, you got me going, Harris. <laughs> you know, if you can leave things a little bit better than you found them, then you're doing great work in life. And and, and, you know, Meredith, some of my greatest moments were bringing you to Fitz Pines and being with you in New Zealand with the family. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to miss not having you there in two weeks. It's going to feel a little bit of a void, but I know you'll be there in spirit. <laughs> That's right. Maybe, uh, maybe I haven't given up yet on carting two little humans across the world, Mike. So just know that. And honestly, you would be a driving force. Like, hey, even if you get last and you pretty much die traveling with two humans under five, whatever. (laughs) But you'll get to Mike Riley. That's all that matters. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you. Happy that my two grandchildren will be here. Uh, The boys will be here at the finish line. Uh, I don't know how late they'll stay up, but I'll bring them on the stage with Papa and they can see what I do. I even told them this, the eight-year-old, I'm going to let you say you are an Iron Man once. You should have seen (laughs) those. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that is so amazing, Mike. And I, I, I will say both me and Meredith uh, have some serious FOMO. We've got a lot of yeah. our crew that was able to get out there uh, today to, to be a part of your last race. And, uh, you know, we'll take uh, being a part of it on this end. But I know you guys are going to have a great and emotional time tonight. And, man, you just enjoy every second of it. You deserve it. Yeah, somebody asked me what I wish I could have for my last race. It's everybody I've been close to all these years to be here. So we can just party together and finish it together like we all started it together. So, uh, but I know people like you, Matt and Meredith, are here in spirit. And uh, that makes me feel very warm. That's good. Thank you.
And I would say, I would venture that so many people are trying to be the last finisher today. <laughs> just so that you can, Good they can call. say, I was my, yeah, I really believe, I would. If I was out there, I would just, <laughs> I just casually walk every single, as slow as I could, sit down, have a cup of coffee until like, and then at like 11.59 and 52 seconds, <laughs> I'd go down the chute. <laughs> That's great. What'll happen tonight, I'll have a tie of the last final five and I go, well, it's for all yeah. of you. There yeah, you go. <laughs> you're gonna, it's going to be a race a race to last for sure. Uh, well, Mike, thanks so much. We know you got to get back out there, but we appreciate you uh, taking the time and chat with us. It means so much. And, and thanks so much for everything that's gotten you to this point. You're welcome. You guys sound great. Keep it going, baby. All right. Awesome. You too. <laughs> All right. Well, Aloha. Bye-bye. There you go. Absolute legend. And uh, I will say, Meredith, you closed it, but my goal for today was to get Mike Riley to cry on TV, and I think did we uh, do it? accomplished. We did yeah. it. All right. <laughs> but, you know, we joke around, but it yeah. really, uh, he has been such a huge part of Iron Man and uh, the success of the sport and just people's experience. Uh, you know, that you're totally right. People yeah. just want to get there to hear it. And I yeah. remember, you know, we did, we talked about Iron Man Coeur d'Alene and, mm-hmm the vibe there my first finish you know i'm just like everybody else i never thought i'd ever finish an iron man mm-hmm. and when i came down that finish line i'm feeling good ready yeah. to go and then i hear mike riley and i'm starting to cry <laughs> like the whole thing right You're like hormonal. It's, yeah, yeah totally i, mean, I always am but it's i'm i'm not exaggerating yeah. that when most of us pros or age groupers or whoever have memories of finishes that are important to us mike yeah. riley is a part of it and it's uh yeah just special guy that lives and breathes it and loves it agree we'll miss him but we know he's thriving elsewhere and what he does next yeah and uh you know it was great to be able to be there for his last uh yes. world championship in kona uh and uh you know today athletes are pushing themselves for a lot of reason and one is certainly for that qualifying window that is open for the 2023 vinfast ironman world championship uh, for grabs today is that this race are two pro uh male and female uh, qualifying spots, as well as 55 age group qualifying slots and 100 extra women's slots available for the 2023 VinFast Ironman World Championship. Opportunities for increased slots at regional championships plus designated women for try races will offer additional slot allocations for female athletes. Out of 10,000 athletes, less than 6% will qualify to race at the 2023 VinFast Ironman World Championship. There you go. Plenty of opportunity to get to that world championship. And there's, you know, pros, age groupers alike are doing their best uh, to get to Mike Riley as soon as they can with the side benefit of maybe getting that Kona spot. Uh, Some updates. The women's race, 75 miles. Sky and Sarah still in the lead. Lauren Brandon, one minute behind, but hanging in there. Uh, Renee Kiley at 540. So Lauren Brandon and Renee are are still about the same distance apart. Mel McQuaid in fifth. Jenna Nett moving up in sixth place, 11 minutes back. Uh, Alberts in seventh, Higgins, Nath, and Lewis uh, rounding out the top 10. And then on the men's side, getting close. 104 yeah. miles, Joe Skipper and Hogan Hogg have gone through. Uh, no splits to those behind them, but through 95 miles, Canute was four minutes down. And Meredith, Sam Long, seven minutes, seven minutes. down. So Crazy. he's continuing to lose time. Yeah. Ben right now seems to be Canute, the one that's losing the least amount of time to those athletes in the front. Matt Hansen just lost as much time as Sam did in that last split. Right. Uh, so not meaning to point out Sam, but so everybody behind Ben is losing significantly right. more time uh, to Hogan Hogan Skipper. Uh, ben holding in there strong at, at four minutes. So it's gonna be uh, it's right. gonna be tight. There's a lot, lot, lot to play for. No, and look, like Matt Hansen is in. Uh, he's cycled his way up to the top five, right? And again, it's 11 minutes. I realize down, but he's about to come into his pedigree of a 2:30, yeah. low 2:30, I bet run today in these conditions. And so he's probably pumped about that. I mean, I, again, 11 minutes seems like a lot on paper, but it's actually not in a marathon. Like someone could be running a 234 and run a 246 and it's still, that's 11 minutes. Totally. <laughs> and I, and more. I, yeah. And I think you make a good point. And what, what I like about Matt's race is, yes. you know, he's moving himself back, Yes. but you know, he was third onto the bike. Yeah. 
So he yep. he didn't allow yep. that great swim yes. to adjust his game plan, right? And you know, even when athletes went by him, you know, he's on the bike third. He had 20 seconds on yep. Hogan Hog and more than that on Skipper. I mean, he had almost uh, you know, 45 seconds on Skipper. Yeah. Those guys go by. He's like, sure, go for it. Yeah, go. He is actually he's seasoned, so he knows and he has a good coach in Julie Dibbs. He probably really was like you do your race. This is Iron Man. If you need to take a risk, do it. But he was like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little bit down, but not that much. And I know I can run as fast and if not faster than most of the four guys ahead of me. Yeah. No. He, and yeah. Again, watching the way he's split apart this course uh, has me pretty confident that, yes. that he's going to have that run. And I think that's the important part. Like, you, you know, You've pointed out he's run at two thirty four, yes, fastest one insane. that's ever happened. Yes, and he, for him to run a two thirty, he knows to beat Joe Skipper, he has to have a run like that. Right. To have right. a run like that, you can't do anything wrong on the bike. Nope. You can't overdo it. Right. So I think yes. uh, so often the athletes think about the race that's in the minute and how close you are to whoever's around, but it's like no, no, no. All Matt is trying to do yeah. is ride as fast as he can from start to finish on the bike ride while doing everything he can to ensure he can run a 235 to 237. And I think today he'll do it. And I think even, you know, Canute being in third, you know, four and a half minutes down at the 104 mile mark, it's like he's probably just being controlled too because he's never run a marathon. Yeah. But let alone a marathon in an Ironman. So he's probably doing, he's having that, of that same mindset. Like, look, I needed, to let, I needed to let those two guys go so that I can focus and get my run legs ready because that's his pedigree too. I mean, he's good at all three, as we know. But I mean, he's a really fast runner and he can showcase that today. Well, the athletes are using the end of this bike ride to get their legs ready. We're going to use yes. this break to get our voices ready for what's going to be, right. for sure, a action-packed marathon. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight, to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport, to delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. And here we are back at Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Uh, again, here are the last couple miles of the bike for the pro men. Uh, women still have a little bit to go, but uh, 
things are starting to spread out, yeah. but also kind of come together at the same time, Meredith, with yeah. uh, Sam Long losing a little bit more time, Ben Canute kind of staying in that same zone. Um, but we've got some of the elite runners putting themselves in a position to, to try to, to get up in that top five. Yeah, and I'm pumped because when we get to the cameras on the run, we're going to have a lot to talk about because there's going to be a lot of movement. And you know what I was thinking when we were talking earlier is that I always say in, with athletes here, we can't be our best self until we have found our tribe. And I think towards the end of the season, people really relish in that. They think, wow, I'm just a technician here. Like, it takes a team to get me to the start line, happy, healthy, and like I said, with their chi intact. Yeah. And so like... Every athlete right now, I hope, is dwelling in gratitude because it takes a lot to get people to, like, like just look at Sarah before Kona or um, so-and-so didn't start because, or Justin Metzler couldn't start because he's sick. It's like so much goes in to effort gets into starting that I just, I know I'll always say I'm just the technician. Like, it's the team that helps right. you get there. And I bet, and especially towards the end of the season, which we are in North America right now, it's like you're thinking about that. You're mindful of that. You're cognizant of that. And like, Dude, I have a great team that helps me. Obviously, you have to do the hard work to actually, you know, execute, but you have that support system that really helps drive everything to, to come together. Yeah, no, I, I, I've never heard that yeah. put put that way before. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's smart. And you know, we say that at times in different yeah. ways, but it's uh, it's it's so true. I mean, these athletes when they finish, they thank their team, and yeah. it's because they. They really could not be there without the team. It's true. And we all rely on it because sometimes, like we talked about the mental side, is like you can easily go down a goth well of doom and feel sorry for yourself, a bad race, and it's your team that helps lift you or your people, or your colleagues, or whatever it is. And we all need a little light, Mac. We do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's uh, just not worth it if you if you don't have other people there That's right. to share it for you. And, you know, there's, there's a lot lot to train for and to share with others uh, coming up this next year, whether you've decided it's time to become an Ironman or seeking the next conquest in your triathlon journey, the 2023 VinFast Ironman North America Series offers a race that's right for you. It all begins at Memorial Hermann Ironman Texas, America's championship where the beautiful woodlands play host to a field that's ready to get their race on. Looking for fast? Check out Kaiser Permanente Ironman California and get ready to blitz through the streets of Sacramento. St seeking stunning destinations, from the mountain views of Alaska, the Crystal Lake of Coeur d'Alene, to the ocean breeze in Florida, your 2023 Ironman racecation destination beckons. Wanting iconic? Race the athletic brewing Ironman Lake Placid, or Ironman Mont Tremblant, where challenge meets achievement and ultimate bragging rights ensue. All this and more awaits among the VinFast Ironman North America series. Check out all the races at ironman.com backslash races. And we hope to see you at the start line in 2023. Man, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot happening yep. for Ironman next year in the North America series. I know. And I can't wait. I was always, I was just telling Aaron the other day as of, of these 70 Ironmans I've done, I've never <laughs> done Placid. Can you believe it? It's a bucket list race. <laughs> and I, it's on my radar, Matt. And I have to say, some people listening might think, oh, that's funny, her, like, uh, you know, exaggeration of the semi Ironmans, <laughs> but that's actually accurate. I want to do Placid. And so, like, it's you on. I, I got to do it, right? So it's on my, my list. Uh, and, uh, you know, end of July or whatnot, I'm, I'm into it, you know? And so, and yes, so all the North America tour is going to be fantastic. But Placid, I'm coming for you. I'm excited for you because yeah. that's uh, that's definitely one of uh, one of my favorites, and it's certainly an iconic iconic event. Um, here we go on screen. We got athletes moving across the course, getting close to getting off that bike ride, and putting themselves in a position to have a great race with a good marathon. One of those athletes uh, that's doing that in that manner is Renee Kylie, putting herself in a good position, riding in fifth place at this point behind Lauren Brandon. You know she's now. In four, or sorry, in fourth place, six and a half minutes down, uh, four minutes behind Lauren Brandon. And uh, Renee, as you said, has been slowly kind of just yeah. chipping her way up. And, uh, you know, we were able to catch up with her this week as well. It's like a 23 now. That's so tiny, it isn't it? It looks tiny. <gasps> Don't tell the ish groupers you've been riding on a 23 <laughs> mil. <laughs> How an embarrassment to sport. <laughs> It's a 
25. Yeah. Oh. Just feels skinny. It looks tiny. It does. <laughs> the disc is wide, I guess. We need to change that. Okay, it's 25 I people. It's okay. <laughs> you said you were smoking a pack a day. Yeah, pack a day. So disgusting. What made the change? Like, remember um, that moment? I just went to visit some friends up in Queensland. They were going to watch their friend do a triathlon, the Noosa Triathlon. And that was a life-changing moment for me. I was just watching the race and thought, gosh, everyone looks so happy. And there's like old people and young people and big people and small people. Maybe in 12 months time, I could have a go at doing this triathlon. And so I did and it changed my life. <laughs> I'm like four years pro now. Old Renee Kylie was 104 kilos, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, pretty unhealthy. New Renee is a full-time oh. professional triathlete, oh really happy and really fulfilled. <laughs> Triathlon and I'm switching to golf. I don't know. I think you should keep your day job, Renee. <laughs> I love hearing that. The new Renee. And and I have watched her progress over the last four years. Like you heard her say she's, you know, was a 104 kilos. She smoked a pack a day. And literally look at her now. She's racing in a huge race uh, in Arizona. And I just think it's fantastic to see her transformation. Oh, it's it's awesome. I mean, seeing that, uh, you know, and it's not often you have a transformation like that. Right. Period. No, and and she had to work hard for it. I'm certain. I mean, to to lose all that weight, to be motivated, and as you as she said, I'm happy and fulfilled. And you could almost kind of feel like uh, you know a frog in her throat. Like it means so much to her. I can imagine that you know she she just is like emotional about it because it was took a lot to get to where she is right now and she did it and she's going to keep uh, shining and you know she's trying to get back to Kona and and trying to win an Ironman and do A, B, and C and so that's pretty pretty neat. Oh it's, it's super super neat it's yeah always good another one of those stories and another story I think I had some uh, you know confusion around where Danielle Lewis was. Yeah. She's moved herself back into the top 10. Amazing. Yeah, See? so she, she's cruising. So she's go. she's within a shot for sure 22 uh, minutes down. Okay. So it's, you know, she's not going to win the race, but she's in yeah. a position to maybe get in that top five. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll With see. run, you bet. What, yeah, we'll see what Danielle and the rest of the women do uh, when we get to this run here in just a few minutes. This limited edition Breitling Endurance Pro Watch has been made in honor of the 2022 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship presented by Utah Sports Commission. The unique event theme, Legends Rising, is brought to life with a striking orange strap and colorful M dot on the face and the Ironman 70.3 World Championship etching on the back case. Each watch is limited to 200 pieces, so act fast and order yours today on ironmanstore.com. And we're back at Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States series. Here with the overhead shot of the full gas bike course, we got the athletes here pretty darn close uh, to getting done with the the finish of the bike ride. Here we we know we're just a few minutes. We've all been waiting for it. And again, thanks for your patience. Again, athlete safety utmost priority. So keeping the course as clear as we can in some of those congested zones of our uh, motos and cameras, but less than three minutes till we get the lead men back on screen is the word that I'm getting. So looking forward to that and getting into this action of this marathon. And I'm, by the way, really digging, getting to see the amateurs out there yeah. working hard. It's been, I mean, it's good for you all to see too, like all this hard work that 
goes into the race isn't just for the pros, it's for the amateurs as well. So there here we go. we go. There it is. Now we're back on camera into the run. And that looks like that's, Mr. Yeah, that's Christian Hogenhog. Yeah. And he's uh, taking his feet out of his shoes, getting ready to, to get to that dismount line or looking at where that dismount line. It's kind of hard in a, this yeah. transition because yeah. you don't want to get ready too soon. Uh, but there he goes, gets his little oh, step that through. That was so graceful. Gets so off the good. bike. And yeah. it looks like he's put a... Little gap just in the last few miles yeah. on Joe Skipper. And, it, and it, you know, when you, when you see an athlete do that, you know, he's been riding with Joe all day, pushing the pace. Most likely, that's not necessarily him, like, trying to break away and win the race, but he's got 15 seconds on Joe. What that allows is for him to make sure he doesn't get dispatched from right. Joe in transition. Yes. The, at least he's getting himself onto the run, mm -hmm. in his socks, everything ready, onto the run, and giving himself a chance to shake it out for you know, yeah. a minute to three minutes, maybe best case scenario to what he knows is a superior runner coming past him. So he can at least give it a shot and see if he has it on the day. My yep. guess is Joe's going to be going a little bit too quick for, for Christian, but these two athletes done with the full gas bike course and Meredith yep. marathon to come. And that's when we're going to do a lot of yabbering, Matt, because it's going to be a lot of movement. My question is, will Joe take that situation out that he had on the bike on the run, right? He won't run with that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would. Uh, okay. It would be was, awesome to see him try, but. He I probably don't... could and still run a 235, yeah. which would be amazing. But He absolutely can. Well, he, Christian's in and out of that chain stand pretty quick um, and onto the run already. So he's started the run um, very, very quick uh, transition. So uh, definitely different than the transition that we saw on the uh, out of the swim. Uh, certainly a long uh, run and, uh, you know, three and a half minutes, I think, for most of the athletes, maybe average for those top athletes uh, where our Martin uh, transition time. So uh, Christian Hogenhog now goes through much quicker in T2, just less mm -hmm. ground to cover. And, uh, you know, again, hoping to give himself a little bit of a gap on Joe Skipper, and it looks like oh, what's he, he dropped? just dropped something? And he's smart. You need yeah. your race number on the on the bike. I think he dropped it there, uh, or rather on the run. So he dropped it. You need to grab it real quick. I like these guys. I like what they're putting out here because they're actually going really slow right now yeah. to just pull everything together. So instead of stopping and transition and doing yep. it, they're just doing it whilst moving forward, which I like. Yeah. And then they'll suddenly go from running like I don't know eight minute pace to five thirty pace in like no time. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, people often overlook the opportunity that, yeah. you know, I have, and I think you have maybe yeah. in the past had, you know, li little Ziploc baggies that yes. we put stuff in. I learned that from you. <laughs> yeah, so that we, when we get out, you're not, s s as you just said, standing yeah. there putting stuff together, you're taking mm -hmm. it with you and moving. You're always moving. And and I think great move by Hogan Hog to get that little gap quick transition, take that time. So even he had enough time and he got out of transition 40 seconds in front of Joe Skipper so that he could have a little mishap. He could drop his watch. He could drop yes. his number belt and still, you know, be in a position to, to kind of as, as much right. time as you can take in the early sections of the run yes. to just run oh, just and run. to not like be looking at a pace or have to no. race anybody. You're putting Find yourself your in legs. a, yeah, you, you yeah. let your body come, come to into itself. Yeah. And like they have perfect conditions. It's 66 degrees there and perfect. Again, the sun's out, so it's going to feel a little warmer. They're going to still need to keep themselves cool. But man, what a perfect day. I can't believe they're on the run already. What have we done today, Matt? This is like, <laughs> how are they done already? It's just amazing. So now they're going to just bust out a casual marathon. We're going to see Joe Skipper here. I know before we know it. And I see, um, you know, that Christian has a headband on. He's still going to try to keep cool and, and everything going. But I'm just saying... Yes. Do you know how many marathons within an Ironman I've gone out in like the first, if you take that first 10K too fast, it's going to kick your butt at the end of the marathon. So just control it, control it, control it. And I always say to myself, it will settle even though it's because the first mile or two blows biscuits. You're just like this. <laughs> why did I do this? Why am I in this? What did I sign up for? And then suddenly it settles hydration, nutrition, and you find your legs, right? Like you said, find your legs that first bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. You got to got to do your best and again, it's always setting yourself up to do the best that you can, right? Yes. I and mean, you never want to play into somebody else's race and nope. because that could be their tactic. Right. Who knows? Joe's Joe could feel best running if he goes out a 5-minute pace and yes. if you're Christian Hogenhog and you start the run with yep. him 
and try to do that, oh, that's goodness. that's not going to work, right? right? So you got to you got to do what's best for you and set yourself up to be in a position to do that, right? Absolutely. Where if, if Christian maybe didn't make that move at the end, he he wouldn't have that opportunity. And right now, Joe is 40 seconds back, but he, I mean, we can see Christian up, up ahead. And so no doubt Joe is can see that and he's like ready to go. And he he's at a good clip. He does find his legs and he can run so fast. I feel like he's just like on a jaunt right now, but yet going so fast. So this will be great. And then I can't wait for the next wave. And here comes someone off the bike here, That's which is Canute, Canute, right? Yes. Oh, and now he gets to run a marathon for the first time <laughs> in an Ironman. Ben, you don't know what you've been missing out on, buddy. No. So and, good stuff. Yeah, and I think we can tell a lot uh, yeah. about an athlete the first few steps. Yeah. And he looks good. <laughs> he looks great. He looks he looks how Ben looks when he's run well. And yeah, you know it, it's it, it's a challenge for these athletes. I mean, we're talking Ben. I, yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I, yeah. I want to say he ran uh, maybe eleven high or twelve at uh, seventy point three worlds in yes. St. George. So incredible to, to have that, that course, in your legs, yeah. mm-hmm. and for that to be what you're used to. And like he's an athlete that yep. attacked. Uh, you know, our 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 winner on the yes. day, uh, Christian Blumenfeld, to to go out of the run to catch an athlete like Christian Blumenfeld, yes. very different pace than he's going to go out today. Very different pace. And you know what? Because this is his hometown race, I mean, I did see that his almost two-year-old daughter, Briella, is out there with his wife, Courtney, and she did like the kids race for Ironman yesterday, her first one, he said. And they're going to be out there, so he's going to feel off, you know, he's going to feel off that and any of his family there. I know he looks up to his dad. I'm certain his dad's there watching yeah. him. So I think that'll be cool for all. And I, I have no doubt out, he's going to shimmy into the and to try to catch these two up front. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And, and if I'm if I'm not wrong, I, I believe his dad has done Ironman Arizona before in the past, and, and uh, I, I believe right. Ben's Ben's watched that as a yeah as a kid because it wasn't that long ago <laughs> that he was a kid. But yeah, he, he looks, looks good. He looks great. He's yeah. Watch out for Ben, and he's only five minutes down. So uh, yeah, and it's funny, and Joe's taking his time to get nutrition, and uh, I always feel like Joe, he slows down during the transitions, or rather the uh, aid stations, and that's so smart, because you need fuel. If you miss it, you're gonna, it's gonna hit you later, so go, Joe. Yeah, looking smooth, and, and I can't wait to see Ben come up, and, and then we got Sam coming a few minutes yeah. later. And it's a little that. deceiving. You look yeah. at Ben's style yes. versus Joe's, yes. and don't don't take what you see here nope. the wrong way. Joe is, he's moving right yes. now. It, it looks like he he's is. he's trotting, uh-huh. uh, but that's his style. He just gets so much distance per stride. Yep. And uh, he doesn't degrade at all, which is is generally what happens with someone that, that runs with a, a stride length that, that he does and just right. kind of that style. But man, he's so strong, he's so powerful. so strong. And, and Ben, his pace early, yeah. he certainly went out at a, he went out in more of a quote unquote attacking pace yes. than these two did. Yes. These two were like, okay, we're settling in, right. we're doing it. But he doesn't know any better, right? <laughs> well, he doesn't know any better, but it's possible yeah. that these guys are settling in to the run because mm-hmm. they've been just on the throttle on oh. the bike. It's possible yes. Ben's like, okay, man, I've been, mm-hmm. me and my coach had a plan. I mm-hmm. had to hold back the last bit. I was not allowed to go over this, and now I get to run. Right. So it's possible there's that difference. We we don't know. Uh, but point being, all these three yeah. men look great at phenomenal. the beginning of this run. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And I think, you know, Christian just made that turn, and I always remember on that course, you make the turn, and you look back, and you kind of hope you don't see anybody. <laughs> and then he saw Joe, so he's probably like, oh, well, I didn't gain as much time through transition as I would have liked. He did do a good job. I mean, he gained 40 seconds. Uh, but yes, and here, there, there he is. Yep. Sam's ready. Sam he Long, looks good too. He does. Agree? Yeah, yeah, Gosh. absolutely. Good turnover. So he's got that combination of that yeah. Ben Canute turnover with that uh, Joe Skipper stride length. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's moving, looks calm, doesn't look panicked. And, uh, you know, he, he's going to start getting these gaps. Um, he's not going to probably be stoked to know that it's that Right. Many minutes to Joe Skipper, but he's he's confident he can run the low two forty. Uh, he's got it in him, and he's just gonna you know put himself to work. And there's so much like you don't know what's gonna happen till oh the last gosh. five miles of this no. run. And you know what's gonna keep him honest is he's got Matt Hansen that's not too far behind him. Right. Um, but you know, uh, Meredith Christian looks 
really good. He looks good, and it's funny. I expect to see, like, Joe right in this view, and you can't really. I mean, he's he's got a good clip, and he'll just keep trotting along and staying calm, and he had a stellar bike. I mean, really, really good bike, and so now he just has to punt in this amazing marathon. And Sam, too, in his hot pink, looking great, and he looks fast. He's probably trying to catch up to, like, at least get with someone initially and then feed off them. Uh, so, yeah. And see, you, like, we used to be able to see um, Christian, and you still can a little bit, but, I mean, he's holding the gap. Yeah. No, he he is for sure. And Sam looked really, really, really strong. Uh, you know, again, I need to bring a thesaurus to these things, so I stop yes. saying the same words. But yes. they they all look <laughs> they all look really good. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, having good turnover, but Sam and Ben look to be the ones that were attacking the most. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean they're in a right. better spot. Like if doesn't. you're right. Joe and you've got five minutes and you can jog for. Yeah. A minute and then yeah. start running fast. Like yeah. th- that's the, he's in a great spot too. But yep. it's opened up eight twenty six to Sam and yes. five twenty two to Ben. And then we know we have Hanson coming in. But yeah, Joe, I swear he builds into it. I think he might negative split. I really do. I think the first half marathon is slower than the second half marathon of this mar- of the whole marathon. I bet you because he always looks stronger in the end, which I love. Yeah, he he does, and he's an athlete that that can do that. And Matt Hansen is also an athlete that has mm-hmm. the ability to do that. Absolutely does that negative split. But you know, Joe Skipper again. It seems like he's, you know, I use the term allergic to running over <laughs> two fifty, and I, I right. think he is, and I think. You know, if he has the opportunity to kind of pick what he's doing uh, in his effort, you know, he can, he can, it's not often he's running over 245. Right. Uh, so Joe Skipper has it. And, you know, right now looking at the Martin uh, transition times, we had Hogan Hogg is the fastest of that top three, 459. Uh, with a 118 on the second one. So definitely push the pace there uh, with Canute at 17 seconds back uh, and, Joe Skipper at 24 seconds back. So Hogan Hogg definitely getting a fair bit of time, 22 seconds on Joe Skipper in transition. So uh, good on him. Uh, great work there. And, you know, Joe Joe Skipper, you know, last last race he did that wasn't Kona. Yeah. I mean, he ran at 245 in Kona. Yeah. 245 in Kona yes. is ridiculous. Pretty good. Right? Um, and he ran a 237 in Wales, which is not a fast course. Right, so right. to to do a bike ride, I mean, clearly he rode off the front here today. Yes, uh, he had an incredibly quick uh, bike split uh, here today versus what he did in. So his bike split here was four oh five. Strong. He had a great ride in Wales and ran rode five hours. That shows you how hard the course is, and he right. ran a two thirty seven off of. So, right. what is Joe Skipper capable of running mm-hmm. in perfect conditions on a course that might not take as much out of his legs, but most right. importantly, literally an hour less exercise, we'll say, right. in his legs by the time the run starts. Right. Right. So he's starting this run at five hours Pressure. when he started it at six hours in Wales and ran at 237. Right. So we know like a two, he's battling with a Matt Hansen or like a two. F- 34 is something that he is absolutely capable oh, of sure. doing, right? Yep. I mean, he consistently runs in the 240s, but, but you know, 239s, 237s, two, you know, so I know he's capable of getting in the lower 230s. Yeah, no, he certainly is. But, you know, Christian Hogenhog, you mm-hmm. know, we can see him obviously on the left side of our screen, but in Joe's picture, uh, we, we can't really see him, right? So he's still, you know, having a, a, a good run and, and holding enough distance. You can now yeah. kind of see the tent that he's running past in yep. Joe's frame. So he's got that. Here we go. Matt Hansen, athlete we were just talking about. Yep, there he and, is. And uh, we'll see what he looks like when he gets on that grass. Uh, always hard when you're on the concrete. But yeah. yeah, looks good. He looks good to me. And he's going to be on a mission too. What do we got? He's probably only a few minutes more back. So that's impressive. And now he's like, yes, now I'm at my pedigree. What I do best, run like a gazelle. And he will do just that. So again, we're all, everyone's within 10, 11 minutes within the top five. That's impressive. And I have no doubt we're only a mile or two into it. It's going to change. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, these, these first couple splits are going to be uh, pretty telling. Um, but let's not forget, we've got other athletes oh, coming in uh, yeah. behind Hanson as well. Ruben Zapunkt is going to be 
uh, not too far behind. Um, but let's see, they've gone through, or at least Hogan Hogg has gone through 1.8 miles. We'll get a split here in just a few seconds uh, to see what Joe Skipper's uh, time is. So Joe has gone through at 17 seconds back. So in the first 1.8 miles, Joe has made back 22 seconds. So not, not, yeah, he's being not patient. huge, but yeah. He's, yeah, he's being yeah. patient. They're both running uh, quickly, and, and they're both running about six-minute pace. Here we go. That's Ruben Zapunked. Yep. Okay. So see, he's not that much farther behind uh, Hansen. So a lot of guys in the mix going on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we're going to see, you know, other athletes uh, coming through here that, again, can't really be ignored. Adam Fay uh, is coming, going to come through here. Bart Arnault has moved through. Kyle Buckingham is looks to be struggling a little bit, yeah. and he's dropped down into 13th. So that's an athlete mm, okay. I was expecting to be a little bit further up. But uh, Meredith, it's pretty open. I mean, it's, it's pretty far back yes. after this top five or six athletes. Yes. Oh, he almost looks like he's crying. No, it does not look like <laughs> not look like a positive facial expression there. Like it literally looks Christian like Hogan. he's crying. He's like, "Why am I doing this again?" Yeah, I mean, that's where he is yeah, at right now. Apparently, his <laughs> his relaxed running uh, six minute pace face is my crying in my pillow it. face. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, well, we got a lot more to call <laughs> on this marathon, and don't forget, we've got the women's race uh, still out there. They're battling for it. We'll get some more splits when we get back from this commercial. <laughs> That's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And we're back at Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States series. Here with our men's leader Christian Hogenhog and Meredith. He's been mm-hmm. he's been at the front of this race for a long time. He's had company yes. uh, with Joe Skipper, and my guess is he'll have company with Joe Skipper again. I think so too. And this is actually one of my favorite parts of the course. See, it's a it's softer uh, surface, and you get to parallel Tempe Town Lake, and it's super smooth and it's cooler. You get a little like a breeze off of the water. Uh, and, yeah. And it's just, it, it becomes a little, it seems a little slow cause it's not like concrete, but it, it feels good on the legs cause you're still trying to find them the first couple miles. And I see Joe is definitely approaching Christian here before we know it. So here's his run course, Meredith. I yeah. know it's a little different than the last time you did it, but yeah. any highlights that stand to you as we go through? I love it because you see that the transition area where a lot of the spectators are, are kind of in the middle of all this and you're just going around it. So you see them and kind of like zigzagging through it, but you get to go past them right when you come out of the transition, you do a little out and back and you come back to them and you get energy from them. And then you go around to the other side of the bridges and you get to see a whole contingent of spectators over there, which I love. And a lot of times people are going over the bridge. Like I, when I told you my husband had like 50,000 steps here, going over the bridges so they can see you at many places on the course. So it's extremely spectator friendly. Uh, and you just do two laps now. We used to be three. Now two is great though. You still get to see people equally as much and just the, the surface of it all. I, I'm a concrete runner, so I don't mind, but I love the um, the fans out there and they're kind of you know sprinkled all over the course and that's a highlight for sure. No, it really is. It's one of the courses on the circuit. You know, we were talking about yeah. the North American series earlier and this is definitely one of the ones that for me is highlighted by that fact, yes. right? Like I always mm-hmm. tell athletes, uh, you know, athletes that I coach, yeah, yeah. Arizona's great. It for is. a couple of reasons that you just said. Yeah. You have the ability to have multiple laps. Yep. So on the bike, you can, you know, try to maintain same power. 
on the run. It was three laps before. Now it's two. It's mm -hmm. even easier to try to have a goal of negative splitting because yes. it's very, you know, tit even. for tat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think most importantly, so many different spots for yes. your family members to see you. Yes. Which is, is huge for them because yep. they've put in a lot of work too. They've probably traveled a distance to, yep. to watch you and it's fun, fun for them to be able to watch. But for you to, to get yes. that little boost every time. Well, and it's fun for the spectators too, because I know in the beginning that you can set up tents and kind of just sit there and cheer. And it's really fun for both everybody involved. And that's why I like it. And the aid station too tend to be at Arizona all themed. Like I said, the ASU has one. And then there's just every one seems to have a theme that's really fun. Uh, I kind of like that. That's something special about Tempe. And uh, you kind of feed off that energy and anything that helps you get through this next 26.2 miles, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's well said. I think most of us, uh, you know, take anything it's we so can get hard. Yeah. at that point. It's, it's, it's not, it's not natural to, to do what we're doing. And, uh, no. you know, anything that can get us out of our head and, and yes. push through that pain, I think is, uh, is yeah. super important. Apparently all Ironman athletes are glutton for punishment because it's true. It's so hard. But then, as we all know, the second it's over, we remember, we, we always say, I, I do, I always remember what I feel like after. It hurts and it's like watching paint dry during it because it takes forever, even if you're going fast, like the guys are going fast right now. But it's still, it, it's a long time that you're out there almost eight, nine hours for some people and then some up to 17, which is great. But uh, you remember what you feel like after and you're so glad that you push through discomfort. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And it's almost everybody who's human has to push through yes. a fair amount of discomfort. And yes. I, I say, you know, you asked that question where yeah. I thought maybe my yes. strength was, was stubbornness. Yeah. It's whoever can ignore that pain for as long as possible. And then once it rears its head and yeah. it can't be ignored anymore, just... Keep trying to ignore it and push through it as best you can. And that's that's this racing. And it's not an easy feat. And that's why no. that's why a lot of amateurs do this is to, you know, they have busy lives outside of swim bike run, but they're like they put a goal and that's why some register, right? A lot of a lot of our races we you know register a year in advance and so they prepare. And that's why they know that they want to get to the finish line, finish what they started and push through so much discomfort and they, it makes them feel better as humans. Like, wow, I can do this. And like, like we always say, we can do hard things. And that's what Ironman is for sure. It's hard. Is that what you're saying? It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. And yet I, I say everyone, I'm never going to do another one. And then I go and sign up the next day. I just need a day. I, anyway. I love the different lines these guys are taking. Like I know. <laughs> Joe is like maybe trying to stay in the shade a little bit more, yes. cutting tangents, yep. illegally cutting tangents, yes. you know, taking the shortest uh, way through the course. And, yep. uh, Zip, uh, not Zipunk, sorry. Uh, Hogan Hogg is on uh, the inward side yes. of this lap here, trying to make it as, as short as possible, uh, according to him. Exactly. And hey, whatever is, they're obviously both doing it legally. It's just, I would definitely be the one finding the shadiest spot that I could muster or being close to the water so I'd get that breeze. So, but you see Joe in the background, you see him licking his chops, ready to kind of make a pass here before we know it. I mean, 18 seconds is still 18 seconds, but he's getting a smidge closer. I bet at the next uh, tick, it'll be a little bit more. Yep. And a uh, quick update on the women's race. And again, uh, apologies for not having cameras on the women's race for the last lap of the bike. Again, that's for the safety of all the athletes out there. It's congestion on course, a little bit harder to be able to get shots of all that. But Sky Monch and Sarah True still in the lead through 95 miles with Lauren Brandon in third place at 620 back. Renee Kiley, seven minutes back. So getting up onto Lauren Brandon's shoulder here pretty quickly. Mel McQuaid, 1040, and Jen Annette in sixth place, 11 and a half back. But getting ready to pounce on screen, Joe Skipper, again, it does not look like with his turnover that he's running that fast. But if you were to measure the distance from that right mm -hmm. foot stride to when it hits the ground again, he's covering a lot. And, uh, man, yep. he's so powerful. So Like, you wouldn't look at his no. frame and no. be like, that's a 235 runner. off the bike runner. Right. let alone 235 straight. I mean, I right. bet he could run a 220 oh, yeah. or under if he had to. But um, And not to take anything away from Hogan Hawk. He looks no, great, too. he looks great. But look, Joe's, this is what Joe does. He, like, builds into it. He gets his eye on the prize, and now he's about to be leading this race. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's just going to be on how he doses out that energy and, you know, what kind of goals he has. 
yep. to, to quote unquote prove to himself that that he's as good an athlete as he uh, thinks he is, and that he wanted to show in Kona and, and didn't think he was capable of is right. is winning here enough, right. or does he want to go seven forty and with a two thirty five to to prove that that he's got it in him? Like, is it right. is crossing the finish line? I, do you think crossing doable. the finish line first yeah. is enough for Joe? I think he's going to gun you. Know, he probably knows he got off around five hours. And if he went, just think, if he went, uh, you know, 235, the math mm-hmm. on that's pretty darn good. But I think he'll just be, like, to get an Ironman title under his belt this year, coming off a, an excellent Kona, in my opinion, even though it wasn't what he wanted. I think I think that'll be okay for enough, good enough for Joe. Um, and he always has his amazing British wit about it. So I'm <laughs> sure he'll have something to say about it and how he felt. I, I love it. If yeah. there's anything you can yeah. guarantee, it's that Joe's going to have something to say. Absolutely. Which and, is, I, and I love awesome. that. Yeah. And I love that. But I think if he feels good and he's looking at his time, he might not be cognizant. He'll be like, oh, okay, mate, I can go, you know, uh, 7.30 today. I'm going to just bust it out and then go for it. Yeah, and maybe it's that, again, yeah. that uh, negative split possibility yes, out he, there. Yes. Uh, but uh, worth noting, through 1.8 miles, uh, Sam Long has lost another 30 seconds to Hogan Hogg and 45 seconds to Joe Skipper and 45 seconds to Ben Canute. Uh, so uh, Sam Long in fourth place, not gaining time on the athletes in front of him, and he's nine minutes off the lead and f- uh, four minutes off of Ben Canute. Incredible. Incredible. I mean, again, it's just getting started, but still, that's they're holding strong out front. And honestly, and Joe's only going to get faster. I, it, it's like by now you kind of know, like, all right, is this going to be... Not really. I mean, it can hit you later of the race, but I would be surprised having seen Joe in previous races if he, if he falters from, like, this steady eddy pace that he's going right now. Yeah, I don't think so. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, what I've noticed calling his races a few times, like that yeah. race I was talking about yeah. earlier uh, with him racing Ben Hoffman in Florida, right. you know, Ben ran a 236 and <laughs> closed quickly and did not close the last lap because right. Joe was just that good. Yep. Right now, here he is, Joe Skipper, making the Morton move, getting on the shoulder of Christian Hogenhog, uh, you know, taking his time to do so. Uh, Hogenhog looks over his left shoulder, says something yep. uh, to Joe. We'll see if... Uh, Joe gives him anything back and if these guys are Joe's going to be comfortable with company for a little bit yeah if, if he's worried about Hogan Hawk at all uh it, it's mean it looks like Christian's a little bit more relaxed yeah. and excited to to chat with somebody that he's spent yeah. most of the day with today <laughs> then Joe looks like he's just kind of getting to work and he's got the blinders on him and you did not see him uh, move his vision at all no. to Christian's way. I didn't see his yeah. mouth. It's possible they were talking back and forth. I didn't, I couldn't, couldn't I tell, couldn't but tell, right. he definitely seems uh, a little bit more. Okay. We're just, we're doing the work as Robotic, I think yeah. Sam Long said earlier today. Yeah. He didn't blow right by him either. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're going to feed off each other. But good on Christian for just staying, uh, keeping him in touch, you know? Yep. And, uh, okay, so here's another one. Uh, Man, these splits are going to be fun today. Yes. Uh, Through that 1.8 miles, like I said, Sam Long went through in 13 minutes. Hogan Hogg went through 12 and a half. Skipper, 12-12. Ben Canoe, 12-14. Matt Hansen, 11-30. So Matt has gone 45 seconds faster than Joe Skipper through the first two miles and a full minute and a half faster than Sam Long, who's the next man on course in front of him. So... Matt Hansen Ooh. is moving. Oh, yeah. And he's That's not be settling in. No. I don't, it's going to be great. I can't wait to chat more about this at mile, you know, 20. And we've seen we've seen Matt. I don't think he races his best, and I might have to uh, do some texting to, to Julie Dibbins, uh, his coach. Yes. It doesn't seem like he races his best in the negative split mentality. Right. When, I've, when he did that 234, yes. there was an athlete he got off the bike with that – he would have been personally offended and he thought would have offended mm-hmm. the sport if he lost to him. And he basically ran as hard as he could from the beginning of that run and they ran shoulder to shoulder for like 23 miles. Huh. So it was like out of the gate. Yeah. He was trying to drop the guy he couldn't and just kept putting the gas on, right? Yeah. And so if Matt's doing that today, yeah. 45 sec, like I don't, at this point, I don't think yeah. he has a chance of beating Joe Skipper. Right. But if he's putting... 25 seconds a mile yes. on Joe Skipper, which he about is right now. Multiply that mm-hmm. 
by 25. I'm bad at math, but that's yeah. going to get him pretty close. If pretty anybody's good at math close. out there. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, let us know. No, but look, I mean, what I'm impressed with is Christian. Like, he, Joe caught him, and now they're running side by side, or even Christian's even in front. So that's really hard to do when you, like, get someone comes up to you and you just like, oh, okay, they're here. Because I thought Joe was going to blow right past them, to yeah. be honest. And now they're, nope, maybe Joe now is like, all right, I caught you, and now I'm just going to um, sit here for a little bit. We have a five-minute gap on, on Ben uh, or whatnot, and so let's just, you know, work together a little bit here. Yeah, no, I, I like this. I like what I'm seeing from Christian Hogenhog, and I like what I'm seeing from Joe Skipper and the rest of this field. We're going to get off to a quick commercial and see what's going on on the other side. Watching the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Brought to you by VinFast, Boundless Together, and by Biostarks. Decode your health. There we go. Nice shot of the bike course here in uh, Tempe, Arizona, at the uh, Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Athletes still out there, age group athletes still out on the bike course. We've got our male pros out on the run course, and our female pros are going to join them pretty soon. So soon. I can't wait for that. But until then, they should be off very soon, and we'll see what Sarah and Sky are up to. And now, though, these guys, I'm liking their work, just side-by-side -side running on my favorite path. These are the great run paths that Tempe, Arizona has. So... Um, and, and again, they'll probably get a split of where, where they are to the fast coming runners, right? In Canute, in Sam Long, in Matt Hansen. And so they're pretty fast themselves, so I'm not quite worried for them yet, uh, but we'll see. There you go. And these guys are getting a little bit of, uh, you can hear the audio there, somebody out on course giving them a little bit of information and kind of what they're doing out there right now. Sam Long. Still okay. out there running. It looks, yeah, it looks smooth. Looks, looks good. Smooth. Doesn't look like he's struggling or anything. And again, you know, I sound panicked when I see, not yeah. panicked, but surprised when I see him uh, losing uh, time. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a marathon. And, and he's nine minutes back. That's probably too far to be able right. to win this race. So he does still need to do what he can do. Uh, so he needs to put himself in a position where he can settle into this run and then, and then move forward. But right. uh, Sam Long not... Not really cutting as much time as, as no. he might have hoped. And he doesn't want to get fourth. He definitely doesn't want to get fourth. He, he'll, he'll want to get a podium or obviously win or top top three, top two, whatever it is. So he's now on the hunt to hunt down Canute or hunt down anything, anyone that falters, right? It's always like a, a game of attrition sometimes. Like here we are in the beginning stages of the marathon, but like we'll be having most likely a different conversation here in, the in an hour. Yeah. Oh, no, the conversation is going to be different. And I think our inflection and excitement uh, is going to be a <laughs> yeah. little bit different in an hour, too, especially uh, seeing the women are 100 percent going to be in a oh, battle yes. as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, these two leaders coming off shoulder to shoulder and seeing what kind of gamesmanship. Wait. Well, and then this is where you see who when I say play your cards right, I really mean just like who played their cards right with nutrition. It was a perfectly perfect weather day i can tell i don't think there was the, the weather didn't even call it i bet it wasn't too windy on the beeline like we had talked about either and so they have perfect conditions so okay who you know obviously 
who is prepared for this to take the win, of course, and all that, but also who played their cards right with nutrition and hydration on a cooler morning and all the things. And all those little factors can help make or break the day. So we'll come to see who who did it right. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. You know, we've kind of, uh, you know, referred to it a, a yeah. few times today is that you don't know. Right. You don't always know. Sometimes you know as soon as you get yeah. off the bike. But often you don't know when we're talking about these like really small margins of error yes these athletes going for the win trying to really kind of get 100 percent out of themselves in in pace when it comes to this race they're not going to know if they did everything right till mile 22. exactly right and that's the (laughs) that's the like fear and uh the weight of like trying to put yourself there is like you just don't know right and not to you be don't. not to be said that if it doesn't work at mile twenty two, you don't have the tools to be able to like come back from right. it and still have a decent race. Right. But you're not going to know if it's going to come out the way you want it till very late. Well, and and sometimes you just accept on the day too. This is a lot of the times. I remember when Skipper won Chattanooga. Even Lionel and and anyone who raced second, third, fourth to him were like, you know what? He was just the better athlete on the day. And that sometimes someone is just the better athlete on the day. And that doesn't mean it's just on the that, that doesn't mean overall or maybe not at the next race they won't be. But today they were. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Sam Long trying to uh, get, <laughs> get a little bit of information from people. And that's part of it too, man. Yeah. You get like yeah. lonely out there. Oh, You see so a buddy lonely. out on the run course, you're Yeah, stuck. you're like giddy. You're like, hey, man, what's going on? What are we doing after this? Uh, well, I will normally be in fetal position, but I mean, Sam's a little bit more resilient maybe than I am in that. But he's like, yeah, he's nice. He's about to approach my favorite area. This is literally my favorite. You go through the, the path where you see a lot of people. Uh, so he'll get, he'll gather some energy from there and get some splits and just keep chipping away at it to get up to the uh, podium position. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, he he looks smooth. There's nothing. Yeah. If I wasn't looking at a clock, yes, I would say yep. Sam is in a position to 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 roll down a few people. Yep, and I still think he's in a position to to maybe uh, pull back an athlete uh, up the road. If that, that's going to take Hogan Hog really uh, kind of coming apart. But right now, through four miles, his average pace is, or he's lost almost three minutes to Ben Canute and uh, two and a half minutes to Hogan Hog. So that's, mm. that's a lot that's a of lot. time to, to be giving up so early. And the more important part of this equation, it's less about what he can do with the athletes in front of him and that, oh man, like yeah. he's got Matt Hansen. Oh. Just rolling, behind breathing him. down his throat before and we know it. Right? He's going to do a double take when he sees Hanson and, and the rate that he yep. most likely comes by him. Right. So it does. And correct me if I'm wrong. Looks like Canute is holding the yeah. same five minutes, and then, but like you said, Sam lost a little bit of time. Can't wait to see the split of Hanson because he was like in the 13s. Yep. I bet he's chipping away at that. He's probably getting to be in the tens here before we know it, uh, and. That's what's so crazy. Like you said, if we weren't looking at splits, we'd think Sam was just like hunting down everybody. No, no definitely <laughs> not. And uh, in the women's race through 104 miles, so getting very, very yes. close to the finish of the bike ride, we've got Sky Monch in the lead uh, and Sarah True in second place. And uh, I like the fact that that's bib number one and two in uh, order. So they're keeping Perfect. things easy for <laughs> easy. us. Uh, Renee Kiley moved herself up into yes. third place over Lauren Brandon. Uh, so those two athletes are 720 and 724 behind. So uh, a lot uh, going on there. Those two women uh, moving up quickly. And so news that, you know, we talked about Ironman Arizona, or I did, excuse yeah. me, and I made the uh, uninformed uh, statement that the bummer about if you want to qualify is that everybody wants their spot. Right. Man on screen. Yeah. One of two men to have qualified already. That's right. Iron yep. Man Wales. Iron Man he was Wales. Right That's after, right. so the gentleman that we talked to earlier, yep. Brent McMahon, yep. and Joe Skipper Have, qualified for right. Kona 2023. Okay. On the same day in uh, September, September 11th, I believe. Yep. So, those two athletes qualified already. So what that right. means, and I'm out of the loop. Yeah. You might have not known. Every male pro knew that, right? So like, they, uh, yes. Hanson knows that there's three spots. Yeah. He knows he's going for. 
uh, or sorry, not three two spots, spots, two yeah. spots that'll uh -huh. go to third. Yep. He knows that if Skipper's in front of him, he can finish third. Right. Hanson's still trying to win right now. Of that's course. just how Matt yes. Hanson rolls. But that's also maybe why we might see some athletes that we, <gasps> uh, here we go. Ugh, shoot. So lower back, yep. upper hamstring. Oh, but we're Sam off. Sam Long. And so we did see that earlier. We saw him stretching out. We weren't sure if that was just a planned stretch or not. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious if, so this is the first Ironman that, mm -hmm. that Sam mm -hmm. has done since the World Championships in St. George. And I could be incorrect. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't think I am. But the, in St. George, and he was struck by a car yep. like a week or week and a half before. Right. And he had, I believe it was like lower back SI joint issues going into that. Yep. Um, that that kept him from having his best race there. When you have issues like that, it's hard, especially I think a larger athlete, yep. it, it's hard for those to totally disappear. And right. they'll come up when you're stressing yourself as, as hard as you can, or if there's electrolytes are a tiny bit off. And I think in a position like this, and I... You know, he just rode 200 miles the other day. I know. Uh, the other and, day, and, literally. And on a flat <laughs> course. Yes. So I wouldn't think this would bug it. But if it's going to come out, yep. it's going to come out when you're in your aero bars on a flat course where yes. you're in the same gear most of the race. So right yep. now it looks like Sam is trying to get through some either upper hamstring cramps or, you know, lower back mm -hmm. SI issues. And, you know, more power to him. Okay, right. stop for a second, try to get it clear, and then keep going. And, and we're going to let Sam get to the rest of this run here and do his best uh, to get these cramps out while we take a, a break. also thinking about Sam is that he does so much climbing like living in Boulder and all those epic rides he does with 7,000 feet of, of, of elevation that could have obviously taken its toll too because yeah. you're in arrow and flat for four hours and, plus, and some change you know what I mean yeah and here yeah. we go we got yeah. Matt Hansen uh, making uh, his uh, bridge up yeah. to Sam Long, who's, you can tell visually now that he's he's mm -hmm. labored a little bit, mm -hmm. not uh, super even in his stride. Uh, Matt Hansen is, he's going to be labored, but it's labored in a different way. It's a, the, kind of this self, uh, self uh, infliction of yes. pain uh, to move across the course as quickly as possible. And, you know, Matt Hansen is, he does this better than, than uh. anyone in the business. He's, he... He wouldn't prefer to always be behind chasing, but man, he is so good at chasing. We saw him he do is. it Look in Kona him. to a good position in so many races over the years, and he's going to absolutely fly by that Sam Long form. at this point. Uh, love that guy. Yep. Gave him a pat on the back. Gives him a pat True on the back. Gen. He knows that Sam's not having his race. Right. Right. He knows right. that this is not him right. versus Sam both on great days. So right. give a second to encourage uh, yeah. you know, his competitor. Uh, and just move forward, and man, he is hauling Why? the mail. <laughs> he looks sub two thirty to me right now. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's it's going to be there's going to be one or two athletes yes. in the two thirties here today for sure, and you know certainly the man on screen is is the one who's hoping has the faster of those two thirties, and it's enough. And you know the only thing that could possibly hurt Matt is if somehow he lost all of his experience and yep. his knowledge and got off the bike thinking I've got this 10 minute gap. I need to run my butt off right. and goes out way too hard. Right. That's the only thing That's, that could, could really hurt him. I think the way he's running now, yep. there's 
little chance he doesn't finish on the podium. Right. Just depends who's with him there. Right. And second place is going to be really hard oh, really uh, to hard. take away from Matt Hansen. Yeah, he looks good. Just his form and his high cadence. He is hustling right now. Like you said, even at the 1.8 mile mark, he was gaining all this time just in that short amount of time. Oh yeah, absolutely. And already just Sam's out, right? He's he's almost uh, out of sight at this point. And shoot. Yeah. you know, he's hanging on as long as he could and, and it's one of those things that clearly he's had to stop and yeah. you know, take a break to, to try to stretch stretch himself out and yeah. uh, you know, get going again. But uh, Sam's out of the picture and man, the man on screen, Matt Hansen, right. is doing his best to try to bridge himself up to the next uh, American on the course and that's Ben Canute. This limited edition Breitling Endurance Pro Watch has been made in honor of the 2022 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship presented by Utah Sports Commission. The unique event theme, Legends Rising, is brought to life with a striking orange strap and colorful M dot on the face and the Ironman 70.3 World Championship etching on the back case. Each watch is limited to 200 pieces, so act fast and order yours today on ironmanstore.com. You know what's crazy is Matt, Matt rode a 419, you know, so that's significantly slower technically than like a skipper, but he has a very good contention to get way up there, even with these guys, yeah. the way he's running right now. Oh, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's good to point out. You would look mm -hmm. at somebody losing that kind of time on the bike and, uh, you know, maybe they're out of it. Maybe they're not the same caliber of athlete, but uh, certainly not the case with Matt Hansen as he goes through this last section at 519 pace. Mm -hmm. uh, he's now gone through uh, 5.3 miles in 30 minutes and 20 seconds compared to Joe Skipper's 32, mm -hmm. 20. So two minutes in five miles. That's, uh, you know, if you right. extrapolate the math on that, I'm right. going to do quick bad math. <laughs> yes. That's if it stays as it is and the, everybody holds their same pace, which they won't, mm -hmm. that's eight minutes, mm. which is a ton. Yeah. But Matt's still 11 minutes down. Right. So he's out of real estate. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's as make, long right. as nobody comes apart uh, yeah. at this point, it's, it's going to be a tall order. And yeah. man, if Matt Hansen outruns Joe Skipper by eight minutes that's that's that's, insane. that's crazy town um but he's putting himself in a position but like mm -hmm. ben canute he yeah. still has six minutes on matt hansen yep and he's only lost two minutes and uh 30 seconds at this point to matt hansen so it's going to be something to play for with uh with those two as well well and it's funny to look at the the front guys here they look they're i'm under no delusion they're going really fast but if you look at them compared to what we just see in matt, matt hansen it's totally different styles of running and pacing right now. Like, Matt is humming. But these yeah. guys, I, I really think Joe is just being smart right now. I think he can run faster. That I'd be, like, I think he's just trying to just feed off someone else and before he makes his move. He's just trying to stay controlled, take inventory of what's going on around him, and go from there. Yeah, and I think they're, they're you know, enjoying the day to a certain extent, yeah. those two athletes being uh, together, and, and they have been for most of the day. And they have enough... Joe has enough real estate yes. and time. Yes. You know, you're talking athlete of this caliber. He has five minutes. That's almost a mile on Ben Canute, right? So right. If, if Ben Canute somehow turns on the turbochargers, you know, he's going to know before yes. it's Ben pulls back two minutes. Right. And if he pulls back two minutes, then Joe has the opportunity to, to really, you know, get on that throttle and open it up. And the more you hold back, the more throttle you have, right? Right. So if that athlete that's chasing is kind of on the rivet trying to catch you, mm -hmm. and they do, but you've been, like, holding back this whole time, like, they don't have a chance. And that's where an athlete like Matt Hansen is going to have some trouble or his work cut out for him when he catches, if he catches more athletes in front of him, is that those athletes are obviously great uh Great racers, you know, Ben mm -hmm. Canute is the next athlete in front of him, and he's was second place at 70.3 World Championship. He has the right. foot speed to try to hang with someone yes. like Matt, and, and clearly Matt, at least on the run, is going to have spent more energy by the time he gets there. 
And agree. And you know what else? They're on like, you know, mile six, seven right now. And this is the hardest part, I think. They're on the other side of where all the, the everybody else is. So unless people made that journey, there's less people over here. So this is the dry part where there's not as many uh, spectators. And so this is the hard part on lap two. But it's not affecting uh, Matt Hansen right now no. at all. No. He has his nutrition set up. He, I noticed he's running with a water bottle, smart. He's got his nutrition strapped around his his waist. It's like he's dialed. He's ready to run fast, you can tell. No, he certainly is. And, uh, you know, we're, we're here for it. We're, we're ready, here for it. We're ready to yes. watch. Uh, we got a couple other athletes ready to, to run fast, too, and that's our, our women's leaders, yes. Sky Monch and Sarah True. They're just going to be a few minutes now so from, close. from transition at this point. And, uh, and the, the transition is going to be something to deal yes. with there. I, you know, if I was a betting uh, person, I would bet on uh, Sarah True having the upper hand on Watch getting out. out quick and Pay being attention. able to have time to settle in. And I mean, where do you, how do you rate these two? Like for me, yeah. Sarah has more yeah. ability in my opinion, yep. and I'm going to hear about this probably, but it seems like she has more variable pace than Sky does. Sky is a engine and she can yeah. just pull on that throttle and just slowly increase that that pace and get to her three hour ish yep. marathon pace and, and, and I'll, I'll double check my my yeah. times there but i think i'm in the right zone yeah and but sarah if she had to run 10k over pace she could do it and or, that's the olympic distance uh you know olympian yeah. in sarah true is i think she has the ability more so to um kind of have surges and stuff because okay. she's used to that in ITU and in Olympic distance racing. Whereas Sky is a true Ironman and half Ironman athlete, so she's gonna be more even, I think, yep. more steady Eddie for the whole two five X or three low threes or whatever they 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 run today. So if they are running side by side and they run the whole time in a surge, do who in, who do I think maybe could do a sprint finish sarah true does have that in her yeah. but sky has the consistency to just grind it out for x amount of time oh no yeah, yeah. i think grind is the key word here as yes. we see our bike finish so i think that Yay. means we've got our women there there we go one and two bibs number one and two that's uh sky Monch and sarah true no doubt uh, Sarah was the one who wanted to be faster in transition, yep. cuts that tangent around that right-hand corner, already opening up the gap. And this is kind of what, I, what yeah. I'm saying here, right, yep. is that Sarah has that, okay, let's run quick for a couple hundred meters, get yep. ourselves a gap, even if it's five seconds, and just when you're the athlete that's yes. being chased, you're like forcing that other yep. athlete to not be able to settle in. Absolutely, and I'm impressed. Like, it's hard when you get caught. I mean, as we talked about, Sky was two plus minutes behind Sarah in the swim and she caught her early in the ride and then Sarah stayed with her the whole time. That's impressive because yeah. sometimes that's hard to do. Like, so maybe she wanted a friend. I think it's great. Now they're in, uh, like Sky helped spark something in Sarah and now they've come into T2 together. So it's going to be a really fun marathon yeah. to watch them go. And, you know, these times, some are a little bit older, but yeah, you know, Sky and, and was, was close to right. Sky generally... She's low three. She's yep. 301, 304. There's like a bunch of marathon splits where she's right around there. Yeah. Um, her fastest, I believe, was 257 at Tulsa uh, behind Cat Matthews and Daniela Reef. Mm. Um, and here we go. Sky Monch already mm. out yep. of transition and out on the run. So we haven't seen Sarah yet. There's Sarah right in the background. So yep. Sarah actually took a little bit more time maybe taking off those arm warmers and gloves. Yep. Uh, but she was not able to get out of transition first. So that's Sky Monch in the lead uh, starting on the Hoka run course. Uh, she's still got some logistics to take yep. care of, as we said with the men, uh, getting things together. Um, but, yeah, so 257 for Sky, her PR. Sarah has also run 257. That was in Kona. Uh, so that, that gives you a couple more minutes as far as pace yep. goes, as I'm concerned. Uh, but she's run a 254 at Ironman Germany as well. That was in 2018 and a 304 Amazing. at Placid recently, which is a very, very right. tough course. So right. these women pretty evenly matched with, I'd say, Sarah having a little bit more top end speed. Yep. So we are going to see. And good on Sky for yeah. not doing an Ironman transition, like a slower one usually. <laughs> she did a, a kind of... Uh, you know, Olympic distance fast uh, transition. She probably was like, you know what? I got to do it because she's going to be fast. And 
I think that's pretty rad. No, she was aggressive and straight to yeah. it. And, you know, these women know a lot that we don't yeah. uh, because they've been racing together and they've been shoulder to shoulder. So yep. Sky might have seen yep. some things in the last lap where she's like, you know what? I think Sarah's a little bit more tired. Yes. When she was coming her through to take a pole, it wasn't as strong. Right. Or maybe she didn't take a pole for right. the last long bit. Um, so these two know kind of where each other's energy levels are. And, yes. and that might be why we're seeing like pretty aggressive racing and running early here in this run course. I agree. And this this right now, this exact form and pace and cadence of Sky is so Sky. That's just this what is, it is. Yeah. It's a, this is yep. like the perfect epitome of what she like embodies. And it's amazing in this yeah. race. And like, sh this is what we just talked about. She can keep this for the entire time. Whereas, okay, I think Sarah True can too, but can she surge, you know? And so that will be interesting to see. But yeah, this is Sky to a T, like crushing it on a good clip and just finding her rhythm. That's yeah, what she, she does. She's going to force Sarah to, to bridge yes. uh, at some point if she wants to win this race. And I think the question is, you know, it's seven seconds, uh, yep. the last split that I got, is, is it worth it for Sarah? And does Sarah think... Okay, I got to close it so I can get on the shoulder and then we're racing shoulder to shoulder. Or is she like, you know what? I'm going to let her do what she's trying to do. I'm going to let myself settle into my marathon because at the end of the day, marathon's a yep. marathon and whoever can run quickest right. is going to run quickest. But let's take a quick break and get back to the action as soon as we can. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight, to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport. To delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. And here we go. We're back on the run course and Sarah Chu has answered our question. Does she mm -hmm. want to bridge up? Yes, she does. Yep. Our next question is she going to be okay with this Morton move getting into first place as a tie for first place? Or is she going to try to get the pace on and go right by Sky? And the width that mm -hmm. which she passed mm -hmm. makes me think she doesn't necessarily want Sky <laughs> to come with her, right? Like you're, you're then making that athlete not yeah. only keep up, but move over to keep up. Right. And she just kind of wants to be on her own line. So this is where, just like with Skipper bridging to Christian, it's like, all right, is Sky? Yep, Sky's gonna tuck in. Why not? You can tuck in. Use her. Use her as a carrot. Stay on her feet. Uh, you know they have totally different running styles. If you notice, like Sky is more like higher cadence, and Sarah's got the like more long, long, lean, sh like longer strides. And we'll see which ones work. But here we go. The marathon is on. Oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> you, we not see this very often. No. And at the way that Sky. She had to get a gear to yep. get on to Sarah's yep. feet. I don't think Sky has this pace. Mm -hmm. And we can see it opening up slowly right now. But mm -hmm. I think if Sky, the reason Sky is so consistent is yes. exactly what you said. Yeah. Sky is looking like Sky right yep. now. If Sky goes outside of that steady metronomic, yep. this is the pace I run, she's risking putting herself out of it. Where if she just runs her 301 or a three yeah. hour and ignores Sarah, then yeah. if Sarah messes up at all, yep. she's right there. But if she goes outside of herself, she might not be in a position. But wow, Sarah True on the on gas. On fire. You know what I'm thinking is she's going to be 41 next week. And she's like, you know what? I want to have a really good Thanksgiving. And it's my 41st birthday. My son and husband are waiting for me back in New Hampshire. Uh, and we're going to have it. We're going to make it the best we can here. Good on her. And again, uh, after having, I, I don't mean a disappointing Kona, meaning because she didn't, wasn't even able to race because yeah. she was sick. It's like it's so nice. That, yeah, because she put in all that effort to go there and then to be sick it's just luck of the draw right and so yeah it's nice to see her leading and again sky will keep chipping away at it and do sky 
There and we go. Yeah, here we go. We got uh, some more male pros coming off of the bike. Yep. Um, let him get to get to his work. And uh, on the women's race, we did see Sarah True opening up a little bit of a gap and, and moving out onto that uh, run course as quickly as she could. And uh, on the men's side, we saw Joe Skipper yeah. having a, a good run, and it looks like he dropped yep. uh, Christian Hogenhog uh, and is uh, is now on his own. He made the move. He made he made it. He was like, "Let's go!" And here's that turn. And good that that one gentleman uh, kind of cruised by them, and now Sarah's doing it. There's Renee Kylie. Uh, coming off looking great. And she's in, let's see, third place or fourth. Looking good, Renee. Yeah, no, she must have caught uh, Lauren there. Yeah, yes? she's in third good. place, uh, getting off the bike good. Uh, just a few minutes down, having yes. a uh, you know consistent bike ride and slowly, you know, consistently moving herself forward. And Look at this. in Amazing. the end, yeah. she's going to be excited that there's a battle in front of her. Yes. Because a battle yes. exposes somebody to, to maybe coming apart. Yes. And again, I say it a lot, is uh-huh. I don't think Renee would argue that Sarah True and Sky Monch are better Ironman athletes right. than she is. Right. To beat someone better than you on the day, mm-hmm. you have to put yourself in a position mm-hmm. to play sweep if they mess up. Right. And she's play doing sweep. it. Yep. She's doing it, she's right? She's there. There's Lauren. She's going through. She held her own. And yeah. These gals, they're not that far. I mean, they're, it's, it's a within a 10-minute sort of race we have going on here, which I really enjoy. I feel like everyone's doing their thing. And like you said, I like your verbiage, sweeper, yeah. you know? And it's funny to watch Sarah True run because she just looks like, so, like she's on a little trot, yet she's going so fast. <laughs> Yeah, no. You know? she, yeah, she absolutely is. She's it's similar to a, a skipper. Yes. You know, that good high uh heel kick yes. and consistent kind of uh again metronomic uh pace as she moves through the early sections of the course. But yeah, she doesn't look like she's doesn't look like she's running that fast, but uh ask Sky Ma, she's definitely I know. running she is. fast. And you know, I look at this, I don't know if these two athletes have had a head to head in a while. Yeah. But I, I think back to 2019, yep. Ironman Germany. Yes. Sky Mach's first yep. Ironman win. Yep. And it was these two athletes. Mm-hmm. And it was Sarah True, like, in the lead by a bunch. Yep. And she struggled late. You know, mm-hmm. she, kind of what I was just saying, she yep. came apart and Sky was there to sweep, sweep up. Sweep it up. You know, she, yeah. she kind of passed out and uh, was pulled off the course and wasn't able to finish with, like, a mile to go. Right. And knowing knowing Sarah, yeah, she, she that was not an experience she enjoyed. No. And, and she's one that, you know, she's an encourager and uh, she loves competition uh, and she loves her competitors. But yeah. you know what? She'll be like, she'll go up to the board and be like, okay, that's one for yeah. one for Sarah. I got it yep. back. Right? Yep. So there's there's something else besides just trying to win this race is what I'm trying right. to say. Right, is to just have, yeah. And to, to get to the finish line just like she looks right now. And she yep. looks to be doing just that. Lauren Brandon looks good. She's going out there to do her thing in fourth place. Yeah, no, is, she, yeah she looks smooth. Yes. Uh, mo- moving out on course, back with Sarah True running well. Uh, on the men's side, we did have yeah. through eight miles. Hanson go through 930 back now. Okay. Uh, Joe Shipping Skipper. Away. Pushing the pace, it did see since that uh, split that he's dropped Christian Hogenhog by a little bit at least. Uh, ben Canoop running the exact same pace as okay. Joe Skipper through eight miles. Uh, so that's a, that's a good sign for those uh, looking uh, for Ben Canute to, to run well. And he's 442 behind at this point. Awesome. And so we have two incredible races right now with some major competitions going on. And then Sarah just looked back. <laughs> She's like, oh, wait. No one's with me right now. She did a casual look back, and she's like, oh, it's just the moto. I'm okay. And she's looking at her time, taking inventory. Again, I would think she's not going out too crazy fast right now. She just looks strong and together. Yep. And I think that she certainly pushed the pace yes. when she went by Sky, right? Yes. Because you're not mm-hmm. going to just right. drop Sky if you're right. just running, right? But I think you're right. right. She's not at a level that she can't sustain for uh, for a fair bit. And yeah, no, mm-hmm. she, she looks uh, composed and ready to do so. I'm really excited to see 
this first split as they go through mm -hmm. 1.8 miles uh, to see what that gap is. And I'm sure it's not going to be a huge gap, but it'll right. be a telling gap because uh, it's early enough that these athletes have energy to make moves if yes. they want to yes. and make decisions. Uh, um, here we go. We've got our Martin yep. transition time. Sarah True going through quickest of the top three through transition. Uh, that's 6.05 total with those two transitions, 124 in the second one. Lauren Brandon in second place in, in that, and Sky Monch goes through 23 seconds back, but the fastest uh, Morton transition time of T2 of those three, so no wonder she had mm -hmm. a little bit of a gap going onto that run. But there you go. That's your Martin transition time. So those top three women uh, through transition, and uh, Renee Kiley uh, through Sorry, three transition in fourth place just behind okay. Lauren Brandon. So a little bit of back and forth, it looks like, at the end of that bike ride. If I remember correctly, Renee Kylie had, had caught Lauren Brandon. Um, so Lauren Brandon okay. having, having a good good ride good. to come back from uh, from being caught through 104 miles. Renee Kylie was in front of Lauren Brandon. So and great work. Now Jen Annett in fifth and McQuaid holding out six. And again, everybody's within 12 minutes of the leader. That's great, right? That's oh, yeah. a, and they're just starting this marathon, so anything can happen for sure. Yeah, and so what I'm seeing is Renee Kylie actually had a three minute and 15 second T2. Okay. So Lauren Brandon actually caught and passed Renee Kylie in transition. Got it, okay. Uh, so there's that confusion there. Yeah. Um, but uh, here we go. We're gonna get to a commercial break and get to more action ASAP. Okay, we are back with Lauren Brandon running in third place here at the Bio Starks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman United States series, doing her best to keep rolling here. And uh, we're going to have Lauren Brandon, a lot more action to come from Lauren Brandon, but certainly some action uh, on the men's side of the race right now. Joe Skipper has gone through 10 miles with a minute gap now on Christian Hogenhog. So... You know, what I'm looking at is mile eight split, he was running with Hogan Hog. And then after eight, he put a minute between eight and 10. And if I'm thinking, and you just noticed, we're looking here on the, the screen to see if there's out and backs. I'm guessing, and this is what we do, all we can mm -hmm. do is guess, right. that Skipper saw how handsome was running and said, okay, it's time to start running <laughs> exactly. fast. To put a minute into Hogan Hog in two miles, <laughs> just coincidentally at the same time you get sight of Matt Hansen. Right. I mean, if I saw Matt Hansen oh, yeah. running like that, I would be, yeah, I, oh, I'd, 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 I'd be scared for sure. Well, yeah, he didn't know probably how much time he had coming off the bike. And then when he finally saw it at that first main turnaround, which you can at mile eight, he was like, oh, I better hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lauren Brandon on screen looks yes. looks really, really good, looking smooth and composed. I uh, love to see uh, her, you know, being able to perform on race day. You know, she wasn't yes. necessarily that excited about her Kona, which is uh, fair enough. It wasn't yeah. what she was prepared for. Uh, but she looks she looks smooth and comfortable right now. And the, the lead women yes. have gone through 1.8. So our split, Sarah Chu just has seven seconds on Sky Mod. So through 1.8 miles, she's run 20 or sorry 14 seconds faster than sky because sky had that little lead coming out of transition so still right there it's all right there and i'm still relaxed watching lauren brandon <laughs> that has not changed since the start of this race she again she just doesn't stress like i said it's like 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 a duck what i you know smooth on the outside and she's my i'm sure she's you know pedaling frantically just because 
Iron Man can be stressful sometimes, but she's maintaining her cool. And, you know, she's in a podium position right now. If she can just maintain a solid pace, I'm sure Dibs has her set up for success to, to run this marathon, what we know she's capable of doing and hasn't been able to execute as of late. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and you know, I'm not seeing Renee Kylie at this point either. So oh, there yeah. she is way in the background. Yep. You can see that pink kit uh, that we know is Renee. So just kind of at the back end of our screen there. So those two running pretty similar times at this point, as far as I can see. But right now we're looking at the quick movers on course right now. Great shot. Upper left-hand side of the screen is Joe Skipper. Uh, and a lower right-hand side of the screen is Matt Hansen uh, running in fourth place right now, uh, but the top three through 10 miles, Matt hasn't gotten there quite yet, is Joe Skipper, Christian Hogenhog one minute back, then Ben Canute at five at 12 back. So Ben's lost just under 30 seconds uh, to Joe Skipper in the last two miles as well. So clearly Joe did, you know, put, put his hand on the throttle and push the gas a little bit. And I'm thinking it's when he saw Matt Hansen. It's possible when it was when he saw Ben Canute, but uh, either way, he, he got an eye, to, eye sight of his competitors and said, okay, now yeah. it's time to, to get moving. And, and Matt Hansen still absolutely rolling through the early sections of this course. Right. Joe's like cadence even picked up. I felt like with with Christian initially, he kind of just was like more chill. And then exactly what you said, he, he needed to light a little fire under his butt because he was like, oh, wait, I forgot. I have Matt Hansen. Even though he's whatever, 10 minutes back, I need to hustle because I know this guy can run. Oh, yeah, no, these, these two, uh, you know, they're going to bet on themselves on a race. Sure. But they are going to respect each other, certainly uh, on the run portion of an Ironman. So uh, they're, they're going to keep an eye on that pace and not let either one get to a, a position where they could capitalize. Because right. these guys have done this before. They right. know, they have experience. They know what their body generally is going to do. But they also know at any point they could be doing what we saw Sam Long doing a couple minutes ago. And, like, you never, you don't know until you're, legs start cramping that you're cramping, right? right? So as much time right. and cushion as you can get, uh, the better. Right, and I can't believe they're going to be halfway before we know it. I mean, <laughs> goodness. It's, you know, it's like, it's really amazing. And now the main thing is like, all right, well, Canute's just holding five minutes, Dude. right? And now it's if he can catch Christian. And then it's like, oh, boy, I've got Hanson coming. And they all want the podium slots. I hope Sam's yeah. doing all right. He's, he's still on the course, and he's just behind... Uh, you know, fell off behind Matt there, but um, I'm hoping his back is feeling better. Yeah. So, so Sam's lost five minutes now to Matt Hansen through eight miles, not through that 10 mile split. So 15 minutes back in fifth place. Uh, so definitely uh, a bummer, not what he was hoping for today, but uh, still moving forward on the course. So, so good on Sam for pushing through that pain, but Matt Hansen absolutely flying and i think you're right like there's a lot that's going to happen yes. with these run splits and i think you know if i was a betting person which i'm not of course i think it's going to be a battle for second with canute yep. and uh hansen and, yes. and it might come late because we haven't seen ben on screen yet and and we'll i'm sure get to him at some point soon but the way he's pacing and going through these splits I'm very confident that he's running a pace he thinks he can sustain for the marathon. Right. He's never done it before, so who right. knows? But him and his coach are smart. Yep. Uh, to get second in a world championship a few weeks ago, you can't do that if you're not smart, <laughs> smart. Yeah. and a great athlete. So I think it's not going to be easy for Ben, uh, or sorry, for Matt mm -hmm. to, to catch Ben right. and drop Ben because you know Ben's pacing himself quite well. And I, I will, I've seen, I do say that Matt is a great runner and it's because I think he does run out hard and just yes. try to stay on it, but it doesn't always work. We've seen right. that not work yeah. with Matt where he's yep. had great first halves and then not close in the second half as right. we see Joe Skipper back on screen. But Matt Hansen has now gone through that 10 mile mark at 9.33 down. So 9.33 okay. behind the man on screen yeah. has run four minutes faster than him almost at this point, which isn't enough. Right. Uh, it's a lot, but it's not, not quite enough. And he's only brought back another little bit on, on Ben Canute. So he's four minutes on Ben as well, but right. he's still uh, four minutes and 20 seconds behind Ben. Behind on, Ben. Yeah. And if Matt comes up to Ben, we know with his, you know, 
Olympic distance and Olympian as well. We have Olympians in this race. <laughs> he can also, like, like yeah. Sarah True, have that top end to like surge more than maybe a Matt Hansen. And Matt Hansen's an incredible mu- runner. I've I've never had to see him surge, surge, but I know, I bet he can too. I'm just saying, I mean, Ben has it in him big time. Yeah, I mean, Ben, you know, again, those mixed relays, he's yes. great at. We've seen him do 1K uh, stuff and like super sprint. He's amazing at. I've seen him have some sprint finishes against Terenzo Bazzoni in short course races like yep. that were mind blowing. And he's just a competitor and just does not want to relent. So, I mean, if those guys are running shoulder to shoulder with less than. Yeah. Three miles to go. Hansen is he's in for it for sure. Right. We're, we got a lot till we get to that point of, sure. of this race, but I think I think Ben's in a, a really good position at this point. And again, it's Matt is a fantastic runner, but I think at this point, if he catches Ben, he's going to do so having spent more energy on the right. run. Not right. to say he doesn't have the ability to spend more energy than Ben does on the run, but um, it doesn't come for free. You don't Doesn't. run faster just because you're a good runner. No, no. And and Joe is taking care of himself. He's got his nutrition going. Mm-hmm. And God, he has already has 95 seconds on Christian, and that's only been in the past few miles. Yeah. So he really had to light a fire there and just hustle. And now he's, ten, you know, nine plus in front of Matt, and he'll, I have no doubt he'll keep, unless he explodes, he'll just keep this pace. Yeah. This is more looking like Skipper. Yeah. And he, look, he's look, gonna he's start chatting talking. away. Yeah, we're yeah. ready to chat, Joe. Go, 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 go. Yeah, and <laughs> so he's he's gathering information right now. Yeah, so that of wasn't Joe jo- like joking no, around as no. we see him sometimes. He's gathering information. He wants to know what the split is. He's not giving much feedback to it. He's still asking for more. So he's aware that there's athletes behind him that have the possibility of of bringing him back or the capabilities of of doing so if he's not you know, pushing the pace mm-hmm. and, and on his game. And right now he's he's running a pace now that would put him at a sub 240 marathon, which is kind of what we expect, but he wasn't really going out right. at that pace necessarily, where Matt Hansen, through 10 miles, is yeah. running a pace that if he held it, which is yeah. hard to think is possible, right? he would run a 232. <laughs> It's pretty fast. (laughs) Then he'd break his own record of holding the fastest 234. Maybe he's out for that. And if that still probably at this moment wouldn't get him up to Skipper, but man, it would be a hard fought try. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be uh, pretty impressive. But right now, uh, Joe doing as best he can to make sure that that's not an opportunity for Matt Hansen. And again, just you don't often see man that can run as fast as Joe Skipper no. with the strength and the build of Joe Skipper. He's just, he's just, uh, he, he looks unbreakable and he's just a, uh, he's sturdy. Right. Right. He like is. he's yeah. not uh, often we, we think of marathon uh, runners yep. or even an Ironman, like very skinny, very yep. almost frail. And, and he's just strong and powerful. And it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. And, uh, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see more, from Joe Skipper uh, as this marathon unfolds. But he's uh, coming through here. We can see on the screen, uh, on the ground there, lap two. So he's uh, he's got a little Incredible. bit more to go. Oh, here we go. This is the shot I was looking there. for. Yeah, right? Yep, this is Ben Canute looking like Ben Canute. We've never seen him run a marathon. Nope. Still but, doesn't look like he's breathing, though, does he? No, this, he is, what, great. <laughs> this is what Ben looks like when he's running comfortable. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's uh, well, what I am excited to see for Ben in this shot is that him running marathon pace, mm-hmm. he's not had to adjust his running style to do so. Right. There's, there's some athletes that are like these short dynamic runners, short course dynamic yes. runners that to, for them to run slow enough mm-hmm. to sustain a marathon, mm-hmm. it's a vastly different gait. Like they shuffle a little bit or they're maybe on their midfoot or heels a little bit more. Where, where Ben's running, you know, if you looked him next to what he looked like at St. George, his running form looks the same, and that yes. means he's set up to, to have success here today. It's pretty, isn't it? He yeah. has, like, a really pretty running form. Yeah. Uh, doesn't look distraught at all, and, and I, I see him looking. He's probably following a plan. He's like, all right. But he has, and I will say, he, dro- he lost a few seconds. Um, he was that 5.13 back. Now he's yeah. 5.38. But I think that also has to do with 
in this run course, there are some pockets where you actually get a little descent and like, and then some pockets where there's a little bit, just like on the bike, false flats. Yeah. So that there's a, it's a little bit of incline and we probably caught, like he's on a downhill now. I bet he'll make, when I say downhill, just a little incline down uh, that he'll make up some time back. But he's holding just right at that five minute mark to Skipper. And I, I have no doubt he'll, I have a feeling he'll catch Christian here. Yeah, and he's, he's got four minutes for Christian, yeah. but I, I agree with yeah. you. I think uh, the way things are, are moving, I think, and the way Ben looks right now. And again, similar um, adjective to, mm -hmm. to um, Joe Skipper, powerful. Very, so very powerful. powerful. And even on that running stride, you can, you can mm -hmm. see that, right? And I think that's important when you're talking about the back half of a marathon. Here we go. Sky has oh, bridged boy. back up to Sarah True. That's amazing. See, that's her engine. And, and, but I think Sarah's just staying calm there. Oh, I don't yeah. see her fretting. And they're, again, their styles of running are so different. Um, but that's what makes it great right now that they are just side by side. Yeah. And I'm sure, I, I don't think Sarah has like ever gotten flustered in her life, right? No. <laughs> no. Very confident. No. Uh, Self assured and yes. uh, does not get rattled by anything. So certainly having Sky over her shoulder is not going to rattle her at all. Does not phase her at all. She's like, oh, I've got company. Okay. Well, we're only, uh, you know, they're about, not even four miles into the to the run. They just think, oh gosh, I feel for them. They have 22 more miles. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, you got that evil <laughs> laugh there. Look at that. That's awesome. That is just crazy. Yeah. Exactly. That's so awesome. So yeah, those two women are through four miles and they've gone through that at about 25 and a half minutes. So running a, a, mm -hmm. a great pace, obviously, a sub seven minute pace at this point. Um, through two miles, Lauren Brandon still went through in third place. Uh, running 15 minutes for those first uh, 1.8 miles with Renee Kiley mm -hmm. only 50 seconds back, but importantly ran 30 seconds slower through that period of time. Now, Mel McQuaid is 12 minutes back, 12 and a half minutes back. So just 40 seconds from Renee and a minute and a half from Lauren, but has run through over a minute faster than those two athletes. So I didn't expect to see right. that, but Melanie McQuaid, she's putting yes. her, her uh, hat in the ring. I like it. And I wanted to say another thing about Sky yeah. that I didn't before is that she won't ever give up. Like she won't be flustered if someone's ahead of her. And I, I and Sarah had a good clip like of a, you know, even six seconds she got ahead of her and then Sky was like, nope, and brought it back. And so that's one thing. Neither of these neither of these women are gonna give up. So it's just gonna come down to the wire here as they keep ticking off the miles. Yep. So, and right now, just because we just got the split, the Matt Hansen has gone through mile 11 and a half and he's 930 back. So it's mm -hmm. uh, same exact time behind Joe Skipper as the last split, but it's pulled back 15 seconds on Ben Canute. So that's where your uh, one through four stands on the men's side. But clearly the race of the day right now is between these two women putting it all out there uh, here at the Biostarks Ironman Arizona part of the VinFast Ironman US series and going up this little roller. And I, I think it's going to be a continuous, like yep. if Sarah hits a roller and she feels good, she's just going yep. to, she's going to press the gas a little bit, not yep. overextend herself, press her gas a little bit. And she did it there and the timing, you know, she can't mm -hmm. help the timing, but it goes into an aid station. So she missed the first cup of water, but right. she's staying on it. And it might not look like a lot, but when you get a second or two seconds on an athlete like Sky, yep. and we know or I'm yes. My assumption is, and my what I've noticed from Sky is what we've talked about. She doesn't necessarily have a great ability at changing foot speed, mm -hmm. or not as good ability as Sarah, yep. or variable speed in general. So if you force that athlete to bridge up multiple times, even if it's like this, I mean, Sarah didn't yes. really put that hard an effort in. It was just in an aid station. She was composed. Yep. She went through first. That's tactics. Yep. And Sky now has to go harder than Sarah to mm -hmm. catch her again. Mm -hmm. And if she does this two or three or four times, like no matter how resilient you are, if you don't have that as a natural strength mm -hmm. as Sarah does, I think that just that's just going to catch up it's to her. It's going to wear on her, yeah. right? Because like you said, the pull that she made, she, see, but Sky, being the true Ironman athlete, took yeah. more more drinks than sure. Sarah. And maybe she's like, that's fine. Let her do her. I'm going to do me and I'm going to take more drinks. But like you said, she's going to expend a little more yeah. energy now for these like quick surges back to like get on with her. And it's so, it's so uh, evident 
that Sarah is just, and not to say Sky mm-hmm. isn't, but Sarah is such a smart racer. Yes. She knows this. She's oh, like, okay, I'm going to, I've got foot speed. I've done enough yes. uh, repeats and Monteghetti sets in, in my day yes. uh, training for short course that I know I can run 30 seconds hard and, and settle back in. But can this person behind me do it? You know, let's just keep going till we can. And what's cool about where these women are at with the gap that they have on the uh, women behind them, they can play games like this and put mm-hmm. themselves in a position where, you know what? Okay. I crack, if I'm Sarah, I crack a little bit because I tried too hard. Or I'm Sky, yep. I cracked a little bit because I tried to hang with Sarah. I have time yep. to, I'm still going to get, if, if that person is in front of me and, and drop me because of these games or this taxes yep. we're playing, they're going to win, I'm not. Right. If they have a gap this big, they're still going to get second no matter how hard they try and blow right. up if right. they're smart about it. And I think at this point they both are. But, so Sky have that gap and the gap went back out again. Right. Right. And I, and I think one thing, though, at least with Sky is she won't, like I said, she won't let that mentally break her. But man, it would get tiresome to every, oh, every time. That's like, it. connect back together and then uh, expand, connect back together. All that effort is so much and it can wear and tear. And P.S., they're like not even five miles in yet. So there's plenty of time to let this game keep going, if you will. Yeah, and again, they're both maybe going outside. Like, yeah. Sarah probably, she doesn't have a race plan that, okay, in the first five miles, do five, 30-second kind of faster yeah. paces. Like, that's not yeah. her plan either, but they're basically playing, you know, the game isn't, right now, isn't what time they're going to finish or what their pace is. It's, I break this other person and I yeah. win this race. Yes. That's all that matters. I'll get to the finish line no matter how I have to. But this is the, and that's what's so great when you see two athletes like this get off yes. the bike together is it's, you know, who's going to break who? Right. And if it was up to Sky, it'd be a slow grind and see who's fastest at mile 20. And Sarah's like, I'm not falling into that. I've yep. run 118 half since 70.3. <laughs> exactly. is like, I'm going to do what I can to get rid of you exactly. and hope that I mentally break you in that period of time, play the poker match, you fold and, uh, She's gonna she's gonna uh, be the one to get across that finish line first. But lots more racing to do on the men's and women's side here at Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the Vinfast US series. More soon. Welcome back to the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series. Brought to you in part by Hoka. Fly, human fly. Well, the humans are flying out there, Meredith, uh, certainly on the both both sides, but the front of this race, the men's and women's fields are, they're starting to put it to each other. It's its not a, how fast can I go right, right now? It's a, it's a mono, mono, woman yep. versus woman so to situ- sort of situation. Well, and Sarah, even since the beginning, I think she's found her legs. You know what I mean? I think yeah. she's like, she looks a lot faster than she even did when I said she just looks like she's trotting. She was still going fast then, but now she's finding her groove and her legs. And that usually happens about 10K in and she's at that mark almost. And so I think she's starting to feel good and she just needs to just just maintain and keep hydrating. She knows she can. She knows Sky is near. Like you know, you, when you can feel someone, you just. You, she knows she's near. So you need to just uh, manage what you can, control what you control, and Sky's not going to give up. That's for sure. No, no, she absolutely isn't. You can't uh, ever expect that uh, from Sky. And Sarah knows that too. Yes. Uh, she knows that if she's going to play the game where she's trying to crack Sky, it's it's not going to be. Uh, a mental cracking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's going to have to do it physically, and that's going to put Sarah in a, a really tough position as well. 
Right, and this is a this is one of the sections on the course where it's definitely more of a down incline. So, you, so Sarah, being that former ITU Olympic distance gal, she knows how to hustle down those. Um, and gain some time, and she did just then. Aid station one, she's fast through those, and then two, getting a little descent to pick up some foot speed and a higher cadence. She she got a, you know probably another second or two. And what I love is they're only on the first lap. I find like men are starting are entering their second lap, and that's when you'll, they'll start to see the age groupers coming on to the course. It gives it draws even more energy. So that's always fun in this race as well. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, and. Uh, you know, they're going to be hearing it, especially, mm-hmm. you know, when they come through the second lap, uh, the women and all these spectators have seen them yep. battling every time they've come through a lap on the bike, they've been together. And that's yep. a, a couple of times. And every time they've, they've come through the run, it's going to be at a very close distance. And, you know, in the end, you know, we're talking two seconds separate these women right now, but Crazy. it's, uh, they're fine. I mean, sky is on the gas to try to stay here right now. Right. Uh, she absolutely is. And Sarah is, I always find like if you you get stressed in this case, you forget about you're so worried because you're like right with someone and it's stressful. You just want to be like five minutes ahead. You forget to do those little things. And I saw her take out her nutrition and just like stay focused on that. That's that's what she can control is her nutrition and her hydration and staying on that so that she doesn't like bonk basically. And then boom, Sky passes. Because Sky, let me tell you, she's going to stay on her hydration and nutrition. She's going to keep chipping away at it all. So... Yeah, she's not going to divert from her plan when nope. it comes to that at all. Right now we see Ben going up one of the little riser hills out on course, and uh, we're getting a split through 13.3 miles, uh, showing that our leader is continuing to run pretty darn mm-hmm. quick. Uh, and he's gone through 13.3, so just over halfway in 119.42, uh, so sub-240 pace. Wow. And Hogan yeah. Hog is two and a half minutes back, goes through 122.50, and Canute, man on screen, goes through at 121 six minutes back so he's still got three and a half minutes uh to hogan hog but three and a half and a half marathon not a ton uh when you have the kind of foot speed that these athletes do uh but still i mean there's hogan hog you know i've been talking and uh, you know i will admit i've been talking like hogan hog doesn't have a chance of being oh, on the right. podium, but he 100 no. percent does you know yeah. he's he's putting himself in a, in a great position here. he's maintaining and obviously ben probably knows hansen's hansen is not that far. I mean, what, but probably we'll get the split here, but probably in the, you know, less than four minutes from Canute. So it's like we, they all gentlemen have work to do. Yeah. Minus maybe Skipper if he just maintains. And he, there he is, looks fantastic. Sure does. Sure does. And, uh, and through 11 and a half miles, Bart Arnault went through in eighth place. So he's moving through a little bit. He's actually running faster or just as fast as Joe Skipper and Matt Hansen, or sorry, just Joe Skipper through that point. Uh, Zapunk through at seventh place. Uh, he's falling back a little bit. Adam Fay in sixth place. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to stay in front of Arnaud as well, uh, just at 20 seconds in front of Bart. Sam Long just 30 seconds in front of Adam Fay. Uh, so Sam Long right now trying to hang mm-hmm. on to that top five, but it's going to be tough unless he's somehow able to, to shake kind of that... Uh, that issue that he's dealing with right now. No, absolutely. And Hanson split did just come through that he's only 320 down from Ben Canute. So it's on. I mean, they, that said, it, you, you, they're already, they've gone so fast, they're already almost at 14 miles. Like, literally, they have, they're over halfway. It's, it's, it's so impressive. So can Hanson catch Canute? Can Canute catch uh, Christian? Like, that will be this next, obviously, this next. 10, 12 miles will let us know, but they all are running strong. Yeah, no, and that's, you know, that's, that's notable. He's 25 seconds he's put on Ben in a mile. Yes. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. And there was a, a little hill in that, mm-hmm. in that mile, so maybe that's something too, but uh, that's, Ben, Ben can't afford to lose that kind of time, um, you know, that have put them coming together at like mile 20 or so, um, which is fine if you've got a lot of energy, but if Ben's losing that much time a mile, I'm guessing he's going to be running out of energy too. So right. but again, we don't know. Ben, that might have been Ben's plan through half right. marathon. Stop uh, and walk for 30 seconds and get yeah. all your aid you need, or maybe that special needs is in that zone as well. I'd imagine. Um, so it's possible he went special needs back. A lot of things that could have yeah. happened off screen. But um, 20 seconds in a mile. If there was nothing that happened, maybe a little bit uh, too much. But big thing is Joe Skipper on screen, continuing to 
to chip away. And uh, when he's needed to put his foot on the gas, he's been able to. And I love how people are living up to how they normally are, <laughs> i.e. like Sarah, Sky, but also Joe. Like this is what he does. He yep. just shimmies in <laughs> and he shimmies into like a building into it, skips it up, whatever you want to call it, and he does it and he just maintains. Skip once he gets it, he skips and he maintains it and he looks good. And he, it was the same way last time I commentated here and saw him do this in Chattanooga. It was like no one was catching him. This one being a little different because he actually was slower at the beginning than I thought he would be. And then he realized he needed to hustle and he did it. He just now is going to maintain. And Christian there still looks good to me. Even if he's 230 back, he still looks good. Yeah, no, he, yeah, it's, he's definitely not broken. And I think... Right. Right. Uh, there, there's def, there's positives to how quickly he lost time to Joe Skipper mm -hmm. when they split, and that's that he, he noticed that Joe put his hand on the throttle, yes. and he's like, that's not, I don't have that. I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to play games because he knows Joe can hit that throttle and stick to it, uh, where Christian maybe needs to, to stay a little bit uh, more consistent and steady. And, and he's still running like mid 240 pace. Like he's running right. great. So if you're making good choices like that, yes, then you're not going to come backwards. I think where I was kind of wrote Christian off mm -hmm. a little bit is that it seemed like he was trying to run Joe's race. Right. And it was probably more that Joe was actually running Christian's race for a period of time and kind of settling in and not concerned about the athletes behind until right. maybe he got eyes on those athletes. Well, and now he doesn't even have Iron Man face anymore. So he's yeah, like no, totally yeah. he's got cool. Totally. Like he, he, went, he got rid of that and now he's just in calm, controlled face. So I got to give him major kudos for that and just ticking away the miles. And literally these guys are going to be done here before we know it. And I can't wait to see the result. I'm now really involved in Hanson and Canute and what's going on there because Hansen's going to keep he sees it now that he's already been back and now they did the out and back and you can see from up on that little hill there he, he knows what's happening out there so he knows how much damage he needs to do to get on the podium Stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The Hyperbolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And we're back at the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast. Ironman US series with Joe Skipper doing the skipper skip down the little downhill as we go through this course running by Tempe Town Lake. A uh, few undulations and Joe Skipper seems to take advantage of the ups and downs and you can see in this light sand section the he's uh, kicking up kicking up dust. That's a guy who has uh, some some forward momentum. Uh, you can see the dirt uh, coming off the back of his heels. He looks to the left. There's a little out and back section there where he's trying to get eyes on his competitors. And that looks to me almost like, is that Angela Nath he's passing there? Look similar. Yeah, that's Angela Nath, one of our pros. And I was going to say, Melanie McQuaid looking at the splits. Dude, Melly's, Melanie is moving. And what's that? She's got a bike with her. That means she just made a Morton move on Lauren Brandon. Will she catch the, the first two? Likely not. But to get a podium spot is a huge deal. You know what I mean? And she'll, she would just miss the Kona slot, which is a huge bummer, but she's got to be proud of this performance. You know, we talk a lot about, because she, you know, you know, raced Wisconsin. Did I have that right? Yes. And then was trying to, like, build into then this race. And she did a great job. She's looking fantastic. 
Yeah, no, she's looking great. And it looks like this gap is opening up uh, a little bit more on Sky uh, from Sarah True. Last time we went through, it was about five seconds. That might be about mm -hmm. five seconds, but mm -hmm. uh, the last visual we had, this is, is definitely more. And uh, what's great too is that like, in, there's so many mind games. So many. When you're when you're yeah. in this position, right? Yes. And not that like they're all thinking about these mind games, sure. but like right now, you're not gonna see Sarah. And I'm going to say this and she's yeah. going to do it. Yeah. You're not going to ever see her look over her no, shoulder. No, no. Until I agree. like she's at the finish line. Right. And all that Sky wants is to see Sarah look over her shoulder. Right. That is it, right? So like Sarah knows <laughs> right. like that. She's like, I'm not looking back. As right. soon as I look back, Sky thinks, like right now, if I never look back, Sky thinks that it's easy. And I'm not even worried about her. And she just right. assumes that she's not even, you know, part of the race anymore. So there's just so many. And right now she's just hoping oh. she. Oh, oh there she, she did. did. It was a corner, so it doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't but, count. She yeah. had a, a soft glance. She did it in a way that she, you know, she was trying to be uh, yeah, sly. That's it was awesome. definitely sly. And That's honestly, perfect. she, that that was an impressive. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't count. You were still on the. I, like I think now she just couldn't hear her breathing anymore. Yeah. And she was like, okay, how far am I ahead? Is yep. it just like a couple seconds, or do I have, you know, like now she's probably more like 50 yards. Uh, in front of her, so good on her. But and I guarantee you, with as sly as she was, which yeah. I think she did a great job, Sky still saw it because she was just like yes. waiting for it. And she yes. knows when there's a corner, that's yes. when somebody's gonna, that's when somebody's gonna gonna look for it. Yeah, and I love just still seeing Mel McQuaid get into the third. You know, she had said if she can, you know, epitomize enough to be, you know, competitive, well past most when most think she ever should be done. You know, people are saying, you're 49, why don't you retire? And she's like, oh no. She says she, even right now, feels as fit as she's ever been. And mainly it's just hard, the hardest thing for her is for her to arrive like at the race with everything in alignment. No, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to see her uh, perform perform there and uh, have have great races. Saw her at Wisconsin have yes. a great race, and um, but I mean she looks like a different runner than yep. she did that day. So I'm excited uh, to see it. And uh, you know, an Ironman where an elite group of athletes that swim, bike, and run to leave a lasting impact in our race communities long after race day. We support one another and the communities where we live, train, and race through service projects and charitable givebacks. We know that through all the early mornings and long training days, we're changing more lives than our own. We know that behind each of our Ironman dreams, there's a community of people supporting us, helping us to reach that finish line. We race to make a difference. We race to honor others. We race for change. We race for more. We are the Ironman Foundation. Since 2003, the Ironman Foundation has raised over $55 million. Help us raise an additional $25,000 by the end of the year and win a piece of history by bidding on Mike Riley's 2022 Rally Towel. The online auction is open now. Visit www.ironmanfoundation.org for more information. Love it. You know, I also wanted to say about Mel McQuaid is that, you know, she has 20 years plus of yeah. racing experience. And she said that that right there to me is a dream come true. You know, she said the key for me is to staying you know, the key for her, she thinks, and I asked is to say, you know, of staying healthy and fit is strength. She says making, you know, lifting he heavy, prioritizing that so that she can come to these races injury free. And she just thinks that you need to believe you can be at your best. She says society always tells me no, <laughs> right. but, uh, you know, if, if you do it right, you go faster and she does it right. And she is absolutely crushing it. I mean, yep. she's through 5.3 miles yep. again in third place. And at this point, she's only running two minutes slower mm -hmm. than Sarah True and Sky Monch, which is not something I would have predicted nope. uh, for her. She's absolutely, absolutely crushing it. And she's been working on her run. I got to see her in St. George and she, you know, was saying, you know, this is what we went over a little bit of her race strategy of training in between Wisconsin and here. And I loved hearing her. I mean, she's a coach. She's a yeah. coach herself. Yeah. She makes people better too, but she also, you know, leaders need leaders. She also like wants to know, okay, what works best for me? And she's a smart cookie. Um, and I think she's going to continue to learn from inside the sport even 20 years later. Yeah, no, I, I think that's uh, I think that's very well said, and and most 
the thing I'm most impressed with is how composed she looks. Like, yeah. it, she's not going anywhere at this point, and uh, it's going to be an athlete right. uh, that that takes it away from her and has a great back half of the run to do yeah. so. And you know, she's got Lauren Brandon yeah. and Renee Kylie behind, uh, so it's certainly something uh, or some people to be reckoned with, uh, no doubt. But she looks she looks fantastic. Um, question: Who do you think yeah. the fastest runner on the course is, Meredith? Oof. Don't look. Oh, currently mm-hmm. uh, in the female side. Yeah. I'm going to have to oh, yeah. say, uh, is it I? It is Danielle Lewis. Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, so she's, she's back and moving. 25 Good minutes through her. the first uh, four miles, 3.8 miles. Yeah. Uh, so just 30 seconds faster than Sarah True, but that's Sarah True racing, you know, to, for sure. the win. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. you know, she's, a, she's, she's a fair bit yeah. back, obviously. She was uh, standing still for a bit, but yeah. so 23 minutes behind those two leaders, but... Yeah. She's within 10 minutes of fifth place, which is not out of the question. Not at all. And she's still ticked about forgetting whatever piece she did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she's just owning it. And she's like, you know what? Maybe I can run myself into the top five. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's great to see. And I'm glad uh, we were able to spend some time with her and, and, and kind of see what she went through and the fact that she was uh, committed to overcoming uh, that situation, which is easier Easier said than done. done. <laughs> and so more splits coming through on the men's side uh, through 15 miles. Still got Joe Skipper in the lead. Three and a half minutes to Christian Hoganhog. Uh, ben Canute getting a little bit uh, closer to Christian at 6.15 back. So two minutes and 50 seconds back. But Matt Hansen is continuing to close in on Ben Canute as well. He's now two minutes and 20 seconds behind Ben Canute with 11 miles to go. So that's... Uh, you know, 10 seconds a mile that he has to give up. Uh, that's Ben Canute. Uh, he's he's losing more than that at this point. It's going to be it's going to be really really tight uh, for for those athletes. But uh, you know, now's you know we've been saying this all day. When you get yeah. late marathon and you yep. get uh, closer to 20 miles, that's when we know that's if we know. if if we did it right or we did it wrong. <laughs> and let's see who did it right when we get back from this break. This limited edition Breitling Endurance Pro Watch has been made in honor of the 2022 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman 70.3 World Championship presented by Utah Sports Commission. The unique event theme, Legends Rising, is brought to life with a striking orange strap and colorful M dot on the face and the Ironman 70.3 World Championship etching on the back case. Each watch is limited to 200 pieces, so act fast and order yours today on ironmanstore.com. Another thing I was loving to say about Mel McQuaid is that she is literally pro, has been pro in four different sp- sports, you know, whether it's mountain biking endurance, yep. mountain biking cross country, uh, road cycling. Cri- she's a crit racer. That's why she's so technical. Yep. Uh, obviously, half Ironman, uh, she's a pro triathlete here in this distance. I mean, it is incredible. Uh, her off-roading skills are insane. Yeah, she was world champion at right? off-road try, right? It's, it's so impressive uh, that she can do all that. And now still at 49 years old, podiuming in a huge race at the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series. Yeah, and on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got Sarah True, and you can see very far in the back if you squint. That yes. is, uh, that's Sky Monch. And it's yep. not as far as it looks because right. of uh, the, the size of the screen and kind of uh, what the camera does. But I'm guessing that's 15 seconds. Yep. But the big thing is if it gets... Good call, a, 16. You were it? right. Yeah, you didn't it, even look. If well it gets, done. If it gets much bigger, <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the big challenge and the, the mental, the poker match is at any moment, yes. Sky says, okay, how far is it to third place? Mm-hmm. Or yeah. can I, like, as soon as that happens once, it's game over. It's game over. It's yep. absolutely done, and Sarah's got the race. And I, yep. I with as, as much, and I have a lot of confidence in Sky, but with as much as she's clearly tried to yep. keep up, 
Yeah. I think that she, it's quite possible at some point mm -hmm. that's going to come into her head. A hundred percent. And I had said she's not going to give up, it's a, but it's hard. And I'm not insinuating that she's giving up, no, but no. it's hard when you get that gap and you can't see the person anymore. It's hard yeah. to like, unless someone's like, they're fading, they're walking, you know, right. it's really hard to like dig to, if you're not there, like we, you, you know, you can only, if they were side by side, that's a whole other story, but it's hard once that gap is really far. Yeah. And, and to say yeah. it's not, all mental no. because at this point yes sarah's just outperforming yep. right like yep. it's That's uh, it. it's just hard yes <laughs> right? it's so. just hard and one of those instances maybe today sarah was a faster athlete who knows we they have a long way to go sarah could falter it doesn't look like it right now but gosh iron man's so trippy it can bring you anything at any point yeah uh so and good for christian still holding strong here in second yeah no absolutely and he's running great running smooth uh, through 15 miles, still in second place, three and a half minutes off the lead. He's got five minutes on Matt Hansen and two minutes and 50 seconds on Ben Canute. So he's got some time with 10 miles to go to play with, but I think he's not playing with time. He's just trying to, to get himself across that finish line as quickly as he can at this point, but um, doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, did notice through mile 13.3, Bart Arnault has uh, put himself into the top five, which is nice. uh, pretty cool. Nice. You called cool. that yeah, we, earlier. Yeah, we wasn't sure if he'd yeah. get all the way up there, but he's certainly one that wants to try to get a Kona spot, I'm sure, as well. So, you know, we'll see uh, We'll see if, if Bart is uh, ready uh, ready to, to move further up, uh, further up the list. And uh, we've got a special guest uh, coming in, uh, chiming in. Well, special guests, I hope. <laughs> is uh, Heather Jackson, and I'm hoping she's got Stevie with her, but uh, <laughs> if not, we'll take it. How's it going, Heather? <laughs> hey, guys. Hi, Hi HJ. <laughs> hey, it's been way too long. <laughs> I know, right? How's, uh, how, we saw you at the World Championships, um, and uh, you've, you've been up to some adventures since, one being, oh, my gosh, how cute. <laughs> who's, who's this? This is Stevie. Hey, <laughs> And and what would Stevie be classified as? He is a kitty puppy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been uh, Heather for years has wanted her own kitty puppy, and she's finally got it. Uh, we're so excited for uh, for for both of you guys, uh, Heather. It's it's been a bit. Uh, you've you've uh, did your did your triathlon, a world championship in Kona, and then you've been up to some other adventures. What have you been doing? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So I raced Kona and then, um, I ended up heading to a gravel race the next weekend or no, sorry, two weekends later, um, it was a hundred mile gravel race. Um, and then a week after that, I ended up doing my first hundred mile ultra trail run. So Crazy. just a casual hundy. Some, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just switching it up a little bit. Um, still biking, running, just taking out, uh, you know, my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's here. We I haven't heard you talk about any ultra endurance swims in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no channel crossings or anything on the horizon. <laughs> Oh, uh, that is uh, that is too funny. So, what what in the last two months has been the most challenging? How how was that hundred mile run? That sounds hard. Oh my, oh my God. Yeah, that was insane, actually. I was like, I walked away from that like, okay, that was next level. Like, <laughs> proud of myself that I was able to finish. <laughs> it's really amazing. It's not like you were preparing for Kona. So it's not like you were out running 50 Ks and 50 miles. So you were training for a Ironman within, or rather a marathon within an Ironman. But how did you do that, HJ? I've been bragging. I'm like, yeah, she did the 100 mile run. No, That's that crazy. wasn't a bike. It was a run. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't, I, I honestly just want to say like ignorance is bliss probably. <laughs> yes. I don't know if, yeah, <laughs> if I do another one like now that it will go better yeah. or like, because now I know what's ahead. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, was yeah, it, I had just yeah. I, I mean, at mile seventy, were you like, I have thirty miles to go? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was the thing that's difficult is that the pace never felt hard. Like the whole time, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm just out for a Sunday aerobic run. I mean, 
I was mm -hmm. running just like a standard Sunday runnage. Honestly, like coming off of marathon training felt a bit like jogging, just yeah. not jogging, but just, um, you know, aerobic general pace. And um, what happens is your legs go, like your muscles go. So mm. once that happens, I mean, it's, it's just like a challenge to keep moving forward. <laughs> I bet. I bet. That's awesome. It's uh, it's good to see you getting out there and having some fun after your uh, triathlon season is over. Now, I, I know you've been keeping a little bit of an eye on what's going on with the race today. What do you think about uh, this head-to-head uh, -head battle uh, on the women's side? Oh, my I, Oh my God. I love it. I mean, especially because I battled Sarah this summer at Ironman Lake Placid, and then I yeah. battled Sky um, last fall at Ironman uh, Florida, around the same time last year. So love racing these two women. And now to see them in that sort of same head, head to head battle. Um, yeah, I was having total just flashbacks to Florida last year. <laughs> that is too awesome. And uh, so what we've had a lot of guests on that have done uh, this race as we see a shot of Sky and no sign of Sarah True in front of her at this point. Um, what is it about Ironman in Arizona that, that had you come back? I, uh, I love Ironman Arizona. Um, I love the course. It's, you have the three laps on the bike and then the two laps on the run. So for pacing, um, I just love it because you can go through like, um, each lap and try to say negative split or, um, it's easier to just judge yourself each, each lap, I guess. Um, yeah. and then also just all the spectators out there, this is such a, a spectator friendly course. Um, yeah, just to have everyone out there cheering for you, even when you're going through the lowest lows, like you still have people out there uh, trying to keep you positive. So, uh, yeah, always love coming to this one. And this remind me, H.J., this was your first Ironman distance race, was it? Do I have that yeah. right? Yes. What was, year was that? It was my first pro Ironman. Pro um, Ironman. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, that's what I'm at. See, and we were talking about how, it, isn't it a good first pro Ironman? It was my first pro Ironman too, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It, oh, exactly. So good, just in only good memories walking away from it. So I, right. I had come back, yeah, three times. Yes. Um, so I, yeah, I know we raced here together. I know, I together. I love it. Well, yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Heather, right now, you know, the women's race we see on screen, you can see uh, Sarah way up the road. And obviously it looks farther than it is, but you know, we're talking about the mental games. Like at what point does an athlete like Sky have to be, like, does she ever say, okay, I don't have to worry about Sarah anymore. Or is it you always just looking at that shoulder, hoping it gets closer? <laughs> Uh, this one is so tough because they're, they are still really early on. I mean, yeah. um, there's still so much running left to go. So for her, I think right now it's key that she still has her in sight. It's getting a bit further. So that's going to start wearing on her. Like, uh, it's going to get a little bit further. Like if it's going in that direction, it can be a little, uh, I guess the biggest thing I'm saying is you don't want to switch that negative mindset of like, yeah. Versus if you have her in sight, you're like, she's still there. She's still there. And um, as you guys mentioned earlier in the broadcast, she has that experience where uh, Sarah had a really big lead on her in Frankfurt. And, you know, I think it was what, 500 meters from the finish. She, you know, anything can happen out there. And I think <laughs> Sky is one of the most resilient, strongest mm -hmm. races out there. And she knows that. And she's going to fight till the end. She's a fighter. So, um yeah, she even if she does lose sight, she'll keep going. Um, I don't know at what point maybe it does become okay. Like Sarah's maybe solidified the lead, but there are slots for Kona next year. That's amazing. So we can yeah. both keep battling for that. There are some people coming from behind um, or back there, so they have to still keep on it for those two slots. But um, yeah, I think right now, I think there, Sky will know that it's still very early on. Anything can happen. Okay, and I got uh, kind of a word game for you. I can give you two words, and you have to say the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. Melanie McQuaid. Mm -hmm. uh, also fighter. I mean, look at her. She's absolutely crushing it. <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy. And, you know, if, if any of these two women in front of her, I guess, stumble, whether it's nutrition or 
some, uh, you know, a cramp, anything can happen. Mel is going to be there, which is uh, incredible. Yeah, that's uh, it's 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 so it's so cool. It's so cool to see uh, Mel. And I know we all have that special place for Mel because we've, mm-hmm. you know, she started doing this before any of us did, mm-hmm. right? Like, and she's yes. still out there doing it. It's awesome. But I always said M- Mel and Heather were are the most m- amazing technical writers. Like, they can just, it's like the skier mindset. Or it's like you're so good right. and technical out there. It's fun to watch them ride. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so Heather, what's uh, what are your plans? Obviously, tries done for uh, this season. Uh, what are you looking forward to this off season? Yeah, I'm. Well, you uh, as you can see, there's a little snow behind me. We literally just made uh, the trek from Tucson, where we spend kind of that August, September, October timeframe prepping for Kona, and then usually this race. Um, yeah. But we make the van trip up to. Ben, so we're back home for the winter. I'm just, I'm excited to be back here. I'm from New Hampshire originally. I love cold weather. It takes a bit to pry Wadi out of the Arizona sunshine, but I love skiing, snowboarding. Um, I'll, I'll do a lot of skate skiing this winter, just build the strength back up after beating it down all year. So looking forward to a good, um, yeah, winter block, building the strength back up before next year. So. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I'll, uh, I, g- I got to get you out on some, uh, some backcountry skiing. When I get back, we'll get we'll get your snowboard out. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna skate ski with you because I know what that'll do to me. But we'll go back on your ski. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, Heather, we appreciate you taking your time out of uh, your day uh, to be able to to come in and, and check in on uh, this great race at Ironman Arizona. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thanks so much, Heather. Uh, Awesome to be able to chat uh, with Heather Jackson. And uh, we're going to get to a commercial break and get back to this race, see if anything changes on the other side of this break. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport, to delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. with Christian Hogenhog holding strong in second place, but he's going to start feeling uh, the heat right now. He's through 18.6 miles, so eight miles-ish to go, four and a half minutes off the lead. Haven't had a gap from this mile point uh, behind him, but last check, which is just a mile and a half ago, Ben Canute went through uh, just a minute and a half behind. Uh, So, sorry, two and a half minutes behind in third place. And then Matt Hansen, not slowing down at all he's now eight minutes down just a minute and a half behind ben canoe but i think once we get this latest split he's going to be a lot closer to this man on screen and ben canoe and one thing you know all, all we have is the ability to nitpick tiny little things but i will see from the side hoganog looks like his head's coming up a little bit and uh, kind of bending at the hips more than he was before which yeah, go run a marathon at six minute pace, right. and you're gonna you know you see some things. But that's a sign that he's slowing a little bit. I do think his turnover is a little slower, a little bit more side to side. But all in all, he's hanging in really, really well. If he gets caught, it's gonna yeah. be because he's got some dudes absolutely crushing it behind right. him. So Ben Hoffman's not, or sorry, Ben Hoffman, Ben Canute has moved within two minutes of Hogan Hog at eighteen point six miles. So this all could come together for podium position. And don't forget, this is a, a fight for a Kona spot as well. Mm-hmm. So Ben Canute wanted to come out here and have his best race versus Ironman. But if he does that and leaves with a Kona spot and he doesn't have to do another Ironman before Kona, that's like, huge. it's right. huge. So right. he, he could have his whole season, not adjust anything yep. and go to Kona and, and have that experience um, where, you know, he might, 
not even try to qualify right. for Kona again next year if that's not the case. So there is a ton to fight for out here in the, with these top four. I would say Joe doesn't have too much fighting to do. He just needs yep. to literally at this point, he just needs to run <laughs> and finish it. there because I think if he's running, he's running, you know, six fifteen pace, right? Like right. his jog is, is his pretty jog, fast. His casual jaunt. I mean, they're almost at 19 miles and it's like, this is where the fatigue really sets in the last six, seven miles. It's a lot on the legs. They start to, even though it's a great weather day, it's not even 70 degrees there yet. 69. It's still hot. They're sweating. He has yeah. his Jersey unzipped. I mean, there's definitely still warm, but man, perfect le- weather. It can be a lot warmer and the day could be different for, you know, heat wise. So, they're having a great day, and I think he knows he doesn't have a Kona slot. Maybe, like we talked about earlier, he'll be, or he knows he has a Kona yeah. slot, rather. And he, he, we talked about, well, make him feel better if he goes 7.30 this round, you know right. what I mean? And I think he's just going for the win, and now he knows he's got a four-and-a-half-minute lead, and he just needs to maintain. No, totally, but and right? he's still on 7.42 pace. At yes, this point, which incredible. is crazy. And we're talking That's, about yeah. all he has to do is jog it in. Jog it in, literally. <laughs> and his marathon pace at this point, if he holds the same pace, which he might not, if he decides he, he can slow down a little bit or has to speed up, is at a 241. And scrolling down to mm-hmm. Matt Hansen, he's, he's still, his projected time, if he stays the same pace, is 233. That's insane. Insane. And he, right, is now only a minute back... Uh, on Canute. And so he's gunning for it. He's gunning for that podium. Uh, Matt Hansen is. Yeah, absolutely. And and the women are, are moving too. I'm looking yeah. at projected times. Sarah True at 255 Amazing. at this point, which is uh, is moving. Like I said, she's had a 254 mm-hmm. high, I believe, mm-hmm. in Germany and a 257 in Kona. So, so she's been in that zone before. Um, but again, you know, it's been a couple years of, of some changes for her. She's shown she's back at her top level, but I mean, she's won two races already this year and, and she's setting herself up uh, to, to have a, a great shot uh, at a third here at uh, Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series, but it's Joe Skipper on screen doing his best to keep that gap uh, as as wide as he can, as long as he can, so he doesn't have to, he doesn't want to do any sprinting. No, he Hansen doesn't. Or anything. He's either chatting to himself, singing a song, or just talking to the cameraman or saying hello, but he yeah. looks good still. You know Joe, just jaunting away, making <laughs> it look easy. And, he, he you know, he's already, he's going to be done here. I mean, he's, I feel lazy just sitting here watching him because he's making it go <laughs> real fast. No, he is for sure. And you know, we're talking about Matt Hansen and his rate of speed. He's still seven and a half minutes behind mm-hmm. Joe. So he, mm-hmm. he isn't a concern mm-hmm. for Joe as long as Joe's running. If Joe right. stops at any point for any mm-hmm. reason, then it's a concern. If he's moving, it's, it's not a concern at all. But the, the gentlemen that need to, to be concerned are Hogan Hogg yep. and Canoe. And I, I do think, you know, I did get a text uh, from one of his supporters asking if skipper had a spot or not so it's possible hansen is still running for second because he or uh, for second mm-hmm. to, because he might not know because most people don't that skipper is the only male pro that has a kona spot already. right so right. It, that could explain the rate of of pace and that he's he he might not ever pull off that gas right. because he wants to get his kona spot while he can right and he doesn't realize it and it, even if he got third, he'd have it and not yeah. even understand that right now if he yeah. doesn't remember that Joe has his. So that's pretty cool. Hey, whatever makes you go faster at this yeah. point. Yeah, there's always not something. That he's already not going fast. So good on him. And um, like literally they have six miles to go. So he's at <laughs> 7.06, right? So I mean, if he just keeps his pace, he will be seven, eight, well, obviously well under eight hours yeah. on the day, yeah. which is huge. That's crazy. And, and looking down again at that fifth place uh, athlete, Bart Arnaud, yes. uh, still holding uh, pace. And again, it's projected time. I'm sure it's going to change, but 242 marathon mm. pace at this point. So did not have a great swim, didn't have a great bike ride for him or what he's capable of. You know, he was second in Kona a few years ago, so he has the ability to run really, really, or ride and run really quickly, um, but didn't quite do that. But putting himself in a top five position uh, ain't too shabby either. And he's just got two incredible runners uh, in front of him that are that are outrunning him at this point. 
Absolutely. And I saw that um, Joe just got a split from someone out there. So he knows kind of what's going on around him and, and he'll maintain. It does help when you kind of know, like I had someone just messed with him and been like, Hanson's a minute back. <laughs> it would have been funny to see <laughs> what, what Joe did. No one would ever do that because that's not the truth in this case. But yeah, you want to make someone go faster. But it would be funny. Yeah, it would be funny. Um, <laughs> sometimes there aren't the most accurate sp- splits out there, but that looked right. like a trusted source of his because he uh, gave him a thumbs up. But but yeah, now he's like, all right, I can almost smell the finish line here. Well, I'm seven well, hours into this. And these athletes know mm-hmm. this. And, you mm-hmm. know, I've about... And, uh, you know, in Kona, I was out on the course, uh, able to, you know, do coverage. And yeah. you know, I had uh, the whiteboard to, to give splits to athletes out there. And, you know, specifically, even before that, I've mm-hmm. seen Joe at races and he'd look and be like, what's an accurate split? Right. Like, what's they, an accurate like, split? Right? Like they yeah. know. And it's funny because we all forget, like we're out going and taking splits with our sure. watches. It's like, man, just look at the, look at the Ironman tracker. Right. Like we've got it, right? <laughs> and they're, they're very accurate. But you right. often you know, get a cyclist that's riding the opposite direction and, and taking a moving split and it makes things uh, seem a lot closer than they are. But uh, Hogan Hog right now still moving very, very well uh, through 18 and a half mm-hmm. miles, uh, having a great run. Update on the women's race. It was 26 seconds mm-hmm. at 10 miles and now at 11 and a half, it's 22 seconds. So it's still a little bit back and forth. Sky certainly has not uh, given up. Neither has this man on screen, but Hogan Hog, you know, two minutes on Canute, that that's a fight. And yep. and I think that is your Kona qualifying slash podium fight is those two gentlemen. Because I, I think at this point, again, un- unless Hansen runs into that brick wall, which is right. 100% possible <laughs> yeah. at this point, 100%. Yeah. If you're, I mean, he's, he's right now running. He's the current fastest marathon holder in Ironman. Yep. He's running faster than he did that day. Right. So he's in a he's putting himself in a position where he could hit a wall and stop. Yes. Right. Yes. If that doesn't happen, he's has right now he's running a pace where he's going to run himself into second place because generally, yep. when somebody's fading like Christian and somebody's mm-hmm. still holding like the 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 gaps per mile gained right. after mile twenty are much bigger. We're talking Huge. thirty seconds, forty seconds. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's what, I mean, and maybe uh, like you see Christian as he, as he enters these like small descents, if you will, or little declines, like his foot speed comes up. So he's holding strong. I mean, he's two minutes is not that much time to Canute with Hansen coming fast. But I mean, if he could just hold this pace, if we, if you do do the math, he could hang on to it, hang on to it, but it'll be, it'll be really tight. It's going to be very <laughs> Very tight. And then some more updates on the women's race through eight miles. Mel McQuaid still in third place, 15 and a half minutes down. But just 31 seconds behind her is Jen Annette. Mm, uh, Jen. Mel's still running a faster, like she's run faster to this point than Jen. So Jen's not closing that dramatically. Yeah. But still still close, 30 seconds. And Lauren Brandon, another two minutes behind. And Danielle Lewis still running well and uh, fastest runner mm. through eight miles. That is incredible. But Jen, Jen, Annette, I mean, she yeah. is coming through uh, in fourth place. And she, yeah, so she's passed. She's she's getting there. And she's only 30 seconds down on Mel McQuaid. So she's hunting down a podium spot. Yeah, no, she absolutely is. And uh, uh, there we go. Is that Jen, Annette? I think Annette? Jen, yep. Yeah, it's Jen, Annette has just uh, made a Morton move yep. on Mel McQuaid. So Mel McQuaid is going to do her best to... yes. Uh, keep her head in the game and it, it doesn't look like she's given up at all. Right. But yeah, Jen and Nett, amazing uh, mm-hmm. cyclist, you know, she yes. was uh, for a few years, one of the best of women cyclists in the sport. And what that means is when maybe you don't capitalize on that bike anymore, you're just, they're generally very strong. Cyclists are very good at running steady and strong. Right. Af- after hard bike rides, right? right? So, you know, Jen Annette, you might not look at her or her results and say she's a great runner, but, uh, or like one of the best runners, I right. should say, but she's a very consistent and strong runner. And you don't, you're not going to see huge fades if she's, if she's pl- planning and executing correctly. Exactly. And she honestly has improved her run so much in the last year. I have recognized that. Okay, and good. I remember when she raced, um, 
Chattanooga or whatever, because I made sure I had permission to talk about this, but she has overcome epilepsy, which she developed in 2010. And oh, it's wow. just really cool to watch her shine. Uh, you know, here we are 13, almost 13 years later since her you know, episodes with epilepsy and just to see her overcome the battle with it and become a serious podium contender is and hold a ton of bike course records yeah. on the circuit, which we know. And she's a mom to son Nixon. So I love, I just like watching her, her do her thing and now being able to run faster off the bike. Yeah, yeah, no, and, uh, you know, on a course like this, people think it might just suit great runners. Right. But, man, it's hard to ride fast on flat courses. Like, it is so, it's hard. so right. hard on your muscles. What, what, do you, right. what is it you think about that that's so much harder than, than we assume? Oh, I just think being in, I mean, aero, like we're triathletes. We ride a TT bike. We're used to being in aero position. But for that long, it's just a thing. Like at least climbing is hard. Don't like, don't get me wrong. It's harder most likely than flat riding. But yeah. where flat riding accumulates is just being in one position for X amount of time. It's just a lot like Sam Long's probably experiences on your back, on your high hamstring, on your glutes. Uh, and it, if everything, and it's not something we do every day. We're not in arrow position for four to five hours every day. So your body just, it can take its toll and it can affect your running off that bike. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, she, she looks very, very smooth, very comfortable and doesn't She's still in that yep. power position. She's yes. certainly um, moving forward and not like trying to hang on to anything. And uh, just passing Mel Quaid for third place, I can see that she's gonna she's gonna be getting uh, you know continuing to extend that gap right. on Mel McQuaid. And uh, man, I'm still so impressed with Mel where she where yes. she is now and where she was. Uh, but uh, you expect to see her hang on for fourth place at least. And again, as we've been talking, she's gonna be a sweeper if Jen uh, falters at Absolutely. all but we've got plenty more action in this women's race and the men's race as we see a good shot of sarah true and sky monch as they take this left hand corner no peeking over the shoulder no nope. uh for uh sarah at this point we're gonna see sky come around uh this corner in just a second and eh, not around that corner but yeah. we're gonna take a quick commercial break and get back uh to see if this gap between these two athletes is closing at all Okay, so Sarah looks faster now than she even did at the beginning, and I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> You're here for it? I am here for it. I'm into it. I mean, literally just her, she's realizing, like in the beginning, don't get me wrong, she looked fast then, but it seemed more like of a controlled trot. This is like legit fast like controlled still running, and it's more, it's like even more fluid, and it's just she's crushing it right now and I think she's realized all right I've opened up my lead a little bit I feel good I'm approaching the halfway mark here in the next mile uh, so I need to just it's like funny in Iron Man when you feel good you kind of need to just like go for it <laughs> go yeah. with what you can and just hope it stays that's what sometimes you're hoping it stays and that's what seems to be happening right now here with Sarah True in the lead yeah and she's just waiting for this yeah. gap maybe to open a little bit so she can settle but so yeah. the gap and she doesn't know what these gaps no. this gap has done but it went from at mile 10 it went from 27 seconds to mile 11 and a half 22 seconds and then at 12, 12 and a half 27 seconds again so like that's there's some movement there, right? Yes. And, and whether or not that's yes. just uh, Sarah going slow through one aid station, yep. and, and that, or if it's a little bit of a yo-yo. But again, anytime there's closing of gap and then opening and closing yep. and opening, it's 
that is that is something that I think that's right. going into the Sarah True right. uh, a bucket kind of and uh, maybe taking out of Sky Monches because Sarah's just yeah she just looks so smooth and dynamic and it's almost she's almost out of sight on these turny mm-hmm. sections you can see Sky mm-hmm. in that back upper left hand corner and and she's keeping an eye on Sarah and just hoping uh, she sees some sign of weakness as Sarah right. gives a smile, smile and tries to get something out of her hip bag. And she's checking her watch. She's probably realized, oh, it's time to eat or drink or whatever it is. And so it's fun for me to watch this like Olympic distance athlete who literally I find like a Olympic distance people, they don't even think about nutrition because <laughs> they can just go hard for, you know, two hours or whatever it is. Uh, I remember being an Olympic distance and I was like, I had all my gels and everything. And they're like, oh, I have one gel for the next two hours. Anyway, but now she's like an Ironman athlete also. And she's checking her watch and eating when she has to. She probably has it timed exactly what she needs to do at the halfway mark. And it'll be interesting to see if she takes her uh, personal needs bags, which usually come at around the halfway mark coming up here. Yeah, no, it uh, it will be. And, it, you know, she's... You know, I think she learned from that that uh, Ironman race. We said she didn't didn't finish in. So nutrition wise, if she was one of those uh, Olympic distance athletes that wasn't paying attention right. uh, before, I, I guarantee you she started paying a little bit more attention after that. But uh, yeah, she's doing all the things that she needs to. And yeah, we'll be uh, curious to find if either of these two athletes go to the special needs because that that will open things yep. up a little bit gap wise for sure. But okay. necessary. What did you used to put in your personal needs bags? Uh, I would always put like extra drink mix if I yep. needed it, or even an extra bottle in there. You weren't supposed to, but I think I snuck yep. some like socks and oh yeah, shoes, <laughs> shoes even in there once hey. if I was like extra paranoid about something. Yeah, but it yeah. Made me, basically, it was anything that I put yes. in there that made me feel better about if something crazy happened. Yes, I had the ability right. uh, to uh, to overcome it. Right, even if you never even touched it. Like, didn't use it. You don't get them back, so it's like they're gone, but it just made you feel like comfort, yeah. you know? Yeah, totally, absolutely. <laughs> Iron Man Philippines takes place in the beach vacation destination of Subic Bay, a former U.S. naval base. Athletes will enjoy a beautiful sunrise as the swim starts along the boardwalk. Bike fully closed, rolling roads that will make for some fast, fast times. The spectator-friendly run course will provide plenty of energy as athletes head to the finish line. Enjoy Filipino hospitality at its best. Put the 2023 Ironman Philippines on your bucket list. Register today at Ironman.com. Here we go. Sarah True still moving her way through this field. Uh, Things are really, really coming together here in the men's race. Uh, Hogan Hogg, Knut, and Hansen all within 50 seconds Mm. of each other at this point. So all really coming together yes okay and so wait now back to sarah this is where she would uh grab her personal needs and this is where you draw so much energy i don't think and i could have missed she i don't think she needed it i think she has it dialed because she's wearing a little fanny pack so go sarah and there's canute he is still looking pretty in his run form but yeah over if we're gonna look over his shoulder don't have to look that far (laughs) So now, you know, we've been saying, okay, what's yes. what's the deal? If, yeah. if Hanson catches Ben, is Ben going to get on his shoulder? Yep. And I, I still don't know. I think yeah. no. I think yeah. at this point, especially if right now, I think Ben can see Hogan Hogg. Mm-hmm. So if Ben can see Hogan Hogg and he knows that all he has to do to get a Kona spot and to podium in his first Ironman is to beat Hogan Hogg, then yep. he can do it. I think... Right. Him at the end of the day, getting beat by Hanson running a two thirty-two. Yeah, and his first Ironman, I think he's gonna be okay with. Right, it. it will be just because Ben is such this short course athlete to see when this move yeah. that's about to happen. What if he does? I mean, does he even know? He's not a looker backer. Uh, does he even know Matt's right there? He probably is starting to feel him in this exact moment. But it will. He has that fight. Even you know twenty-one. My, plus miles in to kind of hang on, even though he's in still unknown territory. He's never run this in a race. No. He's already well over what he's ever run in a race. No, right? I, I, yeah, I would be almost confident yeah. uh, that he hasn't run this far, period. Right. Ever, right? Right. Um, 
Right. Uh, and here we go. Nothing. No. Absolutely <laughs> nothing from Hanson. He's or probably Canute. starting to hurt. So oh, that means, there he goes. That means yeah. Hanson is, is hurting enough yes. to, to, okay, I am not going to give him anything. Yes. Where we saw a very different Hanson passing long. Yes. And nope, but the answer oh. is Ben is yes. Because yep. this is a And now they just both pass. Oh, that's both yes. Hogenhawk. Both yes. a pass Hogenhawk. Wow. So this is second and third place. That's a Morton moving right there. Matt Hanson moves in front of Ben Canute. Ben Canute on Hanson. So everything I said about yep. my observation with yep. Ben and Hogenhawk is out the window because Ben's yep. already in podium position. So now right. he knows the rate they just passed Hogenhawg. Yes. So now he's like, I can risk it. I can, I can try to sit on Hansen and yes. make him blow himself up yes. and get second, or whenever I decide it's too hard, yep. I can back off and still get that same place. So, uh, man, that right. that came together <laughs> really quickly. They're sprinting right now, P.S. I mean, they're literally sprinting, and yeah. they have four miles to go. Uh, but, I mean, Joe right Crazy. now is so happy. He's got a five-and-a-half-minute lead because even if they, he, they go a minute faster per mile, he still won. Not that they are, but I'm just saying – Having these two hunt you down is scary, but good on Ben. Ben Canute just really trying to stay on the shoulder of Matt Hansen. That's not an easy feat, let me tell you. Yeah, and, and he did it for a while, and he, he yes. pulled off now. He's yes. uh, He knew that he was putting himself in a, yeah. in a spot that was uh, too much, but he hasn't like completely yeah. dropped off. No. But I think you said it right. Yeah. They were sprinting down that downhill yeah. so fast that when they passed Hogenhawk, I didn't recognize him as the pro, they were right? Going so because fast. they were going so fast. Yeah. And no disrespect to him. He's no. probably still running 630 pace, but exactly. they're just absolutely moving. And Canute, you know, we look at the projected times, he was still, he was running 244 yep. pace. Yep. And Hansen just continues to drill it, and he's still on 234 pace at this point, right? But he's got an acceleration in him here, Yeah. and we'll see at some point if he gets off yep. the gas, because he thinks maybe at some point is he right. just going to relent and say I can't I can't catch Joe Skipper. Well, and Why? and again we talk at least he knows like these are the two guys at this moment that would be your Kona qualifiers, right? Yeah. Canute and Hansen and so if they know that they're like but I mean I don't I don't know Matt kind of looks like on the hunt he's probably like all right he does. I have a 5 minute deficit but i've got four more miles i'm gonna do it and <laughs> i'm gonna yeah, try he's like yeah minute mile let's do it let's yeah. see what, let's see what we can do because yeah. i mean and why wouldn't you you just yeah. passed two athletes yes. in like a second because yes. you can see what happens late in a race he knows deep down mm -hmm. that the guy that you're gonna pull five minutes back in the last five miles of a marathon is not joe skipper mm -hmm. unless something else mm -hmm. happens but right right again like I, I say casually the you know if somebody's on a better day yeah. your way to beat them is to put yourself in a position to win yep i Go didn't for it. It, yeah. it, it might it, it's not five minutes like right. just because you're second doesn't mean you're going to win if he struggles right. like the closer you get the more opportunity you have yep. like who who knows if joe struggles it's if it's going to be a long struggle or right. it might just be a short one where you got to be within a minute or two right. to capitalize right and man matt is just <laughs> doing he it. is going for it crazy and looking good at it i i can't wait i mean well, he's got to be pumped. These two guys now will have... I'd be surprised. You know, he always loves Ironman Texas. I'd be surprised if he, you know, well, if he qualifies, but if he continues to do, you know, he's an Ironman racer. I bet he would still do, like, uh, another Ironman before uh, Kona. Yeah, you? I think so. I think yeah. so. But it just takes the pressure off yes. uh, a little bit when you yes. go into the off season, knowing you've already kind of ticked that box. Ticked that box. Nobody yep. really wants to yep. be the one chasing their tail. Uh, to get that Kona spot, but lots more action to go. It looks like no Christian Hogenhog right now. He's uh, he's in fourth and, uh, you know, going to try to hang on to that position over Bart Arnault, but a lot more action to go when we get back from these commercials.
and we're back with Matt Hansen here running in second at the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. But, you know, he, he was pretty dominant in the way he passed Ben and Hogan Hog, but Ben's still mm -hmm. right there. He's right there. He's, He's not 10 far. seconds, maybe eight, 10 seconds. So right. it's not, it's not a huge gap. And again, Hansen is putting himself He's running hard enough that at any moment right. it could all come apart. It, uh, <laughs> I'd say that pace could, but I mean, he knows what he's doing. It's crazy, but it's also important to note, like, do you remember in the beginning of this run, he like passed Sam Long in the early stages. And he was like, hey man, pat on the back, yeah. but he's hurting now. I don't even think he had the energy. I don't think he did it perfectly. Like, I don't think he had the energy to like pat yeah. Ben on the back and be like, hey man, because you're in the final couple miles of a, Iron Ma a marathon within an Ironman. So he's probably just trying to get by. He's, he's hurting probably so badly, but we can't see it because he's still running so fast. Yeah, I mean, there was no acknowledgement <laughs> of no. Uh, Ben Canute at that point. Uh, and I will say, I think Hansen has the kind of has that Hogan Hog face uh, yes. that we saw yeah. <laughs> early, right? Like uh, definitely some some strain on his face and yes. uh, you know pushing pushing through it for sure. But again, I think it's still it's not done. I don't think for the no. second place position no. only because as we said, Ben has mm -hmm. the ability. I mean, if Ben can hang on, and with a mile and a half or two miles to go, he's within twenty seconds. Yeah. Ben will rip himself yes. in two to try to bring himself back yes. to this athlete. And uh, it's not, it wouldn't be something that right. Matt would expect. Uh, you know, I, right. the, if I was betting, I'd bet on Matt, obviously, yeah. right now. But it's, yeah. it's certainly not over. Not over. And he is starting to grimace. Mm -hmm. That trusty. There's an Iron Man, like, cry. And then there's, like, an Iron Man grimace. Neither <laughs> of which you love but you just organically have it because it just feels so painful but now they're at like all right i can smell the finish line it's like three-ish miles away come on yeah like skipper just passed the 23.2 mark a, a little bit ago and we'll see what the gap is but he's probably hearing oh hansen's in second and he's probably like oh no i better just keep on this pushing this pace up front so that i don't get passed for the win yeah you know? Yeah, no, and he's uh, that gap to Ben is 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 opening a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely stretching out a little bit, but I mean, it's yeah. this guy looks exactly, like literally <laughs> exactly saying. like he did the first mile of this run. I know he doesn't Gosh, waver. He literally doesn't waver, and that's what I love about him. Like you said, it's not like he's, uh, you know, this like very very like, like you said he's sturdy in that he can just muscle through it and but look graceful when doing so. Yeah, yeah, abso absolutely, and it's the and it's that strength, and the reason mm -hmm. I mentioned that is that strength is what allows him. And you mentioned mm -hmm. it with Melanie McQuaid. Yeah, that that's why he's not degrading at all. That's right. why he looks the same as yes. he did then. Yes. Um, and uh, you know that and experience and pacing and him putting himself in a great position to be able to not have to be necessarily on the rivet, but you know, very different running styles. Yes, Matt Hansen is running quicker right now. Mm -hmm. But he's running the same running style he would be if he like these athletes are very yeah. similar runners and very different when uh, you know when you look at them from the outside as far as right uh, you know I I wouldn't think that yeah I wouldn't think Joe, Joe would be in the same uh, zone as Matt Hansen but no. he it, he moves across he moves across the he, ground quickly. he does and I bet he's thinking right now all right I'm gonna you know, check this race off, get a W. I've already qualified for Kona anyways. And he is another one, just like Matt Hansen. I don't, I think he'll do another Ironman prior to Kona. Whereas yeah. someone like Ben Canute, he doesn't need to because he will have, you know, he'll probably race a lot of shorter distance races yeah. and then get ready for Finland and then, you know, prep into uh, Kona 2023. But he, he doesn't need to, given this is his first for Ben, it's his yeah. first Ironman. He doesn't, he can just get that Kona, check it, and then that would be his second pro race, uh, or rather second Ironman in a pro race uh, come Kona for Ben. No, it's so, that's yeah. perfect for Ben because mm -hmm. so these other athletes, is yeah. Joe and Matt, yep. are Ironman athletes. Yes. That's how they make a living yes. is going yes. to Ironman and doing as best as they can. Ben Canute was just second at the 70.3 World Championship. So right. he is a set by... All, all means he is a professional 70.3 distance athlete. Yes. I, I don't think he would consider himself, even after this first one, an Ironman athlete because right. he's going to go and he's going to try to earn his living 
by winning 70 point threes. Yep. He's not going to change that. And this allows him to get his experience in Kona and continue to try to uh, refine his race without risking his ability to uh, provide for his family. He's adding another member to the family soon. Um, there's Jenna Nett here running in third place still, it looks like, but bottom right-hand side of our yeah. screen with uh, Sarah True on the upper left-hand side of the screen. I don't see... So right now, for looking for Sky, we're looking for a runner and with a biker with them, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of like a guide to make sure they don't go off course. And I don't right. see that within sight of Sarah True at this point. Nope, and she's still looking faster every time she shows up on this board, and I'm loving it. Uh, she... 35 like, seconds. 35 seconds, yeah. And then she'll see this 35 seconds. This is at that turnaround. Uh, and she'll see that and realize, all right, not too bad. Better than her being 10 feet from me. Uh, so she's now going to be lifted by that. And Jen here, too, going through the aid stations here. She know, she must know, right? I'm in third. I'm contending yeah. for a, a, a podium spot here. I'm likely not going to be able to catch the girls in front of me, but hey, just steady Eddie here and let's get on that podium. Yeah, and yeah, she looks super, super composed. And I think, yeah, steady Eddie is perfect yeah. explanation for uh, the way that Janet is running at this point. And, you know, looking at Sarah and Sky going through 13.3 miles, uh -huh. 127.06 for Sarah, 127.49 for Sky, that's mm. over a half marathon in 127. Right. I think, I don't know that Sky would write down one, go through half in 127. Right. Right? So right. I think she's, again, in that speed zone. Yeah. She's a little bit above what, what she's maybe trained for or yep. capable of to yep. an extent, where Sarah might come down. Her yep. pace will probably drop. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's whether or not Sky is able to hang on at all. 104 now through 15 miles. So over oh, a minute wow. to Sky. Oh, yep. So At things, things, miles. things yep. are opening up. Yep. Uh, and, you know, there, it's, pos it's possible, and Jen needs to, you know, as you said, yeah. it's it's possible she can get on that podium if uh, somebody... It's going to take a big explosion. I mean, she's big. 17 minutes down at this yeah, point. Yeah, right, right. Um, but she has three minutes on Mel McQuaid now, so very comfortably in that podium position. Um, but after that turn, Sarah's probably going to start feeling a little bit more confident. A minute is yes. substantially more. Yep. And do you think yes. a minute is that distance where it's going to be very hard yes. for Sky not to think, okay, I just need to hold on and like, ho I can't beat her yeah. woman to woman right now. I need yep. to hope that she cracks. Yeah, that's exactly probably what Sky's thinking because like HJ said, she's a fierce competitor. She's strong, so as is oh, <laughs> Sarah. He asked how she was feeling and she did it, huh? <laughs> yeah, who feels great at mile 15 of a, of a Ironman marathon? But she looks great, I have to say. She and answered like, with a smile too. Yeah, so. and she smiled and she's funny and witty and all the things. But I just have to say... Uh, back to Sky, as she also knows, like, okay, unless she blows up, now I just need to maintain because maybe I'm not feeling that great right now and I just want to get second here. And I'm not saying she's settling. No, no, she, that's not true. But she realized I can't keep up this pace and so it went to 27 seconds, 34 seconds. Now it's a minute. Nothing's over yet. But she's just trying to probably minimize any damage and just stay controlled. And here we go <laughs> with Matt Hansen. Uh, still rolling through, and they've they've gone through now 23.2 miles a bit ago. Hansen obviously has moved into second place. He's 515 back, only 20 seconds still in front of Canute. So three miles to go. It's tough. And if I had to make an observation I, from the yeah. side, it looks like he's on his feet a little bit longer than he yeah. was before. So he's yeah. slowing a little bit less, yes. like charging dynamic yes. form. Yes. He's still, he's still, still fast, totally but, yeah. moving, and it's going to be agree, a though. big ask for Canute to uh, be able to, to bring him back. But I think he's showing a little bit. And, and the thing is what Ben's doing for Matt right now is what Matt was hoping is yes. I pass Ben, and Ben says, holy crap, I can't do this. Right. He gets a minute and a half, and then the last two miles, Matt can jog it in. Right. What Ben is doing is being like, no, dude, you are running right. absolutely right. to the finish and, and opening up. A possibility. I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, let's get to a break and get back to the action.
we're back with Joe Skipper at the lead of Biostark's Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Cruising, he's only got about a mile and a half to go at this point. If he wanted to, he could jog it in. Doesn't look, yeah. I mean, it looks like he is, but when he looks like he's jogging, he's still running at six minute exactly. pace. Uh, right now, still on 244 pace, mm -hmm. and uh, pace to, for finish is about 7.45. Nice. And honestly, I can't wait to hear his finish interview because he always <laughs> has something funny and witty to say or something that happened we might not be privy to. Right. And yeah, I like this guy. He just, he, I mean, he has a lot of Iron Man titles and this is exactly what he looks like every time. You know, and what's great about Joe is like, Joe is Joe. And Joe, he's yeah. not gonna censor himself nope. uh, in any way. He's not gonna hide his feelings and uh, give you something that he you think yeah he, uh, he thinks you think you want, but he's he's just always gonna uh, be in there, give it his all, and uh, tell you what he's thinking and feeling, and it's uh it's awesome. And so through twenty four point six, uh, so Matt close. Hansen's pulled back some time. He's four forty yeah. down, and and what what's gonna be the big tell is the clock ticking on Ben Canute and seeing within a mile and a half mm. if those two athletes have something to fight for and if Ben's been able to to keep at it. Uh, and that's that'll be something. But the man on screen right now certainly is the one who's going to win this race, uh, just having a great, great performance. I think one of the best swims of his career that I've seen uh, results-wise, certainly uh, in person commentating, mm -hmm. and a great bike ride, 405, really dynamic, goes after uh, the leaders very, very early. Uh, so being aggressive mm -hmm. on that bike ride and then clearly just, uh, you know, casually ticking off 245. Marathon. Just casually. I also want to announce he is like just very undramatic, like meaning it's <laughs> poker face. There's no drama. He's just like, it is what it is. Yeah. And I'm just going to crush this and then be done. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's happening. Yeah, he certainly he certainly is that. So uh, Ben Canute's gone oh. through that 24.5, and, and the gap is open. Ben's uh, relented, and that's that's it for Ben. Uh, 55 seconds uh, behind at this point. So uh, still right in there, uh, but Ben knows that he doesn't have it to be able to turn on the gas and uh, take that opportunity from Matt Hansen, who is still just absolutely flying. And, you know, the, the run split that Matt's going to do, I don't think is going to – quite break right. that record that he had but it's going to yeah. be the second fastest uh, or ish time right That's and this crazy. is the last aid station um of the course i believe and he knows it and then he's going to start shimming over to the final lap or final rather finish see it says to finish and i love seeing that so much better i than love doing seeing another that lap. than seeing two lap two yeah oh he's giving so, some high fives yeah he knows it, it he's so close he's just going to go around this bend here and see the red carpet and, of course, Mike Riley. Yep, so he's got a half mile to go at this point. Uh, it's gone through that with a half mile to go at 239.13. So mm. he's going to go through at 240, 242, 242.30, something like that, uh, depending uh, how many high fives he's looking for when he crosses that finish line. Mm. Matt is still just uh, hope upon hope, hoping yes. that he looks and sees a... Uh, uh, a frame of yes. Joe jogging slowly or walking through an aid station or something, right. but I don't think he's going to get it. But, but um, what a performance. Oh, it's Gosh. unreal. I mean, and it's funny when you just said a couple of minutes ago, he did look like less, vi like, like he was slowing down and now he's not he's back to like going fast again because i think we get another pep in our step when we, when we look you can even hear mike Riley, like they're so close that you get an extra like kick in your step like yep. all right i can go fast it's like you know eight more minutes or whatever it is uh, I, you can do anything for eight minutes right so they're there and we get to see joe here finish this bad boy and get another iron man title yeah and it's to me that what Hanson did today is so awesome and, and, and composed. And yep. that again, he got on the bike third mm -hmm. with a great, great swim for him. Again, I think best of his career. Didn't overextend himself. Right. Like I said, he right. had to bike with, a, he knew that to win this race, he had to run a low 230 or mid 230. Yep. And he knew he couldn't overbike to do that. Right. So at one point, I think it was like through 40 or 50 miles, he was in eighth place then moved right. himself back up. Right. I think it was fourth place, uh, yeah. fifth place when he got off the bike and then just tick, ticking away, man. It's crazy. In incredible. Oh, this is my favorite part here. Like so close, like less than a half mile. 
He is ready to hit that finish line. And I love this corner because there's always like people right at the corner. I think I think someone handed me a um, engagement ring one year to give to uh, their the, uh, the person at the end. And I dropped it at this very second. I dropped it and I like stopped to like grab oh, no it. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was just really funny. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, things you don't want to be in no, charge of. The I, last I know. I was like very though. stressed for a second, but it all worked out. <laughs> it all worked out. I was like, and I even said to myself, "Don't drop this. Yeah, clearly. don't drop it." That's yeah, so but awesome. uh, looking good, looking faster, and he's gonna get there. Yeah, he certainly is, and he's gonna do so looking like he just started <laughs> just, his marathon. I mean, I mean, he could. This gentleman, one hundred percent, could do another lap. Oh, he, yes, he could literally do another lap at this exact pace, pace with no drama no like a poker face and he sees it he's like looking if he if he didn't have his sunglasses on you could see him like kind of like skimming. Eyeing, but yeah skimming where is it where is it where is it and then you see it and it's like praise get me there yeah it's just proof that no matter how good you are or how easy you make it look all you want to do is get that finish yeah, line right um but uh, man yeah I, you mentioned non-dramatic and i think that it, yeah there was nothing really dramatic about joe's race today except no. for that the early 10 or 15 miles yep. of the bike i thought was was very impressive but he was composing how he did it he was never really panicking he's getting some nope. cheers from the side of the course uh now he's within the last few yeah. hundred meters chatting with uh yeah, chat one of his Does supporters it, yeah doesn't even smile really he's just kind of like cool i'm just gonna you know win an iron man today no bigs <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait for his finish line inter interview and then matt will and matt will probably i mean I, if he didn't collapse at the finish line after doing you know just collapse out of just like wow that was a hard marathon yeah i, I mean kudos to him yeah all these uh, all these gentlemen and the women still out on course are really putting it out there today and again it was a it was great conditions to do so on a, a course yes. that we know can be very very quick and you're going to see him i think he's going to take this left hand yep. bend and then a more dramatic left hand <laughs> corner if i remember correctly uh down into that uh finish line to be mike riley's last north american mm. uh winner that's right that he gets the call he yeah. gets that honor the skipper does that mike riley called him in he was his last pro uh, to call in on the men's side uh, in the North American uh, race circuit. Okay. There you go. Yeah, and he's going to take his time. He does his high fives. And you can see our race, love that. race staff kind of yes. making sure he gets to the finish, and now he's in that straightaway. He's going to see a bunch of hands reaching out for that high five as he, uh, as he makes the final meters, sees that red carpet. Mm -hmm. Uh, that big arch underneath first. Oh, He's hugs. got a big hug for a family member and uh, celebrate. Maybe, I don't know if the, somebody's trying to uh, hand him the Union Jack, but doesn't see it right there. But there he is, your Biostarks Ironman Arizona champion. There he is. That is Joe nice. Skipper. 7.45 flat. <laughs> okay, now this is like the only moment of drama. He just has to sit. Okay, not bad, Skipper, not bad. 7.46 <laughs> flat with a 2.44.43. And, uh, yeah, looks like he, he tried pretty hard. And I love Joe's style. He always, yeah. like, pauses when he gets right before the yeah. finish line um, <laughs> just to, to show that he's got it. But, yeah, so, it, it, you know, he's showing that it might not have been as easy as it looked like it was for us. Right. Right. Uh, right. So he's, uh, he's talking to Mike, uh, telling him about how he feels a little bit and uh, – <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's probably telling him about some other story too, of as course. Joe often does. But Matt Hansen just uh, gone through half a mile to go as well as Ben Canute. So we're going to have our podium uh, coming through here pretty soon also. But uh, there he is, there he Joe is. Skipper, your champ. That was awesome. So awesome. 746 flat. Just uh, not a bad Sunday uh, days of, day of work, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I said, at the this was the site of the the fastest or first sub eight on North American soil, and I think it was like it was closer, right? Seven fifty eight yep. or something. We thought that was insane. That was right. less than ten years ago. Actually, yep. that was also the last. Yeah. That was Aneka Yanos, who's the last mm -hmm. male to win this race uh, in a professional race. I think in two thousand eighteen was the last ah, time we had right. male pro race here. So Joe right. Skipper uh, getting across that finish line a lot faster uh, than the great Aneka Yanos did. 
and uh, taking over uh, the banners defending Ironman Arizona champion but Matt Hansen did all that he could and he did it yeah he did it well some people might look yeah. and be like oh he should have gone harder on the bike because he has the ability yeah. of riding harder but he wouldn't have had the kind of run he had today. no and what's crazy is like you said we used to think about like breaking eight was normally like I mean crazy. such a big deal yeah. and it still is don't get me wrong but now the top three men at least here maybe even the four, top four men or whatnot oh, are yeah. going to be under eight and by not by just like a minute by like several minutes a lot you know yeah and i think looking at these two it's interesting to see you know what i was saying about you know dosing out the energy at matt not mm -hmm. riding overriding so he could have this kind of run you know he's gonna have a really really fast run right. under 240. right where you looked at joe was actually pretty pretty wrecked like he went as well as he could and yep. he ran a 245. yes and that certainly yes, has that something great. to do with that 405. yeah Right. right. Like Joe's capable of running 235, right. and he ran a 245 and is still fatigued. It's hurting. Right, and yeah, it's, it's right. hurting, and, it, and it took most of everything out of him. Um, so that just shows, like, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and right. these two athletes have the option to do it either way on the bike or the run because they're just so talented. Well, and he went, Matt Hansen went a 419, so that's, what, 15 minutes basically slower on the bike and yeah. maybe he had that in him then on the run and then of course Canute went a 413 so these guys were the, the second and third were significantly slower on the bike yeah but then were able to run pretty quickly I, I even think Canute's first marathon in an oh. Ironman is still really oh, fast right oh yeah to, to be able to go sub 250 which I think he will um, first time out, a podium against uh, the type of athletes that he raced against today, sub eight, is awesome. But right now it's all about Matt Hansen, the one with the absolutely insane run of the day. He had confidence uh, in his run legs, almost got himself to first place, but he made his way from fifth on the run all the way to second, and he is stoked. Sub 750 yep. for Matt Hansen, unreal. And he, man, he, he looks yeah. like he has more to give, too. I think he could have done another lap. What's <laughs> up with that? Uh, he doesn't want to, but he no. could have. Uh, there There's you go. You see some of his sponsors there giving him uh, yep. giving him hugs. Congratulations. And, uh, man, when you see someone come off the bike yep. fifth, 15 minutes down, and crazy. he finishes second in front of you yep. know, the athlete, he's going to cross the the finish line next was second place at a world championship just a few weeks just ago, right? Just a few weeks ago. And Matt won a 235.30. And that. Matt Hansen and his run split, 235.30. Wow, no big deal. that is crazy. That's so only a minute off his best. I'd yeah. have to look, but I think that Hoffman was the sec second fastest mm -hmm. in 236. Mm -hmm. So he's the, this is the second fastest overall time in a marathon. But in, he, in Texas, it was a year where there was a logistical situation where the bike was like a tiny bit short. It was like right. 110 or something. Okay. Um, so, you know, a little bit, little bit different, but still right. counts as the fastest time. Yeah. But just one minute slower than that race. And like I said, he was running shoulder to shoulder. Right. Ben uh, already celebrating yeah. a little bit. I think he's, he, he saw him K. put his yeah. hands on his head. Huge. Yes. That, that Ben Canute, like double fist. Look. <laughs> hand yes, in the air. so pumped. He He's pointing it. to Mike Riley. He is absolutely pumped, almost as pumped as we saw him a few weeks ago. And that is what it feels like yes. to finish your first Ironman and uh, <laughs> might as well do it in a 751. Tick oh, the box. Ben Canute, yeah. you're going to Kona. You got Great. a podium position. Unreal. 245, first marathon in an Ironman. Crazy. That is impressive. And there's his family, Courtney and Briella. And like you said, they're expecting their son come in the next month. So how exciting. They've got a lot going on. He's probably glad that's over. Oh, he is 100% <laughs> glad that that is over. Now he can enjoy some family time. Probably won't race anymore, I wouldn't think, this, the rest of this year. No, I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. But uh, yeah, now back to the women's race after uh, the last few kind of dramatic miles of the men's yep. race. But we've got Sarah True at the front of this race as she has put herself there from the very, very beginning of the run, taking the lead just within the first half mile or so. Uh, but she's now through 17 miles and 153.08. 
uh, compared to Sky Monch, who's gone through in 154.49. So a minute and 33 seconds separates those two. So right now it's all about whether or not Sarah True can just continue uh, to run at a consistent pace to the finish. And again, she's she's still on that 255 pace. I have good vibes that, that she's just going to carry this on, carry this. She doesn't look like she's faltering at all. Her ponytail's still bopping around. She's like golden. Uh, she just wants to maintain this pace and then get to the finish line and get a, get a little Ironman uh, Arizona victory. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, going up one of these little rises here, see some shadows that even though it's not too hot, it's always nice to get yes. a little bit of shade. She's still looking over yeah. left hand shoulder uh, to, to make sure that she's uh, got a bit of time on Sky Monch. And she might look over her right shoulder again too to see. But I think she's probably getting some feedback uh, on the course that she's got uh, a, a gap that... Yeah is that that she doesn't need to necessarily be uh, looking over her shoulder at this point. Right, she, I'm seeing thumbs up. She's probably like, control, control. I've got nine, n little less than nine miles to go, which when I say that, that feels really long, but it's not that long in an Ironman. Like she's definitely on the home stretch now, on the final loop, and she's gonna do that last little, she'll get one more shot to see uh, her gap to sky on that little out and back uh, coming up here, and then she'll just be able to get there. Yep, and uh, again, two qualifying spots for the men and the women pros. Uh, so right now, the women's side, it's uh, Sky and Sarah in qualifying position, and on the men's side, a spot went all the way down to Ben Canute as Joe Skipper was uh, one of the first qualifiers uh, on the men's scene uh, to get his spot at Ironman Wales just a few months ago. So there you go. There's their top three qualified for Kona already uh, for next year on the men's side. Awesome stuff. Not too bad. A year in advance. That's that's pretty cool. Take it. Just, we'll take it. They can now pick and choose. Like you said, there's no pressure, and they have all the focus they want to get it done. I love it. Yeah. No. It's a. Uh, it even if they're the type of athlete, you know, if Joe or Matt, and they are, mm -hmm. Matt's going to want to go to Texas, yeah. I'd imagine, or so, something like that early. Even if you know you want to race early, knowing you don't have to perform allows you to put yourself out there a little bit more to, to, to try maybe a different way to perform because both of those athletes also have never had the result they've wanted in Kona. Right. So the only way you can maybe get that is to try something different in a race leading up. And to yes. do that, you have to risk not having a result that would qualify you. So yep. having it at the beginning of the year is pretty, pretty sweet deal. Pretty good. And here's her, d this is like my favorite part of the course because you get a little descent here. So she's going to take that up, I would think as well. Yeah and still looking so good. I'm so excited for for these ladies. They're really doing well. This is the best part of the race right now. Like, i.e., you're almost done. Keep going. <laughs> Pretty darn cool. And uh, just quick updates, because we have them from Ironman Cosimo. Actually, just went down earlier today. Uh, we had uh, uh, Garutz Fridays actually mm -hmm. win that race down there with Lisa Norton in second place and uh, Kylie Simpson in third. And on the men's side, we had Magnus Ditliev, and Jan van Berkel, and Toldi. So well, that there's was a your, good race. Yeah, Herman yeah. Cozumel, some fast times. Yeah. Um, it looked like it came down to the wire there uh, for the men's race. And Garut's having a great, great race in uh, no doubt the heat down there to overtake Lisa Norton and uh, get herself her qualifying spot to Kona as well. And so we're pretty quickly we're going to be able to get down and Get down on the scene, on the floor, and uh, listen. We to are see. here with the 2022 BioStarks Ironman Arizona men's champion, Joe Skipper from Great Britain. And Joe, I interviewed you a second ago, and you said you wanted to collect yourself. You've collected yourself a little bit. What do you think this victory of everything you've done in your career means to you? Oh, it's definitely up there. Like, I had some unfinished business with this race. So I came here in... Uh, <laughs> 2018 and uh, didn't even make it onto the run uh, like DNF just had nothing in the tank so I knew uh, I wanted to do a decent performance and uh, looking at some of the big names that are in the race like you've got Matt who always runs really well Ben coming off second at 70.3 worlds and then Sam Long who uh, obviously had a bit of a disappointment disappointment at 70.3 worlds so I knew he was going to have the bit between his teeth and he was going to want to do himself justice so it was always going to be a tough day plus a lot of other strong athletes so you know to be up there against them and uh, to get the win against those guys is definitely uh, one of the one of the better races I've uh, had I've got to admit and to uh, 
finish the year off uh, on a high like that is uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah, it is always when you finish the season like that and you know you got time to rest. It makes it even sweeter. But that last 10K is something you're going to think about for a while because you said it just wrapped you up. Yeah, I think it definitely added a few years onto my life, that last 10K. That was uh, extremely hard. Uh, massive headwind every time you run uh, down towards the far turn. And uh, the pace was really slow. I was running 20 seconds a kilometre then, and I knew uh, Matt and Ben were chasing me, and I was trying to do the maths in my head. What, what pace will I need to hold if they hold 340K, 345K pace? Um, and I thought I had it, but you always kind of doubt yourself, and you're never quite sure. But, yeah, I'm just so happy to uh, manage to hold them off. And, you know, you always have been one with great support from family and friends. Your mom and dad is here. That's got to mean a ton to you, especially when you're out there hurting, knowing you're performing for the ones that love you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it means uh, a load when, uh, when you can do it with your family there. Cool. Oh, it's getting me all emotional now. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, yeah, in, um, when you can do it in front of your family, and obviously with all these uh, high man races, you always have your family and friends, even if they're not there, tracking you at home and uh, watching the coverage. So <laughs> I know a lot of them are watching it from back home. So really pleased to get the win. Well, yeah, sorry about that, but a bit emotional. That's all right, Joe. You're allowed. You're allowed. You're the Ironman Arizona champion. One more time for Mr. Joe Skipper. And now, second place here, Storm Lake, Iowa, Matt Hansen, pro triathlete, coach extraordinaire, and uh, you won Des Moines this year in June. Obviously, everything you do seems to be on the run. You cranked out a 235 here, past some pretty amazing Ironman athletes. It's, it's like it's always your plan, but I don't think you always want it to be your plan. I don't want to have to run that hard today. Uh. That uh, the wind was brutal out there on the bike, so it was just try to limit the gaps and, and give myself a chance. Uh, you know, I knew the guys up front were going to run well. It was a cooler day, so you had to go out aggressive. Uh, and you know, obviously, Joe was, uh, Joe rode the heck. I can't believe how fast he rode that course uh, in those conditions. Uh, that you know, we didn't we didn't have any wind in Kona, so it made up for it here today. Um, yeah, happy to happy to put a good run together. Uh, you know, at the start of the second lap, I hadn't chewed as much time as I wanted into the guys up front. Uh, you know, obviously, objective number one was get the Kona slot, give myself, uh, it, make myself in charge of my schedule for next year. And uh, I, I was running a little scared for a little while. And then, uh, then the gap started to close down pretty quick and was able to, uh, yeah, close it out and come in second. I like that, be able to be the uh, controller of your own scheduled destiny in, in uh, 2023. Uh, race in this race, you chose it to come here after Kona, mainly just to qualify, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I had a really busy race schedule. I raced way more than I probably should have or wanted to, but uh, rolled the dice, came here, and... Uh, you know, got the reward, and so now I don't have to race quite as much next year. You hear that, Coach? I promise. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were your coach. <laughs> All right, Matt Hanson, everybody. USA, great day, second place. Third place, Phoenix, Arizona, Ben Canute. Oh, yeah, the local one. The crowd is here for him. Ben, you know, the, 
the great thing is having you here doing the Ironman. 70.3 has always been your game. You had a tremendous race in St. George, second place, led all the way. Why would you want to come here and prove yourself at this distance? Right now, I'm not really sure why. Um, I just, we had good training. This just kind of fit in well. And, you know, we were going to do it sooner or later. And why not do it in the home state? That's right. With everybody, obviously, everybody's here for you. Where was it out there on the course where, okay, now I'm in a territory I really haven't been before. Did that come into your head? Where, where at out on the course? They always say that the race starts at mile 18. And between there and mile 20, it got really hard. Um, I, I know Christian was uh, suffering. And uh, I just tried to hold on as long as I could. And Matt Hansen was charging. And, yeah, I was just uh, trying to put one foot in front of the other and just break the last six miles up into different pieces. Well, you know, you, you're taking advantage of the Ironman experience. You had your beautiful little daughter at the Iron Kids race this week and uh, running with her. Uh, this experience has to be something that you're going to keep for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the crowd was amazing out there. It was just an amazing day and just feels so good to have another race that, you know, I was just racing the whole time. I came out and, you know, left every single drop out on the course. Well, you did, because I know you're still shivering. we got to get you warm. But Ben Canute, welcome. Third place. What a day. Phoenix, Arizona, Ben Canute. You are watching the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman U.S. Series. Brought to you by Biostarks. Decode your health. Awesome stuff from Mike Riley and the, the top three pros from the Hyper Race Recovery Zone. Uh, pretty pretty cool to see the, the kind of what was uh, in the in the minds of those three athletes. And uh, you know, I have not personally seen uh, Joe Skipper get emotional, but nope. I'm uh, I'm here for it. I was here for it too. I was emotional with him. I started tearing up seeing him quiver. Yeah, Joe, I love it. And your family was there. They're so <laughs> proud of you. And like you said, all your friends are watching you yeah, across so the globe. And, and that, to me, proves kind of what we were talking about earlier. And I'm glad that Matt uh, filled us in on the fact that it was so windy out there. Mm -hmm. And that 405 is even that much more impressive. So, I mean, Joe Skipper won that race by really ripping apart the bike ride. And you're talking Incredible. about somebody who can run yep. a 237 deciding he's going to ride as, as fast as uh, as fast as he can, essentially, right. uh, to get there and uh, yeah, get that pace. But j no matter Just, which way yep. you cut it, all those athletes put themselves to the, the, the very edge uh, of what they were capable of. Well, like uh, Matt Hansen said, he was like, I didn't want to have to run that fast. <laughs> but he did because he was on a deficit coming off the bike. And we got Jen Annette on screen, still moving uh, third place uh, as she runs by Tempe Town. Uh, late, great, great performance uh, for her, continuing to extend her gap on fourth place. Uh, still a fair bit from, from second, but doing a great job. Let's get down to see our men's Seven hours, 51 minutes, 25 seconds. Welcome 30-year-old Ben Canoe. Second place out of Storm Lake, Iowa. He went 749-48 with a 235 run. 37-year-old Matt Hanson. And now your overall male champion from Great Britain. He swam 50-30, rode 405-28, ran 244-45 for a 7-hour, 46-minute day from Norwich in Great Britain, Joe Skipper.
Oh, looking good, gentlemen. Let's hear it for them. Your top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Joe's been there before. Matt's been here before. Ben is the rookie. Yeah. <laughs> One more time for Ben, Matt, and Joe. There you go. There's your men's podium. Uh, ben Canute, Matt Hansen, and Joe Skipper. I say, Matt looked pretty tired getting up on that set. <laughs> he second. looked, he <laughs> looked uh, uh, definitely like, wow, I just ran a 235 marathon, so I'm a little, t I'm a little sleepy. He will appreciate probably a burger and beer later tonight uh, after a very solid day for him. Yep, and right now we see our women's leader, Sarah True, uh, opening that gap to two minutes and 10 seconds at this point. She's got eight miles to go. We're going to make sure uh, we get rested and get a break and get back to the action at the front of this women's race. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability, and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best, and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Starks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series with our women's leader. Uh, she was out already this year, was able to win Ironman Lake Placid. Uh, didn't have the race she wanted in uh, Kona. Uh, unfortunately, she was sick a week before and wasn't able to have a performance on race day and didn't finish. And, you know, right now mm -hmm. she is wiping that off the record sheet. It's already been forgotten. She's like, sweet. This is what I needed. This is like, you know, as athletes, it's almost like validation. Like, all right, I put in the time, I put in the effort, I'm managing my life, family, work, and then my work as a, a pro triathlete. And it's paying off for her right now. And she's still as vibrant as she was the first 10k that we discussed how she looked great. And I love seeing this, this final 10k plus. Yeah, and just the way that those two women attacked mm -hmm. the early section of this run course. And more specifically, it was right. Sarah that was the driver, right? Yeah. Like Sky got out there first, but uh, Sarah put her heels to Sky and, and did her best to continue to try to put that pressure on every time uh, Sky came up. And it, it was obvious in a few moments mm -hmm. that she, she did... Mm -hmm push the pace yes. right she it was certainly effort yes. uh, for her to try to to drop or at least extend sky and it was just a few too many times and right. it, she just couldn't take it anymore and sarah right now is thinking you know what this was a really good decision to do this after Kona, right. you know, I'm going to I'm going to get out of New Hampshire, get out of the East Coast and go to some warmth for a little bit and do this race and she's doing exactly what she came to do and I love seeing it that's awesome. And you know what I love seeing? Mm -hmm. Fastest runner on course, Danielle Lewis, oh. fourth place. Is, did she really? She is two minutes out of podium right now. And oh the way that goodness. she's running compared to Jenna Nett, yes. uh, there's, it's just not going to be uh, – Jen's not, not going to be able to, to respond, I think, to, to Danielle unless she's gone out way, way too hard. But that's an athlete that, again, showed us yeah. do not – not give up and and you know yep. sometimes the silver lining in these things is yeah. you know who knows if she would yeah. have had a good ride and been clean she might have mm -hmm. who knows she might have gone outside her race plan and tried yep. too hard she got off the bike realized she had nothing to lose and is moving herself into yes. the podium it's incredible and in the end probably mm -hmm. if we were betting probably where she would finish anyways yes so 
she might sleep at night a little bit better yes. because of that. Yes. But she'll leave knowing the that story. <laughs> she has this run. I mean, she's run at the, through that mile point mm -hmm. three minutes faster than Sarah True. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, there's, see, you all, there is a reason that we spent so much time on her because here she goes in a podium position almost. I mean, she's still got to catch yeah. Jen, but I mean, it's looking that way uh, pretty quickly here. Yeah, and shout out to Smiley Athlete in Black. I uh, like yeah, her. She's, uh, she's excited to be out there and uh, get and a little she's bit of fast. Uh, camera yeah. time. Yeah, she's moving for sure. <laughs> we'll see. Sarah might have uh, some uh, some trouble getting rid of her, but uh, on screen right now, Jen Annette showing she's slowing a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, you can tell a little bit more side to side torso movement. She's looking over her right shoulder. That also mm. is a sign that uh, she's slowing yes. Uh, yes. a little bit and uh, don't look too long because uh, you're going to see Danielle Lewis. Right. And I think she might have seen her there. Yeah, she she might looked have down seen that. Mm -hmm. and started started moving. But uh, this is going to be a race for, for third place for sure. Absolutely. And I think that Dan, I mean, Danielle has really will be thrilled because she spent like 15 minutes on the side yeah. of the road. So like kudos to her. I'm, I'm pumped that she got back on her bike and she had to ride hard and literally came on this. I'll be curious to see what her marathon time is, right? Yeah. Because it's certainly going to be faster than a 4.0 whatever that she did before. No, and yeah, so yeah. like I, I, right now it's looking like an hour and 10-ish minute PR. Oh Currently, the pace that she's running is 2.51. It oh probably slowed at 2 yeah. or 3. Yeah. But I mean, that is, if she's under 2.55, mm -hmm. there are not that many women on the circuit running under 2.55. No, no. that's incredible. I mean, that's obviously Chelsea Sodaro just ran 251. Kat Matthews can run in that. Rini and, and others I'm not naming. I'm just saying that's like in the upper echelon elite. It go yeah, there's sub like under 10 probably, <laughs> yes. right? And, so, and to go sub 255 is incredible. So yeah. that the fact that she's even remotely on that path on her se you know second Ironman attempt, if you will, is pretty sweet. And what I'm most excited about that is for two things, mm -hmm. is that when she was down... Yep. She stayed positive. Yes. Uh, she was prepared as yep. best she could. She opened her tire so it would be as minimal as possible when she got a tube. Yep. She admitted that it was her fault. <laughs> right. Which is good for her own psyche. And, you know, just for us watching that, you know, somebody's not pouting or whatever. Yep. And she didn't pout. She went straight to it. I mean, you're she talking did. at least 10 minutes stopped by the side of the road. Yep. And uh, now she's going to be in a position here pretty soon uh, for a podium finish. So uh, we'll see after uh, we get to commercial what's going on in this podium fight for the women's race. You see Jen Annette back on the screen, and she is like, oof, I'm on my last little bit here, but I'm someone is breathing down my neck. And we will know here, uh, she has about 45 seconds, give or take, 40, 50, 60, uh, you know, to Danielle Lewis. And she just really probably wants to keep, we all want to keep that podium spot. It's so hard when we're in the final, final miles of an Ironman race when you're getting hunted down. So we'll see. Maybe she can kick it into the next gear if she sees Danielle come by, but it's hard in that point. But we'll see at the next check. And, and you know, kind of one thing that we've been uh, touching on a few times today is how cool this course is mm -hmm. for spectators, so good. right? And for family. Right. And can you imagine the emotional up mm. and down and the yells and encouragement that mm -hmm. Danielle Lewis is getting oh, now? Yeah. And, you know, kind of the, you know, the golf yes. clap, hang in there, the you can do it when yeah. she came off the bike, <laughs> yeah, super yeah. far behind. Yeah. And then just every time she comes by, they're probably yeah. just more of a roar and a roar, Yes, right? and that'll give her some pep in her step. Oh, for sure. Right? I mean, to go from 
really far behind because of her mechanical to a podium position potentially, that's a big deal. And, and like we said, she's got a great story to tell here when it's all said and done. Oh, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, we don't, mm-hmm. you don't necessarily learn as, you don't generally learn as much from your wins as you do from <laughs> right. the races that just do not go that well. Because, right. you know, her, her first Ironman win might mm-hmm. come because mm-hmm. she packed a tube next time. Exactly. Exactly. And if we look here, too, at the splits, is Sky is just now, th- uh, you know, three minutes back from Sarah. So 312. And they're at the 21.2, well, probably a little past the 21.2 mile mark. They're getting so close. And Sarah held strong. Yeah, no, she's, she's holding strong for sure. And, I mean, Sky, and this is all to Sarah. Sarah mm-hmm. is dominating this run at this point because Sky is still well under her like average yeah. marathon pace. She's still totally. at 259 if she continues to run this pace and she's only run faster than that once, I believe. So, I mean, she's having it's a, a good really day. good race. Mm-hmm. And it's still a good day. Right? Sarah's, Sarah's, uh, Sarah's just having a better race. And it shows you like we didn't know early because she mm-hmm. gave up a ton of time mm-hmm. early in, this, in yes. the uh, bike ride. Yes. And now looking back, it was, it, it seems like she just was like, okay, I'll wait for Sky, because yes. uh, I Isn't don't need incredible? to do this on my own. Yeah. No, and she and she didn't worry about Lauren, and she didn't worry about anyone else behind her, and she kind of held strong, but then Sky came, and then they went together. So it, in theory, it was actually quite smart of Sarah to do, and it paid off for her in the end, as we see right now. Yeah, I think in in the end, when when they got out on the course and how things developed, and probably before the race, as much as we talked about it, Sarah knew yep. that essentially this was unless something happened somebody had a breakthrough race maybe danielle lewis was going to have her breakthrough race it was a two woman one-on-one battle right right so sarah didn't waste any energy early she's like okay well i gotta beat the person that's back there so let's just wear instead of wondering am i keeping this gap or whatever she's like no she's right there just right there. This yeah. will make it almost easier for me to like feed off someone. And it's really between Sky and I right now. So let me just hold off a little bit, get, gain my ground. When she comes by, I'm going to go with her. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So cool. And it's, you know, it's not often in non championship races that we see our two mm-hmm. pre race favorites mm-hmm. come off the bike and start the run shoulder right. to shoulder. We predicted this well, Matt. <laughs> We really did, because look what happened. They came off the bike together. They ran together a very far away. They only had a small deficit for a little bit, and this is the biggest the, um, you know, the, the length between them has been. But, I mean, yeah, kudos to us. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you leave this broadcast yes. thinking anything, you think, good job to those two. Yes. Uh, just kidding, obviously. Uh, woman on screen right now having a great race, and, and she's done so over a, a – a pretty mm-hmm. significant span of time over the last few years, right? Like she mm-hmm. didn't have her necessarily her breakthrough. Uh, you know, I don't have years up necessarily in front of me. I'll try to get them up here, but you know, she, she wasn't one that was winning races 10 years ago. As you right. said, she had some struggles that she sure. overcame, but you know, she won uh, some races. She was third at Ironman Canada in 2015 and then just started staying consistent from there, Ironman Canada, second place, 2017. A lot of second places there. Second place, Ironman Placid, 18. Second place, Ironman Canada, 19. Second place, Tr- um, Mont Tremblant and Des Moines this year. Yep. And now she's again running in third place in a, a competitive, highly competitive uh, women's Ironman race. I mean, Jen is become such a mm-hmm. consistent racer. She has, and she did do Hawaii. She was top 20, right? She was yeah, 19th place. Yeah, that's not you. nothing. And she went a 452 on that bike, which is huge because, yeah. and honestly, a 326 run in Hawaii is not terrible. I mean, she she went PS sub nine, right? She went, or, or I mean, excuse me, she went a, a 929. I yeah. mean, it wasn't a bad day no. uh, at all. And to go top 20 in that regard. So I got to give her a lot of credit because she finished it. Yeah. She got top 20. Yeah. And then she came here. She's sitting in third uh, right now. Not too bad. No, thanks for pointing that out. Because yeah, I, I did kind of overlook that. Uh, because you don't, when, when there's two digits in the result, right. you, you tend to, to look past it. But totally. A top 20 in Kona is equivalent to a podium in most uh 
Ironman races, right? right? Like that's right. a great performance in Ironman Texas early in the year and, and coming from a Penticton, probably not uh, the best conditions or time for her to have her best race. And she was still fifth place and, right. you know, it was a 925 there. So for yeah. four Ironman distance races this yeah. year yeah. coming into this race, this yes. will be her fifth one. And she's, she's still fighting for that podium. Yeah, and that's kind of gnarly. I mean, who am I to talk doing five hours? <laughs> you but I'm, cannot <laughs> talk. <laughs> but that, that, that was like, you know, maybe Meredith in her 30s. But really, that's impressive. This is her fifth Ironman of the year starting in April. Not too bad. Yeah, I'll, insa- I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. admit I agree that that is crazy and that yeah. you also cannot comment on that being crazy because you've, okay, you've done 70-plus uh, <laughs> Ironman races. But... <laughs> Yeah, woman on screen, again, just dominating this race. And and looking, she always looks relaxed when she's on always. a day, right? Yep. And it's so awesome to see, you know, I've uh, had the, the privilege of, of spending a fair amount of time and working with Sarah, and she she she's always confident, right? Mm-hmm. And she doesn't fall into the short memory thing personally, right? right. right? Even though, you know, coming out of COVID, yeah. you know, she had a race back, won a 70.3, then won an Ironman, and everybody's talking about comeback. She's like, yep. what are you talking about Come comeback, back. man? Like, <laughs> it was COVID, I had a kid. Like, right. I'm expecting myself to be exactly where I am. Right. She has no other expectation than for her to yes. be fighting for these races. Yes, and she's confident but not cocky, and that's what no. I like about her. She is never right? cocky. No, she's just like, I'm confident in that. You know, I've put in the work. I'm doing the best I can as a mom and worker and wife and all the good things things yeah. and but she's not like she's humble uh in her delivery of all that yeah I, and yeah. i appreciate you pointing that out because nobody that yeah. i know would mistake her oh. for for not being humble and uh no nope. uh but it's that self-confidence that you yeah. know we've been talking about today yeah. so many athletes forget and it's cool to see someone that didn't have races for a couple of years be able to be yes. smart enough in her psychology to be like, no, like the reality is I'm a good athlete. I just right. haven't tried to be one right. <laughs> really in a couple of years. Right. I mean, she had COVID. Like you said, she had a child and it's like, that's a huge deal. And she's come back big time. She has come back. Look at her now. She's winning an actual Ironman. So you can't go wrong in that regard. Yeah. And she is in school. Yes. And she is, it's not like easy no. school. She is spending so much time and so much energy uh, in her in her studies right now. Yep. Uh, clinical psychology, I believe. Amazing. Not, yep. not easy if not you're going to pick advanced no. uh, degrees and a new child and yes. supporting uh, her husband and, and his endeavors as well. Yep. Like the, that is, that, that family unit they have is yes. incredibly impressive. They have it dialed, I feel. Like they, I mean, you know, I'm sure when... Ben, her husband, is racing. She's with their son, and it's like they just, you know, are handing things off and duties and job responsibilities and work and school and all, a family time, all the things. And it takes a village, but they're a main part of their village. They probably do a lot of work together to make it make it happen. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And uh, super supportive of each other. And uh, to me, it's just so impressive what mm-hmm. uh, Sarah is able to do physically and mentally yes. you know, we yes. don't often see that from top performers no. in our sport but uh yeah she's gifted on a whole lot of levels and uh, so is a woman on screen yeah um you know very successful um high level accountant before she yep. decided to be yes. a professional triathlete so certainly could could be uh, successful in uh, whatever she chose and she chose to to give triathlon a shot uh for a few years and it's it's paid off i think and, it worked uh, out for her yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, she, and don't get me wrong yes sky is going to be ticked off that mm-hmm. she didn't win this race mm-hmm. she is hyper competitive right mm-hmm. and so so she'll learn from this race and, yeah. and she'll look back and be like what can i do different to be able to to win these races because right. she has that confidence that we're talking uh, sarah has as well yes. and like she did not come to this race to get second place no no she came to win as she does because she does win yeah. and it's it's interesting like they didn't swim together she actually probably thought she caught sarah right so like what where I don't think she'll be upset is, well, if I would have swam with her, would I have won? Right. Right? Uh, we don't know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, and it's, yeah. And it's possible, yeah. you know, she she burned a match yeah. when uh, early on that bike ride yes. uh, to, to bridge up sure. while Sarah maybe was uh, sure. n- not riding super, super fast and not knowing because you yeah. get a split that you're three minutes back and the person you think you need to beat is up there. You're like, I'm going right. to get there right now. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, maybe she adjusts that. I think in the end... Um, you know, she's, she's going to learn from it. I think Sarah's 
was maybe on a on a better day. And you know, Sky is she's raced a lot this year yes. and, and very top performances in in the races that that she's had. Clearly, uh, you know, she raced Kona and uh, not too long ago the Vinfast Ironman World Championships in Kona. You know, she was ninth place there, so top yeah. ten there. She started off the season uh, Ironman Cal or seventy point three California, but an Ironman uh, fourth place top American Ironman St. George yep. World Championships, then went and did Ironman Des Moines, where she was able to go 851 and uh, win that race. And then, like I said, Kona. So her she's, this will be her fourth, fourth Ironman. These girls are nuts. It's crazy. <laughs> Again, you can't say that. But. No, I love it. But <laughs> she did. She's been top 10 by fourth and, uh, you know, fourth and ninth in two of the World Championships Ironman we had this year. Yeah. And so... She's got to be happy about that. I'm sure she, you know, in the mid-season, getting the win at Des Moines was it's huge, huge win. I mean, she went, again, she went sub nine there too. Uh, so she's really got it dialed on this Ironman distance, I have to say. Yeah, no, she absolutely does. And at the, you know, the only thing I would say is looking at this race is kind of what we were talking about mm-hmm. with Sarah's strength versus mm-hmm. hers is I'm thinking in general – the slower the course and the mm-hmm. longer you're on the course, mm-hmm. the better course it is for Sky. True. Right? Yes. So yes. a fast yes. course where people are going 745, probably not like if you yep. were to pick. And time-wise, and she obviously did this to get a Kona spot early, so I don't yep. take anything away from her choice to do this race. But to me, that stands out as she is an athlete that does well on very, very tough courses. Yep. And a course like this doesn't necessarily equate to that. Absolutely. You know what we should look at too, Matt, yeah. is at 824 right now we are we are at. And if Sarah, remember we were talking about that American record. We got to keep a, we'll keep an eye out on that. Yeah. Because she only has a couple miles to go. And if it's what, if it's Heather um, Jackson, 842, eh, we'll look it up. We will yeah, look I think that it, up. I think she, yeah, it's going to be it's like right be now fast. she's at like 843 pace. So we'll, uh, yes. we'll do some clicking uh, when we're on this commercial break and get that answer uh, when we're back. I said it wrong. It was, we just looked it up. It was 839. Heather Jackson went at Ironman Arizona, this very course in 2018. So that is the, and, and we're triple checking everything, but uh, yeah. okay, okay, sorry. Uh, you're right, Matt. At uh, Hamburg, Chelsea Sodaro went an 836. Yeah, I was, yep, I was you curious. Were right. And it's yep, hard because yep, you, you forget because yep. she actually didn't win that race. Right. And that baffled me. 836. Yeah. So actually, all was, right. Laura Phillip won that yes, race. So yes. the American record still 836 from Chelsea from Sodaro. Chelsea, so, um, Quite fitting since she's the Kona queen. Yeah. 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 I love it. I Maybe love her should work. Have, we should have looked yeah. at that result before yeah. she went to Kona and not yes. been surprised. That's by right. It. Um, but, uh, yeah, so 8.39 was the fast time that Heather Jackson had here, which, uh, safe to say, that's the course record uh, here at Ironman Arizona. So, uh, Sarah True, I don't think she's yeah. going to be able to get inside of that um, with 13 minutes ago. I also don't think she probably cares that much, but yeah. it's, uh, it's nice to see. And from yeah. what we're hearing, the, the bike course was, was challenging. And I know yeah. when Heather raced, it was a, 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 a quick, quick day. And I also have to say, I'm sorry. I totally <laughs> messed this up. Chelsea Sarah went at 8.33 in Hawaii. <laughs> so that's the record. She no went way. at 8.33.45. See, like, here's what happened. It's like unfathomable. That's, yeah, you that's know, me too. And totally. so I just was lost in the 8.36. But she actually went at 8.33 at Ironman Hawaii 
just a month ago or whatnot. So she is obviously the American record holder. Fitting that it's Kona Queen, but that it happened in Kona and she holds it. Yeah. Because, yeah. And, isn't and that crazy? again, we overlook it because you <laughs> would it. not assume you no. have performances She's like that. She's just too fast is and what's happening. I'm glad that we can we can figure all <laughs> yes. this out on air. I love it. We, we got it dialed. <laughs> Phew. Sorry, Chels. Sorry, Chels. We knew, we, we knew you got, it's in you. I'm just saying. 833. Whew, that's in fuego, my friend. Yeah. In fuego. So, yeah, but Sarah True is in fuego, right? Yeah. Yes, now. that's and, right. And, you know, we talked about this with earlier race, but now we're looking at Sarah True and, again, four minutes ahead now with mm-hmm. three miles to go. So it's, you know, unless something crazy happens, it's it's done. And, and she's getting uh, another check back in her box as we mm-hmm. see a finish, or sorry, mm-hmm. not a finish, a move, Morton move, in fact, mm-hmm. from Danielle Lewis passing our third place runner in the moment, Jenna Nett. Uh, not not quite past her yet, but getting up on the shoulder. And it's not going to take long because the pace that Danielle is running mm-hmm. is pretty incredible. You know, low, low 250 um, as she runs past uh, the Canadian. No words exchanged mm-hmm. as of yet. Just keep moving. And Jen's going to try to move over and get on the heels uh, of Danielle. But I don't think it's going to last too long. It's just so impressive. I mean, it was absolutely painful watching <laughs> how long Danielle Lewis was just standing there. And I was mm-hmm. almost like wanted us to get the camera off because right. you're like, man, it just hurts to watch. Right. And now I'm, I'm very grateful that we were able yeah. to have that much time following her after she yep. got back. And now she at no point, and I probably said it, at mm-hmm. no point did I think she'd have a chance of oh. being on the podium. No, yeah, we were like, oh, she's 22 minutes back. There's no chance. And look, she's proving everyone wrong. And after all that time on the side of the road, she has done it and made a move into the uh, podium position. Fantastic. So cool. So cool. And uh, yeah, again, Mm -hmm. a lesson for us all Mm -hmm. as we see those two athletes run away. But (laughs) back on screen, Sarah True. And and the point I wanted to make uh, earlier before we switched shots was Sarah now has been able or will be able to qualify for Kona Mm -hmm. for next year. Mm -hmm. And for all the reasons, like we're talking about Ben Canute, you know, it being sweet that he doesn't have to worry about it. I mean, we're talking all the things we just said about Sarah. She's going into off season. She's going to be studying her butt off. Uh, She's uh, got a a child that's going to be walking around and occupying a lot more of her time. And, uh, you know, she will not have to worry about, qualifying for Kona. She'll probably get out and do an Ironman before that anyways. Um, But she will get into this off season. And honestly, Meredith, like let's get the nuts and bolts of it. Like, sure. You know, this is a sport. This is a professional sport. Yes. You go into the off season and most people have their contracts dialed Mm -hmm. before now. Right. But if you don't, or if there's something in limbo, you're like, go to your sponsors, be like, I will represent you Mm -hmm. in Kona. Right. And we know that's going to happen, right? right? So, like, it takes uh, a little bit of pressure off even financially because yes. your sponsors can start developing, you know, projects and things for you to, to do for that, that race in Kona that, that help your security as a professional athlete. Absolutely, and that far in advance. And someone right. like Sarah, who has such fast twitch muscles to be able, she could just fill her schedule as she at her convenience with a bunch of, you know, Iron Man 70.3s, maybe throw in some speed if she wants, because she has that. We know she can crush Olympic distance too. But I mean, truly, she now has it dialed where she can just kind of cherry pick whatever she wants. And maybe she's trying, maybe she, you know, wants to do Finland. Maybe she wants to go to the 70.3 worlds there. Uh, so she just has that luxury now of being able to go on her own time and her own uh, cherry pick her own races. Yeah, and, and if you're joining us late, this is uh, Danielle Lewis uh, gingerly walking across the road in her shoes after she finally secures a tube to be able to uh, fix her her flat tire and get back on there. And what you didn't see is the preceding like minimum 10 minutes. I want to mm-hmm. say it was more like 15. Mm-hmm. It could have been 20 uh, where she was just standing on the side of the road, hoping that somebody would come by uh, with a tube and, and help her out. And uh, amazing, amazing effort uh, from Danielle Lewis to be able to, to not mentally give up in that period of time. Right, because like right. not alone did she was she able to get back out on the bike and try as hard as she could, and then get on this run and show how good of a runner she is. It, if not giving up 
when there's no hope in sight, when you're standing there right. without a way to inflate your tire, like that is the important part. So like the, the mental uh, fortitude of her to be able to never really give up. And I think part of it was her like knowing that yes. she just did something kind of silly. And yes. she's like, okay, well, let's see. Let's see what we can get out of it. And man, she looks yeah, fantastic. She was so ticked at herself. She's like, I'm going to show you <laughs> to her own self. And then she is right now. And she is built her way up to third place. She's got to be happy with that. I'm sure her husband is on the, uh, you know, out there cheering, just giving her motivation like, hey, you know what? We know you spent a lot of time out there on the side of the road. You probably got cold, probably didn't eat. But then when you could see her focus and drive when she got back out on the bike course, I mean, she was hustling. She was humming. And she probably, even without that time, didn't do a horrible, even without that time on the side of the road, didn't do a horrible bike split. No, no, not at all. And uh, so her bike split in the end was... 503, yeah, which is just bad. 16 minutes off of uh, Sarah True. Uh, so not bad, but again, still on that 252 uh, marathon pace and doesn't seem to be slowing down. And, and, and that also impresses me when it comes to the mental ability and strength of an athlete is at this point, she's this far back. Like she's pretty confident right. that she's not going to get her Kona spot. She's not right. going to move up to second place. Sure. But she's still driving. She's still driving. She's she's trying to learn something for the next race where she doesn't have a silly error like that. And uh, she can get off the bike and be like, you know what? I ran a 253 in Arizona. Why can I not do that now? Right. Because sometimes when you mentally, there's pressure when you get off. Like if she was to get off the bike in second or third place, it's much harder to back yourself to run that 253 right. than when you get off in 15th place. Yes. And you're like, well, there's nothing to lose. Let's just see what happens, right? Right. No and pressure. so she's still pushing as a sky here on, on the screen. She's still pushing. She knows she's almost at that 24.6 mile marker. We'll see how far behind Sarah she is. But I mean, truly, she still is doing what Sky does. This is it. Steady, Eddie, controlled, still fast. I'm, I mean, her, as we discussed, her run split is still going to be fast. Any other Ironman, it would, it would be really hard to compete with that. Sarah's just extra fast today on, uh, on the marathon part of this. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability, and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best, and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Since 1997, we have imagined the exceptional. From our very first flight, to opening the world's best airport, Hamad International Airport to delivering unforgettable experiences on board. You're the reason we go above and beyond. The reason we've become the world's best airline a record six times. All this in just 25 years. Imagine what the next 25 will bring. Qatar Airways, 25 years of excellence. All right, Sky. she knows she's almost done. She can start to see the finish line. She is just past uh, 24.6. She's about four and a half minutes down from Sarah. But she knows she's got her uh, Kona slot secured here. She's going to finish yet another Ironman, her, uh, I mean, an insane amount of the year. It's very impressive what she's doing. And she's still going to run a ridiculous marathon time in this race. She's even getting faster to my point when you know you only have a mile and a half left. You're like, please, just get me to the finish line. So she's doing so, so well. And I, I saw a smile. She's looking at her pace. I think she's trying to get a certain time uh, in her marathon split right now because she's definitely picking up her cadence. Her arm carriage is faster. And she knows she's almost done. And she's going to get there in second place. Yeah, no, she's 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 been around. Uh, she's been around the track a few mm-hmm. times, uh, and yeah, and she does. Again, she looks like Sky yeah. looks when she's having a great race, which yep. she is having a great race. There's just another athlete that is having a better one and just has a little bit more gear pace wise uh, when it comes to the marathon. Again, yep. on a fast course, which I think is important. That's right. And I think, she, I, I mean, I don't want to call it because my math's not great, but I know she's going to be under the three-hour mark, which is insane. 
Like that's such a good marathon within yeah. an Ironman. Yeah, no, absolutely. And well under. And here comes Sarah, just hit the last aid station. She's so close. She's getting to that half mile point where I feel like we just saw Skipper at too. So so close. She can. She's going to see the arrow to the finish. That's the best. And she'll be there before we know it. And can't wait to hear Mike Riley call her in. Oh, it's going to be awesome. And so I was doing some complex math, which mm-hmm. I would not. Uh, be confident is accurate. Um, not that complex, but uh, looking at through the, the splits that we have in segments of the course compared to Sarah True, uh, Danielle Lewis looks to pr- have lost at least 17, 18 minutes. Oh my gosh, right. Right, so mm-hmm. that's that's a ton of time. And mm-hmm. we're not going to start comparing the sure. if she could have caught first and second because she was standing still for 17, 18 minutes. Right. That is rest. Right. That, you know, that's stressful in so many different ways, but it so is stressful. different to an athlete being able to take a break and then performing since then. So you can't really right. compare those, but more so for her yes. to know that she was sitting there for, I mean, two yes. minutes feels like an eternity. Oh my gosh, 17? No, thank you. <laughs> Never, please. I, I mean, I, like what we just said, I felt like she was standing there for an hour and, yeah. and I, that wasn't me. I mean, that's a long time. So for her to pull it together and as you see, like you're, you're cold, you lose your hydration, nutrition, she pulled it together. I'm impressed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and she's going to be one now to look out for. And yes. she might fly under some radars because yes. when mm-hmm. athletes maybe go and research and look at previous sure. Ironman results, it's going to show a third place at, with this time. 5-0, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and she's going to be like, no, man, I can ride 440, yes. no yes. big deal, and a 250-something off. So uh, Danielle Lewis showing herself something and the competitors that are paying attention something as well. But Sarah True is uh, just showing us that She's Sarah True, an amazing athlete. And, you know, we talk about, you know, you brought up with Melanie mm-hmm. McQuaid mm-hmm. being a great athlete over different distances. Yes. I mean, Sarah True, Same. she was yep. fourth at the Ironman World Championship. Yes. She's won a bunch of Ironmans or a few Ironmans to this year after yep. giving birth to a child mm-hmm. and uh, having her studies. And she was freaking fourth at the Olympics. Olympics, exactly. Right? And went to exactly. a couple and to be at that level is something yes. else in like very different disciplines. Right. Uh, she's un- she's unreal. Super inspirational. In all dis- that's what's so hard. She's very versatile. You know, like to be able to just bust out Olympic distance and then 70.3 and then Ironman with like no qualms it's pretty impressive to me i think it it just goes to show that she's as she's getting older she's getting even faster yeah no she really is and and Mm -hmm. she's now just has a half a mile to go Mm -hmm. and uh you know she's gone through that split at 250 so she is she's going to be in that mid 250 yep zone probably 255 256 she's starting to give those high fives yeah she she knows she's getting close she's ready to go she is she's going to make the turn here soon going to get a little bit more spectating vibes and then hit the red carpet and then Mike Riley see she gets that privilege of being the last winner of the North American side of Ironman to get greeted in by uh, Mike Riley that's that's an honor right there she and uh, Joe Skipper yeah no that absolutely is and uh, what a way to finish uh, your season going into the off season, uh, allowing yourself maybe a little less pressure yes. uh, going into the winter and the holidays. Amazing, amazing work from Sarah True. And she looked consistent yeah. all day. And, and she doesn't even look like she's breathing hard. No. Right? And, and, and in my opinion, she was very tactical, yes. right? Like yes. on the bike, she's like, okay, sky's here. We're going to stay there. I know what this race is. And mm-hmm. when she did that, that also is kind of a mental game. That tells Sky, like, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the run. I back myself on this run. And, uh, you know, she did that and, man, certainly paid off. It paid off. And now she's going to be the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman U.S. Series champ. Yeah. I, I like that long title. Thank it's pretty, you. It's pretty good. It's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's got a certain ring to it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, this, so this is that section of the course we saw yeah. earlier. We know it's uh, mm-hmm. real, real close, bending left-hand corner and then a left hand into the finish, and uh, she's going to gonna be able to soak that up. Her second Ironman win of the year, her third Ironman branded race, uh, yes. including 70.3, and that is not bad. The only race she didn't win on the circuit mm-hmm. was Kona. Right. 
where right. she was sick. Where she was sick and couldn't even finish, understandably, because when you're sick, you need to be like 100% for Kona. We know that for totally. any race. So good on her. Here she goes. So Sarah is all about game phase. So yeah. I'm always waiting to see when she yes. starts to smile because she, yes. is, she is a joyful, uh, person. happy person yes. for sure. And uh, But she keeps that under wraps uh, when she's racing until she knows it's time not to. Yes. And there you go. Your Biostarks Ironman Arizona champion, Sarah True. Yes. Oh. So you can, satisfying. You can tell she wants it. And, yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh. There's a lot of emotions. <laughs> yes. Understandably so. See, she's making me cry. Yeah. I love it. So good. Just so good. <laughs> That's, yeah, that is amazing. And look at that uh, Wahoo run split, 255-33. And uh, she showed herself yeah. something today. And yeah, uh, she you know, she's proud of it. Because, uh, again, you know, every athlete has a little bit of doubts. And, you know, <laughs> <I'm happy. laughs> she's good. She's happy. <laughs> uh, but she was able to, you know, if she had any doubts, you know, put those on the back burner and, and go against one of the, you know, people often look at Sky as the best American mm -hmm. Ironman athlete. Mm -hmm. Chelsea Serraro yeah. had something to say about yeah, that, so yeah. I think that's pretty pretty yeah. hard to argue that. Yes. Uh, but you know, putting her name in the hat and it, that is something that I don't think Sarah True really thinks is important. No. Right. She just right. wants to go win the races that she's at, um, but she's certainly put her hat in the ring to say, you know what? Hey, yep. I'm here too, and whenever I show up to a race ready to go, I seem to win them. And she went at 8:42. I mean, so good, right? It's like Dude, yeah. even going, I mean, again, we talked about the men breaking eight hours. It used to be the the thing was to break nine hours for the women. Uh, and like, if you did that, that's still like, a, it's still a big feat. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, it's not like they're just breaking nine hours by like a minute. <laughs> It's like legitly 18 minute break in uh, oh, yeah. by the nine hours. No, absolutely. It's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, doing so in style, just, uh, yeah, unreal. And again, Danielle Lewis, these top three women yep. uh, are really uh, showing something special out there uh, today. And Sky Monch within that half mile to go as well, getting passed by an age yep. group. Maybe she'll jump on the train, yep. uh, get herself to the finish a little bit quicker. <laughs> she, she definitely tries. She, oh, she's yeah. getting on those heels. She's like, I'm going to use this guy to uh, just bring me in. That's perfect. Give she's so, as, so close. Give me there as quick as I can. That's awesome. And I can't wait to see her split because I still concur. It'll be very fast. I mean, maybe slide under the three hour mark if she's only four minutes behind, yeah. four and a half minutes behind uh, Sarah. So we'll see what, what comes of it. Yeah, she'll probably be right at uh, mm -hmm. three double O, which is great. And so good. Would yes. be top three run splits yes. for her. And uh, Sarah True with a 255.33, mm -hmm. so her second fastest run and uh, certainly her fastest finish uh, at 842. And, you know, not looking, mm -hmm. have to be top 10 you know, U.S. Right. times. Right. Right. And certainly on American soil, it hasn't happened very often. No. And I think Sky is looking, I think she, understandably, like it's hard when you go 300, you're like, ah, I'm so close to 259. I think she's really trying to give a valiant effort to, to break that, that three hour mark, mark, which she's done before. Um, and uh, many times, but I'm just saying like, this is such a good race. She's pumped. She's like, I qualified for Kona a year in advance. Yeah. Life is good. I came here to do what, what I came to do, and she did it. I know she didn't get her, like, a victory, but she'll get many more Ironman victories. It was one of those cases. Gosh, Sarah was just unbeatable today. Yeah, and Sky looks back on the yes. season, and it's yes. two top Gosh. tens at uh, Ironman World Championship. Insane. You know, with yes. the St. George and Kona this year at a fourth place in St. George. And again, a tough, tough course, right? Yes. So, you know, she's an athlete that... If if the course is tough and uh, mm -hmm. the race is going to be going to be hard, it's uh, you know she's she's one for the win for sure and and showed why uh, she's known as one of the tougher athletes on the circuit today. Well, yeah, and she did, and I'm not giving her an excuse or anything, but she did just race Kona not far long ago and yep. was ninth. And as we know, Kona can take a lot out of you. It's yeah. really hard to do a performance like that. I mean, if you're like me and you walk the Queen K, that's one thing. But if you're like Sky, who raced it and got ninth, top 10, fantastic finish, understandably, she might be a little bit more fatigued from that effort. But man, she still came out and executed a stellar uh, day today. Oh, boy, did she. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, executed uh, to perfection and, and, you know, had to do something that she's yeah. not 
used to doing, which is race a tactical race and respond to somebody else's yes. pace. She gets yes. some celebratory uh, bubbles. <laughs> she yes. goes and enters the finish shoot, giving waves uh, to all the spectators as she uh, gets the final final few meters into the finish. I'm happy for them. Very, very good days. Both, both of you ladies, Sarah and Skye, Way to go, your Kona qualifiers for uh, 2023. There's your second place finisher, yes. Sky Monch. Yep, also looks pretty good. Could do another lap, maybe. Oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Congratulations uh, <laughs> for both of them, for sure. Uh, great, great performance by those two. And uh, I will say, I think the wind put her over the edge, mm -hmm. but I, I give the kid mm -hmm. award to Sarah. Yeah, yeah, that was insane. That yeah. was just such a good performance. Right. I can't wait to hear what she has to say also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, she'll be responding to that one, no doubt. But uh, yeah, great, great work by those top two women. And still women out there fighting mm -hmm. uh, for that podium finish. It, it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of a fight for Danielle Lewis. She right. seems like she's got it pretty well under control, continuing to run very, very quick pace. And I think she's going to be just outside that nine hour yeah. mark, yep. uh, okay. but she, she can be, feel confident that, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere in those 17, 18 minutes, she would yes. have probably had enough to go sub nine, which yes. is a pretty big deal. And no doubt, there, there's no doubt she had self doubt after mm -hmm. that Ironman Texas race. Yes. And, and that's off the table now. That's off the table. She's cruising. She's in third place. She went from, uh, maybe I should go do another race because I've been on the side of the road for t whatever to a podium. Yeah. That's pretty rad. And I'm happy for her. And now she's going to just finish this bad boy up and have a story to tell. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. And after disappointment in yes. St. George with the yes. crash and, and, right. and that uh, as God, well. She's been unlucky. That's yeah, yeah. right. The yeah. crash, then the mechanical. Okay, she's done now with any drama. Yeah, no, more, done. no more drama no more. No. for Danielle. No. Um, but uh, looking forward to her getting across the finish line. Also looking forward uh, to getting down and listening to our top two women in the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone uh, once we get uh, Mike Riley all set and ready to chat with uh, those two finishers. We're gonna get straight down to them. Uh, but right now we're still following Danielle Lewis uh, with that pretty picture perfect run stride. Yeah, and as good as Sarah True and Sky mm -hmm. Monch looked, Danielle looks better and con like Control. more cons controlled. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. word for sure. And Sarah looked very controlled as well, but she's gonna probably get the fastest run split of the day. But Let's go down and have a quick chat with our first and second place finishers. They are with Mike Riley in the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone. We are here with the BioStarks Ironman Arizona female champion, Sarah Drew out of West Lebanon, New Hampshire. And Sarah, this has to be sweet because it's the end of the season. Uh, and it's also got to be sweet because you had a solid performance today all day long. No, thank you. I, I came here knowing that Sky is in great form. She was going to push me all day and I would have to bring my absolute best. So thanks to her for bringing out the best in me. Well, you guys were doing a little back and forth juggling out there and, and uh, it looks great on screen. It looks great watching the race. But how really great was it? Like, how long is this going to happen for? You know, I, I feel, felt pretty strong going into the race. Um, and I just wanted to try to pace it well on the run, put it together. But until you cross the finish line, you just don't know what's going to happen. So you just have to push all day. Well, the Ironman Lake Placid performance was fantastic, having you come back there and win that in July. And then come here in Arizona. Was this double always in your plan? Not at all. Uh, you know, I, I had hoped to, to race in Kona. Uh, came there pretty sick. As any parent with a child in daycare knows, it is a nonstop fight trying to stay healthy. So, uh, you know, I'm really glad I could come here healthy and put together a great race. Um, you know, the, the second I, I was too sick to race in Kona, I was looking at the calendar thinking, okay, I'm, I'm too, I can't let the season end with a DNF. I need to, to finish a race, use the fitness, and uh, just celebrate the hard work that goes into to everything we do. And as the loving mother you are, but still, you made sure you're here in Arizona on your own so you could concentrate on this. 
Well, it's it's more that I the way I pitched it to my husband was that Mama's at work, so uh, you're gonna have to be the one wrangling a toddler on a six-hour flight and during the race. And then for whatever reason, that didn't seem that appealing to him, so he stayed home where he can have the, our son in daycare. Well, Sarah, congratulations! What a great win, and have a great off season. Can't wait to see what you do next year. Thank you very much. Uh, it's it's an absolute blast, and and Mike, I I can speak for pretty much all of triathlon. It's such a pleasure to have you here and celebrate your amazing career with you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Sarah True, everybody, your champion. We have here second place at the BioStarks Ironman Arizona, and she has got her Mylar blanket on, shivering a little bit. Sky Monch from Utah. Sky, you know, every Ironman has its ups and downs, and afterwards it has different feelings. What's the feeling with this one for you? Um, I kind of feel like crying, I think, because Ironman's so hard, like, every single time, and you kind of have to... Sometimes you have moments in the middle of the race like, why am I doing this? This is so hard. And so to overcome those feelings that we all have, I think, at some point. Um, yeah, it's just like a strong mental and emotional feat to do that. So, yeah, I'm proud of myself for fighting all day. So that's how I, that's how I feel. Um, those are the emotions. <laughs> well, you know, when you fight, you have to fight. You're fighting back and forth, obviously, with Sarah. And that drains you physically, but it's also, you have to pull out more mental than you probably wanted to. Yeah, um, I really tried not to have Sarah be with me on the bike, but she rode really well today. Um, she's obviously in really good form, so yeah, I knew getting off the, the bike with Sarah was going to be a challenge on the run, but I just kind of went for it, and um, yeah, I think I ran my fastest marathon of the year, so that's pretty good end of season i'm happy with that <laughs> nothing nothing wrong with that at all for goodness sakes and you know it, it, when it is the end of the season you can take a look at what you've done but what are you taking a look at next year for anything in the plans i honestly can't think past like eating dinner tonight right now um <laughs> but yeah a part of why i wanted to come here was to get my kona qualification um i just experienced my first Kona, um, so I just, I want to um, have that qualification taken care of, and so next year's an open book, and we'll see what opportunities are there. Well, Sky, we love watching you race, and we're going to love seeing what you do next year, so the best of luck. Thank you, Mike, and best of luck to you. you. <laughs> Sky Mott, everybody, second place. <laughs> You're watching the Biostarks Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series. Brought to you by VinFast. Boundless together. And bounding down the run course is Danielle Lewis. Crazy. Yeah, and you can see her splits She's on the side there. <laughs> I mean, 556 pace at one point. Pretty good. She's at a 619 average. I mean, like... I mean, she's going very fast is what I'm saying to you. There's <laughs> to whether, Yeah, to summarize. In summary, she is, like you said, contending for the fastest uh, run split of the day. So can't go wrong. Uh, what, what do we, let's see. She's at 20. Yeah, she's at an, another mile and a half to go. Yeah, she's not bad. She's going to get that fastest run split yes. unless, you know, she decides to, to jog it in, which I don't yeah. see happening. And in the 253 zone uh, for Danielle, which, again... You know, she's not going to go home and be like, that was the race that I wanted. Everything was perfect. But right. hopefully, again, she looks and says, okay, in reality, probably would have been yep. third still anyways. Yep. But now I know I'm capable yes. of, uh, like, she in her head, she quote unquote knew, but you yes. don't know till you do it. Yes. And if, if she's able to, to go home and know she's a low 250 
marathoner, again, there are a handful of women currently on the circuit that can do that. Yes. And, you know, if she's done this in her second Ironman, you know, who knows yes. if she can't be one of the few to go under 250 on, on the right day in the right oh, yes. race and condition. So, yeah, great, great stuff from Danielle. I know. I'm pumped for it. She must have a lot of comfort. And even, even if she, like, she, I, I don't think she's the type of person that's going to dwell at all on that little mechanical big mechanical meaning she's right. on the yeah. side. I really don't. I think she's going to be like, wow, I am the bomb because I just <laughs> ran myself to third place podium. Yeah. So I can't go wrong for that. So I appreciate her um, positivity. And like we said, I appreciate her being like, it's my fault. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, I forgot this piece or whatever it was. Uh, so she learned and she grew and now she's going to get third. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I do kind of, I envy uh, being around the finish line where her family or her supporters are because they're going to go absolutely nuts when she goes. I, I haven't looked, but, you know, she was out of the top 10, certainly. And I think she was, you know, more like top 15 off of the bike and crossing the finish line yes. in third place. Yes. not. I, I mean, truly, I don't think I'm, I've ever seen. Oh, she almost went on the second lap. Like, no, thanks. Don't Definitely go to the finish. Uh I don't think I've ever seen someone, and I could be wrong, but have a mechanical that was that long and be able to, you know, work their way up to a podium finish. I mean, that's a big feat. So well done, Danielle. Yeah. No, I mean, she was eighth off the bike, mm -hmm. but that was after she brought herself back. So she got yeah. down to, as far as I can see in the results, all the way down to 15th. Yes. Uh, she went from <laughs> fourth, I believe, mm -hmm. when she had that uh Mechanical yes. to 15th. Yes. Now she's run her way back into third. That's awesome. That's awesome. And see, now we were like, well, oh, we're on this camera, but now she, I mean, she deserved it, right? Yeah, like totally. She's like, gosh. Yeah. We were like, sorry, guys, you're on the camera. She's just standing because she doesn't have her part. <laughs> and it was just like now, uh, you know, she got good coverage on both things and understandably so and well-deserved. So uh, here she goes and, and going to be finishing here before we know it. Yeah, no, she's coming up on that last split before we get to uh, the finish line and uh, just a little bit to go till then. And, you know, she's going to be able to, to, to be proud of that finish, no doubt, and, and has to be proud uh, of the, the women that she was able to, to finish sure. behind uh, with a great result. And, you know, she's going to go just over nine hours in her first Ironman where she was able to, to put it together to, you know, I would say to put it together yeah. well. She still had a very big mishap. Yes. And yes. Uh, is going to be just over nine hours. So yes. that's something to be proud of. Not bad. And had she not had that mishap, and you, of course, can't think of that way, but she should be happy with herself. Like, wow, I can break sub, I can break nine. Yeah. Because I would have been in the, like, 850s, per se, arbitrarily. So I think that's a pretty special day. And, you know, she made some money, got on the podium. Uh, that's an honor in itself. Yeah, in honor, and it yeah, helps helps paying the bills. Help paying like, the bills. Coming into the off-season, too. too, right? Yes, absolutely so. So she's going to be stoked when she gets to that finish line here before we know it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's an athlete that, you know, we spoke of a little bit, you know, years ago was purely a duathlete. Yes. And did not, like, swim at all. Yes. So the fact that, you know, she she loses time on the swim... Yeah. And you would say, you know, maybe that's too much mm -hmm. time to lose in the swim if you want to be competitive. But it's like this, you're talking about someone who just never swam before. But but she know, went an hour today. That's not yeah, terrible, that's not, right? No, that's not that bad. And like, if it wasn't for her history and her sport, she wouldn't have the ability that she has on the bike yes. and run to overcome the adversities that she did today, right? So, like, you, swimming is one of those things that, She's a fit athlete. She's no yeah. less fit than the women that are swimming 10 minutes in front of her. It's just, a, um, you know, obviously something that you have to, to learn and, and get better about. And it's a skill. And she can improve that skill uh, bit by bit. It's not that easy. But, you know, if she keeps ticking away at it, she's never going to be a 49-minute swimmer. That's just no. not realistic. But, right. you know, she could, she could take another three to five minutes off of that if she keeps ticking. And that's putting her in pretty pretty rarefied air if uh, she puts her bike and run mm -hmm. off of that. Well, and she went a 105, right, in Texas, and she already chipped away five minutes. Uh, I mean, again, we know every course is sure. different. I don't mean that. But, I mean, she went from a 105 in Texas to an hour in here. That's, that's cutting some time no matter what 
what the course is. Yeah. So that's not too shabby. And in Texas, she went a 448 uh, on her ride there. So we know the five plus here. We, we know she's a sub five rider big time, especially on a course like this. So uh, we know then obviously too that she can run like the wind and we're going to find out what her run speed is here shortly. Yeah, no, uh, doing a great job and uh, taking them away. So we've got a little bit of time before Danielle finishes. Uh, Meredith, what 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 is your what stood out to you today as your your highlight of the day uh, yeah. between the the men's and women's field? Well, two things. I love that Joe Skipper got emotional. That brought me joy. Yeah. That just like not that does he have like like it's in there. Like he, yeah. th it just what I'm saying is it just really encompasses what Iron Man means to people yeah. to be able to share it with the people you love to be able to execute a day that you know you're you're capable of and then share it with your people and then you know you get a little emotional about it you're like oh wow I, I did what I envisioned this is so rad oh uh, so she yes. actually missed that uh, that half mile split didn't pick up for her but yeah. Danielle Lewis is oh, actually coming. Oh, she's going to finish here. Yeah. She's, she was just too quick for us. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah, there we go. So before we know it, yes. uh, she's in the finish shoot, and she's 9.03. Not bad. That is not bad I at mean. all. And she's sprinting. She knows she's got a run oh, time wait. that she's shooting oh, for. Oh, she won a two. Oh, this is amazing. Danielle Lewis yes. coming across the finish line. And there's no doubt she gave it all. That, that's her husband there <laughs> yes. getting, getting ready to... Uh, you know, give her that support, but your third place finisher, what was her run split in the end? 252. No way. I mean, 252 high, but I mean, 252, 44, doesn't matter. 252. Yeah, that's, that's a insane. 252. Yes. That is... 903. That is awesome. And again, there just, there are not a lot of women on the circuit that can do that. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so incredible. Yeah, no. and, and uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, we're we're trying yeah. to be all positive. Yes. We saw her standing on the side of the road. I know. Anything is possible. <laughs> blah blah blah. Right. But man, she proved it today, and yes. I, I did not think that she would would have that in her. And and mostly, there you go. She's stoked. Round yes, of applause. Understandably, yes. Mostly because you have to not give up at all to be able to physically do that. Right. right. Just mentally, not and, give up. And, yeah. and it's it's that, but it's also you also have to be smart enough to not try to get it back soon or to be like emotional or hectic about it. And man, Danielle, and we're going to be able to get down to Mike Riley here pretty soon to get a quick uh, response from Danielle, who I'm hoping is beside herself yes. with uh, appreciation for the kind of result that she pulled off today. But yeah, unbelievable. Okay. 252. Yeah. And again, we'll, that's... Whatever it, whatever it is in the 252s, yes. it counts as a 252. And a uh, great bike split, 503, considering she was down for <laughs> yes. 15 to 20 minutes by calculation. Uh, yeah, amazing work uh, from an athlete that, you know, didn't know until just now that she was capable no. of, of this over the Ironman distance. And Mike's going to get her pretty fresh here off of yeah. the finish. So I can't wait to hear what she has to say, too. But yeah, our top okay. three women today all yes. had amazing, amazing performances. The, the run was it in the end. You know, three really impressive run splits as you as we yeah. saw. Here we go. We're going to go down to Danielle Lewis with Mike Riley in the high price recovery zone. Biostarks Ironman Arizona. Third place female, Danielle Lewis out of Boise, Idaho. And Danielle, we all know you're a fantastic runner. You were having a great ride out there, but all of a sudden you had some troubles with a flat tire, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm pretty overcome with emotion right now because I was standing on the side of the road for almost 20 minutes with a flat tire. And, you know, you see all your competitors passing and you're like, ugh. That's tough because I actually had the swim of my life today. Um, huge PR, you know, swim faster than I swim in 70.3 races. So, you know, I'll take that. Um, and so I battled my way back and I felt incredible on the run. And then I knew what Chrissy Wellington's record was. It was 252.55. Uh, I got 252.44. <laughs> so I got the run course record. Well, I'll say it's the official unofficial record, but we're going to check that out. It looks very good. And that was a goal of yours. Even though you had that trouble on the bike and mentally it beat you up a little bit, you still went out on that run and did what you wanted to do. I did. You know, I, um, 
I had aspirations for placing in the top three in this race, and, and I did that despite the challenges I faced. So I'm just completely overcome with um, just gratitude, thankful for the support that I had out there. So many cheers from so many people, um, and it really fueled my fire today. So thank you. Well, you know what? We're, we can't wait to see what goes on in Danielle Lewis's future. With a run like that, you put together a, a great swim and bike ride. That's got to be satisfying for you. It's incredibly satisfying. This is my second full Ironman. Um, the first one, I did learn some lessons the hard way with um, sodium and cramping, and I fixed that, um, and it worked. So thankfully, I know what I need to do now and in the future. Well, you keep fixing it. I know where you're going to be on that podium. Danielle Lewis, third place today. Let's hear it for her. Well, awesome stuff uh, from Danielle, and uh, great to hear her be so positive about that race because uh, that's the only way uh, she should feel about that performance. And uh, now we know why she was sprinting across that finish line. <laughs> she had 10 seconds over that uh, unofficial course record. As soon as we have these women all set and ready, we're going to go down and uh, see them for their podium presentation here at the Biostarks. Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US Series. Yeah, all three. Great days for all three. Different days for all three. That's what I love the most about Ironman. Everyone had a unique and different experience out there. Yeah, they certainly <laughs> did. There we go. We see the women down there getting set, you know, exchanging post-race stories, uh, congratulating each other for their performances. We see Sky still in that uh, emergency blanket <laughs> trying to stay warm. It's still not super. Your body never really no. recovers when it's cold yes. in the morning. And even if it's, you know, 70 or high 60s now, it's still a little bit chilly when you're running around in spandex all day and, uh, you know, stop all wet from... Yes. Uh, from uh, hydration and uh, all that all over you. And so they're hungry. You are they hungry. want French fries yeah, totally. right now, immediately. So here we go. <laughs> Down to Mike Riley for the women's podium. We are now going to do the podium presentation for the top three female professionals here at the Biostark Ironman Arizona. In third place, out of Boise, Idaho, She's 34 years old. She went 903.18. Danielle Lewis. Danielle is going to receive her medal. And the flowers and the athletic brewing. In second place, Salt Lake City, Utah. Her day was 8.47.28. Let's welcome Sky Monch. And let's bring up your 2022 BioStarks Ironman Arizona female champion. She swam 53.49, had a 447.14 bike, 255.33 run, a day of 842.38 from West Lebanon, New Hampshire, your champion, Sarah Two. There they go, arms up in the air. Very proud as they should be. All right, 
You can open it up on your cue. There they go. One more time for Danielle Sky and your women's champion, Sarah True. Well done. Congratulations. That's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And welcome back to Biostark's Ironman Arizona, part of the VinFast Ironman US series. Great stuff from our women uh, racing here today. Uh, great uh, performances from those top three doing their best to get across that finish line. And I think they did, Meredith. It was a good day for everybody involved. I think everyone had a well-executed day. There were some mishaps here and there for people mechanically or maybe nutritionally. I'm sure no one had a perfect day. But no, it looked good to us. No one does, and I think that's a kind of a misnomer. Is you think the person who wins has a perfect day? It's a they they tend to be the ones that manage uh, their days, uh, the the mishaps the best. It all started about nine hours ago with our men starting off at six forty local time with the uh, that that melee, but it spread out pretty quick. Yeah, no problem. I mean the. Uh, the men leading this race, Andrew and Ben, for all of the swim was impe impeccable to watch. Andrew Horsfelt Turner really showed everybody how he can swim like no other. Ben Canute in his first Ironman did the same, and then they went out on the bike trying to hold Skipper off, I'm sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, looking over his shoulder, uh, Andrew uh, made sure he, he had that little bit of that gap, and he did on Ben Canute and was able to get... Uh, onto that bike with a little bit of a gap and settle in and, and make, make Ben work for it a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly uh, they, they tried. And as you yes. said, work together to, to keep Joe Skipper away. Uh, but as we know... Mm -hmm. it's, hard. <laughs> it's a hard job to do. It's a hard job. But, and it's funny, yeah. though, because I think he wouldn't think mm -hmm. that Joe would be this aggressive because right. he doesn't normally try to win races on the bike. And he right. did that today did. and they, they just couldn't hold him off. And Joe Skipper with the race move, really getting up there uh, with Hugenhog uh, to be able to get up to, to the, the front of the race. Right. And Christian held his own on that bike, you know, really working hard, becoming first off the bike. Uh, that was impressive with Skipper, of course, uh, but still they had a really good ride together and really showed us, how they can make it happen out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then onto the run, uh, it was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Hugenhawk getting onto that run course first, getting his yep. uh, things together and getting organized and giving himself a little bit of time to see what uh, Joe had in store for yes. his run today. I think we, we, we could kind of assume that, that Joe was going to catch him, but, uh, you know, he did his best to hold him off. And Ben Canute got straight to it and got straight to the races and, and did his best to... to hold even pace to the two runners up front, which he did for a period of time. Right, he did. And then he, you know, took the lead. He knew Matt Hansen was coming. Matt Hansen went in the hunt, hunted down Canute uh, to get second place and behind Joe Skipper. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he passing Sam Long along yep. the way, giving him a little pat on his back. And, 
you know, yeah. holding strong was Hogan Hog late in, in yes. the race uh, with Joe Skipper continuing to push that pace. And then it all came together yes. just with a few miles to go with Hanson passing Knut and Knut and Hanson passing Hogan Hog. So podium finishes uh, for Hogan Hog just dashed in the last, last minute, but he tried to hold on as long as he could. He just couldn't do it. Better athletes out there on the day. Matt Hanson was just on another level, second fastest Ironman run split ever for him uh and amazing amazing work for him but it was joe skipper to take the title in 746 flat matt hansen came across the finish line just under four minutes later and ben canute super ecstatic get his kona qualification his first ironman 751 those three athletes made it a day brilliant day for those three three gentlemen and a brilliant day out in Tempe in general. You know, yes. it looked a little chilly in the morning, some wind out there, but still a day for fast, fast racing and a great day for the spectators to be out supporting uh, these athletes. Absolutely. Look, the calm waters of Tempe. It seems like we were just doing that, you know, doing the swim. And, and yeah. there's the final uh, scoreboard, leaderboard there. Skipper, Hanson, Canute, uh, Hogan Hogg. And Bart. Yeah, uh, Bart, Bart Arnaud moving wow. himself up there. Still only seven minutes out of the uh, out of fourth place there in the end. Zapunked uh, staying in there. Adam Fay consistent all day, uh, fighting with Christian Henkauer at the end. Um, and then Sam Long finishing out. You know, we mm. did not keep up with what Sam was doing out there, but uh, applause, yes. literal applause to Sam Long. He did not have the day that he was looking for today. And he was able to to finish it out with a 8.23, which all being said is not that bad. And it just shows us that, you know, even when you're not having a good day, don't count out Sam Long. He's going to get right. across that finish line. Awesome stuff. That's right. And here we go. We also had a fantastic women's race that was, uh, you know, exciting all day long. Meredith starting yeah. just five minutes after the men. Yep. Lauren Brandon as we expected in her calm and smooth way, took the lead uh, pretty much from the start and in really controlled all that swim. She didn't have anyone behind her. She had such a really, really fantastic lead, got onto the bike. Um, she had S Sarah, and she had, was about 240 back. Uh, Sarah True was 240 back of Lauren Brandon, and then Sky an additional couple minutes. So we had Sarah True and Sky the top three out of the water behind Lauren Branded. Uh, onto the bike, what happened? Well, we, we're, we're going to get that yes. uh, the video of the women's uh, race <laughs> recap. We've currently just got the, the men's replaying, and we'll be able to give you a play-by-play -play on what happened uh, on the women's day when we get there. But as we, we saw, the men had a great race, and we still got on the upper left-hand side of the screen, uh, we have our or age group uh, men crossing the finish line. We have some uh, female pros still uh, getting across that finish line as well. Uh, but you can keep track of, uh, you know, finishers all day long. But here, let's move over uh, to our women's uh, recap. We got Lauren Brandon with the early lead uh, in the, on the bike course with uh, Sarah True and uh, Sky Monch chasing. Right. And so, so Sky was able to catch Sarah True, even though she was a couple minutes back, she caught her and then they rode the rest of the race uh, together, right? And behind Lauren Brandon at first and then what, what, gosh, it seems like it was just, yeah, just so <laughs> short ago, they ended up catching Lauren and they came into a uh, transition together. But Lauren held her own out there. She really had a calm and smooth ride. Uh, obviously, we know uh, Danielle was on the side of the road with her mechanical, but onto the run, yeah. uh, Sarah and Sky came off together. Yeah, and uh, they've straight to it. And Sky was aggressive getting out mm -hmm. first, but uh, Sarah did not mess around and she wanted to make sure she got straight back onto the shoulder of Sky Monch and then put the heels to Sky as soon as she could. And, and you know, Sky yeah. fought back a few times early and yes. was able to get back on the shoulders. But every time she was able to get back on the shoulder of Sarah True, Sarah just just put put her hand on the throttle a little bit. And she inched away, inched away, inched away, Sarah True did, but Sky never gave up. She still ran a three-hour uh, marathon. Jen, Anna, and Mel McQuaid were sitting in third and fourth for a while. Uh, Mel, a great race. Jen, a great race still. They still have the fire in the, those two Canadians. They know exactly what to do out on the course. They're veterans. Yeah. Uh, but Sarah still ch chipped away at the lead and got a little gap on Sarah, on, excuse me, on Sky. 
Yeah, and she looks she looks smooth uh, all day, and you know, right. uh, you know, both of our winners looked the same uh, when they finished the race as when yes. they started, and uh, you know, Sarah, you know, kept her game face on. Didn't really, we didn't see her really looking over her shoulder too much. You know, she was getting positive mm-hmm. splits all day, and then it was Danielle Lewis just taking, uh, you know, our our predictions after that mechanical mm-hmm. out the window, <laughs> and uh, you know, getting into the third place position late in the run, having a great, great run uh, along the way, and it was Sarah True to come across the finish line first and be your BioStarks Ironman Arizona part of the VinFast US Series champion with Sky Monch in second place and a sprinting. Danielle Lewis getting across the finish line uh, again with that goal, trying to get the fastest run split ever here at Ironman Arizona. And your top three women were amazing, amazing work from from all the women. And, and here's that top five across the finish line. Right. We got with Sarah True of 